passports, baby. Leave the rest in our troubled minds. Let us go down and left a baby. Trying to figure out what we're after. We never had it back until we're older. We couldn't care no more, not any longer. On the peach, jealous guys, we keep on searching.
vision If you got a magic Just go ahead and light it I wanna see where this is going We're done with playing games not knowing Yeah We've nothing to lose We lost it that night We're feeling alright There's no need to choose Wanna talk, but you don't wanna listen. Tryna 
go far The trigger makes feelings So I'm, I'm finished I'm on my way And you tell me you need it Back in my space Hey, yeah How could I lie Just to be cold Wanna be honest You should know I just came here to make y'all feel good You know what the message is Suddenly you with me what the message is I'll be running wild wild for you babe You know what the message is I don't have no patience Ain't no conversation You and I 
we've been friends for a long time now. Always have a good time whenever we go out. But you've been calling me up all the time and sending me signs and giving me them eyes. And you've been saying that you found the one, texting me junk and you wanna talk, but you can't say why. I can't get there and you know I try. You know I don't wanna waste your time. City lights and looking in your eyes, but I can't say why. Doesn't feel right to call you mine. You know I don't wanna waste your time. I can't get there and you know I try, but I can't say why. Like I just want a time back time I'm choked up, tell me how do I say this right Cause you've been calling me up all the time And sending me signs and giving me them eyes And you've been saying that you found the one Texting me drunk and you wanna talk But you can't say why I can't get there and you know I've tried You know I don't wanna waste your time City lights, I'm looking in your eyes I can't say why Doesn't feel right to call you mine You know I don't wanna waste your time I can't get there and you know I try But I can't say why
it's just a vibe with you. I feel alive, now I'm feeling like up to the fine. Will it stand the test of time right now? I need a sign. Tell me if it's over, come a little closer. We should take our time to think this damn thing over. Yeah. Should we go closer? Should this be over? My heart for your mind, probably we should start over. You won't show me your thoughts. I do the same. My brother ain't neck, but I still regret. Feelings and good. It's still the same. Tell me if it's over. Come a little closer. We should take our time to think this damn thing over. Should we go closer? Should this be over? My heart for your mind. Probably we should start over.
All right, we're meant to work, so hold up. Are we? You, are you, good? you that side? You this side? All right, cool. Nice cartwheel. I like that. Thank you. Um, so that was ESO1 Cologne 2015, the greatest game of Counter-Strike ever played, but in that server was Yam, and Yam is now the coach of Chiefs, and I know that you want Yam to do well. Well, I just, I never really got to use the line, Yam, bam, thank you, ma'am, in, in the, like a hype moment. I always kind of squeezed it in and it felt crowbarred. So maybe somehow if he does like a backflip off the stage at some point in his career, I'll still be able to use it. He's been standing in for them a bit. Often he's back in the roster. There's been a lot of roster changes. Chiefs are still trying to find their footing. But in Australian Counter-Strike, we have four teams that are pretty good. Let me see if I can name all four. Renegades. Oh, do you count 100 Thieves? Order and... The boys we're just talking about. Yeah. Who, who am I missing? Uh, Avant. Ah, uh, okay, sure. And that's pretty much it. Have we lost the Mind Freak boys? Or whatever? Well, they were more like a Call of Duty type thing. But anyway, we're getting stuck into the Aussie stuff too much because we also have to talk about Fnatic now. The Swedish Counter-Strike roster, multiple majors, all that kind of good stuff. But in online Counter-Strike, maybe their focus isn't there 100% and we're not seeing them get the best results. I do think we've kind of, we're seeing the same thing in less extreme that's happening to Na'Vi. I think the online transition for Fnatic was, you know, it's the same kind of thing as like, we're, you know, I've done this for 10 years and it's always been like this and now it's not like this. And these kids, they're not feeling that, you know, they're not, they're, Fnatic and Na'Vi aren't getting the same benefit of, I've been here a thousand times because the, the kids have been there a thousand times times they're in the living room playing the game so you know it feels the same for those kids and I think they some of the, the greats are feeling like that that extra hand has is, is punishing them yeah and look I can understand that I think when you get humbled um, which the Fnatic core definitely did you know they weren't at the best for quite some time you have to come back with a new hunger and I think we've seen that in recent times maybe it's tapered off a little bit because of the global situation but another team where it uh, has definitely tapered off and it's cooled off for a long time is MIBR who have made the audacious play of coming over to Europe to participate in the European side of things for Cologne which I don't know how this is going to work out, but it's a massive gambit. Yeah, I mean, look, SK, Cologne, I, you know, the offices were there, the trophies were lifted. There is definitely a connection to be made and seeing, you know, the whole, well, not the whole gang, but the core doing the same thing, the same steps being taken. It's about time MIBR did something exciting, isn't it? We saw that playoff run fall in close quarters orping. I do think that it does stem from the leader and, of course, the loss of the coach. Maybe fallen has got a more direct uh, channel to his team now. Yeah, uh, hopefully they can pull it together because Counter-Strike's more exciting to watch when VP or when the best teams in the world or when the Brazilians are killing it, right? So uh, we want to see them return to form. But uh, the last name, which has been in form recently, especially with the hard work they've been putting in is complexity right now. If you look at Blame F, that guy basically speaks of work ethic, right? You can just see the amount of time this team is putting in and even some troublemakers of the past kind of uh, stepping in line. Yeah, I mean, I love it. I actually, I really like the idea of, of Blame being kind of a, a figurehead for Config. I don't think he's ever had someone, an authority figure that, with, that understands the game that he's so passionate about to the same degree. You know, it may have been a father previously or whatever it may have been, but he hasn't had a Blame figure. I'm your leader. I will help you in and out of game. And I think that's the keys to the castle he's been given in complexity. So I think Blame's growing into that role. I saw a great tweet from him saying, I, I keep waking up and I'm happy. Like, he I wake up happy these days. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, this dude is happy, motivated, and climbing up the world rankings. Complexity you want to watch. Yeah, and I think Alex and I might have a bit of self-reflection and work to do because I want to wake up every day happy. Yeah. So I might try and you go find that. Yeah, let's go have a look. These are those moments I don't think anybody else is going to forget. Welcome to ESL One Cologne 2020, powered by Intel. Yesterday, after Navi inched out Mouse after heading to a Dust 2 decider, G2 decided to, to trump the Russians by dropping just six rounds to MIBR. An absolute masterclass. It's good to see the G2 boys back on epic form, but can they keep up the performance? We'll find out later this week. But let's find out what's coming up today. We have got NIP facing down big. Big, obviously, a lot to prove. And then at the end of the day, we're going to see if Chaos or Liquid can qualify to the playoffs in just two short games. I mean, who'd have thought it? Chaos. 
they could be doing it. They could be making their way through to the playoffs of ESL One Cologne, Hugo. That's awesome as well. Like such a recovery story for Steel. I mean, this guy's this guy's so dedicated. He's so motivated. It's great to see the results for Chaos here as well. Beating the Brazilians just the other day, beating Furia. That's a huge win. And uh, guys. I'm trying to find my place in the cast. Like, I know how to keep you two in check. It's, it's easy. I've got leashes under the desk, ladies and gentlemen. But in terms of the cast, finding my feet and stuff, Harry, have you got any tips for me? Oh, uh, that's a, yeah, I mean, like, Frankie, I just think, you know, be, be confident in it, you know, like, go for it, nail it, because when you did yesterday, you did a good job, so, like, let's go, let's have it. Okay, thank you. I mean, I did kind of hype up uh, something after the round. Yeah, an impossible defuse, right, but that happens to the yeah. best of us, right? Like, I had a moment last Pro League, no one even talks about it, and I'm like, oh, Fnatic, they got the defuse, and then the bomb goes off, and it's like, oh, no, wait, oh, they didn't get the defuse. There's always moments like that, it's, you know? It's, it's fine, It's inevitable. Right? Okay, fine. No, one's, no one would have remembered that if I hadn't just said it on camera. So fine, no one please clip that. Okay, let's look at what is coming up today. We've got the Group A upper bracket. Like, we've got Sprout versus OG. One more match and one of those teams is going to the playoffs. This is not something we expected going into this tournament, Hugo. I'm all for it though. I mean, Sprout beating, beating big in that opening day, that's a that's a crazy result for Sprout. I, we already you know, saw Favin talk about how these domestic matchups can be 50-50 at times. And so, you know, German CS, I, I, I want both these teams at the playoffs here. Right now, obviously big in a compromising spot being in that lower bracket game, but, uh, but Sprout are working their way up, uh, up, not just the rankings, but the tournament as well and props to them. Not an easy win to take down Big, number one in the world on that ESL World ranking right now. We'll see if Big can retain their confidence later today, and we need to see a few more players maybe step things up. But again, we're going to be talking about that in more detail later because we need to remind ourselves of what happened between Mouse Sports and Na'Vi yesterday. We, we really didn't know what to expect from Mouse Sports. We knew they had been practicing individually during the player break. And actually, what we saw. It wasn't too bad, Harry. No, it wasn't, and it's like, and also I think it's it it, it, it was like a good showing from the side of Maus in the sense that like Rops was looking good. This victory on Nuke was really well played from them, and then like you know you are up against Narbi. You got to remember that at the end of the day, like there's simple, there's electronic, yeah. and then there's also a, a bunch of well rested dudes on the other side. So it's like you know I, I think that when we look at this matchup, there's a lot of positives to take away. Narbi didn't have their classic kind of blunder in the beginning before oh. having to recover. They've come into this looking good. Uh, for Maus, you know, there's stuff to build upon there. There's reasons to still be excited for them at the end of the day. And I think the Rops is a huge talking point of that. Well, we haven't really been talking much about Vitality. They have qualified to find themselves a spot in the upper bracket against Astralis. That match is going to be going down on Saturday. So make sure you don't miss it because Vitality, they are, they're building themselves up at the moment. They've had a bit of a rocky path back to the top, but it looks like they're doing, they're doing good. They're a contender here now. Yeah, the fact that they win their opening game against Heretics is big as well, right? When we talk about those domestic matchups in, in, in Big Sprout and Big Falling Short there, Vitality, they don't fall to the, you know, the budget Frenchmen. It, 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 you could argue that, right? Not to put Heretics down. We'll be seeing them later on today, and I really hope they can show, uh, show a good performance in their elimination match. But Vitality taking on Astralis next. I mean, that is a trial by fire. Bubsky looked damn good. This new form Astralis roster is sexy. I love that, like, mirrored as well, like, Danish French matchups going on, right? Like you got uh, Astralis taking on Vitality, and then you got G2 taking on the uh, the heroic guys. So yeah. it's like, you know, on either side, the sim similarities being drawn there. I love this G2 squad as well. We just saw Nexa and Hunter looking so damn good the other day. So I think on either side of the bracket there, we're in for a treat, Frankie. When do they not look good? And we've got to talk about how good Chaos are looking. That Group A upper bracket, yes, of course. We're expecting 100 of these probably to be there, but this is a really tight group. Furia, they've just won DreamHack Open Summer. And then, of course, you have Gen G. I mean, a team with DAPs are normally looking to get to at least the playoffs, but they're in trouble. Meanwhile, Group B, things are much more along the lines of what we expect. We're lining up for an EG liquid upper bracket qualification match and that's going to be electrifying yeah definitely right it's so nice that liquid are like looking not 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 just good anymore like really exciting again like i'm excited to talk about liquid you know you've got stewie looking like he's in incredible form if he can keep up his performance from the other night you've got grim in the team who had a great debut with the squad and then you got moses in the coaching role like i don't think i could
to be happier with this liquid squad if I tried. We need liquid to get through to the playoffs purely because we need a Moses interview on the desk because I want to see how he's doing because I miss him. And I'm so shocked to see him as the coach of that team, but also so excited as well because now, yeah, we get to interview him. But enough about NA because we need to talk about big again. They have got their series to stay in the tournament coming up after the break. But we need to talk about how they fared in Cologne in the past because, of course, in 2018, they made it to the grand finals against Na'Vi. So let's take a look. There have been a lot of new promising Counter-Strike rosters from all around the world in the past few years. But we can't think of a better story about a team with such big dreams, big commitment, and a huge fighter's heart. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to meet Germany's finest, Berlin International Gaming, also known as Big. Having only existed for three months at the time, Big hit the ground running with their outstanding performance at ESL Meisterschaft Spring 2017. Some will say it was indeed a turning point in their career because of that win in the finals. Everybody knew the up and coming team had to be taken seriously. Being invited for the next year's 2018 ESL One Cologne was a tremendous distinction for Big. Sure, they had to do their best if they wanted to throw down the gauntlet against the biggest teams on the scene and boy did they rise to the occasion. In their first clash against Team Liquid, Big kicked off with an unexpected win over the North American roster, 16 to seven, and made it to the second round. They had a drop Nitro, now it's just twist left to... Oh, Deal with God. It. God, B. Unfortunately for Big, they then suffered defeat to Fnatic, which saw the Germans relegated to the lower bracket. On their way to glory, it was a close call for Big in their game against Renegades. The German roster needed all three maps, plus an overtime, to finally finish it with a 19-17 win. Goes for the safe plant, Smoothie is wrapping round. Failed in the clutch last time versus Jacob. Would love to make it up now. <gasps> Jacob spots the first. Smoothie has to trade. Smoothie oh. does it. Smoothie lands the shot. Next in line trying to bury their dreams was a Brazilian roster, made in Brazil. With an even game throughout both of the initial maps, Big's three times the charm blessing once again came through. He does have the crossfire from Tizian, and the, fire, the kills are firing in. Tizian's done it. It's just one man left up, and Coltira can't find the final kills. It's Big are going to the playoffs. Now they were just a few steps away from the final. But let's not forget some serious teams like G2 and FaZe Clan were still in contention. Surprisingly for Big, G2 couldn't call it their day. They lost 17 to 19 on cash, followed by a catastrophic loss on Dust 2. Big tore them to pieces, winning a mind-blowing 16 to 1, and made it to the semifinals. Can't necessarily sit there and guard it by himself, but if he backs off and uses some utility, he certainly can. Considering the fact Smuya was a newcomer on board at that time in the big squad, everybody knew it's not going to be a walk in the park against their next rivals, FaZe Clan. It seemed befitting to say Big was on the verge of running out of luck on Dust2. The German roster lost 19 to 17, but didn't break down at all. Big 60 HP, but now zero. And it wasn't a pretty finish, map. They quickly stood up and fought back on both train. Not gonna be the Felica victory by the looks of things, or maybe I've spoken too soon. Carrigan does pull one back again. At least some weaponry here, Smuya. And Inferno. Banana cleanly if it wasn't given to them. And now they can't oh! win the mid Dabson! Eventually making it two to one and becoming our second grand finalist of the tournament. The positive sequence of events stood in favor of Big for a long time. But let's not forget, luck doesn't last forever. In the grand final against the Ukrainian side Na'Vi, it seemed that the German roster called all their shots. But in the end of the best of five format, Simple and his teammates proved to be too good for Big. All in all, Na'Vi lost only one map and put the game out of reach by winning three to one. Up Big, he gets one kill, it's to salvation at this point. But it's all done, surely, as they wrap around. Electronic fittingly finds the last kill. 16 to 8, now V will pick up finally a trophy. Some will say Big left the tournament empty-handed as they failed to lift the trophy in front of their home crowd. However, the team fought valiantly and defied expectations along the way, lighting the path to a successful future with results that would have seemed outlandish at the time. Other teams should look upon them because their future looks bright indeed.
well. It wasn't just a walk down memory lane for Big, but also Hugo and Harry there hearing the young boys casting. Who knew what superstars they would become? And we're going to hear them casting very shortly because we've got Big versus NIP coming up after the break. Intel Gamer Days is on now. Whether you're looking to buy or build, now is a great time to upgrade. Get limited time offers and giveaways from top names in PC gaming. Unleash elite gaming performance with systems featuring new 10th gen Intel Core processors and bring Marvel's Avengers to life with in-game optimizations for a mightier PC experience. Act now. Intel Gamer Days is only here for a limited time. My name is Jordan Gilbert, AKA Nothing. Hi, my name is Sue Lee. My handle is Smix. I think it's important for these initiatives to happen. Empathy really, really goes a long way and it always, always means so much to us. And I think that's where initiatives like this really help. I encourage everyone in the community, anytime they see bullying, anytime they see someone getting called names, or I encourage you to step up and say something. Good luck, have fun. Good luck, have fun. If you want to know what you're good at and, well, also, what you suck at, check out csgohub.com. Coming! Everybody loves an underdog. Who needs to be liked? Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel. Victory in a can. <laughs> Always you and me trying to be weightless. 
And I know it feels like But light years in the making Up, up, up A thousand miles of luck Don't look down, we made it Feet far off the pavement And we go up, up, up A thousand miles of luck Oh no, we stay understated Pressure feels amazing Just the dust ESL One Cologne Online is brought to you in part by Intel, Mountain Dew Game Fuel, DHL, and GG Bet. ESL One Cologne 2018 especially means the peak of my career, even though we maybe won some majors in 1.6 and stuff, but it's, it's not the same because it was just, for me, the best tournament I've ever attended. Also, like, the whole experience and the whole story behind it was uh, just amazing, and, yeah, it's, it, I will never forget it. 2017, we had a lot of problems there with the team. We had bad online results. We dropped out of Pro League. So yeah, we needed a change for sure. Uh, we needed to change players. So Legia was coming with the idea of let's let's uh, uh, try international. Like let's try to uh, give a odd player, a young odd player, a chance. And it was Smuya. It was a lot of fun playing with him. I just love to play with him because his personality is just like lovable. Uh, because he's so crazy sometimes and uh, yeah, I enjoyed playing again uh, for the first time in the year, I think. And I remember when uh, we get the message that uh, we will join ESA One Cologne as well, we were like, yeah, if we go to the arena, we um, will get carried by the fans. But then actually when we went there, it was like even bigger than we thought. It was a little bit hard at, in the, at the start, but then it was just enjoy, enjoy the moment. We also said a few times in the game, I remember, just enjoy it, just have fun, and it was just fun in the end. The belief in ourselves just grew because of the belief of the fans in us. I was just enjoying the moment more than I can maybe put in words now. and uh, makes me also proud of what the German scene became. Also on that day, like the whole um, hashtag Gemeinsam, and I hope it will bring us to where we are right now, that German scene can be on top again. Isa One Cologne is um, for me and for a lot of other players the most important tournament of the year, and I think it has the most magical moments in Counter-Strike itself. And uh, yeah, I think if you uh, think about just the word is a one cologne, there are so many magical moments coming into your mind. It's just undescribable. This is ESL One Cologne, and we have got big facing NIT coming up very shortly. Let's see if the boys from Berlin can make it to the finals of ESL One Cologne again. But before we talk about the matchup, we need to talk to one of our favorite people in the Counter-Strike. It's been absolutely far too long since we've had an encounter with Mr. Owen Butterfield. Smooya, where you at? Oh, here he is. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing good, yourself? Yeah, doing good, thanks. I'm kind of missing the LAN atmosphere. What's it like for you to play in an arena like ESL One? <laughs> Um, well, at the time, I was like 18, it was my first team, so I kind of just took it for granted, right? And I was going to all these top lands, I was playing with the Major, but now looking back at the video and stuff, and I actually realized how I felt, it was like a super crazy experience, and I probably won't experience something like that for a while, due to COVID and stuff. 
But as soon as I get back on a roster and COVID's gone, then I'm sure I'll be back up there. Well, uh, so yeah, someone I love, and I know you love as well, uh, God B with him being great. Like, obviously, not yeah. in the roster, like, playing, but he's still there helping out. What do you think he can bring to a team? And, like, what was your relationship like with this guy? Um, well, to be honest, I saw him as, like, a big brother towards the end of the team. At the beginning, like, we kind of hated each other because we just used to clash <laughs> all the time. Like, I'll, I'll just be honest. Um, but then we, we kind of just had a realization that, like, I knew nothing about CS and I just had to listen to him because he's, like, the king, right? Um, so I kind of just listened and, um, yeah, I think he's super important to the team because he brings the structures that they need that they were lacking with that we had. Cause we was building the playbook towards like before I, my exit from big. So like, I was like just about to be there, like with the number one team. And then as I got kicked, like God B just finished the book and I was like, oh, great. Like I'm gone. <laughs> but, um, but he like finalizes like all the plays normally he brings like most of the strategic like side. And, like, just enforces, like, mistakes and stuff in practice, which is, like, you need, like, a bad guy. I saw Stewie saying this recently, like, with their coach. Like, Adren wasn't really pointing people out, you know? And, like, God be that person. Like, he'll hold you accountable for your mistakes, and you need someone like that. So I think it's really important for Big. Uh, Owen, I'm going to move over the ocean, as you did for a brief period over with Chaos. Uh, I want to hear from yeah. you uh, about playing under Chaos, playing in the US, and, of course, Steel as well, and your relationship with him, and, and, and talking about learning from God B. Well, what did you learn from Steel? Uh, with Steel, I would say I learned a lot of, like, individual things, whether it be, like, honestly, he just made me more like a committed person. So before I was with Steel, he was the first person that called me up on saying, all right, guys, let's have practice at this time. Like, I would set a schedule and I wouldn't follow it myself. But then I would try just to fight with saying, yeah, but I did two hours death match yesterday. And he'd be like, bro, that's, re like, oh, I, I can't swear, right? He was like, that's stupid. Don't say that stuff. And then, yeah, he kind of just taught me to be, like, stick to my word more, I would say. Uh, in game, he showed me a lot of things as well. Like I didn't expect him to know as much as he did. Like no flame to Josh, um, but yeah, he showed me many grenades. He has a very unique approach to the game, and I feel like you're seeing that now with their team, where they have five good individuals all willing to listen to him, and he doesn't have to constantly point out mistakes and stuff like. Because in our team, we had like a couple people not playing the best CS, so I feel like he's gonna do lots of damage with the Chaos roster. And living in America was sick, man. I gained like. Five stone or something like that. In <laughs> like I was going to the gym every day before I went there. I was smashing it. I was like 80 kilograms. And then I came back like, I think I got like 230 pounds, man, which is like the weight of Daniel Cormier, you know, like this guy is six foot and he's huge and I'm just like fat. So, but yeah, it was nice living there and I uh, hope to go back someday, but I want to stay in Europe for a while. Well, I think, yeah, that, that's a follow-up question for me as well, right? You've been you've been hinting at some uh, maybe some secondary open roles moving forward. Uh, I imagine you can't tell us that much, but uh, are you going to be joining a team no, soon? Oh, um, can we hear well, some leaks? Well, that, yeah, I mean, the leaks, I don't know what they're doing now. I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to leak it or I might get punished. Well, leak it really yeah, quickly I'm, because I'm we've got to get into our match, Smoothie. So tell okay, us right sorry, now, yeah. right now. Okay, it, it was North, the team I was going to join, yeah. but it fell through. Oh. Um, so yeah, now I'm teamless. Looking to join any team. Anybody needs me, just send me a Twitter DM. And then, yeah. Okay. Willing well, to play for free. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, wouldn't let you. I wouldn't let you play for, for free, Smoo. You know I'd slide into your DMs and tell you off if I heard that was the case. Thank you so Wait, much for joining us. Can I say one quick us. thing for Twitch chat? Okay. Be, we need be... to say, can, can I get some Let's Go Bigs in the chat? Or like Big Pog Champs in the chat? I want to see it because Big are going to effing destroy this game. Let's go Big. <laughs> To the Owen. final I like that. Let's go, baby. Owen. Let's go, like baby. Two zero too big. You've grown <laughs> into a fine young gentleman. Thank you so much, Smuya. Well, let's talk about this matchup. You're pointing at Hugo. No, I just, I just can't believe it. he's so animated, man. Yeah. He's, he's coming in and he's like, well, you know, North Deal fell through, so I'll try and make a desk job <laughs> for myself. He's I like, come it. on, Big. And I agree with him. I, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to this matchup. And I think Big could take it. I'm just going to hop in with Smoothie there, you know, a couple yeah. of British boys together, a couple of Rat Kings all hanging out, having a good time. Yeah. I don't want to sleep on NIP here, right? They were impressive in that opening game against OG, but I think their work is cut out for them. Big falling in their, in their early matchup against Sprout, a bit of an, an, an anomaly, I would like to say, considering, you know, that's what we kind of expect from these domestic matchups. So I am also leaning in the favor of Big for this series, but I really think it's going to be an exciting and close affair. When you look at the matchup against Sprout, not many of the players showed up. In fact, it seemed like Tabson was doing all the heavy lifting and he cannot carry this team alone.
He has got the IGL responsibilities. He has got freedom to roam around the map. But is it going to be enough to take down NIP? Yeah, I mean, you look at Tabs and his whole storyline is just incredible, right? Like, he's someone who's always stuck around in the German scene, no matter what was going on. And he's always been one of the real talents that yeah. you look at as someone to do damage. That's even the case here and now with this, with this iteration of the squad. But he does have Ooh. damage dealers around. <laughs> so we need to see Zantares and we need to see Searson stepping up alongside Tabs. That, for me, is the damage trio of big. And if they show up, we're in for a treat. This is the perfection of a map pool here for this series. I'm so excited. NIP, of course, getting rid of Dust2. We know what Big can do there. NIP looked so good on Vertigo near the end of Lekra. Hampus joins. Obviously, he takes a lot of his roles. We didn't really get to see the refined NIP. But if we remember back earlier in the year, before Astralis sort of fell off and, and had roster changes, NIP were one of the first teams, one of the only teams to beat Astralis on this map. We know Astralis, they're, they're not massive fans of Vertigo, but that's a huge win anyway. So NIP, I think, are a really impressive Vertigo to go team and I'm excited to see it as our opener. I'm very excited to see it as our opener. I'm wondering if they're going to be changing the pace when they first started playing Vertigo. We saw very fast players, lots of contact players. I remember a match with them versus Vitality and it was absolutely explosive. But now they switched the roles around. They got a different IGL. I'm looking forward to seeing what they've done to this map. Well, we don't have to wait long. It's Vertigo, and it is a treat. Big taking on NIP, the battle of teams with three letters in their name. And uh, I can't wait to see who picks this one up. Of course, elimination on the line as well. So there's actually a hell of a lot riding on this one. Big, let's see what they're made of. It was a slow start in that Sprout, Sprout matchup. Can they recover now after a hot streak here to begin 2020? Tizian going to be holding on to the ramp and already Ooh. he gets taken down by Rez. Now Keto back of the site, hidden here. Does dispatch of the first man, follow up from Tabson. And now this, uh, this push from NIP slows right down while they try and confine the damage. They try and deal with it, but instead they're just getting dealt a pretty rough hand. That bomb gets dropped as well. So even though they've fallen back, they actually have to go back up the ramp now to retrieve the bomb. And with Searson wrapping in through the back line, he should have this one dead to right. He takes them both nice. down and Big get the pistol in the bag. Oh, Tabson, he really sets Keto up for success there as well, hiding in the back pillar of the site. Tabson drops that Tetris smoke that lands on the rail. That cuts NIP off from walking on the back. They've got to enter through the middle of the site and essentially just walk into a crossfire of Tabson at Jens and Keto at back site. So yeah, it keeps NIP back. It makes them hesitate. And in all the meanwhile, Big uh, are on that immediate flank down the bottom of B. Searson with two to finish and Big find the pistol. Frankie mentioned pace and well, that was a quick one for NIP, but let's see if that continues. We've got a scout out for Nork and the Deagles as well. Harry, Nork was impressive to say the very least in that game against OG Scout. Orp doesn't really matter. And so I've got my eyes on him in this round. Well, I kind of hope you're right, Hugo. I kind of hope you're right. I want that to con... Ooh. Uh... <laughs> well... I was going to say, one man who we did see struggling a bit was Twist, and... Nice shot, at least. Yeah, you know, like, him and Hampus haven't had the best working relationship since she joined the team, but, uh, hey, it happens. It happens, you know. So Hampus has already gone. Now Twist is, like, looking to kind of... <laughs> Try and apologize by getting a kill over here. Nice, in guys, middle. Can we restart the round? Yeah. Uh, technical issue. Technical issue. Oh, no, wait. Hang on. His left click was stuck down, to be fair. But uh, Hugo, mate, we got this We got this little ramp push coming in from NIP. They're creeping up. They've even got Twist, the, uh, the team killer in their midst. He's coming in as well. Tizian over here at short side and Zantara's back in the bomb site. There's a quick rotate available from Tabson. So this push is not going to be easy to say the very least. NIP, that's a nice bit of nade damage there from old mate Twist. There's the response, and it's even grosser in return from Big. <laughs> it's very, very slow as these smokes are still going down, and that there could cause some problems. It's into the prying eyes of... Oh, it's another team kill. NIP, are you guys just going to do all the work for Big? Like, they've killed two of their own players in this round. <laughs> Oh, there's like the idea that like, you know, I, I don't even know what animal it is, like a wolf will like chew its leg off if it's in a trap or whatever, but NIP, they weren't even trapped in there. They're just, they're just chewing bits off regardless because it tastes good. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't really know what to make of that one. Uh, that's a great start for Big, but maybe a gifted on a platter. And IP, they're going to have to take an eco, take a breather, chill out and spawn for a second, go full existence and, and figure out what the hell's going wrong with these teams. I'd love to know what Threat is saying. <laughs> like, like, is it obviously not the most ideal of starts here, but it's all good. It's round one. Uh, or round two, rather. Can't actually count. Numbers never were my strong point.
Centara's down here. Numbers certainly are his as he's looking to put up some on this round play. Yeah, Big taking a little more control here than the previous round. They sat back in the sight against NIP on that Deagle round, but now they want to at least fight from a range and they're going to be able to do so. NIP just holding back very passive. Rez with the P250, really relying on someone like Hampus here with this Deagle. The one on this T side, Santaris with a cheeky little angle. Did he spot Hampus very close? He did. He's going to move back, not wanting to risk his life. Flashback in, doesn't do a thing. And Hampus with a quick shot. Nice trade from Tizzy, and he's got a dig of his own. We know what Big can do with these weapons. And uh, now he is on his own, needing support. NIP have grouped up fully towards the top of the ramp. Tizzy is trying to scavenge that gun, take it out of the prying hands of these Swedes. And he'll do that successfully. Spotting twist crossing, but... No need to overplay your hand. We've got a flank in as well. Notice Sis, and he pushed B, uh, pushed A rather, and flank B on the pistol. He's doing the inverse here in the third, but it might need to come in sooner. Nork and Plopsky finding some digs on their enemies for a change, and here's that flank. Sis and getting two. Bomb planted. NIP, good luck getting out of this one alive. Yeah, smoke goes down on the bomb. Plopsky with no armor, mopped up by Sis, and... They're going to get that third round locked on in. So, they, you know, they momentarily find themselves in a two on four, but they get it back under control thanks to that wrap round from Searson. I will say it's been kind of interesting, right? Because like in that big Sprout matchup on day one, uh, Big obviously got defeated in it. Uh, it seems like there's still a bit of a problem for, for a man like Keto, who's had two of his worst performances uh, for the big squad when facing his old team. So... You know, we often see that, right? We often see that in like those rivalry matchups where you're kind of familiar with each other, it can like make or break the uh, the performance you give. Well, we got the fan cams back on. So let's um, let's evaluate the guy in the middle, shall we? <laughs> I, I think I need to forget that. I'm probably going to revisit that again tonight in my dreams. Ooh, liked it that much, Frankie. Rez down here, getting naded out. And it's an immediate slowdown from NIP. Maybe they were going to try and go fast up ramp, but the smokes have gone in. They have players out into middle. Keto's pushed down B ramp in the meantime. Searson, though, here with the AWP, and that's scary in my eyes. He gets one, but just as he started to go a little bit deeper, that's when he gets peaked. Does get dealt with. Now Hampus down here towards the B site. Tabson, the uh, man who was over towards B, has actually rotated away, uh, leaving Keto to hold ramp solo. Now he gets spotted and dealt with by Hampus. That trade potential just isn't there with Tabson having to take up the responsibility of middle. Now he goes back into B. And right now, NIP in a two on three. Like this doesn't look like a great situation, but you know that you've got big, kind of a bit paranoid, having to shift this defense up. And so I'm hoping NIP just, just try and group back up and play into this round now in this two on three together. Yeah, good spacing in middle from NIP, right? Searson was a little wide and therefore wasn't able to take a shot and back off as he would have liked. Hampers as well, great patience on that B hold. He doesn't try and chase down Keto. He knows Keto gets a little bit worried and strafes out wide. Molly onto Tizzy and needs to peek with it before he escapes, but loses his life in the process. That leaves Nork alone and coming up A with 25 seconds left. Big still have two on this site and they're going to be moving towards short as well. So Nork... Not an easy round to come alive in. He's got to clear that close play as Antares eyes peel to his monitor. He's going to get traded, and that's going to be big finding a fourth round here. Tizian with three. Nice stuff from him. And NIP, they've still got the money, right? They can still buy back in. Uh, maybe we'll see a, a faster change of pace. They did get the control up A ramp this time. The risk, obviously, with, with running up A is, is what we saw Searson almost succeed in doing, which is taking that fast port peak on the shelf side. It's very, uh, very careful with that one. NIP flashed him off. We'll see if that's going to be the same today. Well, AWP out in the hands of Nork, and he's taken that with him over here towards a ramp. Now, Keto and Searson both donning AWPs here for big. Keto's got his over in the B-bomb site. I actually love having an AWP here. I think he can get away with doing so much, right? Like, especially if these if these kind of dry ramp fights are given over to you. I feel like the AWP is great at just getting this kill, disengaging, and then playing as they as, as they continue trying to go for the trade. Because, like, you imagine, you're Plopsky. Well, now you know the AWP's there. You can't exactly go barreling up those stairs to try and get the trade kill. You kind of have no choice but to fall on back. And so that, that kill's untradeable. We're into a three-on-five. And this is still looking really good for Big. Like, there's no way of uh, there's no way of shaking up that storyline to anything no. but.
We're seeing this close smoke be used as well. I think at the start of Vertigo, teams would often use that smoke and not really know how to play around it. They'd be fighting against, like you can see, Nork has almost a one-way fighting below this smoke. They'd be fighting close on the CT side, but we've seen teams start to use it correctly, right? Ramp is a very wide choke point, or not even a choke point. You can't smoke it off from the top. And so that's basically the equivalent. NIP don't want to swing wide when that smoke's down because their feet uh, is going to be seen. You can see Tizian is playing that perfectly. He's going to move in with a flashbang. Aggressive stuff. Big don't wait. And Nork, he will trade. Flashed out by Searson's utility, but still stuck in a two on four. And look at the time again. Oh, nice shot from Nork with the follow up. Two now, but 10 seconds left. And that's what's going to plague the AWP here. Second AWP back in CT, chiming in with a few shots. And it's the wrap from Short. Uh. Oh, he's got away briefly, but yeah, not going to survive that journey. It's 5 and 0 oh for Big. Big have just had such an interesting storyline this year, though, Hugo, right? We got to cast them in, uh, in in that grand final as well for the DreamHack Masters Spring, and it was a treat to watch there. They were able to complete that, that reverse sweep to take the whole event, uh, which was just mind-blowing. And then that was actually the event that qualified them to ESL 1 Cologne in the first place. They needed just. to win it, and, and they do, and now they're here. So they've been on this great rise, and I think, you know, if you put big in Cologne, you think back to the memories of 2018, that heartbreaking loss in the grand finals to Na'Vi. This is an event that's going to mean a hell of a lot to them. Even though it's online, right, this is still one that's going to carry so much weight to those big boys on our screens. And I'm liking that we're seeing them make a very good impression out of the gate here versus NIP. Yeah, keep in mind, this is an elimination match as well, a lower bracket game for Group A. So, yeah, to, you know, either we don't have the Germans continuing in Cologne or the Swedes, the Ninjas in Pajamas, an org famed with events like these are going to be gone on just day three. Neither of those sounds good. I don't like either option, but uh, unfortunately, we have to have one. NIP, this is a bit of a slow start. Slow walk up the ramp as well. Big spamming back. They've got three here on A. There's been no contact, no noise made elsewhere. And on a map where, like Vertigo, where audio is king, Big are pretty sure they know what's up. Yeah, you'll see that Tabson's already kind of like cheated his way over in through mid, playing elevator. He's available to a very, very fast rotation into this A site as is Searson. So the moment NIP kind of show their hand, they're going to have four players fighting against them on the other side. And Molotov's very well timed. It looks like Tabson and Tizian are gearing up to go aggressive, and that's a decision Ooh. they're going to come to regret. They get taken down in an instant, and now Zintara's trying to pick up the pieces, helped out by Plopsky. The team damage just continues for NIP. Zintara's finds one through the smoke. My goodness. Right, we're into this three on three. The bomb is now down. NIP, they've got a chance to find something here in a round where really they shouldn't have. Thanks to that aggression from Tabson and Tizian. Going on the TT tours of ramp. And now Plopsky holding this close angle. Keto creeping up with the AWP. First man in and he gets spotted. But there's Searson dealing with Plopsky. Now just Nork and Hampus in these digs to try and see NIP through. They get the first. Tapping the bomb. It's Searson. He's sticking it. They're spamming. Oh, knife oh, out for Nork. He's missed the stab. And oh, oh, they get the defuse. Nork falls and Searson with balls of steel just sticks it in the smoke. He was knifing to the left. And as soon as he's about to, you know, looking like he's about to turn right and hit the knife that's going to finish the, uh, Searson's life. But then he picks up the M4 and switches to it. And at that point, the defuse is already in. Five seconds with the kit. And remember, that was a five on three. That was big, ready for the A play, playing aggressive, playing close, which has netted them kills in the past. But against the pistols, they get overwhelmed by NIP strafing out wide on the ramp against that smoke. Big weren't ready for it, but they are going to win the round regardless. Antares with a deep A smoke will fight towards the ramp. You have to be wary of this, right? Uh, a T can take a fast spawn up as the smoke blooms and get up towards the scaffoldings. Antares isn't concerned, though. And great utility from Big. Just continuing to lay down damage before they've even seen their opponents. The spam as well did some to res prior to the grenade. So he's down to 37. NIP holding more of a standard default here, right? One outside of B, one top mid, three working that A ramp. But bigger running the exact same setup on this CT side. So Searson, not fearful of this T aggro ramp push. He's going to find one, finishing off the job that Zantaris starts. And NIP now grouping up with more and the bomb towards A. 
And once again, big already have four players here. They're even ready to throw this boost up with Zantares going up and over. And, oh, oh he just saw them. He just saw them now hopping down. They know that that boost was there. They hear it. And so they know they're kind of lucky, but at the same time, like you're not that lucky. You're walking into a four stack site. Tapson goes aggressive at ramp again. And this time is good for one before he gets dealt with. NIP, they're just, they're just stuck, man. Every time they try and push, there's a smoke, there's a nade, there's a molly, there's something delaying them, and they just keep getting challenged every single time. Nork falls, and Twist is thinking about saving. Yeah, I'm just surprised that we're not seeing NIP abuse that short position, right? Big's utility, not just in HE grenades and mollies, but smokes as well have been really good. They've just been cycling that close A ramp smoke with, with one on short as well. But NIP are just strafing out ramp and fighting on the site. Big, they shouldn't be able to get away with playing site if NIP are coming up short at the same time, but that's just not the case. And so no splits towards A, just standard uh, heads up fights. And Big, with four on A in that round, are winning every single one. Even when they don't, that retake defuse in the round prior, they're in full control, Harry. They know exactly what they're doing. Agent Rez in the server as well. Ever Ooh. since that TK, he's 007. So he really is the spy behind enemy lines, man. He's turning on his own team now as well. I think that's Twist more so. Yeah, he's the one getting team kills. They both managed it, man. Dear, oh dear. Yeah, threat you can see on the left side having a talk with NIP. They are boot camping at least, right? We got well, that in there. Well, what do you reckon he's saying at this point, man? Because this is not the scoreline you were hoping for, you know? I, I, I think I'm inclined to agree with you, Hugo, in that it feels like, you know, you, you keep playing into Big's hand the moment you just kind of meander up through this, uh, this top ramp smoke. Even if, like, it, it just feels like even if you were throwing those standard set smokes into the A bomb site to yeah. cut off those CT and boost sight lines, suddenly you make that whole defense a little bit more tricky for Big. I know they're trying to beat that by playing close to ramp, right? And being ahead of where those smokes would fall. But, uh, you know, I, I, as we've seen, like Tabson being close at ramp can prove to be a liability. Yeah, one of the two bomb plants NIP have had on A is is the eco where they go for those exact smokes that you're talking about, Harry. Nice little boost, Plopski, hard shot to hit, especially with the Galil, takes the head off of Keto. Tizian's gonna get aggressive on A and find a trade. The bomb is still dropped outside of the A site, so who knows where this one's ending up. Hampus is getting more trades and drawing rotations. I think NIP still want that A site, though. They're gonna be holding for the aggressive push. Santaras gives it to them, but he also takes it away. Rez continues to fall short of finding a kill on his enemies. Hampus, oh dear goes back in for a second try and it goes as bad as the first twist now in a one on three blinking you miss it this round is all in favor of big and if he doesn't play this corner he's gonna have a rough time nice kill but considering that's at the bottom of a big have ample time to rotate into the site Yeah, and Twist trying to slow down, hoping that someone faces him. is just given even more time for this rotation to come in. Twist does deal with the first. This would be a one-on-three for Twist, and he's going to try and deal with Searson, but he's not quite able to get that one over the line. It's 8-0 and for Big, still flawless on this CT side. I will say as well, like Vertigo, it feels very, very uh, fickle. The moment this CT money gets built up and you have players like Searson able to don that AWP, uh, and, you know, with like with no kind of problem in that regard, it does get a little bit scary. So at least in that round there, NIP do a lot of damage. They bring big back down to kind of level pegging in terms of the money. And they bring the AWP out on their own accord on the NIP side. So, you know, if there ever was a round, I feel like this could be it. Like, if you want to try and get back into the swing of things, you do it here and now. It's not oh, oh, no. Tizian with the ramp aggression. All right, only gets one, but it's a lot of damage. It's a lot of information. And also, NIP, they tried to change the pace up in that round for the first time yet. They run through that smoke, they barrel up ramp, and the moment they do, they're met with harsh resistance. Keto's gone aggressive in through B. Big have all the information at this point in time. Twist is holding for this flank, but Keto doesn't look like he's gonna budge much more than this. Yeah, Rez smartly moves back after he takes damage as well, so he avoids the grenade that would have ended his live Keto trading, sees the AWP as well, and NIP turning back round to B. No one's there just yet. Tapson is sneaking through. Again, you can't hear the fast footsteps from mid, so he knows they're not running up towards B, at least just yet. And NIP, you can see how wary they are of aggressive CT players. I don't blame them. Big have been all over the place. Every flank available, Searson and Keto have been taking them on these B pushes. 
Still got Hampus waiting around A. He's got full util. He can sell a bit of a fake here if they want and send the other two into B. There's going to be a plant available, assuming Tapson doesn't completely mow them down. Here are the grenades. Big with two still sat on A. Searson's looking for information, though, and if he gets this kill, he will be able to call for that B rotation. It's looking pretty clear. Hampus is past him. That could be misinformation. Zantaris is patient, but Hampus is going to get the kill, and now the B play comes through. Oh, this Molly could end Rez's whole oh, career. Dear. Oh, oh no, he burns. Oh. He burns. And now it's just Nork with the AWP. A 1v2. It's not impossible. And he's looking for this kill onto Tabson, playing around the oh, smoke. No. But Tabson's already got wide, and he'll lock it in. Nine for big, zero for NIP. And a very, very rough start for the Swedes. Big are looking so damn confident right now. You could just, I mean, it, it must feel rough, man. It must feel real yeah. rough. Like... This is not this is not what you wanted by any stretch of the imagination. Even in these rounds where like you're getting it close and you're getting some kills that maybe should lead to a bit more than they are, they're just not able to find anything. Double Orb is back for big as well, most importantly. We've been seeing that on Keto when he solo anchors the B bomb site. So NIP, they want nothing to do with B in this time. They're gonna run back up A. I like the pace. Again, Vertigo's so commonly gonna see these A plays, but there is a reason for that, even if NIP aren't showing us. Even if they are unsuccessful, it's more bigs doing than theirs. Uh, Resmoke back in, Tizian playing close. It doesn't pop in time, so he, he is going to get overwhelmed. And Torres, nice transfer to two. Tapson swings out with a flashbang. Searson setting him up from the CT spawn. And uh, now it's all on twist. Again, like, it's all I've been talking about, but this utility from Big. Everything they're throwing has purpose. Everything they're throwing has intent. And they're finding so much value from the flashes as well. 10-0. Boy, oh boy. When I spoke to Searson last week, he was talking about the nade, the utility usage. And actually, for him, we all know he's amazing with a scout, but he actually feels quite vulnerable when it comes to the nade usage. He feels like it's something he really needs to work on. It doesn't seem like he's having any problems today. Yeah, it's working out. He, every flash assist, it's Searson's name in the kill feed. So, you know, you're going to take that if you're big every day of the week. Mid hasn't really been a focal point of this T side either for NIP. So Searson's very free to just throw utility from mid over that CT spawn. Oh, Zantares, that is a cheesy angle. And he's going to get oh. so much damage. The flash is good, but he just holds mouse one and takes down Rez. 0 oh, and 11, poor guy. And it gets worse by the second. Right then, so let's start. Let's start thinking about map two. I think. Oh. <laughs> Nuke obviously coming up after this one. NIP, they just they can't seem to catch a break. This is brutal. And what a recovery from Big Right losing to Sprout on day one had us a little bit worried. But then you know Sprout, they they said that they expected that. Fabin did in an interview with HLTV said that you know in those domestic matchups things often get a little bit little bit tricky, a little bit uh, goofy. And he said he thought they were going to take it over them. I like this boost. It's really good. Not only can you get a headshot angle, but you can jump up as Plopsky's done. Unfortunately, there's no one on the site. Bigger running double orb, holding passive from spawn. Oh, trying to sneak across. It's Plopsky. Now the smoke blooms. I would have given them that little veil of security they were looking for. Hampus. Oh, no, oh, not, not another molly kill. Not another molly kill. Oh, not oh, again. I see it. It burns him out. Man, this is brutal. Nork's gonna get the leg, but that's about it for him. And crossing into the, oh, it's Searson getting dropped. All right, Nork, one. He needs the ace in a 1v5 though to keep the dream alive. NIP getting their first round. The odds very much stacked against him. Big, they don't want to overplay their hand, but there it is, Zantares taking the peek in. I actually, no, to be fair, I said they don't want to overplay their hand. I love the way they deal with that, right? You don't even give them the spacing. Don't even give yeah. them the respect to play a 1v5 out. They just rush him down the moment he taps that bomb. Tack timeout for NIP, but I don't really know. And it's triple up, by the way, for the side of big. They, they picked up the one from Nork's body, so they're running... The old three cannon buy. Yeah, we've seen more examples of that that you're talking about, Harry, with not giving the space in that two-on-one where Twist was coming up the A ramp and Bigger in Elevator. They just double swing him. Searson wins it with the USP, trades his teammate out. Like, obviously it's risky, but yeah, Bigger feeling confident. Why not? And I'm seeing a lot of value as to why Big aren't playing inside of B with man advantages. They go, oh, you want the site? You want a plant? Go ahead. We'll just molly default. And in both instances of that happening, it's been the low HP player 
as it often is, it makes sense to have your low player plant, but Big's utility is just counteracting that every single time. Yeah, it's also great as well, because like the moment you don't see anyone in the site, you know that they are going to be playing these passive positions. So you've got to use any utility you were hoping to save in the post plant just to get you in. But it's a fast mid rush this time from NIP, a real change of pace, not something that Big have encountered yet. Tabson dropping the molly, they run through it. Keto trying to stay alive, Ooh. but he does get bested. Now the rotations come in and Twist realizes he is in a bad spot, gets taken out, bomb dropped, not in a retrievable spot for Hampus, but he has been able to get his hands on an AWP. Now look at that, that's a terrifying sight. Three players all just pouring in. First shot lands, oh, and the Deeg follow up. Hampus in with a chance and he's gonna nail it. Searson hits the deck and NIP, first round on the board. Oh, it took a little bit to get them there, and it's a lot of excitement for just one round. Is that going to make all the difference here? And that's what we're talking about just a minute ago, Harry, when we say, obviously, you know, playing aggressive like that for Big is has a risk. It has a risk, right? They have the bomb down at Jens. Like you said, Hampus can't get it. Big are giving him all the fights, and that's exactly what Hampus wants. In every, uh, uh, every time Big have done that, it's worked out, but finally getting punished, I wonder if that's going to change things moving forward. Uh, worth noting as well, the money is not in the best of spots. Obviously, bigger buying at 11 1. No surprise there, but we're not going to have that double AWP available uh, unless it's, uh, players start to take a hit when it comes to that Kevlar. Unlikely to see so with this utility usage being uh, a focal point of big CT side. Searson, he's got 48. He could just go for the glass cannon. I'd be all for it. 15 and 4. He's looking good. And yeah, Hampus on the AWP, man. When, when we saw uh, NIP on that opening day, he had that second AWP over Twist, who was at one point primary AWP, and now looking like the fourth AWP inside of the team. Um, and Hampus looked really, really good on Inferno uh, on that B bomb site with it, constantly playing solo B, letting his team quad stack, a, uh, quad stack A. So we know he can have these moments with the AWP, and he's just shown us. Someone needs to like help Rez, man. He's really traumatized by that team kill in round two. He hasn't been able to get a kill since, so. Hopefully that changes, because right now NIP are playing this out four on five, it feels like. They try and get players up through ramp early on, but once again, this utility keeps them away. Tabson's been boosted up over here in middle, and that's going to free up Searson on this AWP to be a bit more mobile and go and help out at the A bomb site. Ampus has gotten very, very deep. I like this. He's gotten ahead of the utility and he even spots that AWP in rotation. Now they know he's here. He falls on out and actually concedes all that ground that he gains. But I like that decision, you know, like you don't get the kill from it. You get away with some damage. You know, you forced to rotate at the very, very least. And you don't just offer yourself up as a free, you know, 1v3 here at the B site. So rejoining the rest of his team now. And this bomb still dropped passively all the way back down towards ramp. There's still a chance that NIP switched this up. They will retrieve it and start to tiptoe Plopsky over into this A side of the map. So it's looking like the commitment here. Just relentless grenades from Big, constantly remollying and smoking short. It's why NIP have never been able to get up in this spot. Flashing, Tizian's gonna mow down too. He does get blinded and traded, but he's uh, done his job. Popsky doubling up and flash back in. Tabs and sets Antares up for success. He was never spotted on short after Hampus' aggressive push, getting caught by Searson's AWP. Twist is on a big mid lurk though. He's come in at the right place at the right time. Searson's found Keto trades and it's on Nork in a two on one. Antares just taking the attention as Keto fires off from the CT spawn. NIP just can't catch a break. Room there in looks nice though, doesn't it? <laughs> nice little computers up on the, uh, the wall. You're trying to find some positives, are you, Harry? Yeah, well, you know, it's like at least NIP are being taken care of. Um, they might, they might already be thinking about Nuke at this point in time, man. This is incredibly dominant from Big. And and something else that's so wild to me is that was a low investment. You know, like they put everything into it, but they didn't have a lot of money on the big side. And yet still, as you said, that utility just felt relentless and they didn't even have much to play around. So it's even scarier now in this round when they've got everything they could possibly need. Oh, there's a little boost being employed. Keto holding for it, but the traffic, cone, the traffic cones obscured it. Oh dear, that's a kill for Plopsky and he's gonna keep the momentum up, keep the pace in his favor. The nade combination though in this swing with Tabson leads to his demise. This B site oh, has Molly. fallen though. Molotov gonna rain on in, surely no kills from it today. 
It's actually, it's missed slightly. Goes a little deeper than perhaps they were hoping for. On planted for NIP and a chance in a three on four. Yeah, you can see Tabson jumping to try and find the angle, but the smoke eluded it. The smoke that he threw, so he threw it on the, the molly on the wrong side of the box and it bounced to the left. Doesn't matter, the plant's in, the retake's happening, and Sisson is on this flank as he has been in the past. It's a heavy setup from behind. Are NIP ready for it? They trade one, now they spot another. They're still scared of the CT spawn. More grenades from Big, it's an artillery barrage. Hampus in the clutch, he's seen them both. He's fully blinded, pivoting behind the site. Tizia needs to go now, and Hampus is gonna win another clutch for NIP. It's the only rounds they have. <laughs> Threat giving him the props. Another 3K from Hampus, another B site hold, and it's gonna be NIP salvaging something near the end of this half. Fresh is happy, man. He's like, this is why we bought Hampus in. Well, this isn't actually why we bought Hampus in, but hell yeah, you know, I'll take it. He's, he's delivering in these clutches. It does worry me somewhat, right? That like, it feels like Hampus is having to do a lot of the heavy lifting right now. You need to see a bit more from guys like Nork, from guys like Plopsky, someone that we always, uh, yeah, well, you know, Rez is the obvious choice there <laughs> as well. Aggression from Zantares here in this, uh, this force buy at round 15 from Big. My goodness, that is brutal. Plopsky and Rez both tagged up. Rez down at ramp over here on A. Plopsky at the stairs on B, but Tabson gets caught with a nade out. Betrayed by trying to get that nade in to find Plopsky into this four on four. Searson does have the scout and he's pretty, pretty darn scary with it. So don't count him out just yet, especially with Zantares playing close. If Searson gets a tag, Zantares can swing on out and do the damage. It's going to be like a little bait and switch, you know? If you're not a big Vertigo th fan, think about like overpass long, right? With like how an AWP can play back in the site and then you have a player tucked close to uh, to swing on out and do the damage once the attention's been taken away. Then IP, they're not content. They're, they're not looking for A ramp rather. They want to go for this B play once again. They've had success here. The issue is with this is even if Searson backs up, but Santaris knows that no one's pushing up A. Hey, Keto, nice discipline, goes back in, but does get caught doing some damage to Rez on four, finding his first kill, going positive for now. Tizian, he's managed to creep his way out behind the gens. The molly's gonna land behind him. He gets flashed in for aggressive, but nothing found. And even the flank locked down, it's Searson in a one on three. For the last round of the half, NIP might finally be salvaging a three-round half. It's better than nothing, but let's see if Searson can put a stop to it. Oh, yeah, scout, not good there. Twist gonna find it. It's three for NIP, it's 12 for big. And this might be a pretty quick vertigo. That doesn't mean that you wanna miss this second half though. There's still it yet to come, as well as even more matchups in this best of three series. So stick around, we'll be back after the break.
It is the notorious B.I.G. in the server at this point, Hugo, taking on N.I.P. and they are at quite the lead right now, 12-3 up. As big, they are in the driver's seat to say the very, very least. And N.I.P., man, they're not even, they're not even the car yet. Strapped to the roof, maybe. They don't want to be here. They're getting dragged along. And yeah, bigger in full control of this map. A couple of nice clutches from Hampus and N.I.P. win the last round of the half. Maybe that can motivate them moving forward. Got the kit on twist. We've got some grenades on Tizian. Big are walking out mid, and there's no one here to stop them. Hampus has just peeled away to play from the scaffolding, but that's fine. Holding off for the time being. So utility is here in middle. There's going to be a boost as well, but Hampus will be able to spot this and fall off appropriately. Where did Big go from here? They've got Zantara's below B, so that seems to be the game plan. There's the double peak from the boost and now they get out into middle. This is where we look towards Plopski to try and do some damage and they're already up and past him. Twist, back in the site, behind the pillar. Does get dealt with now. Bomb looking to get in. Plopski still holding on here at nice. ramp and actually gonna make a good case of it. Does deal with another. Has to try and get the reload <laughs> off and that there is always a problem with the CZ. He's assembling it but couldn't follow, follow the instructions. Tizian. Out with Keto, 1v3, now turn 1v2, and there's the follow-up. Just Rez left, and Keto's hungry for it, looking for the kill. Rez falling back, giving him the respect. Taps the bomb, tries to bait the peek, and Rez is going to start to take a peek on in. Keto, Ooh, okay. oh, is he playing a long game here? He's going around the world, jet set, and trying to win this 1v1. Keto. With the sneak, Rez hasn't seen anything yet. He hasn't heard anything that would give this up. And no. Keto, are you going to go up the ladder into mid and try and wrap around? You're very low on time. This is ballsy from Keto. Surely at this point, he's playing for the kill and nothing else, right? You've got to start running at some point, and that's it for Keto. He comes barreling up through mid. Rez has heard it. Uh, oh, dear. It was, uh, you know, like, it was a cool idea, but time, obviously, proven to be the problem there. Yeah, I guess he's just gambling that Rez has rotated A, considering he's fallen off. But, like, it's it's not like Rez knew that Keto had even crossed out of B, right? Last Rez saw of him, he, he heard the bomb tap on the site. He never saw Keto go back towards the stairs or, or drop below B. So, yeah, you know, unfortunate for Keto. He realizes that either he commits to B or he has to run up A ramp. And, you know, regardless of Rez's position, he's going to hear that right from CT spawn. So, yeah, nice try from Keto. He gets two out of three, but uh, that's going to be NIP's lifeline. And if, if anything, I'm kind of down with that. I wanted a more competitive game. As fun as it is watching big, you know, dominate. Oh, uh, uh -oh. Ooh, Tabson, he's seen it. He oh, knows. No. He's on the head of his teammate, oh. and he's taken the head off his enemy. Hampus is gone. Searson through the smoke with the scout, and it's getting it's messy here for big up on the A ramp. Four on three. NIP have got to move a player over, but it's not like bigger rushing just yet. This is a horrible spot to be in. Nork's going to try and take a peek down three ramp, and this is either going to make or break the round. It feels like Searson peeking up, gets the information. Now they try and capitalize by dealing with him. Plopski is here close, and so they do have fallback plans in place. Uh -oh. But Tabson, my goodness, these Germans and their deagles, it's something special indeed. Nork up through short, has dealt with Tabson, but still finds himself locked in. Oh, yes. big, they are running away. Ha, ha, ha. We have plenty of time this time around. Nork looking for a kill through the smoke that just won't present itself. Keto gets into B. Tizian was trying to shut down this wrap, trying to cut down the rotation before it even arrives. 
Oh, so aware that Tizian is still waiting around. Now just has one left to deal with. It's easier said than done, however. Has no idea where Keto is, and he's going to find the kill. It's 13 for Big as the four spy goes their way. I love that. The immediate call. Cool, just they, they spot him on short. It's a great position, don't get me wrong, but the second he gets that kill onto Tabson, Big just run right towards B. Keto plays it perfectly, getting, getting aggressive at the post plant and, you know, just cutting off the rotate. Nothing that he can do about it. It's going to be a big up to 13, winning a force by in the second round of the half. No bomb plant, no need. They'll get it done with the Deegs. And now NIP are holding some of their own, but that's not where they want to be at the scoreline. Popsky holding on to this stairwell. Flash, or Molly rather, actually going out towards the stairs, cutting off aggressive CT players. Not that there are any. Plopsky spots them, and he falls off a little bit. The bomb has yet to be seen, and so NIP don't want to throw bodies at the problem just yet. Very methodical utility from Big as well, clearing out every possible close position where these pistols are dangerous. That's the third Molotov into this B bomb site. Penny should start to drop for NIP. They need to move someone over. Yeah, Popsky back behind the pillar. Flashed off the angle, trying to make this Deeg work for him and does deal with Keto. Looking for a follow-up. Plopsky, another before he's dealt with. So Tara's wrapping in through mid, lays him to rest. And now for the remaining three for NIP, they rotate in. Three on three in the retake. Scout on Nork flashes for Hampus. Ooh, dear. Oh. Tabson trying to take a fight. He might... Oh, Zataris, come on, don't... I was going to say, that That scared me a bit. <laughs> Believing in himself more than he believes in Tabson. He takes up this angle. Retrieves that smoke and just completely blocks off any avenue to get in for NIP. He does lose Searson, so it falls onto Zantares. First man down. Oh, but not quite the follow-up. Rez is going to keep this in the pocket of NIP. Defuse comes on through, and it's five on the board now for the Swedes as they respond with a bit of a force buy of their own. We usually see uh, common A takes on this map with the smokes landing on, on both sides of the bomb site to cut off a CT and elevator. Well, Big just did essentially the same thing, but on B, they smoke either side of the gen, set smoke from the bottom of stairs, and completely cut NIP out of the round. You can see Rez does manage to jump up on the side to get a view over it. But I like the idea there for Big. I like the execute as, uh, you know, the new NIP weren't close. They cut them off with the smokes, and anyone in the site is just going to get overwhelmed by the, uh, the T's pushing them down. Big force right back in. They know how close that round came, and the NIP are yet to build an economy. And with such a round lead, you may as well capitalize on that, especially when you got Searson, who is just isn't missing a shot on this A ramp. Another smoke headshot, as he just did before. The spray in mid is a miss. Twist dead to Tizian. And now five on three for Big. They're just going to continue to push. Tabson caught on a jump. And so Hampus keeps things e uh, not even, but under wraps for now. As big fall away from middle, they can just group up and hit a site, and A seems to be that decision in mind. Right, Rez, he had a very, very quiet first half. Here now at short, he is the man who has to make all the difference, all the pressure on him. Because if this round eludes NIP, they're back on with a force. So Tarez and the rest of the gang, they've creeped up and passed him, but Rez, he might have just caught a perfect timing. He hears the utility. Down goes Searson. Follow up for nice. Rez, and all three in his pocket. Tizian now, all alone, losing his teammates, trying to get this trade, and Rez has just fallen back, taking a bit more of a passive lie. Tizian will spot him. But a 1v2 still required. Odds stacked against him now as he moves up through ramp. He's going to go high to try and clear out short side. Plopski on rotation. First kill for Tizian. And now down to the 1v1. Moving in, it's Plopski trying to deny this bomb plant. But Tizian's oh. going to hold his ground. It's 14 for big. One HP left for Tizian. And four in the round. That Molotov is so smart as well. It forces the short player out into the open. It means if anyone's hiding on A, waiting for that bomb plant, they have to fight. They have to go out wide. And Tizian's able to take him down before the bomb plant comes in. Clean Cleaning up Plopsky, aggressive as well. That's just a masterfully, uh, masterfully played round from Tizian. Big 
This is looking like such a great map for them. I can't wait to continue watching them play it throughout this tournament. Uh, again, that's assuming they win this series, but right now they are on the track to take NIP's map pick away from them. 14 to five, Twist getting spammed. Searson, a taste of his own medicine perhaps as Nork fires back with the scout. I would not want to be taking this fight if I'm NIP considering the consistency the big have won this duel. And the raw Searson, he's going back for more with the big green. Not going to collect any scalps just yet. NIP concede the position. They go back into the site. Hampus is going to be playing on the sandbags, and this boost is good as well. Rez, he can duck and wait for the time to strike. He doesn't have to hold this the entire time. And so once Hampus draws in their attention, it can be Rez's prerogative to peak. One thing I'm not loving here, right, is you think about Big's utility. It's been perfect. I feel like there's no way they don't not check the sandbags here. And Hampus has all the utility for NIP. Ooh. That could prove to... Oh, oh okay. no, Tizian! Sure. Just pre-firing the boost. There's the follow-up onto Rez. Hampus, it really is all on him. But on the upside, they found two kills in A. They're not even thinking about the sandbags. Ooh. No one's looking at it. So Hampus, this round could be in his hands. Oh, oh, first no. kill on a Tizian. Looking for the follow-up, but that nade will seal his fate. And that's all the utility gone. Plopski in with one more. But is that going to be enough? As now that bomb gets tapped, tries to bait these peaks. Nothing comes through just yet. Wapski here, Deagle in hand. Tabson still inside of the site, just looking to win a fight straight up. Doesn't present itself just yet. Wapski now in the 1v3. My goodness, he's lost everyone. And, oh, he shrunk himself down. He's trying to hide. But hiding is not the way to steal this round off of Big. They just double face him. They just swing into the fight and Big, they reach map point. It's just so methodical, man. Once that spam comes through onto the boosting player, Zantara just holds because he knows off of that kill, there's going to be another guy coming short side or going back to the site. He kills him immediately. And for Hampus, right, you can you can easily look at that and go, well, why did why did he just try and spam in the back? Why did he only try and take one kill? He doesn't know the big aren't considering him. It's common for a player to walk up, but more to wait and watch the sandbags. In this instance, no one was, but that's not uh, that's not information Hampus has, and so he tries his best. But you know, as soon as you don't get the one league on the first player you're already burning your ammo and giving away your position wasting valuable time and uh, just add it add it to the tally another one for Searson almost feels expected at this point for him to get a kill above this smoke on the A site a big 15 to 5 on NIP's map pick four kills away from sending us forward to nuke Oh. And with how it's looking, we might get there here and now. Five on three for Big, only up against Pistols to begin with. This should have been their round, and they look to make it that exactly. Zatara is lining up this short Molotov. That's not going to force Nork into a fight, but it does get him off the angle. I would be so paranoid standing here because yeah. these spams have been so good from Big. Luckily enough, Nork is going to remain unchecked for now. Smoke goes down. That's actually thrown by NIP for Nork to try and play behind. All three players here for NIP, but no damage being done. In fact, it's all coming in the other way. And big, they've locked down the A site. It's all on Rez and Keto hounding him down, gets the kill. 16 for big, a dominant victory here on Vertigo, the map pick of NIP. They are poised, moving forward onto Nuke to try and get this done in two. You're gonna have to join us after a quick break to see if they can. You don't wanna miss the big boys.
Welcome back to ESL One Cologne. We're one map into Big versus NIP, and Big just burnt NIP off Vertigo. But are they going to fire them from the tournament, gentlemen? What an absolute masterclass in how all you need really is a Molotov and Sisson on the scout, Hugo. Yeah, that was incredible for Big. They did over a thousand utility damage in that map alone. So that that's huge. I mean, we've got a we got a huge fan of them here in Harry Russell. Yeah, I figured, you know, give some love to the big fans. So I've got one here with me on the desk. Sorry, I'm just going go. to take this while I get it. You really, talk yeah, about yeah, yeah. Go important. nuts, Hugo, man. Take it away. I'm just fanning down Frankie. Yeah, I, Big looked really good, man. Obviously, NIP, not the start they wanted here. They they actually had a really promising start to the tournament against OG, taking them to three overtimes, three maps, competitive series. But this was not competitive. Well, the only light uh, in the dark was Hampus, it felt like, right? He won a couple of clutches with a couple of 3Ks on that B bomb site, picking up NIP three rounds near the end of the half. They win a pistol. You think suddenly maybe they're, uh, they'll be able to pull things back and Big immediately engage in those forced by wars that they eventually win and close it out with three in a row. Well, NIP, they've had a nerve-wracking start to the tournament and it could turn into a nightmare on this next map. But when I caught up with Hampus, their in-game leader last week, they seemed pretty confident about their chances. So let's find out what he had to say. I'm joined by Hampus, the IGL of NIP. And you're not so new to the team anymore, Hampus. You've been there for a few months. So what are the biggest changes you've made to the way that NIP plays? Uh, I think the biggest changes, like uh, right now, we, we we swap some roles. Like in the beginning, we, we I just, I took Lecros positions and like yeah, we just play the same. But now, we're like especially after the break, like we've changed uh, like almost every role and we changed some positions and like yeah like we just we put knock on the main op now so i think uh, that's gonna be huge like it's a huge change and uh, yeah it's it's mainly that 
How did the team take that decision? Because Twitter has been primary opera for most of his career. Yeah, I think uh, the, like the team, we, we all took it good. Like we were all on the same page with the decision because we, I, oh, before the break, we, we had uh, uh, like two tough losses against North and Godsent. And then we talked like what we wanted to do and uh, Twist, Twist was actually very happy to like let go of the op and Nark was super happy to get it. So it's, it's a win-win for everyone. And you played with some of these teammates on previous teams. So how do you find being reunited with them under such a legendary org? Yeah, it's amazing. Like I, I just played a bit with Dress. I, I was standing in uh, in China in Epsilon, some like to 2017, I think. And like just playing with Dress again is like super fun because it's so like he's he's so like mechanically skilled. It's like it's it's just a joy to spectate him. And then playing with Nock again the and side twist again like it's as well like it's just so super nice and then i've known plopski like personally for a few years as well but we never played in the same team and just getting to play with all like there's they are all very like close friends and i i really enjoy it like it's it's super nice and and Jonas, your ceo he described you as a natural igl what do you think he means by that I think like the, I I just i feel like the, i'm just a natural leader like in every aspect like like whatever it is, like I just I take charge pretty much. I think. And you reintroduced us two to the map pool. I'm um, I'm excited to to see how you guys have reinvented yourselves on that map. What was the decision behind changing how you play that map and and reintroducing it? Uh, I think it was a threat decision to start playing it again, and I was super down with it. Like because we have like especially like when we swap the op from with the uh, knock and twist like we have two very strong offers and those two is a very nice double op map especially on the city side so like i just think like we have the we really do have the skill and like we yeah we have just have the players to be good on that map so i think it's, it's like it should be a perfect map for us we're speaking just before you head off to a boot camp have you got any aims for your time away with the team yeah, like uh, we're going to the boot camp and playing Cologne, and I think like um, at least my goal is to to get top four. And I think it's a, uh, I think like from the practices we played now, we have played a few weeks. I, I think top four is a legit goal. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for talking to me, Hampers. Have fun at your boot camp. I hope it's a productive one, and we'll see you at ESL One Cologne. Thank you. biggest CSGO fan? Then look out for the DHL Drop Quiz and show off your incredible CSGO knowledge. Reply with the right answer in Twitch chat and track your position on our live leaderboard. Will you make it to the top and win 1,000 euro in prizes? Hashtag Gamers Unite. Intel Gamer Days is on now. Whether you're looking to buy or build, now is a great time to upgrade. Get limited time offers and giveaways from top names in PC gaming. Unleash elite gaming performance with systems featuring new 10th gen Intel Core processors and bring Marvel's Avengers to life with in-game optimizations for a mightier PC experience. Act now. Intel Gamer Days is only here for a limited time. Start your esports career now at play.eslgaming.com.
If you want to know what you're good at, and, well, also, what you suck at, check out csgohub.com. Coming! Everybody loves an underdog. Who needs to be liked? Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel. Victory in a can. SL1 Cologne Online is brought to you in part by Intel, Mountain Dew Game Fuel, DHL, and GG Bet. ESL One Cologne, and before the break, big burnt and blew away the competition. And NIP off of Vertigo's tower block, and now they're ready to smoke away the boys on Nuke Harry. Do you think it's going to be another runaway success? I think it certainly could be, right? Like, that's kind of the reality we might be dealing with here. And IP, they, they didn't really give us much to go off of there. And Big look like they're in great form. They're looking fantastic. The nades are good. The guys that we need showing up are showing up. And, and you know, nothing feels like it's going wrong right now. So I'm hard pressed to see a world in which NIP come back. But I would like to believe that these Swedes have got it in them. Especially because in that interview with you, Frankie Ampus is saying they want to be top four here. Well, that ain't happening if you go out to big on the third day. So pistol round underway, twist here, try to hold down ramp, and already he's lost control. This B site has fallen into big hands. 
that Hampus interview makes me a little bit sad with how you know chipper and happy he was and now where they are. A retake here for NIP on the B-bomb site. Propsky, oh, he's caught one in the corner. Taps has gone down. He's going to get traded, leaving a Nip a man down. No kick currently. A smoke on Nork, but he needs his kill, and he's lost his life. It's twist on nine in a one on three. And Big are saying nine to NIP. It's not your round. It's going to be a Big with a pistol. Just about how much damage Twist can do coming back in through the ramp room. Any money would be nice here at this point. But that's not the one a sentence Twist wants to hear. It's Big finding their first. If anyone has any better Big jokes than I have, which is the one, which is, you know, like Big Fan, <laughs> then let me know because, God, even I'm getting bored of it now, Hugo. I don't believe that for a second. I'm not actually. The longer I keep going with it, the funnier it gets to me, which, you know, is a really bad thing. Uh, so let's see, NIP, they're, uh, they're they're taking a force by here in the second round. A big, they are not messing about, mate. They are rushing into ramp. There's no one even watching it. NIP, they, you've already lost the same place as last time, and now they go down into this B site. Now, admittedly, Hampus is already here, and the rotations are now coming through because he gets all this information. Do be sure to bear in mind that a little Ooh, sneaky... Like oh, hello. Oh. Left. Oh, a bit left. Uh, Tabs, no, not Tabs. Keto, rather, is waiting in the most goblin-esque position you've ever seen. He's holding down ramp, just waiting for these players to rotate in on the retake. And so if he shuts down two, like he should be able to, this round is already over. Ooh. However, he gets bested. They were aware that he was there. They clear it out. And now this round can oh fall apart. The Molotov going to burn down Plopski to one point of health along with Rez. But it's only Zatares and Tabson left standing. Tabson's got to do it all. This was 1v4 when this clutch began. And he will get put in the ground big. They have this round slip by the wayside. NIP, they got it's it. close. It's very close. And they don't <sighs> got it, Hugo. They don't got no. it. I feel like you need to stop predicting bombs, Hugo V. Byron, man. I used to be so good. I used peaked. To be, you I'm know? washed up, Harry. It's nuke. It always gets me. That was, I mean, the only reason I'm saying that is because Nork's already on the bomb before, you know, uh, Tabson's even uh, killed as well. He, stuck, he was sticking it from a while before, so... That is, that is a heartbreaking round for NIP. I will say they took some time to come out through that ramp room. You were talking about Keto in the corner there. He had a great position. And even though he gets nothing done, NIP was so aware, so hesitant, that I guess that delays them to a millisecond too late. But yeah, I'm going to stop calling bomb plants because I've messed up two on Nuke this tournament. And that's unlike me. And I'm unhappy with that one. But big... They'll be cheering. They'll be laughing all the way to the bank. NIP have made a withdrawal. They've pulled a force buy into this round, and Hampus turns around as Tizian checks it. That's unfortunate. Big. They're going to drop more through the vent. Sis and holding onto the ladder as well. Won't let Propsky follow him down. Twist doing one. And the bomb planting here for Big. Good grenades. But they're trapped at the back of the site. They've got to take fights. Tabson will succeed in his, leaving Rez and Nork in a retake. Wow. Well. Rez looking like already he wants to go hold on to the AK and Nork's not going to be able to find much now that he's spotted so big. They get this one locked in. They go 3-0 and up. They deal with the force back from NIP. Obviously putting everything into this round because they, they, they survive in that last one with a player still up. They take down everyone on big. They've got the chance to reset this T-side squad now and, and that doesn't happen. And so this is where like that, that pendulum is now of, of kind of the momentum of this game has swung back the other way and suddenly it's NIP with no money Essentially, you know, you're going to get like these first kind of four rounds just slipping by you. Saving that Famous, okay, no, they actually can buy now, right? You, you drop a gun over on Rez, you drop a gun over from Nork, but I don't know if they're going to, because I feel like the longer you keep up with these kind of terrible buys, the further big are going to steamroll ahead. So I actually like this decision to partially invest, right? You're just cutting your losses. You're not going to go five, six rounds in before you have that full buy assembled. No, you're looking for it in the following round. I still likely, likely going to leave big 4-0 up. Assuming NIP can upset here, so they are in a great position. Twist getting aggressive on the ramp side. Smoke is down. No one's even watching it from radio. They're playing very safe inside of the lobby. Big might want to go back towards his door position. They got so many players down vents in the last. And especially when you know your opponents don't have you know, good money, i.e. utility and rifles, that vent uh, drop becomes a whole lot more tantalizing. No smoke spam available. 
Plopsky with a CZ, not the best gun for, for stopping event dive, for example. He's playing above the hut. Big. I like the patience. Again, they don't know what NIP are bringing into this round, right? They can make an assumption. They know there were guns saved, but what have these remaining players done? It's going to start to seem more clear as big spot pistols. Hampus won't be giving away any info, though, tucked in the garage. Technically allowing big to cross secret if they want, but Nork is still keeping an eye on things outside. Smoke's going to come down late from spawn. These are deeper smokes as well. He's going to land towards the main side, allowing Big to take garage if they want, battle up against Hampus, or just cross secret towards B. Lots of opportunity, lots of options available. Three smokes landing. Tapson gets spotted, but he does get down successfully. The twist is still close, but not for long. Yeah, and this round Perry are now taken. Once again, it's the drop into B. Now, through the vents, there are two players hot on the heels of Tabs, and he gets spotted there by Plopsky. And Rez has just given up the aim of the game, being down in decon. Tabs, and oh, pressure from everywhere, oh. and he just makes it look too easy, doesn't he? Three kills in a matter of seconds, and now Nork all alone, wondering what went wrong in this round. And the answer, just about everything. He's dealt with the first man, but there's the trade from Tabs, and he's feeling it right now. It's 4-0 for Big. One of the things I will say as well is that I absolutely loved Hizian on this map. Like, he's, he's, he's a master of this hut and door area. Like, so damn good at it. So keep your eye on that. Especially some of the stuff that, like, him and Zantara's do over here towards this area, T side. Uh, Mahone TV actually has a really, really good video on that. You know, breaking down Tizian, Squeaky, and Hut plays. So that's something to check out if you want to be on the same page as the big boys. Yeah, maybe NIP need a link, Harry. Right <laughs> I'll now. link that one over. Right, guys? Yeah. Um, Maybe should have done this before the game, but... Well, let's see what they've got now to show, right? Keep in mind that all these rounds have been forces or half buys for NIP. They've now got their first gun round with Nork on the AWP. And, uh, you know, that's a big talking point. When we had Twist primary orping and Lecro back in this team, it was often Nork playing Garage on his own, whether he had the AWP or not, and Twist would t often AWP ramp. Twist is still in that position, but obviously not with that weapon. Nork has taken a deep CT position as Hampus is instead sat in the garage. He doesn't need to fight to his death here. Oh, he's actually in secret, rather. So at least stopping a B play. Nork can communicate players crossing towards main. Oh, that door opens inward because the smoke lands in front. But it's going to get blown off regardless. Big boosting above a smoke on ramp. They love to do this. There's no smoke down, actually. Searson's just looking really low down, trying to find Twist. Twist is just giving him a jiggle, not fully exposing himself, not taking the risk, not yet at least. And so Big will begin to move in under the assumption they have more room than they do. And now they actually do. Twist has fallen to B, Nork's come to replace, and he's hit a shot and will fall off. Low HP, no need to hang around there forever. Big haven't exactly got an open path to the B site thanks to Twist's position. And they also don't have a whole lot of time. It's not looking like a B play. The bomb is in door. Unless that's going down the vent, Big might have to look at this A bomb site later on. Yeah, Tabson out into A, deals with the first map, but Plopsky does get one for his troubles. Rez now following up. Searson not able to overcome him with the AWP. Keto up in heaven is the only hope, and there's one up the vent, but not able to find it. It's going to slip by the wayside. NIP get their first on the board. And that's a positive start for Rez, right? He went, what, 0-14, 0-15, maybe even the previous, uh, the previous map. Literally a double agent. Yeah, wow. So starting off this map strong, getting a 3K in the first gun round, that's going to be great for his mentality. And hopefully we won't have any sleepers here for NIP. For those who are not initiated, this is an elimination match in the lower bracket of Group A. So a lot of pressure on right now. Chance of being removed from the tournament on day three. Big don't want that to happen in their home country, despite this being online. NIP... Wow, they, uh, I guess beggars cannot be choosers. Tapson, oh dear, his head's gonna stick out. Hampa sees him above the smoke. NIP with a man advantage, crucially. Big grouping towards ramp, nice little grenade coming through for Twist. He fell off in the previous round, but the orb this time is a bit further away. It's up in the A site, so it won't be able to assist him from hell, giving Big even more room if they want to wrap. Norks found himself a kill with that AWP into the lobby. And big, they're doing exactly what they can. They know this AWP isn't here. They've just seen it on A, so they're going to take the control towards Hell and see where they can go from here. 
Popsky must be so nervous. You know, Ramp has gone completely quiet. You know they can come from heaven. Searson, oh, oh no, that's going to give up the aim of the game, but Plopsky does recover and follows up with another. Keto now ascending into the heavens slowly but surely, and hopefully that's just in the, uh, the sense that he can still bring this one back down to earth. It's a kill onto Plopsky. There's Nork with the trade though, and he's going to keep an IP in this one. A second round on the board for the Swedes as now the money runs out for big. This is a very good chance for NIP to kind of springboard themselves into a better situation here. Yeah, finally breaking Big's money as well. Never thought I'd say that considering how the previous game went and even after NIP won their pistol round in the CT side, Big four sport got a win, NIP did the same and then Big finally closed it out with three in a row off another force buy. So. Yeah, we are going to be seeing big eco this one for a change. A welcome change, at least for the Swedes. Big tack pause before they get into things, though. And it's not like they can really afford much here in terms of utility. You've got two players who can buy up a smoke without putting their money in a compromised position below that 2K mark that you really want, considering the loss bonus is not maxed out by any means. But big, will they buy anything or will they just accept the likelihood that this round is probably a throwaway? More likely than not by the looks of things. We've got a deagle. Yeah, we got a couple. And I always get scared, man. I don't know. I just I think about like the days when you'd have like German teams, deegs on cash. Back then, that was a terrifying sight indeed. Let's see if they can uh Live up to the hype with Deagles on Nuke. They do get a man down through the uh, the secret tunnel, and he's now rerouting his way down in towards B. Now, Twist isn't going to be ready for this, surely. Looked like uh, Hampus was under the illusion that Tabson had wrapped back in towards Garage, and he's very, very paranoid about that. So we're going to try and time the breaking of the glass. You can see Twist was like a bit confused, but he, he works it out, right? You're not just going to be breaking the glass for no reason. And he's only got one place to worry about, which is that B site. So this one, you know, NIP, they've done well at just mitigating danger, dealing with this piece by piece, breaking down big, now just Keto and Zantara's left up, but an AK retreat. Keto with a Ooh. freebie on Therese, who didn't seem aware that this man was outside. Zantara's falls, and now for Keto, they know where he is. They cross Plopsky back into the garage. Nork's holding close, and he's got that one dead to right. So NIP, a third on the board. Yeah, Zantara's is shooting out that windows above uh, above A at the same time. But, you know, that, that works typically when you don't have a lower player. But if you physically have someone on the B-bomb site, regardless of those windows breaking on A, you can hear the ones next to you as well. So that's uh, not going to work wonders for big. And it all comes off the back that, okay, yes, Hampus plays passive in Garage. That's what we're seeing so far. He's usually waiting on the AWP support, but he hears tabs and run down below. So it, it's no question to NIP how deep big have gotten. And they're going to take another eco, a half by a fast one as well, out into the A site, door blown off. And Plopsky is going to be taking names here on top of the silo, pistols out. Now, Jeweling Zantara is only Tizian and Sis and left there's just running through smokes. Nothing to lose, everything to gain. And right now it's Sis and falling last. And IP equal up four to four. And it's good to see a back and, well, not even a back and forth, but big, you know, going up four and oh, and NIP coming back in with some rounds of their own. So not going down without a fight here at ESO One Cologne. But this is going to be the true test. Big back with guns. Man, that's some high brightness on the monitor. I feel like I'm going a lot blind just from looking at it. Tizian over here at the door, and this man is very, very good in this position. He's going to get out fast. Tabson coming in a little bit late. Tizian now dealing with the man on hot and following up onto Plopsky. They lose in Tarez. In the meantime, that's over towards outside. He gets caught trying to come through main. Tizian still holding down this side of the map, but with two players in heaven and one in main, this isn't information that Big are privy to. And so Searson is just holding on to the lobby. 
The only man they know about is Hampus back Ooh. in main. It's the double heaven peak that blindsides Tizian, but he's done well. He's got three in this round. Searson now has to finish the job that Tizian so graciously started. And first and foremost, looking for the outside kill. Oh, Ooh. looking for that follow up as well. But Nork is going to beat him to the punchline. Five for NIP with one player surviving. It's close. Not quite enough to get it over the line for Big. Yeah, nice try there. I mean, Big, you know, they, they go for the fast A in the round prior with pistols. And so maybe that was almost uh, trying, to, trying to work out where an IP are playing and, and what to look out for in the follow-up round. They had a pause prior to that. So had their game plan under wraps, but just about losing it in the one-on-one. -on -one. And again, more low economy for Big as NIP's bank builds. It's good to see. Windows getting broken. We might see another one of those A executes or even a late one here. Some Molly for Hut Roof on Keto. Bigger going back to set out these deep outside smokes before, throwing three. Trying to work out how much room they can get. Hampus is playing at the back of Garage. We've got an AWP in CT Hell for Nork. And so these smokes are going to cut off both of these positions, considering Big like to throw one into the Garage as well. There's a lot of room here for Big, and they're going to be splitting in through that A main smoke in towards the A site. Actually, no. Consider me wrong. They're actually going ramp rather than lobby. So this outside control is just to get Garage. Great flash for Nork. Hampus doubles down. And Big, they wanted the B bomb site, but they've got to get past Twist. That they do, and the orb immediately rotates in. Yeah, this is where things get tricky now. That Molotov has just bailed them out, right? Nork was able to hold these rotations. And so that Molly forces him away. That gets them into the B site, but their battle is just beginning. Now they've got to get past the rest of NIP. Down here in B, it's Plopsky holding this angle. Keita swinging in. Zantares bests him with the Deagle. Now Hampus, it's his time to shine to try and get this back under what? control. And one by one, the kills are given over to Big. Keto and Zantares. This was two on four when this B-site take started. Nork, they want revenge. He plucked their teammate out of the round just moments ago, oh. and Keto's gonna have it. Now Rez all alone, 1v2, wondering how this round has eluded NIP. He's gotta try and stumble them back to their feet. Creeping in through Decon, door swings open, but Keto holds the line. It's five for big as they get us all tied up here on the back of that partial investment. Wow, those are some serious Zantara's peaks coming out from Keto and Zantara's getting two guns dropped down in the B-bomb site and using them to great effect. Oh, that is a heartbreaking round for NIP, especially considering the fact that, you know, Nork sets Hampus up outside with that flash, finds two kills immediately. They even trade pretty well over on ramp with that AWP, and then Big just went a massive two on four like that. Keeping things competitive, keeping them close, and breaking the five-round streak of the Swedes. Luckily, NIP have bank to fall back on uh, off of the back of those five rounds, so the AWP is still going to be available. Plopsky having a great game right now, 13-8, and eight, 134 ADR. The guy we often look to here over on NIP, the one consistent pillar. And they need him more than ever in this series especially considering this is Big's map pick and they are facing elimination. Outside aggression and Hampus has been spotted trying to run the gauntlet. Has to go back and does get naded, tagged up. On the attempt to leave, Plopsky found in the meantime over here towards the A site. Hampus lining them up and almost a double, but not quite. It still leaves big with the advantage. And this is gonna put pressure on NIP to maybe push and prod the other areas of the map, right? Just to make these sacrifices worthwhile. Nork is now the man stepping up to the plate, but look at Tizzy and this angle is so gross. He's waiting. Searson holding ramp in the meantime. Tizzy and, oh, the timing might not be great for him here, oh. but actually back in with the peak, the molly forces Nork forward. And this leaves Rez hung out to dry at the A site. He does now have Twist moving into heaven. So both players here, but down goes Rez. And at this point, drop down to B for, a, for the big boys. They'll be able to get that planted. And Twist is left in an undoable 1v4. Oh, he sees this and through the smoke. But if I learn anything from that A ramp smoke on Vertigo, I wouldn't want to trifle with this guy. The grenade will do the job instead. And Twist looks to get out alive with the orb. Realizing that maybe this one is a little bit too cut and dry. But they are they are hunting, Harry. They aren't even waiting around. Big have cut him off from every position. Tizian is hitting the timing to perfection. And goodbye, twist. No orb today. 
Big aren't even going to need it. They've got one of their own on Quito. Six to five, back in the lead and breaking the money of NIP. They had a couple of rifle rounds in a row, but that's all Big are going to allow them to take. You can see the stress as well. It's clearly getting to a twist in the rest of NIP because... Ooh, not being able to get away with that AWP is is the one thing they would have had in this round. It's a P250 and four USPs. Big going outside in this one. And IP are not going to be armed well to deal with yard control. That, uh, that sm uh, Molly, rather, is a two for one. Also, it clears out close red. Like anyone glaving that smoke is going to be denied by the Molotov. And also, it means the smoke pops immediately. So Big don't need to cross red and wait for the smokes to bounce, 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 plume. You know, they're just going to immediately appear. Uh, Big can get down towards B very quickly and silently at that. NIP just have no idea. They haven't seen anything. They're stacked up in CT. They send down Twist as like the sacrificial lamb into this B bomb site, and he, he's not in for a very good time, you can imagine. Oh, he does get behind the silo, so he's at least got that going for him, but I'm really like, you know, he's got a P250, what can you hope for here? Uh-oh, now he knows. There's the first kill, looking for a bit more. Door swings wide and the aim punch gets the better of him. That B site now belongs to Big and the rest of NIP. You know, they may as well have a bit of a challenge. They've only got these USPs, so anything they can take away is great. Or they could just float around and try and shut down Big as they look to hold on to these rifles. But either way, it's a seventh round for Big as they continue to storm ahead here on the T side. I really feel for Twist in a map like this with the position he's having to play and the way that Big are playing this T side, right? You mentioned it yourself in, in the... NIP having no info on that outside control. So when Twist is rotating down, he's just rotating down blind. He doesn't know what to expect. He doesn't know if Big have got a lurk in secret or have the entire five-man roster. And so you just kind of got to kind of pick a spot and hope you can trade effectively, hope you can get a one-for-one. One. It's a very difficult spot. And Big, they are really making NIP work for every kill. Seven to five. It continuing to be in control of this game. Three in a row. NIP come back in with guns. <laughs> Snacks. <laughs> I see the resemblance. Uh, better beard. But yeah, not bad. Well, we've had our snacks, but the full main course for Big is outside here in this round. And Hampus, he's looking hungry for it. They've actually gone up and passed him into oh. main. And this A site, it just crumbles. Hampus tries to hold on, but he can't. And so th this round's already over once again. Big are just in full control for Twist and Nork. It's just going to be a save. This is like the, the ebbs and flows of this game have been a very, very weird one, right? It's like... NIP go on that little win streak. They get a few rounds on the tally, and then it feels like the moment Big bounce back, the, the rounds are like one in the opening, 20, 30 seconds. Well, well, yeah, in this instance, in this example, NIP, they set up to deal with exactly what Big have just done, like three rounds in a row, which is this heavy outside control, you know, pushing towards a garage, going to secret. And so what they do is they put Nork down the ramp into B to come and peak secret. Now, obviously, that play is on a timing. If you get rushed outside, if Big go fast, they're going to hit secret as you hit the stairwells of CT. Uh, and so, you know, Nork is going to be late there if he wants to walk it. And as he gets the secret from B, Big are already inside of A main. They're already inside of the site and they're winning all the gunfights. NIP were not set up for that play because every time they come up with a solution to what Big are doing, Big changed the game plan. They changed the strat book and staying very, very fresh. And that's when, you know, having uh, like ha having someone like God B it is so helpful in this team. We've got Toby as well, ex Sprout coach, joined these guys earlier last year. So there's just so many minds inside of this team. And Big are just making all the right calls right now. Yeah, that's what I love about this Big squad, right? They don't just like have their plans and they plan for everything to go right. They have a million different ways to do one thing, you know? And that's what's so great and so annoying in the server when you see teams trying to play against them. Hampus has decided like... We've been giving them a bit too much respect outside, so he's got aggressive with the Deagle, and there's kills waiting here for him. No the Keto way. turns back and checks it, so immediately we're into this four on four. Tizian waiting patiently at the door, might get blindsided by this CZ. Has to be careful, Rez. 
is in like this awkward spot there where he's teetering between the idea of rotating down to B, especially with outside now being a mystery. Tizian does go down. Nork's gone aggressive here into the lobby. And as they as they think this is clear, nice. we needed Nork to hold his ground and just stick around because now they get the info that even more players are just filtering in. Zantares with two. But he needs the 4K, he needs the 1v4. Flash out to try and give him safe passage. Nork though, already on the angle. And NIP, they're gonna get this one over the line with a pretty weak buy. Yeah, they're actually keeping 2K a player. So that's a hugely profitable round, right? They were planning for the worst, but hey, best case scenario, you get out with a, with a couple of guns in the AWP as well. So everything they need, they've got for the last round of the half. And that is a, uh, you know, a breath of fresh air as it were. Nork very confident. I mean, you have to be at this point. You're eliminate your tournament life is on the line. Elimination is looming over. You can't sit back and wait. And Nork 14 and 6 having a great game despite the scoreline. Big, they're going fast and furious. Yeah, Centaurus with the opener. Rez will follow up, but he's not ready for Tizian out through hot. And this A site overrun already. Rotations having to come on through. The utility is great at just denying these uh NIP players are getting into these kind of safe positions, ready for the retake. And that's allowed the bomb plant to come in. Now, bear in mind, Searson is embarking on one hell of a journey. And Whoa. Oh, hello. Hello, Nork. There he is. Down he goes. And Searson almost with the follow-up brings Twist down to eight points of health now. 1v2 required from him. And they know where he is. They've got his name. They've got his number. They know the address. It is a cold caller's worst nightmare. Twist down from heaven. Tries to cover the sound of the drop with the gunshot. Smoke down on the bomb, hoping to bait a peek from Big, but they're not giving him anything. And this round should be impossible. He's got to stick it in the smoke on the bomb. Someone just needs to peek. One bullet's all that's required for Big, and they take this first half with nine rounds to their name. Over in the big camp, you can see probably feeling pretty good after that half of play. Big in the lead, moving into the CT side on their map pick. Can they keep the good times rolling in? Or are NIP gonna bounce back? Join us after a break to find out.
let it go. six at the end of the first half big very much in control of this map this series and nip's tournament life as well as that could be coming to a swift ending in just the next hour or so it's a scary situation to be in for the swedes a team or an org that is synonymous with esl one cologne but maybe not this year uh, they might be the first team to fall what a storyline what a time and big they are in control right now harry yeah, they really are. We've even got the dual Berettas on Tizzy, and so let's keep an eye on that. We've already seen Keto show Ooh. his value with them. In this round, though, immediately the kill is found by Nork over here outside. This is cool. This little bait and switch over towards ramp is very, very interesting. So Zentares gets the attention. He drops down. He goes through the motions like any ramp player would. And then Searson, sneaky little Searson, sat here. There's one. They don't check for him. No one's ever checking this position. And uh, that there is a nice little kill, but Twist still holding on over here in hell. Looking to raise some hell here for the big squad as Twist taps oh. down another. Searson hits the deck, and now it all falls onto Tizzy at Dual Berettas. He's 1v3, but with two guns in his hand, is that going to be enough to help him navigate this clutch? Two players up in heaven, anything but ideal. Hampus over outside as well. The flash goes in, Tizzy and still hit. Oh, no. Tries to catch the timing, and the moment he looks away, Hampus comes in with the peak. So NIP, they get the pistol round under their belts, they get themselves a seventh, they pick up the dual Berettas, and now they're ready to try and Carve a bit of a path here in this second half of play. Yeah, it seems like Big got very hungry in that one after they found those opening kills, right? Tr Keto trading outside, and then as Searson drops one, he sees Plopsky gets to, to hell and gets up the ladder. So him and Zantaris just start to chase, but they don't account for Twist still being tucked hell side. And he pretty much saves that round for NIP. Big knew everything. Big had all the info, but it was simply about getting cut off on their rotate back towards A. Huge opening round for NIP, and they're not done with that. Hampus is going to take down Keto. We've been painting a grim picture, right? And 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 that is off the back of, you know, Big looking so good on Vertigo, but also nine rounds on the T-side of Nuke is impressive as well. Not to say that NIP can't do that more. We know they've been doing a lot of practice here with a new in-game leader. It's just about showing it. And especially about, you know, getting rid of this force buy for Big with, with how every time NIP seemingly get a pistol, Big immediately reset them. So that can't afford to happen here if NIP want to stay in this map. Wasn't Tizian's intention there to fake getting up on top of the hub? But that's the move he's gone with. And he tries to swing wide to deal with Hampus, but instead... Ends up hitting the deck. Now taps a deagle out. Good for one. That's it from him. And this A site now belongs to NIP. Zantares and Searson. Two versus four. And they're already falling back into CT spawn. They're looking to take a little holiday and hold on to these weapons. So it's eight on the board for NIP. They keep four players alive. Slowly but surely, stumbling back to their feet. It's still a long ways to go for this comeback to happen. But it's definitely not, in, uh, not impossible, especially when you think, right, back on Vertigo. We had Hampus delivering clutch after clutch. We had Rez with a very, very quiet game. Now looking a little bit better here on Nuke. Plopsky as well is the real talking point, I think. Usually the man that we look to to be the star of this NIP squad. He was very, very quiet back on Vertigo, but here he's bringing the heat. And so the, the recipe's kind of coming together yeah. for an IP to long this one out. You know, you've got the ingredients there. Now it's about making something with them. Oh, that's a beautiful camera angle. I imagine done by MC. I've got to give the proper credit. He is the guy doing some of these fly-throughs all the way from Australia. Great yeah, we, we have too. a whole, like, worldwide team going yeah. on. We've got Rush observing in the studio. you got Bastian Faber from Denmark. you got Jakey from the UK. And then you got MC from Australia. I love it. We have so many talented observers all working on one broadcast. Yeah, Ben Ezio as well. He's given us all these little stats that we see from time to time uh, at the bottom of the screen that, that appear and sometimes above the spawns as well. So keep your eyes on them. Lots of good information. 
you can learn something too, not just enjoy the Counter-Strike. Right now, big. They're relying on these saved guns and the armor behind it, at least for Santara. Searson's just scooting outside NIP. They're sneaking outside. They're going behind these smokes down towards the lower bomb site. But you can see that there's a heavy rotation. Keto is here, and there are two more lines of defense behind him. He is going to get obliterated. Nork with a quick kill on the MAC 10, and they're going to move in. Grenade for Tapson could do some significant damage, but it's about following up on that damage. And with USPs and P250s, it's still going to be quite difficult for Big to get much further than this. Nice grenade. Will there be any result from it? Will there be any follow-up? They do have a few bodies down here in B, and maybe in the more literal sense than they would like. Santarez falling immediately taps in as well, going to face the same fate. And this round should be nice and clean for NIP. That's exactly what they kind of needed as well. One plant coming on through, and that there is going to be the round decided. Nine on the board for NIP, tying this one up, but the investment looming for big, ready to come in in this follow-up round. That's where things get exciting. That's where we get a real look as to whether or not NIP can, com can complete this comeback and take us to a third. That third obviously being Mirage if we get there. Yeah, so it doesn't really get easier, does it? But uh, we saw NIP go to an overtime game against OG on that map. They had a lot of nice ideas. Nork was very influential with that AWP there as well. In getting them to OT, he certainly slowed down once they hit it, which was a bit of a problem. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a very short pause as Big, unfortunately, is suffering with an internet issue. And this is online CS, so it's kind of essential. So while Big get the PCs back online, we're going to take a look at the teams talking about playing on the internet. Online Counter-Strike, not good. Not good for me, at least. Um, it's quite boring. Well, 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 online CS, yes, uh, I'm gonna say um, upset. Online Counter-Strike, bad. Online CS, yes, wide swinging, yes, yep. Online Counter-Strike, I just think of ping and wide swings. For online CS, probably just NA in general. Everyone's really good online, so. Online CS is super random. Man, that is inconsistency from all the teams. Online CS is shit. <laughs> um, what? Are, online CS, um, Australia. <laughs> Cheaters. <laughs> Pretty fun, but I prefer to play tournaments. Uh, I prefer LAN, but Online CS uh, has to make do right now. Online CS, big. Online Counter-Strike, big. Online Counter-Strike is crazy. Online Counter-Strike for me is kind of inconsistent, but it's al always fun to play online because I think that's where people have the most individual skill. Online CS, uh, trolling screams. I hate Online Counter-Strike. Well, if that doesn't get you excited for some online CS, <laughs> I don't know what will. Just everyone said that online oh, CS, yeah, terrible, mate, uh, awful, yeah, I think shit as well. To quote Taco there, I can't remember if it was him who it said was that. Flamey. Oh, it was Flamey, yeah, well, you know, oh. I mean, yeah, that was great. <laughs> Players we didn't see in that video said big because we were doing like a word association. So I was like, okay, when I say online CS, you say, and yeah, at least three or four players said big. Obviously, we had the wide peaks reference as well. So it felt like a few of the players, Liaz in particular, maybe be losing their patience a little bit with playing online. I hope that the folks at home are having like as much fun as we are and they're not in the same boat as the players where they're like, yeah, now nah, this could all end, this could all end tomorrow and we'd be all right, yeah. No, obviously everyone wants lands to come back. Right? Yeah, I want yeah. lands to come back, man. Like me and you, we've been trying to get to land events for God knows how long. And then finally we're like, we're kind of there. And then it's like, oh, well actually, uh, no, everything's gone online for, for, the, for the duration of this year. Yeah, we all miss lands. We all miss the crowds. We miss the fans. We miss the interactions, you know, but this is what we got for now. And I think it is still delivering in terms of the entertainment. Yeah, I miss the work. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need many sideline reporters when, uh, when you don't have any LAN events. I'm kind of grateful that Stunner has to quarantine. <laughs> That's really terrible to admit to that, isn't it? It's fine. He might be watching this. He might still be dealing with jet lag. If you're okay, if you're watching this, Samanthus, let us know. We haven't heard from you for a while. I'm kind of, I'm kind of worried. It looks a bit like NIP are working their way back into the game. Can they keep up that momentum? We're going to find out very soon because we're about to get back into the game, boys. So 
Get your stools out. <laughs> Turn the lights off. Let's go. Let's hit this one. Yeah, I mean, NIP, I, I really didn't want them to get blown out of the tournament after they show us so much promise against OG on day one. If anything, that, that hypes up OG as well a lot. But uh, yeah, NIP now finding their footing, now finding their form here in the second half of Nuke. Only six CT rounds. Usually feels like not enough. But right now, they are making it interesting. This is it. This is a crucial gun round now to see if they can keep it up. Big have the AWP most notably on Searson as well. So everything in the hand of Big in terms of weaponry. No kit, and NIP are going quick. Yeah, Kito over here. Actually going to get beaten to the punchline there by Searson. And now just waiting patiently. It's death from above. Kito, another one. Rez, oh dear, he's, uh, he, oh, they're pushing, they're going aggressive, and actually uh -oh. that's given him a way to get back in. He's on three, he needs the ace here if he wants to pick this round up. Still very tricky indeed, with Tizian and Searson on the other side. Tizian's going to tuck himself in but behind CT Vent while Searson tries to take this peak, and there it is. He's going to lock the round in for big. I do love how they play like these 1VXs, or at least when it's the other way around. I guess they're the XV1s. Uh, they, they they just rush you down. They don't give you the room to maneuver. And, you know, it can, like, give in, it can give with one hand and take with the other, but it feels like nine times out of ten, they are winning those situations because they're not giving the respect. They're not giving the space for you to work. Uh, in in that kind of clutch scenario. Yeah, I mean, even when you're expecting it, right? Like right there, holding down the door, ready for the peak, and you get crouch peaked by an orb, and you don't even get the chance, especially when you're using a Galil, but what can you do? But, uh, but lose, I guess. This is a rough spot to be in for NIP. A round down, big with the money, NIP with no bomb plant, relying on the funds from the previous three. Interesting the threat's doing most of the talking here in this tech force. Hamster's just sat there chewing his nails, what do you want to do? Yeah, well, you know, we, we know the kind of coach that Threat is. We know the kind of guy that Threat is. Like, he was, he, he's very opinionated. He knows what's going on. And he's been instrumental, not just to, to this NIP's success, but even NIP of old, right? Like, back when the coaching rule was different there, he felt so key as to why that old NIP squad was so damn good. Um, so I, I love that he's really getting stuck in right now. Yeah. Uh, that's exactly what we want from him. And I think it would look very defeatist if he wasn't saying much here. He's someone who always believes in this team being able to turn things around. And that's what you want from your coach. So here we go. What's he come up with? It's a fast A play and Plopski does just blindside Keto. Flash from the player back in the site. That was Tizian, but he gets removed. And now we're into this three on four. It's a little bit awkward. Zatares tries to go barreling in. He spots that the bomb is dropped in this A site, but everyone else falls. And it leaves CSN all alone, far from home, dropping into CT spawn. NIP finally realizing, you know, how to deal with big in these weird three on four situations, right? They just stop. They know they've lost the bomb, but they've got the site. They've got good positions. And so they just sit back and wait behind the vent and wait for big to come to them. Zantares swings out wide and, and, and dies to the waiting players that he was just not ready for. He, you know, usually if you're a CT there, you should be expecting the T's to be proactive, to be focusing on getting the plant, on dropping utility. And you, a lot of the time you can catch uh, NIP there with nades in hands, but not today. NIP pull the brakes and they are ready for that one. Searson won't escape with the AWP and life now showing again for the ninjas. More gun rounds to follow, not for big though. Back to pistols. And IP going for this outside control. Hampus had a nice little lurk smoke in front of main that let him climb inside of it in the previous round. This time they're going to go for more standard utility and cross towards secret. Yeah, two players already rotated down for big. Twist is going to wait around here up on top of Hart and he can try cut down rotations. Drops that smoke as well, and that just kind of uh, obscures the intention of NIP even more in this round, right? You don't have any information outside. They could be crossing heaven. They could be trying to get to hell, but instead it is this B commitment. They've dealt with Tabson. Tarez trying to hold the line, but he can't follow up. And so, yeah, this should just be an NIP 11th on the scoreboard, providing it doesn't go disastrously wrong. And I think it'd be pretty hard pressed for that to happen. Ampus is almost certainly dead here. Almost certainly. 
May as well try and get away with that AK, right? Save it into the next round. You've got nothing else to lose here if you're big, but the round, and that's almost guaranteed. They've realized they have so much space up at the NIP have got to be all over that B-bomb site. And they lost Zantaris and Tabson down there earlier, so it's no surprise to big. The Deagle players are going to go hunting, looking for kills on the exit, but not going to be allowed easily. Nork finding Tizian, and it's the USP of Searson waiting for exit kills. I like this spot as well as NIP have some close ramp players. They might exit on this side. There could be a chance for Searson to do some damage, get a gun, but no. NIP, they're going to exit together, and that's a smart move. Actually, not even leaving. They hide in the control room. You don't actually take as much damage here, so they will live. We already saw, you know, Flusher running away from the bomb uh, in that Astralis game the other day, and he lived, you know, despite getting off the diffuser like four seconds left. Nice kill with Searson taking down Rez. It's not going to have massive implications in the short term, but it's something that could play into this game when we hit a 30 rounder. Money's there for NIP for the time being, but how much longer will that remain? They've finally taken the lead. It's been a long time coming. Yeah, they're still very much in with this chance. Searson's going to go ahead and hop on up into the CT box for some vision outside. With the smoke's raining in, he's going to be hard-pressed to find very much. NIP, they don't cross anyone behind these smokes. They're trying to divert all the attention towards outside while they actually make a play in towards ramp. And this has worked Ooh. brilliantly. Look, Tapson had rotated away. And now that they haven't really seen much, he takes his position back up here ramp side, but he could get caught with a nade out. They've already crossed and he doesn't realize it's too late for Tabson as he goes down. And now the rest of NIP go downtown as well into this B site, Centares. Oh, oh what? no, what's going on? So focused on throwing this utility in a big that they just keep getting caught. And, and this, this has fallen apart. That's yeah. a disaster, really. That is not how this round should have gone down whatsoever. That's very unlike Big, right? Tabson, he, he's jiggling. He doesn't think the one player has already crossed out. And by the time he realizes, he tries to jump up to get into position to hold that angle. Well, you know, NIP are already swinging him. And, well, I don't know what happened for Tabson there. He was looking to get on top of the rating with a smoke out. So your guess is as good as mine. Might have been trying to drop a smoke on the silo, use it as a one-way. Who knows? It won't work. It won't matter. Nice exit from Searson, but that's just going to ring the alarm bells if NIP want to start hunting. They probably shouldn't, honestly. Respect big here. You know, they've got an orb back in T-spawn. Let them have it. You've got the round, and that's what matters most. Up to 12 on this T-side. And NIP, this is, a, this is a recovery. This is happening, okay? We, we can't sleep on them anymore because a lot of rifle rounds going their way. All the ones that matter. And big have only won one round in the second half. Not what I was expecting. Yeah, very unlike Big that round. Very unlike them to be to be caught with the grenades in their hands. And maybe not a mistake we'll see repeated. Yeah, it's not the Big that we're used to. And this little, like, lol from them has given NIP a lot of room to find their confidence again. And that's scary to me, right? Like, you had NIP on the ropes right where you wanted them, really. Like, they were doubting themselves. They were doubting the decisions that were being made. And now they've started to kind of collect their thoughts again, and they're all looking on the same page. It's a little bit worrisome, really. Zantares has now taken up a position at ramp. He's going to drop that nade, but even then, he might be hard-pressed to get away. Searson does come in on rotation. Zantares, good for one, but him and Searson both fall. Ramp gets taken once again. And already, this, this could very well be a save. That kill maybe now tempts you back in. It's a three on three. You've upgraded this MP9 on Tizian, if you would like, over the wards outside, and they would. So they are going to give this one a go. It also opens up a path down secret, right? It, you know, vent scary, ramp you know you've lost. And so getting that one lurk kill outside. Oh dear, let's go down B. The wall bang, it's good damage, it's no kill. Nork still stands and Red's tumbles up in the doorway. No idea how that happens. He's on one health on a 3K and he's gonna close it with four. Massive round for Rez. Look at the recovery of this dude as an individual. There is no doubt on Rez's talent and his skill in the server, but we didn't see anything like it back on Vertigo going 0-14 right now he's 22 and 14 what a recovery story from this guy and if he's going to lead nip to a win on big's map pick sending us to mirage then there's still hope for the swedes after all bigger feeling the pressure harry a pause and look at that scoreboard it's all in the favor of the t side 
Yeah, this is this is a little bit wild. This is a little too wild for me, Hugo. Um, I don't know what to make of it. I don't know what's happened. It's and like a, just a. Re I, I do think, as you say, like Rez is playing such a huge part, right? Like Vertigo was four on five for that entire first half of play, and no one can change my mind on that, right? Like Rez was literally 0 and 14. So. Um, yeah, him recovering and then an IP getting back to like a full roster has certainly helped. And with Big making a few mistakes when it really feels like it matters so much that they just keep doing what we're used to seeing from them really hasn't helped. This outside area getting contested this time. NIP, they haven't even really done much towards outside. And that's where Big have concentrated a lot of their efforts. And now, Finally, we have some outside presence being shown, and this has come at a perfect time because Big, they've adjusted with three players over towards Ramp and Hell to try and deal with these ramp takes that have just been coming through time after time. Yeah, it's been five-man brute forces, or at least four-man brute forces. We usually see Hampus on the lurk. It has been Hotsky from time to time, but yes, yeah, a very aggressive plays from NIP and good trading as well. Coming through here to Kito, who almost loses his life through the wall. Now, Twist has an angle, but Sisson's pushed up and Zantara's has dropped the orb. This is getting scary. This is getting dangerous, and Twist needs to win this fight to keep this round alive. He's done that at least. Orp dropped back out of the hands of Zantara. It's not a weapon he's known for. And Kito is gone as well. Twist with four in the round. Very important lobby hold from the back of the squeaky door. 14 to 10. This is it. NIP pushing us over the finish line on Big's map pick. One CT round for the German side. And yeah, it's, it's been the constant mind game between ramp and outside, right? Big, oh, sorry, NIP, they've, they've thrown outside smokes. They've not always crossed behind them. And that's been affecting those ramp rotates uh, for big. You think of Zantara's on this map, you think of him on those rafters at the B bomb site, stopping secret plays out the door into B. But NIP have never done that. If they're taking B, they're taking it through ramp. This time it's looking like an A fast though. Down the vent, two players get through. Tapson is so blinded and he is just spraying. I don't know if Big even know how many players are down and how deep they are, but Zantaris needs to patch the wound with the M4. Yeah, getting that kill is crucial. He's dropped the bomb and he's bought big time. Now with the rotation coming down through the vents from Tizian, he can get that kill locked in. Keeps that bomb out of NIP's hands. Hampus and Nork, 2v5. The attempt at the change of pace has not worked out the way they were hoping. Hampus is going to sneak his way in through the vent down towards this B site. While Tizian is waiting, he gets caught looking the wrong way at the wrong time. And this bomb now back under nip control. This is a bit of an error, right? They, they give the bomb over. And this is going to open up a world where this two on four is still a possibility. There's even the chance that, you know, you could have gone back up to that A site. So for big, they've had to keep this defense split up as a result. And now the bomb goes down. NIP trying to do the impossible. Three players for big coming in through ramp and Tabson alone on the secret flank. Hampus hiding in this ramp smoke. He gets spammed. And Searson's oh. gonna find it. Nork now, first kill presents itself. Still, more players coming in. He peeks through the molly. Zantares dropping into the site is gonna send him home. And it's 11 for Big as they do make that retake happen. I actually really like how Big approached that, right? Of course, Tizian is still playing around the bomb, but he gets timed by Hampus's vent drop. But Big, we, we look at them in a lot of those situations across this series, and they've always tried to be suffocating. They've always tried to be aggressive. But, you know, finally, things have started to go the way of NIP. So Big decide, okay, right, we've got the advantage. We know where the bomb is. We know where NIP have to go. So let's just set up for that and play retake. Let's not get caught by lurking players. Let's use our man advantage to our advantage. And so they go in with three on the ramp and they trade effectively and that's all they need. They wanted the round and that's what they get, keeping this one going. And of course, they know that NIP have money anyway off the back of this dominant T side. And so giving away a bomb plant isn't gonna be a fear for big. The buys are coming in full force for a few more. And uh, if we get to a point where, you know, Big bring this 14-14, NIP are going to have loss bonus. So we've got rifle rounds till the end of this map. By well, the looks of things, of course, unless Big win here, in which case they will be in a rough spot, or lose here, rather, they'll be in a rough spot. Twist trying to put pressure on the door. Big are just going to smoke it off and leave it lost. 
Popsky trying to lurk outside. Now those tags might have been heard. Tapson might be ready for a player up close. He gets flashed back into main safely, giving away the outside control. His team needs to be aware of that, but luckily he just swings back out through the smoke and takes the kill instead. NIP have lost their lurk and they're going back to what works, these constant ramp takes. Yeah, but this time Searson's here on that AWP. He nails the first Centares now here to help him out. And it's damage for Centares wow. to spray down the triple. He does it all. 12 on the board for Big. Centares starting to recover. He was by far the most quiet man on this big squad. While in these last few rounds, he has found his footing and ramp has started to look like Centares' domain once again. Yeah, we've never seen Searson able to assist on these ramp plays. And that's because, like you said earlier, Big have been very favored to playing outside with that AWP and putting numbers there. When Tapson kills Popsky, considering Popsky's been lurking yard in some of these ramp takes, they make the call. They immediately go, they have to go ramp. If it's not an A take, it's ramp. Outside is clear. And the double setup is exactly what big need. NIP not giving up yet. They're still going fast. I love the pace that NIP is setting. Quick into main. Hampus, oh, he's going to check if Akito wins the fight. The bomb's been lost. And NIP are just throwing caution to the wind through the smokes into the faces and dropping res with the orb, saving his teammate on the site. And this round has gone as quick as it can. It's only Nork in a one on four. And now it's all getting exciting again. Nork, he might want to just hold on to this AWP, right? Like, why you have some loss bonus built up? If you lose this now, you're not going to have it. In the follow-up. I mean, they could drop one over, but then that leaves them strapped in a, in a variety of other ways in terms of the money. So, yeah, Nork is waiting patiently, seeing if they give anything up. But at this point, like, big, you know, it's not... Not the same like comfortable big that we've been used to seeing where they'll gladly hunt down in these situations. Like you do want to be keeping as much as you can going your way and building up this money. Because if you remember when this was 11-14, there was still a chance of a reset looming for big, right? And at that point, that would have been a disaster. You're up against map point, you've got no money. So they need to build up this bank account. 30 seconds left on the clock and Nork, yeah, he is just playing it safe, playing it by the numbers. Looking to hold on to this AWP. So 13 for Big, getting it down to the wire once again. And this is a good test of NIP. Now, they've shown resilience to grind this game back to a doable situation. But now they have to show that they've got that X factor Ooh. and can get it over the line. Uh -oh. Nork takes away one of these guns. But they are hounding him down. They are hunting. Nork Ooh. trying to stay alive. Back in with another peek. Doesn't need to keep taking them. And he will get taken down. Not after time by the looks of things. Yeah, I mean, going in for the last peak, you know, again, he didn't know Tapson was that deep, but he could have definitely, after, after taking two, he could have definitely tucked and just lived with the orb. So, you know, always, always a question mark. At least when it doesn't work, right? There's a world he hits the shot and we're fine. And, and suddenly that's a massive few kills taking guns away from Big. He still has, right? He still left Big with only two players surviving. I imagine they picked up an orb and an AK there. So, yeah, there is economic loss, but it goes both ways. And right now, NIP, despite having the lead, are not in the most comfortable position. Three in a row for Big. They're finding solutions. The lurk outside is getting countered every time. The ramp plays have been stacked by Big. A fast day in the previous for NIP finds nothing. Where do you even go from here? I'd love to see that, that outside control once again, right? I feel like Big's gonna be expecting it at this point, but go back for the smokes, regardless of how many players you move behind them. They won't have the money. They're giving Big 14, playing for the th full 30 as they probably should. And so NIP with one hero AK on res, the hero of this map for them. He's holding on in the lobby. Oh, nice. West has gotten down through the vent. He hasn't been discreet about it, though. So that Centares already rotating down to try and uh, try and contain any B aggression. But the ramp play is going to come through. And this time, Searson doesn't have Centares to help out. So he's got to nail this shot and then fall off the angle. Nice. They bait the peak. Searson going for Hampus, allows the AK to tag him up. And now ramp has been taken by NIP. But they're not looking to commit to this. They actually back away and start to worm their way back towards uh -oh. lobby. Twist caught by Tabson. Down goes Tizian in the hut. An A play maybe on the cards, but are they ready for Kibo who swings at the vent? Only good for one. Nork follows up and oh dearie me. Big, this should have been 14. They were only up against pistols, but now the bomb getting planted in this upper site. Weaponry retrieved for NIP. 
And Zantares getting flashed in through heaven is the only hope. This flash has to do absolutely everything. In it goes, Zantares peeking. That's the damage, but not the killing blow. And so NIP, map point gained 15 to 13. And big, they need two in a row to take us to OT. That was such a good call from Hampus, man. That was so smart. I mean, everything goes in their favor, right? Not just the fact that Searson gets dinked and misses his shot, putting him out for the round. But after they get that control, after they force big on those B rotates, not only Santaras, who they don't see on ramp, they know he has to be lower, but also another player, um, when Twist dies, he gets shot in the back from a secret rotate from outside. So NIP with that info go, okay, they have a heavy B setup. Let's go back through the lobby. They're scared of ramp, we dinked the ramp player back, and we can take A. Even catching Zantaris, or Tapson rather, coming up the vent like that as well, just everything going in the favor of NIP. Zantaris had to basically one on three into that A side to win the round, it's not gonna happen. NIP on an eco with a hero AK on res have saved their bacon and maybe their tournament life. 15 to 13, not out the woods yet, but they've at least found map point. Looking to bring us to Mirage. Searson, he's gone aggressive. Very, very good in this position with the AWP. And not, not something he's done before. They're not ready for it. Nade out. Popsky's gone. Searson doesn't realize they're wrapping his right side. But Kito has the cover only temporarily. Rez from above lays down the fire and quickly back into a three on four. And now NIP fall a little more silent. They've dealt with the AWP outside, and that's going to give them free passage into secret, should they want it. Garage is an unknown entity, though, and Tapson is waiting patiently here. Gets delivered that kill on a silver platter. And so now Rez and Twist. Uh -oh. Rez might get blindsided. Keto in with another, and that's the bomb dropped. 14 looking inevitable, unless Twist can put a stop to this here and now. Molotov to force a man back out of secret. That's Keto having to make a hasty retreat. Zantares. Spotting Twist on the cross. They know this bomb is needed. He's going to go try and retrieve that. Keto has fallen all the way back into B. Question now is where does Twist want to end this play? Wrapping him outside is a man going by the name of Tizian, and he can have this round dead to right. Zantares jiggle peeking heaven, and Twist not looking the right way. He just gets by, just catches the timing into this A site now, and Zantares still up in heaven. Still unknowing by Twist, and he should have this round dead to rights. There's the peaks, and Tarez locking in 14 for big. One away from OT. Oh. This game either keeps on going or we end up on Mirage. You can see how big are, are realizing the error of some of the previous rounds, right? Of playing aggressive in these XV1 situations, as you could uh, put them, Harry, right? Not wanting to throw away the rounds, playing very safe. Keto, he gets the kill in, in secret. He drops all the way to the B bomb site. Zantaras is covering A, and Tizian is that one lurk player, clearing out positions, getting info. He doesn't figure out where that last player is, but he figures out where he's not. And yeah, Twist has to run eventually as the time gets lower and lower. 15 to 14. This is a game of mind games right now with double backs, with fakes, with heavy ramp control. We're getting it all on Nuke. But where will this leave us? Fast out the door. NIP, they want to end it on A. And they're going to try and run down Tizzy and anchoring the site behind the silo. It's looking like Big might want to pull this to even more rounds. The Orb hitting a shot, but not the killing blow. And Rez, the hero here of NIP, has to save them once again in a one on four. It's just not going to happen. We're going to overtime. Well, that's all from this one right now. There's an OT still on the cards. There's still even more to come, but we're going to throw this one over to a quick break, and then we'll be back to bring you even more Nuke. Yeah. 
don't want your empathy I just want another enemy I'm not gonna change a thing for you I'm over middle ground And I really wanna burn it down I'm not your friend And I won't pretend I am So don't reach out and I mean that I'm under siege and I need you to see that You're on one side, I'm on another And we will wage war upon each other I'm no angel, you're not either I'm out of favor, bitch, you're out of leisure Like grace, I'm unscathed, I'm unafraid A warm welcome to the war game into overtime. We didn't expect to find ourselves here, but this is where we're at. Big taking on NIP, and let's take stock of what we've seen so far in the latter stages of this game. Coming into the second half of play, NIP, they take seven out of a possible eight rounds to begin it. And now we find ourselves here with Big making the recovery happen. And already out of the gate, it's gonna be Tizian opening this one up with a kill onto Hampus. So NIP, they try and go fast, and that might still be the intent with Twist getting that trade to Absent, finding damage in through that smoke. But there's no. the response from Nork, caught with a nade out and into a three on four big. This good situation has suddenly flipped against them. Searson taking up the position of his fallen teammates, looking for these trades into lobby, and he might spot the barrel if he was just a little bit wider. He would see there's Rez in through main, being a pain, follow up onto Quito, and it's all left onto Zintarez in a 1v4. Oh dear, caught jumping through the air as well, trying to hit his head on the roof to bounce back, but it's NIP who are bouncing back. May have found the two last rounds of regulation for big, but NIP not going down without a fight. And this T-side has been excellent, right? On both sides, obviously that's how we're here with nine round T-sides on either team. But yeah, starting off here for NIP, if they can find a clean three, they are setting themselves up for a victory and a, a final map on Mirage as well. Those odds looking good for big in the series, but right now in this map, things are looking scary indeed. More utility into A quick. I love the pace that NIP is setting and they're gonna put Hampus right down the vent. Tapson's glaving it behind the smoke outside. Plopsky is on his typical lurk here behind red. It's just all over the place. NIP being proactive on every section of the map. Twist looking for a ramp pick as that smoke begins to fade. Hampus is still hanging around lower as well. You can notice he's not actually doing anything B. He's waiting for Zantaras' rotation, which has been pretty consistent down towards lower. And NIP are trying to force that rotation by putting outside smokes. Unluckily for them, Tapson's about to realize exactly what's going on. Oh no, maybe he's not. Getting blindsided, getting checked, and that might force Zantaras down into the waiting arms of Hampus. Oh no. Oh dear. Oh, Hampus gets the info. Tarez goes back and oh, he holds on to ramp with a double. Now into this two on three. Plopsky at least keeps NIP in the advantage. Tizian and Searson on for the retake. They've got to try and come in through ramp, the area they lost earlier in the round. Smokes and mollies down. So for the time being, their advance is halted. Searson, along with Tizian. They've got to try and do the impossible big. They don't want to have the first two and OT slip away, especially not after grinding so hard to get here. Nork holding for the peak. Molly 
just missing its mark, so he's still a threat, still a nuisance, and he does deal with the AWP on the other side. Tizzy and wow. falling after an NIP 17 on the board. Such a shame about outside, man. Maybe that's why they call him Alt Tabson, because he's not even in the server as that push comes on in. I love the call from Hampus, though. Some of these rounds have been so excellently crafted with misdirection, with, with baiting big into rotations. Even though Zantaris doesn't fully fall for it, right? He's been burned before on that ramp rotate. When, when he loses, when he goes down towards B and NIP use ramp to, to fake out a B play and head A. This time he doubles back, he almost walks into Hampus and even though he gets two kills, they'd already lost the B site. Hampus jumps out through the window and they're able to get the bomb plant. So yeah, some really well called rounds for NIP and Popsky finding the crucial lurk kill. Popsky's been good, but I feel like when he has been lurking outside, it's been 50-50. Like he either dies immediately by Tabson, and, and, and then Big have all the info that, yeah, okay, it's just a lurker, it's just one player, or he gets the opening kill. And because of Tabson's position, because he's waiting in the smoke, maybe think he's more covered than he is. Him dying to Popsky doesn't guarantee the fact that it's just a lurk. You don't know if there are more players behind him. And so Big is scrambling for information. Two rounds in a row for NIP and the pause before the third, making sure everyone is on the same page. And yeah, Big, oh, we've had a drop. We might have a reconnect here, so maybe a quick pause. Nothing cool, so it might just be a HUD thing, but we'll wait and see. Yeah, they're actually back in, so it's all under control. NIP back-to-back -back tax. Yeah, I noticed that I think it actually was Tabson to drop out, so I wonder if that's why the, the outside fight goes down the way it does. Um, uh, you know, the, you see a lot of players do that where they hide behind red and then they try and, like, swing when they hear footsteps. Or, you know, if you're in the smoke, you wait till the players pass you and then you pop out. But, yeah, I mean, I, we can only assume because uh, Tabson, he was not in the smoke at all. Like, yeah, no, it, it, it was slightest. Tabson who dropped out. So oh, I okay. think that's why that goes down the way that it yeah. does. A uh, bit of a shame because damage had already been done. But here we go. we got the fan cams going on. These guys have a more reliable connection to the server than Big do. <laughs> and look at this. They're actually excited for a change. It was getting kind of depressing seeing the NIP guys just sat there like, oh, is this really the team that we're supporting right now after that Vertigo performance? Yeah. But now here on Nuke, they are in full force. It's back-to-back -back tack timeouts for NIP. Three. Really wanting to get their money's worth out of this. They've used three in a row. Pretty sure, pretty sure. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, that's, co that's confirmed. So, wow, NIP. Whatever this game plan is for the last round of, of OT, of T-side OT, it better be the most well-orchestrated strategy I've ever seen. Threat's just been on a monologue, right? Like giving like, <laughs> a, guys, we are five fingers of one hand, and also <laughs> I am the toe on this foot, and we're going to kick this game off. To, I don't know, man. I don't know what he's saying. He's maybe not as poetic. Maybe you need uh, to, yeah, maybe you should get rid of Momo, get you on, uh, on Coach for Liquid. That was a motivating speech, Harry. I'm inspired. I... Let's see. Well, I Frankie, used. you know, like, because, you know, like, hands and feet, they're all part of the one body, and they are a body on NIP, right? One mind, hive mind. Back into the server we go. Searson creeping in through Hup. Woo! Ooh. Collateral with the AWP, but not quite the killing blow to Hampus. He catches a bit of shrapnel, and that there is his cue to vacate the area. Big, they're looking to pick up the last round of this first half of OT. They're sat now in a five on four. Last time we saw them get that man advantage, NIP was swift with the response, but this time there is no such grace going their way. And Searson immediately repositioning. I love this from him. He takes that shot aggressive in hut. You think you know where he is, but then guess again. It's not where's Waldo, it's where's Searson. Flashes in, Plopsky through this smoke, gets up close to Tabson, but Tabson wins it out. And this now leaves NIP, the walking wounded in a three on five. Tabson just survives as well. Rez peeking from the top of a roof and Hampus is low with the AWP outside playing Bogdan. Oh, it's a messy spray. Rez is gonna get the better of Tabson and still a big sit a man up. Searson yet to be dealt with down in secret. He's fallen back further past it, but this is not ending on B by the looks of things. Rez, if he wants, can wrap heaven or just play towards that main position. He's looking for something. He's looking for anyone coming off of that ramp rotate, but Zantaris is nowhere to be seen. He's pushed lobby, and that's a very aggressive move from Zantaris. Typically uh, want to drop B before he does this, but I think Big know exactly what's up. They've got a really heavy A site setup. It's all on this lurk from Rez. It's all on the heaven control, and Sis is coming out. He's got the info, but he's not got the shot. Hampus wins a duel with 14 points of health, and now 14 seconds for the plant. Heavy A site setup. They need the kills. Hampus gets traded. That's the bomb dropped in the open, and Rez needs a one on two with five seconds to spare it's not happening big ready for that a side take we'll find one on their ct side 
And that tea side here is something quite special indeed, right? So this is where you're hoping big. I've still got some legs on them yet, right? NIP winning the first two in overtime. Big finally coming in with a response once they have all five in the server. Tabson out for revenge over here outside. A nice try from Hampus and Co, but not enough to get a flawless OT. And this keeps things competitive moving into the second half now. Let's not forget, for those of you who are just tuning in, bigger 1-0 up in this series after a dominant victory back on Vertigo, the map pick of NIP. Now they want to do everything oh. they can to stay in that driver's seat and send the Swedes home. Zantares opening up with a kill on Hampus. Follow-up damage from Tizian, and he knows Ooh, that he's yeah. got a man trapped. Rez bought down low, forced into the hidey hole of the vents. Not posted up aggro in Hut, and Keto gets dealt dropping in through secret there. They do find him. That's throwing a bit of a question mark as to where this play looks to end up, but it is still this A bomb site, the object of Big's desires. Nork, oh, the timing oh couldn't be worse. He's just looked away, and there's the wrap from Tizian. Plopski up in heaven, good for one. There's the follow up, and he's made this round doable, but him and Rez are both so damn low. The odds are stacked against them now. That nade doing good damage. Maybe enough to allow Rez to come in through this hot wrap and deal the damage needed to make this round possible. Plopski making noise, trying to draw the attention away, trying to give the illusion that this is where the second man is for NIP. And Tizian nice. gets blindsided. Tabson now, CT vet needs this round. There oh. it is. They line up for Tabson, and he gets a 17th on the board for Big. They're not ready to give this game up just yet. That was going so well for NIP as well. You put it perfectly. Plopski being pushed out of heaven by the Molotov. He makes noise. He baits Big in. They're constantly looking at heaven. Both those players, after they get that kill, uh, taps and somehow, some way, still mows them down from the back of CT Ven. What an excellent clutch and big. They keep things going. Another overtime is still on the line. Or is it going to be a win right here? First to 19, two chances to do it. Hampers pushing outside. We've got Big back in the lobby with lots of numbers as well. They may have thrown these outside smokes, but Hampers has confirmed it's all a fake. It's all a ruse, and therefore no lower rotates here for NIP. They're ready for the A play, but are they ready enough? It's fast and furious. Big are already out in the site. Tizian with a kill through the door as Rez spams. Keto drops Popsky, and he catches another as he falls on in. Big have just absolutely swept this A site clean open, and NIP, nothing to do but cower away. This is a lost round unless Big completely throw it away in the post plant, and there's no reason for them to do it. They're already hunting exits. They've got a player trapped in the spawn. Oh dear. Twist is trying to stay alive, but look at this. They are hunting him down. This is scary for Twist now. He wants to hold on to the orb, but piece by piece, oh, he's getting more lower and lower. Hampus, now they know where he is as well, and they get the clean sweep. 18 for big match, series point, and elimination on the line for NIP, unless they can get us to another overtime here on Nuke. Luckily, you know, it's 16K, so right, the save doesn't really make that much difference, right? It's just the difference between maybe some head armor, some grenades, a couple of kids, but, you know, at the end of the day, it was a lost round nonetheless, and I this, knew it. This from Keto is so key. He goes out with the flashes initially, as has all that confusion in the site, and he realizes how deep he's got, so he just bides his time and gets two kills from that forward position. That's something NIP cannot afford to have happening at such a, such a critical juncture in this game. Now it's big stood on the finish line. What a flip of this script. And into lobby they go. Big, they've thrown the outside smokes again. And once more, Hampus has got the information that nobody is here. Yeah, that seems to not be saving NIP in any regard, right? This is just standard, Big throwing these smokes, and, and NIP come to expect uh, the hit elsewhere. It's going to be towards ramp. Rez has taken first blood in the meanwhile up on that A site into squeaky door against Tizian. Ramp is conceded. The AWP is in CT towards Hell, so can at least stop Big from wrapping the Heaven position, or at least try to do so. It's holding off. Big are going to move down towards B. Double rotate for NIP. They know they don't need to care about a secret lurk from outside, thanks to Hampus. So he's actually coming on to join his team as well, drawing in their attention. There's no way they'll be ready for Twist. Hampus, if he gets one kill, his job is done, and Twist can just begin to save the round for NIP. That's not good, though. Twist is going to drop the bomb. Now he's cornered Keto with the trade. It's a three-on-three, three and big own B. 
It all comes down to this. Do we have another overtime or the big end? NIP's Cologne Dreams right here, right now. Plopsky trying to catch Zantares. The Molotov gives up the aim of the game and Keto's followed up on two as well. It all falls onto Searson with this AWP. This man has given us so many big performances and now would be the time oh. for it. But Rez shuts him down and we're running it back again. 18 to 18. I heard you all miss Counter-Strike. Well, here it is. I, I wouldn't want anything else, Harry. Two T sides per team on overtime, keeping up the uh, uh, appearance, keeping up the occasion that was regulation. And uh, now we go for 22. That's the first for, well, a first place in this series, at least for big, looking to knock out NIP, as you say. Nork's back on the orb. So is Searson. This battle has been so entertaining between the two. Even if we've not seen too much of a head-to-head, -head, both of them have been very explosive in this game. Rez is over 30 kills right now as well. The only player on the server to be there. Big. They're going back outside. This time, they are going to put players behind these smokes. And so Hampus needs that info. He's going to pop flash himself out. That's a great bit of utility. But Keto is going to be there to trade immediately after. Legged by the orb from hell, he will still cross down towards B. And he's looking a little worse for wear though, and this could be a nice easy kill for Rez. Indeed it is, so Keto gets dealt with. That lower lurk that Big were relying on, kind of forcing, oh no, Zantares. They didn't realize, what? Plopsky, he's got his headphones unplugged. Nort comes in with another though in the meantime, and that's the bomb dropped out from Hut. Rez up through Secret has dealt with Zantares, and Searson falls, so thankfully, it's all kept under control for NIP, but just about 19. Of course, we're looking, for the first to 22 now, this being the second overtime on Nuke. Big, they're going to be kicking themselves. They they were in a good spot yeah. there to find something right, but they can't get past the AWP in that A site. The bomb gets dropped. The pincer comes in from Rez, who's very, very confident, just charging up secret, makes a big play in that one, getting himself two. Back to the drawing board for Big. Back up on the silo for Sears, and he didn't see Nork. He was flashed out by high utility. So NIP have this all very deep outside, and again have that info that has really just been saving their bacon. Oh dear, Searson's double scope. Nork's having a look. He's moving away from red, and I think he's ready for this fight. If Searson stands up or tries to move, he will be dead. It's a stalemate, neither knowing the other's position, though. Well, this would be a very different battle indeed. It would probably be already over. Now, keep in mind, Nork is not alone out here for long. There's a move going on outside. Taps him with the bomb. Santara is up on the roof, and there's the bomb dropped. Rez has also found first blood. He's been so good at those opening kills, but Searson will close one of his own. He catches Nork, leaving Red. Oh, dear. They know Rez has seen Tizian, but it doesn't matter. The info isn't enough. Tizian gets that kill, smoking, trying to push through it, and Plopsky times that to perfection, keeping NIP a man up. Big have loved main to A, and they're going to go back for it, but this time there's a spanner in the works, a man in the lobby behind enemy lines. Hampus lets them cross through. Popsky tries to get the info. Hampus has dropped the bomb, and that's another round for NIP. That could be everything. This has been a T-sided game. Nine rounds per on regulation, two in T on OT, and now NIP find back-to-back -back rounds on the CT side. Is this going to be big faltering at the final hurdle? IP, they're just seeming like they're thriving in the chaos of this overtime where it's big. They, they don't look like they can cut it right now. Really struggling over on this T side in the second overtime. Back to outside, but they haven't had the best history with this position. This time, though, there's no aggression from NIP outside. They've really tapered that off. Outside smoke's going to get thrown in now. Nork clearing the lobby. Wrapping in, Tizian is at ramp, so that could be a bit of a vulnerability as he waits in this smoke. The rest of the gang moving by outside. They could look to split into this B site. Garage smoke down, deep smoke for main as well. Tabson oh deleting Hampus, backing Garage. Rez now trying to take up a position through the tiny little gap in this smoke. What's he gonna see, Rez? Fog on the goggles, what's he able to spot? Nothing through that smoke, and so they get by, they get down to secret. And this could be a bit of misinformation for NIP. Rez was holding that whole time, and he didn't see anyone. It's not uncommon for Big to not cross with these smokes. 
But they have rotated players down. Plotsky getting there just in the nick of time. Dodges these players crossing into the site. Twist already here. Locked and loaded. Helped out by Plopsky. And this round gets shut down. Keto. Oh, he's given them a chance. Res up on the rafters, though. Has kept it all in favor of NIP. But just briefly, Tizzy in 1v1 Ooh. versus Nork. Oh. Caught looking the wrong way. 21 for NIP as they go flawless on the CT side. Yeah, that lurk was too late. And it's not it's not Tizian's fault, but it's Biggs rushing into the B bomb site. I think that they assumed they had more control than they did. Not only Plopsky coming down that vent off the back of, you know, Rez leaving outside, but also Twist already having rotated down lower, plus the ramp player. I mean, that's just so unfortunate for Big. They speed it up when they could have relied on the lurk in the lobby. If Tizian comes in a few seconds earlier after Twisted rotated, he could have easily shot NIP in the back of the head, but a flawless CT side could be putting Nip on Mirage. Got to see if they can take it over the line. Sometimes that final round is the hardest part. Big back on the CT side, back a fresh face. AWP taps and looking into the wall, avoiding the utility. And Searson with a cross shot spots the bomb, get down lower. Now, is that a commitment is the question here for Big, because only one player down B with the bomb. They need to clear the rest of yard. The flash is good. Taps and gets one. It's traded. Keto's in the same position. They might not be ready for this. They're behind the red box, boosting up the AWP. No rush for Big. They're a man up. They can slow it down. Right now, they know they've got that bomb trapped down lower, and that's a problem that NIP are going to have to address the longer this round goes on. This whole round comes down to saving Private Plopsky, who's behind enemy lines. Searson, another kill as he nails Hampus on the cross. Hampus there was the sacrificial lamb to let Nork get by. Centares spots the bomb, now knows that it's still here down towards B. Up on the rafters, spam oh misses Molotov. Really oh served to complicate matters. Nork trying to get the spam off, but not able to find it. And now a 1v4 required from this AWP. Certainly not an easy task. Rotation coming in from Tizzy and in through Secret. 25 seconds for Nork to play around with here. Not a lot of time. Ooh, yeah. And Keto pressuring him. Picks up a 19th for Big. Yeah, good call for Big to disengage right after Tapson gets that flash outside and spots at least two players trading one for one. That puts Big a man up. And you can see how keen Keto is to go back in for fights, but he doesn't decide to commit. And that is the that that is the key, right? If you give away another trade, another kill to NIP, that's where this entire map could fall through your fingers. Big have been make, uh, making the right calls on disengaging on this CT side especially in the latter half of this game. But NIP, two more chances to push us over the line. Oh, Zantaris, he jumps, he hits the curb. Will that delay him? Not enough. Propsky doesn't see him cross the secret. And this is a very fast cross despite that hiccup. So this could be a quick and free kill for Zantaris. That's exactly what happens. Now the heavy ramp play. This was Nip's bread and butter in regulation with four. But after losing secret, they want to look elsewhere. They don't want to drop down towards B. And maybe rightly so, with Searson poised there with the orb. There's still two players on this top site, though. Tizian can see the feet before they can find him. Oh, dear, he might be caught with an Aiden hand. They're moving forward. He's going to get the spray. Two, three from Tizian. And it's only Twist left alone looking to clutch in a one on five. This should be impossible for Twist. And Tarez tagging him off and bringing him down. 20 for big. One away from a third overtime here on Nuke. Neither one of these teams having a problem with getting to match and series point. But both teams having a problem getting it over the finish line when they get there. That could have been everything, right? Tizian moving away to throw that door smoke. If anything, it saves his life, I guess. It gets him in position to find three kills uh, big. This game just keeps on giving. NIP, what have you got for us in what could be the final round of this map or the start of many more? Back to Yard. They need to be careful of this cross. It's not come through this time. Big, very passive outside control for a change. Not even taps and supporting. He's typically been close to red. Instead, he's holding onto A uh, to deny a faster rush from NIP. Keto, smart decision. Realizes here's the call. They could be down. We don't know. It's only Propsky on the lurk. NIP, they wanted ramp last round. It didn't work for them after they lost their secret player. But now that they've got one, they've got the pressure to push ramps. And Torres caught with a nade in hand. And Hamper swings out wide. Searson misses his shot and this could all fall apart. 
Prax is starting to show now big. It's all or nothing. They fought hard to get to this point, but we just might end up on Mirage. They're four on five. Rotations coming in for the retake at B. Plopsky still lost in secret. Spam oh. Oh, doing damage for Keto, but not going to find the kill. Plopsky on Tabson, and Tabson wins that fight, but it's still the advantage. Lying with NIP. Tizian, another kill. Uh -oh. They're trying to get us to another overtime, and we could still get there. Tizzy, another. Oh, he's looking for one more. It all falls on Therese. 1v2, trying to keep NIP's tournament life alive. They tap the bomb. They hope it baits the peak, and it does, but Tabson nails the shot. It's close, but big. They've got it. It's another overtime. My word. Three now on Nuke. The game that keeps on giving, and it's going to keep on giving after a quick break, so don't you go anywhere, my word. To the fine, will it stand the test of time right now? I need a sign. Tell me if it's over, come a little closer. We should take our time to think this damn thing over. Yeah. Should we go closer? Should this be over? My heart for your mind, probably we should start over. Say what you want, show me your thoughts. I do the same. My brother ain't neck, but I still regret. Feelings and gray. It's still the same. Tell me if it's over, come a little closer. We should take our time to think this damn thing over. Should we go closer? Should this be over? My heart for your mind, probably we should start over. schedules wipe your calendars this big nip game is still giving us action here on nuke we're an hour and a half in and it still rages on searson outside with the orb tries oh. to get aggressive and plopsky's gonna best him in the head-to-head -head. so now 
into this four on five. It's big, desperately trying to keep a hold outside on the back and losing their orb oh early on. Taps them with the spray, finding a lot of damage, but NIP are not deterred. They creep, they crawl, and they keep it as their little secret. When your back's up against the wall, that's when you really see what a team has to offer. NIP, they don't want to get eliminated here on day three of Cologne. They may have got slapped on their map pick, but putting up one hell of a fight here on Nuke. This was a dominant T-sided game with nine rounds in regulation per two on the T-side of OT, and then two flawless CT sides in the second. We're into third OT, and NIP are running the board. Every kill going their way, and Xantara is stuck in a one on five. This one's looking done, surely not. A double P coming through the door, and NIP find the first in OT3. It's not over till the big lady sings, though, Hugo. That's what they say, right? And uh, she's just getting warmed up right now. So 22 rounds for an IP. That's a start. But as we've seen, it doesn't really matter till you hit that second half of OT. Still, they're building up once again. It's a strong beginning from Nip. And that attempt at the outside aggression, well, it really didn't pan out for big. We might see that taper off now. And it's that kind of, you know, having to having to move away from this signature, like calculated aggression that makes big so threatening that could hurt them on this CT side. Once again, a fast outside round from NIP. They cross Plopski in towards Secret. Twist tries to get down the vent, but this time gets caught by Keto. And so Tabson posted up at this lower site. Has Zantares moving in to join him from ramp. Will they be aware just how many players reside on the other side of this smoke? All four remaining fellas for NIP primed and ready to go this point you have to expect the unexpected no position is clear no sight is unstacked and Tabson has to hold his own he can't even get damage off res immediate double entry NIP doing it again they may have had flawless CT side but now it's a flawless T side by the looks of things a retake on for big Searson with the flick it's not going to connect Tizian's coming through the door no one's watching this the audio gets heard and Hampers gets shot in the back Tizian buying time still waiting on Keto a long way from home with Searson on the ramp throwing utility and trapping Plopski at the back of the site. They have no Molotovs to clear him out. Searson's even been banged out of the round by the Orp of Nork, and he looks to hold on to the bomb. This Molotov's devastating. It didn't burn out Plopski, so they had to go clear it manually. And as a result, the round just falls apart. NIP, another 23 to 21. Big, they're going to be kicking themselves. It feels like they need one here at the end of the first half of the second over, sorry, third overtime on the second map in this series. Oh, it's a mouthful indeed. Big bringing out the big guns. It's Searson back on that orb, but he's gone a little bit quiet here, it feels like. I need to see more from him because so often he is the difference maker for Big. It's crazy how fast NIP have sped up. Every OT we've done, we've gotten faster and faster rounds, and that's really keeping Big on their toes. They're not ready for the immediate engagements, the immediate executes. Zantaris has to drop so quickly. 139, they're already down into B. Zantaris with an opening kill. He's buying time. He's cut off one side of the ramp room, but that molly is only going to last a few seconds and NIP can split him. He has to pick wisely. Taps and covering his left side. They're swapping. Communication is key. The AWP gets spotted and Big don't need to rush these gunfights. They have a huge advantage, like you said, needing at least one round in this CT side. Tabson digging their grave deeper. Hampers with the Molotov, but Tabson's already moved out of this position. They're only exposed to the left side. Double fighting. Tabson shutting it down with Xantares, and Big will at least salvage one on their CT side. And Tabson, the grave digger, going against the old fanatic mantra that every grave digger dies. He doesn't. He holds on to that B bomb site right till the very end. And that's going to give Big one round here, moving into the second half of OT. NIP, they keep getting off to good starts yeah. and then they come <laughs> back in with the response. Is that how this is set to continue? Who knows? I don't think Big even know. I don't think M NIP have a clue. You just have to take the punches as they get handed to you. A leg! Hampus is in the garage. He is nowhere near, but just got shot from the squeaky door down to 40. Oh my. What is going on, Big? They're going to go for this yard control. They have tabs and very deep behind red. Those late smokes landing. No one here to stop them here from NIP. What are the B rotates like, right? That's the question. How many do you throw at the problem? Because it could still be a fake. And notice that bomb isn't following Tabson as he tries to sell this rotation. Two players down lower. One of them being ramped. He can still jiggle between both sides. 
Nork with the orb. If he hits a shot here, that will only confirm this is an A play. And now NIP are ready for a Hampus. He may be low, but they're not going to check him. And he gets one from the back line, doubling down. And this is a perfect round for NIP. They seem to have done it again, match point, or map point rather, as they look to take us to Mirage. We, we could have more Counter-Strike in this series. And I'm not just talking OTs. A whole nother map around the corner. NIP are one round away from it. Oh, my threat said, you know, the reason for removing Lecro was hoping to play the long game. I didn't think this is what he had in mind with the long game, right? This is a very long game. 24 for NIP, and they need one more to lock in Mirage as that third and final map. Big head in their hands. They need to try and keep the dream alive here and run it back again. Hampus playing close to the outside smoke. He tries to go through, but that proves to be his demise. Man advantage now for big. Nork testing the waters with some lobby aggression. Now Tizian is here. This man, basically a bellhop. He is the king of lobby. And he's not looking and meet and greet them. Instead, it's silence right now. Flash out, Tizian rounding the corner. Is he ready for res? No, he's not. He goes down, back into this four on four. Keto down at the B bomb site. Gaining some ground, but the rest of Big not behind him. That smoke is going to give them safe passage into secret. They leave Searson outside momentarily with this orb, but he's going to get across and join the rest of the team. Big all over B. NIP had so much success at this bomb site. Are Big going to have the same? Because they desperately need it. Twist wow. removing Keto. Man advantage for Nip here with map point on the line. They're trying to take us to Mirage, and Big have got to do everything they can to keep the dream of another overtime alive. NIP taking their sweet time. They got four from the same exit. That Molotov is going to cut them off into one choke point. They could smoke it, but at this point, it's better to wait it out. That time ticking in the favor of Big. Searson in the window is smoked off. Does he have a gap? Does he have an angle? Because he needs to assist his teams. And Torres with a tap swings out for a second. It's all on Searson. This is for the map. This is for the game. And he's waiting in the window. They have no idea. The smoke phase. A missed oh. shot. He gets the kill. Oh. He gets them off the bomb. The pistol's out. The B250 might just save Big once again. And he's done what? it all on his own. Four kills, 23 rounds. Let's keep this game going. Oh. Searson, it goes from the biggest of misses to the best of successes. How on earth has he done it? Another round for Big. And the game keeps on going. One <laughs> more round between another overtime and a third map. It looks so bad, but then takes them all out. What? <laughs> My mind is blowing. I cannot believe. That bomb was almost defused. That bomb was almost gone, despite the other players that weren't offering cover. He just one taps the low HP player through the smoke. This is still not done. Nip can still close this map, or Big can start the clock for a fourth time. We thought OG Nip went to enough OTs. Well, boy, this one is making that look like a fast game. Big. Creeping outside, crawling behind red. Hampus is in the garage. He, he has wrecked them from this position before, but they are very attuned to it. They have got their eyes. He cannot swing. He can only deny the main control. If there's no garage smoke, Tapson has to take this fight and put his back up to the A site. It's a real risk. It's a real gamble. The smoke's going to come through from Tizzy, and they wrap it. They don't check it. Oh, dear. Keto's going to cover, despite Tapson taking damage, and Keto with a dink. Bigger found two opening kills into A. We need a hero, and there's not going to be one. Big, another overtime locked in. 24 to 24, 48 rounds in <laughs> to this new game. Oh, boy, oh, boy. We're running it back again, this time big on the T side. And I, you guys know the drill by now, right? <laughs> like NIP, yeah, they got some guns. Big have got some guns, too. But it's what are they going to do with those guns that makes all the difference? I will say this epitomizes why we love 16K MR3, right? No ecos, no saves. Every round is do or die. Every round is everything you need. We've got the orbs out, even the P250 saving the day. And here we go, NIP back outside, aggressive. Hampers, he's caught a great timing. No one has seen him in this position. Tucked in the corner means he probably won't be able to stop them crossing red, but he will be able to shoot them in the side of the head. Two players, there they go, tumbling down. And Keto's going to trade, but NIP have started off this round to perfection. Tizian gets down the vent, and Zatares is still here. He's got Rez trapped behind red. 
And Tizian's got this kill dead to right. So Tizian, Ooh. tricky individual. He does snipe that one away. Now Twist with the repeak. Spots Tizian, they've got him trapped. The bomb gonna get retrieved by Zentares. Tizian, another kill, bringing it into the realm of a two on two, but quickly taken away. And NIP 25 to their name. Think about how this regulation game went right. Think about how many A attacks we had, how many five man ramp pushes, especially from NIP on the T side. This, this OT or these OTs have just turned into 5v5 outside. Right there, NIP in the three on three or three on two, put all of their players in the yard. They just know what to expect at this point. These rounds are going by so quickly. And NIP once again in the lead, but if you've been watching closely, you'll know that means absolutely nothing. Appus runs the gauntlet, gets into secret. <laughs> okay, let's, ooh, let's calm down for a minute. And then let's ramp it right back up again. Big setting up over here towards outside. Players back in lobby, still with this utility ready to rain into A. And Hampus has been spotted. Oh, he saved himself with that preemptive smoke grenade. But for how long? Is it delaying the inevitable? Oh. It does oh. get found by Keto. Man advantage taken. And finally, it's that pesky little Hampus that they've dealt with over here in secret. He's been such a nuisance to Big. And with him out of the way, what else is possible in this round now? Rez holding down here at B with Twist alongside him and they make quick work of Keto and Tabson. So while this was a five on four, now it's a three on four in the blink of an eye. Zantares in through main. There's a player in the vent ready to come out to help Plopski if needed, but he never gets to play into the round. Rez tries oh. to time it, but Tizian's too quick. There's Nork with another and we're into a two on two. Oh, twist in main. He looks like he wants to go through. What? He's through the smoke oh. and he gets one, but Zantares trades it out, dropping down himself. And now Nork in the 1v1, trading out onto the AK. Zantares, here's the rotation. He's off the bomb. He's taking the fight oh. and he's going to win it. 25 for big as they make the 1v1 go their way. That was such an excellent call for big, despite getting destroyed down in secret with their two cross players. That was all the info they need. They see twist, they see res, they know it's a lower play. They know NIP have had heavy rotations and they set up what was a plan from the get-go. Molotov in heaven forces Nork out, smoke in May and, and A execute. They even cancel the plant to try and run towards the vent. It almost cost them the round, but there we go. Now, do you remember, Harry? I think it was the first overtime. Nip used three tactics pauses in a row. I bet they're regretting that one right now because no pauses left and more Counter-Strike to be played. This is never going to end. Fast into main for Zantares. No cover from the outside. Hampus wasn't pushed and now he's going to get pushed. Sprays them down, but only good for one. Tabs them uh -oh. doubling up. Uh -oh. Twist in the smoke. Body blocking. They've walked right past him, but I think they've realized oh, oh, oh. Searson shooting him in the back of the head. This pistol is just as viable as his rifle and Rez is now left in a 1v4. 43 kills kills to his name. Yeah, but surely this, surely this is undoable. He does deal with Tabson, but now they know where he is. He's rung that dinner bell and boy is Keto hungry. 26 for big and 25 for NIP. Now it gets a bit tricky when you get to this many overtimes. We're looking for 28 rounds to secure the victory here on Nuke. That puts big two away from that coveted scoreline. NIP, they need to go flawless here in this half. I wonder if Threat can do back massages. I think Nork needs one. <laughs> they need hand massages. They need everything at this point. They need the full spa package. So do you, but the of it. I just need some tea. Going to lose my voice before the second series, but Tizian lost his head at the start of this. It's going to be an opening kill for NIP. A round down, a man up, and Tabson's looking to change the tide, pushing outside, traded by Nork, flashed out by his team, and it's a four on three in the favor of NIP. They've got down secret, but where will they go with that bomb that's still left back in spawn? Rain smoke gets dropped to try and give some safe passage over here outside, but Plopski right now is the only man 
down towards B. And for the other three to try and get across is going to be quite the challenge. With no smokes left, they've got to run the gauntlet and hope that either Nork can out-orp Searson or that they catch a favorable timing here. Searson has just looked away from outside as this push comes in. So they do manage just to skirt on by and get down towards B. Zantares now has to hold his ground. Ooh. Only good for one. And this B site crumbles away before Big's very eyes. Searson and Keto, the two boys from Sprout, they've got to try and build something from this round, grow it from nowhere. Keto, first man to arrive at the scene, twist on the other side of the door. Searson wrapping around, but Nork has him dead to rights. Kill for Keto, but it's only one out of three, and Plopsky gets the trade. NIP tie us up at 26 to 26. Final two here, first to 28. Oh, hey, a fifth overtime. I mean, again, nothing else to do, nowhere else to be. Mirage potentially coming up later, but we'll have to see if NIP can drag us there, kicking and screaming all the way. Big, they're gonna be exhausted. They don't wanna go to a third map. They wanna end this in two, but unfortunately it's not down to them. No one in the lower site in that round, considering how many outside takes we've seen turn into solo lurks in secret and top site hits. Big didn't want to over-rotate, and I don't blame them. Oh, look, it's outside simulator once again. NIP running five behind the smokes. One is close to red. Hampus is hanging around, looking for exiting players, looking for those rotations, but he's going to get caught by the flashbangs. Can't afford to play too aggressive. His team are being loud and proud. And we talk about these lower takes and, and it being empty. Well, here it is once again. Zantares is the only man here and he's only good for one. The plan can come through for NIP and a very early one at that. Great shot from Nork and now hitting his 40th kill in this map. Big have to retake with a man down. All three from Ramp as well. Tizian's already deep in. There's a player down beneath him and he's not aware of that. The longer that Rez goes unchecked, the more valuable this position becomes. Tizian, though, swinging out. Rez never even realized. And oh, another for Tizian. Hampus with the wall bang to deal with him. And a two on two. Nork getting stuck in. And into the site he goes. He gets it all. 27 for NIP. Map point for the Swedes. One away from taking us to Mirage. Big. You won't believe it if I told you, but they are hoping now for another <laughs> overtime in this game. At this point, maybe they're hoping for this to end so they can just get over the hump and get Eventually, on to the next one. Eventually, someone map. has to win. Eventually, <laughs> it has to happen. That's the logical idea, Harry, but uh, it's not really working out in practice. This ain't practice, though. This is an official, an official that will never end, and I don't even want it to. Big, what have you got for us on the CT side? Another outside take with only Plopsky going behind. This is what we saw in regulation. It turned into Hampus and then it eventually turned into five man setups. But right now it's one man and one man only versus Tabson. Plopsky will be able to get to secret. That close molly clears the position that we've seen so many CTs in. No one's crossed there today. sierson has gone lower with the AWP. Zantaras is holding on to ramp, and that seems to be where NIP have set their sights. For now, it's going to be based off that kill. Last time this happened, they double backed into A and got mowed down by Tizzy, and this time they look like they want to commit. Oh, Zantaras gets the info. Can't get caught with a nade out again. That's been a reoccurring problem. Ramp room taken, but NIP, they're not dropping to B. Ooh. They're trying to take heaven. In response to losing Ramp, Big about to take lobby, and they deal with Rez. Five on three. Another overtime on the line, unless Twist, Hampus, and Nork have got it in them to end this now. Keto couldn't get caught in main, and he will. Tizian trying desperately to pick up the pieces. That Molotov oh, no. might make it. Oh, no. Gun, and Tizian burns out. It's a three on three. Three, all on the back of Twist, another shot for Nork. Searson goes down and it's only Zantares left. Oh no, Big, they've done so well to make it last this long. But now all the hopes, all the dreams fall onto Zantares in what should be an impossible round. Half the time ticked off this bomb already. They don't know his whereabouts, but Hampus Holding has it dead to rights. NIP, they play the long game. They long it out and they lock in Mirage. They stay alive, they stay afloat. And now with a third and final map in this series still to come, I can promise you this, we've got another great game of CS coming up after the break.
for being a 9-6 T-side before completely losing control in the second half, ending up in quadruple overtime against the Ninjas. And the Ninjas were the ones who managed to hold firm and bring it home for their fans on the cameras who were cheering them on constantly, although I did see a few people sleeping at the wheel at points. I think there were a few fans who were maybe having to go to the fridge, make a cup of tea. I feel bad that I couldn't bring you guys a cuppa as well, because <laughs> Hugo, you're British, I know you need your sustenance, but we managed to get through. Uh, unfortunately, Big didn't, Harry. Yeah, you know, but I mean, now we have a third map in store, right? And, and I think Mirage is where it gets really, really interesting, because like we, we saw a real shift in like, in what looked like momentum and mentality there. Like Nip, to start the day, they, they looked pretty abysmal, like being real, right? That is not the Nip that we're used to seeing. And then like Nuke, there was just that switch up where you could even tell in the player reaction cameras, right? suddenly they're, they're believing in their ability to close this game out. And that was a great demonstration of resilience from them. It felt like they were getting better and better with each OT that went by, whereas Big started to like drop off, you know? And that's pretty typical when you have those comebacks going against you, when you know you keep throwing away these wins that you could have had. And so now Mirage is like the culmination of all this madness, this third and final map, and it's gonna be an absolute belter. We've got to talk about Res 014 to kick off Vertigo started to find his feet and then went nuclear on the second map. This is 
is a performance we always think we're going to see from Res, but we don't necessarily see it until I guess it matters most, Hugo. Yeah, a boy did it matter in that one, right? For over 40 kills, two players for NIP up there as well. I mean, Res saved them on so many rounds. It, it, it's obviously not just coming down to, you know, one player popping off like that. That entire series, the fact that it's going on so long is because everyone's performing incredibly. But having players like Res just, just going at a level like that, how do you even compete when you're big? And I want to echo what Harry said when it felt like big were the ones who were trying to pull things back. So many of those OTs from the from the very first one all the way to the end, NIP were leading, whether that be by two to one rounds or clean sweeping the CT side and big doing the same. Like credit to, to big for holding on. But yeah, it felt like they were starting to lose a grip on that one. And, and I've never seen such a, a crazy game of overtime where we just see so many reruns of the same strategy really for both teams. It felt like that entire OT was just just in yard. I had my doubts about Twist when I was watching on that CT side. Of course, you're going to fall back on ramp. But there were some times I just wanted him to take the fights. I wanted him to go for it. But I understand the need to play conservatively. Meanwhile, on the other side of things, Big, Tabson and Keto had put numbers on the board and yet losing almost all of their opening duels. I think about 25 rounds in, Tabson had lost all seven yeah. of his opening jewels. He actually ended four and 11 in opening jewels. And you have to remember the context of that. Of those, of, course, of course, the numbers aren't great, but he was playing yard and constantly getting dealt those lurks from Hampus and Plopsky. And then every now and then you TNIP put five players behind the red smoke, uh, smokes and Tabson would get caught. He even crashed a couple of the rounds in regulation on that CT side. So yeah, rough game. But, you know, he had some great rounds in there as well. Everyone did. Well, let's see if everyone can have some great rounds on the deciding map. It's going to be Mirage, and it's coming up after this break. Intel Gamer Days is on now. Whether you're looking to buy or build, now is a great time to upgrade. Get limited time offers and giveaways from top names in PC gaming. Unleash elite gaming performance with systems featuring new 10th gen Intel Core processors and bring Marvel's Avengers to life with in-game optimizations for a mightier PC experience. Act now. Intel Gamer Days is only here for a limited time. If you want to know what you're good at and, well, also, what you suck at, check out csgohub.com. Coming! Everybody loves an underdog. Who needs to be liked? Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel. Victory in a can.
hold so many nations mm. Even when it's so sweet I end up seeing red Is it such a ghostly revelation? I may have fucked up all my chances up all my chances mm. We ain't sleeping on the floor again. We never sleeping on the floor again. For the ones who didn't make it out. For the ones that didn't see the life. For the ones that never cared. Never gave a thought. Found no happiness in that brand new car. Or the house you bought. I see you talking about the love you lost. And it was gone like way before you ever thought it was. Yeah, I took my time. No quick ones. Quick run. Quick guys to get back there. Hot roads. I didn't think I'd come back fast. Cause I was running roads so many nations. ESL One Cologne Online is brought to you in part by Intel, Mountain Dew Game Fuel, DHL, and GG Bet. This is ESL One Cologne, and no one wants to be going home, especially these two. But there's just one map standing between them and an early home time. Big and Nip fought two for Nelfu, four overtimes on Nuke, but the Ninjas managed to survive at least for another hour or so, <laughs> Harry. And Mirage is a map where anything can really happen. Yeah, I mean, as we saw already between Nip and OG, right, when they went head-to-head -head on this map, it was a very close affair. I think, critically, Nork needs to be keeping up his very, very prominent orping presence in the server, especially when you've got someone like Searson on the other side. I think that head-to-head -head is going to be so interesting to see, especially because it felt like Nork was getting better and better, whereas Searson, outside of that great 1v3 with the P250 that started terribly and then, like, went amazingly, uh, he, he needs to kind of get back to the form that we're used to seeing from him, even though he had a great game in the beginning. It was as it got closer, as the rounds meant more and more, it felt like you could see the pressure getting to it. And given that Nip run, won the knife round, we're obviously presuming they're going to be playing on the CT side first. I kind of want to get your predictions on this one. Oh no, don't say that. Don't 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 do that to me, Frankie. Let's I'm gonna go, go big. big. Let's, I'm gonna go a big. Why not, right? You know, I, I, I feel like maybe that one exhausted them a little bit, but you know. What, what can you even say at this point? How can you even know what's going to happen? They don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. Frankie, what's your prediction? I'm going to say big because I think last time we saw Nip play on Mirage, Twist still adjusting to his position. Although yeah. we did see him pick up the orb, so maybe he's going to be secondary on this one. We're going to have to wait and see, but not for much longer because we're going to head straight into the pistol round. It's all to play for the spot in ESL1 Cologne. is in the balance. Who's it going to be? This is no longer a game of Counter-Strike. This is a marathon. This is an endurance test. And we're going to see who can hold on the longest. They've played a hell of a lot of rounds in this series so far. Forget the first map was a stomp. NIP have warmed up. They're bringing the power. They're bringing the heat. Let's go Mirage. Took us three hours to get here and 54 rounds of CS on Nuke. But here it is, the old dusty Mirage that we're all so familiar with. And let's see, Tizzy and up through connector fast in this round with the jungle smoke to accompany this push. But the rest of the gang are up through short and twist oh. will bite the dust. Down goes Plopski as well. And B has fallen. But Nork and Hampus getting a kill apiece on opposing sides of the map have made this field doable in the three on three. 
Yeah, NIP now having the realization that, wait, these aren't three round halves, these are 15 round halves. We have to deal with this all game long. And Keto is making it a quick affair with a P250. Entry into B, shutting down both rotations and Searson catches Rez mid air. Big, a nice little B execute to start things off and take the pistol round in their favor. And so in that death segment, Frankie was saying how, you know, like neither one of these teams wants to go home. Well, that's true because it's ESL 1 Cologne. No one wants to leave it. But you think about what this means to these teams. You look down NIP. This is a, this is an organization that's synonymous with this event. And then like for two individuals in particular in Hampus and Nork, this is their first Cologne. They've only ever played in Gamers Legion uh, in qualifiers. They've never been at the main event. So they want to keep that dream burning. And for Big, they're a German team. They're on home soil. They want to relive the 2018 glory days but this time do it right and they're coming off the back of an online season that's been so great to them so so much riding on this for both of these teams Hampus down here one of the guys in question that I was saying this probably means a lot to opening this round up with a deagle but he's lost teammates over here in middle leaving them now in a three on at four in spite of this force buy and back to the b site for big they've got up catwalk and there's no one to stop them those rotates are getting into b at the nick of time rez with a deagle and twist tucked on the car getting spammed down by the glills you can hear them rattling tattling off taps and gets a double kill and hampus has found a galil but it's not going to be put to much use here as the bomb's already planted he's got keto dead to right and well, now he's trying to escape with that AK dropped up on the catwalk. Big don't want to make it easy for him, though. And Tizian has already begun the hunt. Oh, dear, Hampus. Patient play. He knows he doesn't have to rush away, but with all the time it ticks off, Searson gets closer. And even though he dies, Tizian can trade, grabbing the AK. Only the MAC-10 lost. Not a big problem for Big. And now NIP, uh, a little eco before we get into those gun rounds. Even a Zeus on Plopsky as well. So let's see where he's taking that one. I don't know about you guys, but I'm down for as much silence as I can. Because if this game goes on as long as the last one, I might not have a voice left for the rest of ESL 1 Cologne. Now, let's see. We'll keep it nice. We'll keep it calm. Hampus and Plopski here at the B-bomb site. A zoom from Plopski, but it never sees the light of day. And so B now belongs to Big. Zantara's coming in with another. And this is nice. It's clean. It's exactly how it should be. I'm very happy about that. And Searson's making a lot of money so he can buy this AWP up as soon as possible, which will likely be coming out in this follow-up round for Big. Exactly what you want. And yeah, that that head to head. I feel like we didn't get a lot of Nork versus Searson on Nuke, right? Um, but I think this is the map where that could change, where we could finally have some head to head orping, right? More standard positions. T's going middle with theirs, uh, you know, peaking connector for, for Nork in this half or fighting window. More likely to get those battles in rather than close range secret control and B executes. There's a 4K from Searson, really making that moolah. Could even stick with it, right? If you if you want, you know that even showing that MAC-10 in that round puts pressure on NIP to spend more money on head armor so they don't have that happen to them. And so that's a bit of a mind game coming into this one. It's early days. We'll see what Searson decides to do as he sweeps his way through the B site in the previous. So Hugo, how do we settle who we're billing for the uh, the throat medicine we're going to need? Is it just the loser of this series? I think that's a fair way to do it, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, let's hold him to it. Keto going to hold down Rez up in Palace, and Hampus comes in with a response. It's a four on four. Ooh, Ork there it is. Nice to flick down to Searson, but Searson comes out ahead. So that man advantage going back in favor of Big. Twist in the meantime has thrown a bit of a twist into this round as he goes aggressive in through the B apartments. While he does now assume oh. that this side of the map is clear, that's a bit of misinformation. And the only kill that might present oh. itself is this one onto Keto. As now the B site falls into the hands of Big, it's gonna be a three on three retake for the NIP guys. Yeah, Tabson's trying to take market, an aggressive position that Plopsky is delaying his rotation to. Twist with the smoke. I don't know if he could even see Tizian, but he hears the plant, and that's all he needs, taking him down off of the site. 
Taps is still waiting for this lurk out the back. Twist getting wall banged by Searson. His second kill of the round. I love this delay from Plopsky, but Tabson is so aware. He's so ready for it. As soon as he moves away, they swap spots. And Plopsky's now been seen. Tabson deletes him from the round. Hampus in the same position that they just cleared. They weren't ready for it. Looking at short. Hampus now in the one on one. Tabson picking up a Galil. There is a kit on Hampus. He's going to put the smoke on the bomb. He needs to go a bit wider and might force a spray from Tabson. He's holding his own. Finally going for some shots, swinging out. And Hampus wins the battle. Great patience there. Could have just sticked the defuse. Might have even gotten away with it, given the angle that Tapson took. But regardless, it's a round win for NIP. And Hampus even saves the AWP as well. Nork may have died in the ladder room last time, but it's going to give him a second try with that weapon. And also this from Twist, the timing. Oh, not that Keto expected him there, but that was a very, very good check from him. And uh, hey, again, you know, maybe, maybe Twist can see through that. Even though we can't, smokes render differently uh, on spectator than they do client. So there's a chance, regardless. Twist with a big round, finding two. And that was something that, again, Frankie, uh, Frankie brought up, which was when we saw NIP the other day on this map against OG Twist, his inaugural game without the AWP, uh, he really struggled. He had a really, really rough time on that B-bomb site. Obviously, it's a hard spot to play and, and one that you're constantly just rotating to A retakes. But uh, against OG, they, they had a lot of cat takes, as we've already seen from Big. And so Twist was getting very much pressured and, uh, you know, removed from rounds. So already seeing him have a nice little 2K there, saving NIP in the apartments, sets us up for a good game. IP looking to take ramp control away from big. And they also move into Palace. This is great. NIP, they've just unlocked a, a heap of information. It's like they found some lost archives. They know exactly what's happening in this round now. They've cleared the apartments. They've cleared ramp. They know it's not A. And so now these players in B, they're ready for what's about to come their way. And there's two fast flanks ready to come through. A leg from Nork helps Plopsky solidify that kill. The only X factor here is Tabson through short and Nork deals with it well. Looking to put even more on the tally here, but he does get wrapped by Keto, who follows up with another. And so we're into this two on two. Rez and Hampus, they have been sneaking all round long through T-spawn around the world and they drop the bomb as it's getting planted. Centares never spots the double ramp, uh, double palace play either, apartments rather, and Keto now gets it down to the 1v1. He expects, he reads, and now tag down low. Just Rez still to beat, but he's dodging the shots right now. 35 seconds. Rez gonna swing for the peak and he finds the kill to put that second round on the board for NIP. Oh, they're already setting a precedent, Harry. These are these really quick uh, uh, flanks coming through the B apartments have caught big off both times now. And well, NIP, you know that big are gonna be constantly watching their back moving into this B site in the future. Whether that comes to help or hurt them, we'll have to wait and see. Back and forth, three to two in the favor of Big. NIP looking to equal up that score as they control the money. Big do not. It's pistols and it's out the A site. Not fast, but early. As all five players set outside the ramp, Tabson with a con smoke and he's going to double flash as well. Walk with a missed shot, has to fall off. He's got no armor as well, so these PT-50s can just churn through him. Plopsky coming through the connector smoke and all these CTs facing. I love the confidence from NIP, right? Obviously, we saw a lot of just very quick rounds and, and people bringing the fight on the CT side of Nuke, but uh, not fearful of the pistols, knowing they shouldn't let Big get the bomb plant unless they absolutely have to. That's going to be the score equaled up. Searson coming back in with the AWP. Facing off once again against Nork. Hampus runs the gauntlet early on and gets that nade out. Tabson gets caught crossing. The rest of Big setting up here outside of the A site. Nork already posted up on Palace and he could have another kill ready to come his way. Keto doesn't know it, but he's a matter of pixels away from certain death. Does back Ooh. off, and now... Tarez sneaking out through ramp has gotten pretty deep within this A site. Nork's back in CT. There's a man hidden on firebox as well. That's going to be Hampus looking to play into this round a little bit later now. 
as this A side play looks to come through. Hampus blindsides one, gets the information that Zantares is there, and Zantares needed that kill, really, because now he's stuck here in Sandwich. Ooh, the flash what? is good. Zantares just about getting away with his life, but they know that they've got him trapped here out in Sandwich. The flash is leaving everyone on big blind, and this retake might not even be a retake. This bomb can't get into the site. It gets dropped crossing on Tizian. A nice kill from Quito, but it all falls onto Zintares. Not usually an AWPA. Here he is trying to don it, but Plopsky gets the better of him. And so NIP, they're going to take the lead as they scow scavenge a fourth round. It calling in a very early tactical timeout here. Yeah, when it feels too good to be true, it often is, right? Zantara's getting so deep, clearing Sandwich, clearing Under, clearing, you know, Tetris, uh, not seeing anyone peak CT either. Whereas well, Hampus hidden at the back of the site. Hampus even flashes uh, after he sees Zantara's and peeks with the flash. Not after, not as it pops, but as he throws it. Zantara's turns around and then flicks back as he realizes what he's done and gets that kill. Despite that, NIP still have all the rotations towards A. They've been very quick to rotate the communication has looked really really good not just the b flanks but everyone surrounding a right there and uh, twist getting boosted up in the jungle above that smoke was a bit of a problem for big trying to cross the bomb to the site plopsky is mobile <laughs> as he moves across the room to fist bump they're just swapping setups you know threat play this round for me but uh yeah big broke again it's going to be back to pistols bouncing that molly into the window it's a nice way of doing it Worth noting, we're seeing Popsky play Van in a lot of these rounds. That's where Twist was in the game that he really struggled. So that maybe there's already been some adjustments, some changes here for NIP on this B site. And right now, the results are showing a full shutdown on the B rush. Big get no one in. One man out of the apartments, but the rest die up in the window. You saw nothing. Close your eyes. And five to three. I was just then finishing the script off for the rest of this game. <laughs> yeah, this one's going to five OTs. Shh, don't tell anyone. Yeah, funnily enough, Tom Eric told me, uh, our producer told me right before the game, uh, oh yeah, you know, as each uh, as each OT happens, uh, on every other OT, we go to a break. Uh, you know, so for one OT, for three OTs, for five, five OTs, and I jokingly said like, yeah, I mean, sure, I'll be ready when we go to five OTs for that. But we almost did. He almost jinxed. That was why they put it in the script, man. You can hear them in the other room just typing away, getting it all on there, right? Tizian holding these lower tunnels, and he's looking to flip the script here with an early kill onto Rez, but Twist has moved in through the upper halls and deals Ooh. with Tizian well, so immediately into a four and four. I love this aggression that we're seeing from NIP, because immediately Big's hands are tied. They've got to commit to an A play. They've lost the apartments, and now they kind of know, like, with someone so deep, at least they have a chance of getting into A with a very slow rotation. But this is more than what NIP are ready for, right? They've cleared out B. They know it's not mid. They know it's not B. There's only one site left in the map. And so they've just <laughs> hunkered down with everyone here. Searson getting himself another Nork. Chiming in with one from CT. Searson trying to go up and over to deal with the AWP at the back of the site, and he will. Swinging out at stairs is Keto, and he falls, leaving Searson in the hot seat. 1v2 required the moment he stands up. Nasty oh. surprise oh. as Twist gets the better of him there. It's a defuse for NIP and a sixth round on the board as they now go double to that of Big's three. Yeah, it may have been Plopsky fighting from the top, but it's Twist to steal it away through the woodwork. NIP, these have been some lovely retakes so far in this map. They are looking very much in control, and this would be heartbreaking for Big to lose here, right? Think back to, if you can remember, many months ago at the start of this series, Big dominated NIP on the Ninja's map pick, and that was Vertigo, 16-5 to after a 12-3 CT side. We then go to Nuke. Big have a lovely start, a 9-6 T side. looks all in control, and NIP, they just keep on giving. They never stop fragging, and now in the lead, in control of the finale of an elimination match, keep in mind. Oh, nice shot from Searson. Oh. He's following up, both through the smoke and big. Well, you hear them, or well, they hear me talking down on them, and they pick it right back up. Not going down without a fight. 
Swiss now has to make a bit of a stand here inside of the B site while he does deal with taps, and this is where Tizian's meant to wrap in through the apartments. Twist, another kill, twists and turns, but Tizian out from the apartments has dealt with him, and we're into this 1v2. Zantara's a long way away from home, a long way away from this B bomb site, and with Hampus rooting in through these lower tunnels, he could cut off Zintares in rotation, at which point this is down to a 1v1. So this fight here matters oh, the no. most, and Hampus isn't ready for it. Why would you be? It's big, just about getting that fourth round up on the board. Some nice quick footwork from Searson to open the round up and try as Twist might to hold on. It's not enough. Oh, beautiful shots. The orbs have been very exciting in this series, as they often are, especially with this change from NIP to move a twist away from the primary orb and knock onto it. Not seen Hampus picking it up all too much, but he was prolifically orping back on, especially Inferno, and even at times on Mirage in that OG series to start off clone. They have no need for two orpers, although Keto has shown his hand at it back on Vertigo as well. But not here, not now. Scout for Searson, saving a bit of money. Too poor for the AWP. And setting up smokes towards B. Twist is back up on the car. Popsky is nowhere to be seen in the window, and Rez is just left on rotation. So NIP not very much expecting this B play, but maybe they should be. They've got a deep ramp set up. They have a lot of information. Taps and getting smoked. I think Zantaris threw that from the B apartments to set him up. Not Zantaris, sorry, someone else. But regardless of the player, the play is in. Popsky finds one on ladder, and now they can be ready for the B play. Great shot following up into the apartments drop, and Twist is holding his own on the bench as well. He's going to get mollied out, smokes it to stay alive, and Popsky is on the run for a 4k he's gonna go out wide receiving a tag but it doesn't matter two hp four kills seven rounds all these numbers looking good for the ninjas this is unreal like think about because because Hugo, you touched upon it right like vertigo nip just looked out of it like this looked like they didn't come into the day uh, ready for the challenge that is this big squad. And then Nuke, it is a brawl. They managed to pull it back on Big's map pick. And now here on Mirage, toe-to-toe -to -toe versus Big, who are currently ranked one in the world, right, after a very successful time since moving online. And it's an age-old idiom that the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And that could be the case for Big. Hampus oh hidden in this smoke. No one is ready for it. And so <laughs> Hampus just tears them apart. The B play cut down as Twist finishes it off. And it's eight on the board for NIP. Yeah, I haven't seen someone do that since Sunny in Mouse Sports, right? Pushing Cat, getting in that smoke and just hiding and listening to footsteps. Not the big made any, but he made the right call. He made the read that they walked right past. And Twist is definitely looking far more comfortable on this B-bomb site, right? He's not dying immediately on car or getting mollied out. He played, uh, he, he sprays down two from the van this time, but in the round prior, he hides on the bench. Big double molly him. He smokes the molly. He just lets Plopsky do the work. And sometimes that's all it is a B. It's just staying alive. It's stalling dropping your smoke, going full taco, and backing up towards the bench. Great work. Popsky through the smoke is opening up this round into middle, and right through the smoke bin, they run the gauntlet. Maybe not going too well for them. Hampers is slaughtering right now. Look at his KD, 17 and 7. He might want to one-up that. Searson's on the other side, and Hampers throwing in the nade. Bit of damage as well. Searson, oh, he can't even hit the shot. Rez just domes him. And this is looking like a fresh M NIP, a warmed up NIP. How could you not be after 54 rounds on the previous map? And it's the two X Sprout boys that are blossoming for big right now. They are the only two in double digits over in the big side of things. It's, it's, it's the old boys. It's the ones that we've come to know and love. Zantara's, Tabs, and Tizian with 10 kills between them. Both getting out fragged individually, uh, sorry, as a three by the individuals of Keto and Searson. And we need everyone in big showing up if they want to get this one over the line. Because NIP, they're not here to play around. They're not playing games anymore. They are looking to send Big home. I love that call towards B. They quickly crouch next to Platt and boost Plopsky up. So he is in the B apartments and pushing deep before Big are even ready for him. He mows them down and he gets out alive as well. It's only pistols for Big, but they're really getting made mincemeat of. NIP have 
everything under control. A is open for the taking, but playing from CT, it's a retake setup for NIP. And well, that's assuming they let the bomb go down, which is maybe the wrong assumption to make with them fighting from CT. Nork is covering the cross with his AWP, and even if he misses and big get close, Plopsky, oh, Rez is here as well. Oh dear, they both take fights. Rez falls short, Nork with the AWP. Oh dear, the knife's out. Oh, so close, but yes, yeah, so far. What else can you do when you run out of ammo? It's going to be 10 to 4 here for NIP. If you want to know how dominant these rounds have been, money is always a good a good kind of telling point there. Yeah. Plopsky with max cash, you know, if it weren't for buying the nades here. In the last four rounds, NIP have lost one player. So that is just incredibly dominant. And like someone like Rez, right, who's three and eight, hasn't even had to do a hell of a lot because the rest of the team have been. Yeah. He put in his work back on <laughs> Nuke. And so now he's got his What's legs up. He's again? relaxing. They're ready for this B play once more. Twist boosted in, going aggressive, gets out of there. And that's because Rez has already opened up onto Zentares, going aggressive in Palace. This aggression from NIP, Big just don't look ready for it at all. Tabson now creeping on out, trying to get revenge for his fallen comrade in the fall of Zentares. And while he does get it, Nork's immediately there to keep this in the favor of NIP. Hampus even spots the mid play. He sees the players looking to me meander their way in towards this B site, but still NIP a too strong hold here at the B side. They boost up Searson. Big, they need more. It definitely feels like they need more still. And 5-10, even that is hard enough. The Molly forces oh, no. the peak, but a missed shot. Plopsky, still a nuisance, still a threat. Does get bested by Tizian, but it's Twist, who's proving to be the problem right now. Leaves it just on the AWP for Big and into the window. He misses the jump. Little does he know it. That's just saved his life, albeit momentarily, because Nork is still there. It's NIP with 11, Big with four. And this first half draws to a close in a very dominant fashion. NIP, they're trying to flip this script. Can they get it done? Join us in just a moment to find out.
you're in the big house and we did have a life sentence back on Nuke, but it's been downgraded here. A very, very fast half of play on Mirage. NIP 11 to four up as they look to send Big home. The favorites here in this matchup and now the, the script has been flipped. Big, they're on the back foot and it's looking like a fast B play from NIP to kickstart this pistol round. Red Lamb is looking to take the short rotation. We got three in the apps, and it looks like Tabson is ready for them. He's anticipating the push, but actually, is Antara still feeling his way there? They haven't showed their hand yet, apart from a couple of smokes on the B site. Rotation hasn't been called in for the two A players yet, Ooh. and the fights begin, Harry. Yeah, Nork's opened up, but no one's cleared out Tabson. The flash is good, and oh, he almost taps down another. That could have made all the difference, but they do go back, and they deal with Tabson. Tizzy and Keto, two on three. And if this pistol round eludes big, it could be a very fast, anticlimactic ending to this elimination best of three. Tizzy and rounding the corner, looking to get stuck in, trying to close the distance, and one of them gets spotted there by Nork. Both players now inside of the site, and Hotski just deletes them. The round is over, and NIP, they get the pistol. They go 12-4 up. This comeback for big now becomes even more insurmountable. Yeah. That is a huge round to lose. It felt like Big were late to the B site as well. They're in spawn buying, sneaking over, I guess by design. But even though Tapson has a great position, position that doesn't get checked, he has to go wide to stop the plant and it is covered. Boy, oh boy, NIP, you, you got to hats off to them. They have, they've kept this up. They've kept up the energy. They've not dropped off despite getting wrecked on their map pick. And right now they are in pole position to kick big out of ESL1 Cologne 2020. Can they do it though? Will it be that easy? Oh, B play. Tantares and Tizzy in here to try and hold the line. Keita rotating in over at short, but both players falling right away. Leave Tizzy in, in the hot seat, and it's very hot indeed. Tabson doesn't stand the test of time, and this leaves Searson all alone in the 1v3. He's armed with a scout. This man has become synonymous with this weapon, but not this time around. Twist gets the better of him. NIP up against the force by. They find another round. And so for Big, it's an eco. Likely going to have to give over 14 before that full buy ever even arrives. I don't think I've seen any emotion out of Nork in this entire series. We've had him on camera like a thousand times and he has just looked the same. He is so chill, so relaxed, so cool, calm and collected. And uh, yeah, NIP, they have reason to be 13-4 and a near full eco from Big. Just a few pistol upgrades and a flash and smoke. It's going to be the A site crunch for NIP. They're not waiting around and they're running them down. Hampus in the connector. Couple of kills from the P250 as Antares. It's actually a team flash from Rez that caught Nork out. Could that cost them potentially? But the pistols are all that's left. Tabson, right place, right time. K takes the shot. There's a player above him. Tabson, he could have saved the round, but he's only going to get one. And I don't want to take anything away from Big here, but it does feel like exhaustion looks to be setting in. Obviously, same game played for NIP. They were in the same map. Uh, uh, you know, the, the same four overtimes on Nuke and everyone reacts differently, but this is not looking like the big that we usually see on Mirage that we've seen all series long. And NIP, they are taking full advantage of that and slamming their face in the dirt. Coming here off the back of a victory at DreamHack Masters Spring, big, they, they were looking poised to finally have that dream of another run in Cologne to relive the glory of 2018. And, and now it might all end on day three of the event. NIP, from a slow start to the day to a strong finish, if they are able to get this over the line, big, they are up against overwhelming odds, four to 14. They need 10 in a row to equalize this one up. They need 12 in a row if they wanted to end it in regulation and already they've lost a man early on. It's Centares getting picked up. One of the keys to this big squad already removed. NIP, the pressure's off, five on four. Flashing towards mid, gives Tabson the re-peak, but he still gets bested by Rez. It's falling apart piece by piece for big. And now three V five. 
as this bomb starts to make its way in through the apartments. Yeah, I think Big have already realized the penny's beginning to drop. Searson in the connector pushes the smoke, but that is not going to work wonders. Hampus low, still lives to fight another day. Tizian needs to mow down. There's a great spray, but he won't get the second kill. And at this point, every shot matters. Rez is dead as well. Tizian versus two Ooh. low HP players, and he's going to be able to hold his own. Standing tool, staying alive. Keto coming in through the middle. The orb is going to get spotted and tapped, but no significant damage. Tizian has 20 seconds. He sees the barrel. He can spray. He can pray, and he might be able to ace. It's done. Tizian's kept them in it. Tizian's denied map point to NIP. It's five kills for Tizian. He's so dependable in these situations, and he still wants to turn it around here on Mirage. Five to 14. It's not going to be easy, but if we can rely on Tizian to anchor this B bomb site in this fashion, then maybe there's still a glimmer of hope, but at this point, it really is a glimmer. They need nine more in a row like that to tie us up. Partial investment in from NIP. A hero AK on Hampus, and it's going to make its way out here at a ramp. Oh, it was no. blow for blow with Keto and doesn't come out ahead. Now, 3v5. NIP just with pistols, and maybe a sixth round locked and loaded for big. Oh, Boosteroo. I'm going to go into the window. Plopsky just kind of hang around on the edge, waiting for a kill to come his way. If you're NIP here, just take your time, mate. Just sweat them out. Make Big get nervous. Look for someone over-aggressing or making a mistake. You have such a lead. You have so much time. There's absolutely no rush. Rez is clearing out close positions. No one's even spotting this. Now, Zantaras might check this on a timing. But he's got his eyes on the window right now. Oh, the timing does not work for him. Propsky spots him now. These close players can look to overwhelm. Twist with one, but oh dear, smoke in his hands. And Torres trying to fight back with his own sidearm. Needs a reload here, but that smoke buys him time and gives him cover. Tizzy and hiding at the back of the site. Not just a B player. He's out here on A as well. The last thing they expected as the bomb gets dropped in the open. Good stuff for Big in control of this round once again, but not for long. Plopsky finding one through the gap in the smoke and looking to fight into middle. The flash does nothing to Tabson up close and Searson holds the cross to the bomb. Oh, oh. Rez trying to play the trigger discipline and doesn't have that shot in time. Ah, Searson weird. holding down the line at six for Big. Still a ways to go, cannot stress that enough. But these are the building blocks. These are the foundations being laid by Big right now. And then they've got to try and build the big house atop of it. NIP in with another buy. Mac 10 on Hampus. Rifles on the other four. Double orb setup being bought out for Big. One of those on Keto, the other on Searson, as you come to expect. Look at those three smokes leaves spawn very quickly. NIP, they're looking for a rush into this A site, and they're going to be splitting it from two in the middle. They slow it right down. They've actually completely halted. Searson, waiting in window, he sees that smoke, and now he knows that there's a man in this window area. Twist has dodged the nade and stays alive for now, but Keto and Tabson make quick work of the ramp play big. Is this it? Is this the resurrection of the big boys? A little bit late in the game, but still in with a chance. Hampus there delivering one, but this should be the trade from Keto. Hampus giving it a little bit more room, but is that going to be enough? With a player in lower, this kill should be locked in for big, and indeed it is. Twist now very far away. Oh, with only the AK and two points of health. As much as this comeback is attainable, it's doable. We've seen Bigot do it before. This is the map that they pulled a comeback on against G2 in that Dream Map Masters Finals that you talked about. But uh, the worry is, you know, as soon as a kill comes through, as soon as you lose a man, they're worried that things could all just come unraveling. Big, back on Nuke at 27-26, had a five-on-three advantage. It was theirs for the taking. A fifth overtime was round the corner. NIP picked up a three-on-five to take us here to Mirage to close out the map. So Big have been burnt before. They don't want to assume anything. They don't want to make the mistake of you know, thinking you know, they've already won a round. They'll be taking things safe and slow as is Twist in this save. 10 seconds in B, he's going to get away with it. Big are trying to hunt down this gun, trying to deny any money, but they are far too far away from this man in the under. 
So it will be seven for big regardless, but an AK saved onto an eco round. Last time we saw this buy from MIP, um, it was Hampus walking out a ramp and the rest of NIP up in the B apartments with that bomb. So do they want to use the AK to open up a, a site and push behind it? Or do they want to send it out on a lone scavenger mission, a lurk? Have to wait and see. There's not going to be a lot of money here for Nip. Again, you can like you can take the risk of force buying at this scoreline, but I don't see you know Threat or Hampers making that call at this point. There's no need to. It's not like you know you know Big have low money or anything. They've got guns to fall back on. Double orp again. You have this hero AK up in the apartments with the rest of the gang. Nork is lurking on A with a Glock, hoping he gets some information or a push down the ramp towards him. Oh, oh, Hampus with the deagle. Oh, no, Hampus not like this. From a flashbang that's just arriving a little too late and Twist gets the kill. Oh, big. They, they've tried to stumble back to their feet, but it's sticking the landing that can somehow be the hardest part. Five on three, double AWP as well. If this comes down to a retake, that is anything but ideal. They need to somehow chip away at NIP before that bomb goes down. And this is why I love what Nip are doing right here, right now. The, the only thing they've got going for them still is the man advantage here. And they're doing everything they can to deny any kind of information, any kind of kill over the big to give them an edge in this round. Now, Searson taking this control of B apartments at least gives that two-man hold over towards A the security to know that B is not the site in question right now. 30 seconds and almost everyone coming through Palace for NIP. Tizian, this man has been who we've been able to rely on time and time again, but this time he falls right away. Keto oh no. almost caught with a nade out back in CT. This could be the end for Big. Oh. As Keto will nail the shot. The bomb gets planted. It's double AWP in the retake. This is never ideal, but can these two Hold on for big. No. They can't. It's 15 for NIP. Match and series point. The money of big is down in the dumpster. This now could get snatched away from them on the back of a partial investment from NIP. This is the worry, right? All it takes is that kill, that one opener that can change everything. And Akito, he unscopes twice towards Palace and immediately gets peaked by the, the player with the AK, I think it was Twist, right after it, both times. That is just so unfortunate. And it's gonna cost big more than they could ever imagine. Look at this buy, this is dire. This is not what you want against your tournament elimination. Lifeline, Searson with the scout up in the apartments, fully flashed out. His barrel could stick out, they could be ready for this. They're just gonna wall bang him, they know he's there. And now Twist elevating the pace off the back of that kill. tabson has gone as well. NIP looking like they're about to send big home. Oh, Tizian's been given a second chance for that missed shot from North. Keto digging out Hampus, Tizian, can he deliver again? Last time at B, he was on for the ace. This time getting pressure, Tizian another, but it's a two on two. He's done his best he can. It falls to Keto and Zintares to keep the ESL one cologne dream for big alive that little bit longer. Bomb drop. Not rushing the plant or NIP, and this could work Ooh. in their favor. They spot the man in the apartments. That's Keto. Drops himself no. a smoke, but Nork through it, leaves it onto Zantares, who's now in a 1v2 of a lifetime. If there ever was a time for a vintage performance from this man, it is now. Deeg out, rushing the site, trying as best he can to find these kills, but Zantares getting whittled down. Oh, no. He's peace, and there he falls. NIP, they send Big home, and they take this series two to one, dominant on Mirage. NIP, they beat the big boys, they send them packing, and the dreams of a 2018 revival for big are out the window. Nip, what a performance, what a series, and it's hard to say it, but there's still more games to come. Why would you be anywhere else but right here, right now, watching this game? Join us after a quick break, because we'll be back with even more.
Cause nobody else is showing any empathy oh. Rudely awakened, quiet undertaking Did I do something wrong? Life isn't easy, why did you leave me here with my thoughts alone? the break it was heartbreak for our home nation of germany as big failed to go the distance and the ninjas sent them out of esl1 cologne after really just having more stamina this ladies and gentlemen is your mountain dew game fuel post-match and it's quite a surprise to me personally boys that the ninjas managed to put in such an effortless display on mirage because really judging by the first two maps it looked like it was bigs to lose yeah they look pooped by the end of things right like that t side for big fell flat four rounds and four kills for each of the the, the three ogs of big we're talking zantara's tizzy and tabson absolutely silent right great game from nip and again both of them played the previous map both of them must have been exhausted from what was nuke but nip held themselves together far better going into that third. Yeah, it felt like Big kept trying to get back into that like groove that they'd established earlier on, which was like, you know, a lot of like a calculated aggression here and there. And, and that just wasn't working at all on Mirage, right? So many of those rounds, like thinking about the one at 14 that made all the difference where they lose to that partial buy. It's Centares trying to peek into the apartments that gives up that first kill. The moment that happens, you see like the worry in Big, right? They go four on five up against 14 with elimination on the line. And and suddenly it's just chaos. Everyone's caught out of position and one by one, it falls apart. It felt like the nerves, and, and you know, you understand why. It just felt like the nerves really started to get too big towards the end there. 
Well, one player who was ice cold and entirely consistent throughout that series was young Plopsky. And he is with us now for the Mountain Dew Game Fuel post-match interview. Always a pleasure to talk to Nico. And I have to ask you, Plopsky, that start on Vertigo, yes, you showed up. Hampus did everything he could. But the rest of the team, it was a little bit of a slow start. Why was that? Um, I'm not really sure uh, sure why, because uh, we prepared, I thought we prepared really well. Uh, like we had a little bit of practice session before the game and yeah, we prepared for the game. And uh, I don't know, it just, uh, the energy was really slow uh, on Vertigo, at least the first half. Then we started to get going a little bit on the second half, but uh, yeah, I mean, we couldn't uh, really get anything more. And uh, then after the Vertigo, we just had a like small talk that we got to give it our all and uh, just push like the energy and everything. And I mean, yeah, uh, the nuke was pretty intense, um, but the, our energy was really high the last two maps. Like every, every round it was very high. And uh, I think that's why we won today. Plopsky, I want to know a bit more about Twist because we saw him struggling since that since that AWP change. It felt like the other day, right? He didn't quite have the impact we were looking for. What kind of changes did you guys look to make? Because today he, he performed great in the server and it was a real treat to see. Yeah, I mean, uh, we I mean we changed uh, Twist and Knock to Knock the main AWP uh, and uh, Twist like more of a support slash lurk role. And uh, I mean, Twist has played AWP his whole life. I mean, life, I mean, career. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Feels like so, a lifetime. I mean, it takes a little, yeah, it takes a little bit of, uh, of time for him to get used to playing the more of support, support slash lurk role, uh, which we all understand that we're all like fully supporting him and everything. I mean, everyone has bad days, and uh, some. I mean, today, yesterday, uh, was maybe his off day or you know something like that. And uh, but today, like we all played really good, and uh, yeah, I'm really happy. Uh, Plopsky, Nuke was a barn burner, and you mentioned that you still had high energy coming into Mirage. Firstly, how do you keep that energy after playing 54 rounds on one map? And secondly, do you think that that impacted big, right? They, they seem pretty slow on Mirage as the third map. Do you think they'd ran out of steam? I mean, maybe, uh, like, the Mirage game felt really quick. Like, the yeah. first half felt like 20 minutes. Uh, but we were just, like, really pumped. We were like, yeah, we're going to win this now, and you know, we gave it our all. And I don't know if... We just had so much energy. Uh, maybe because <laughs> we didn't have so much energy on Vertigo, so we had it for the last two maps. I don't know. But I don't know what happened, really. We just had a small talk, and then boom. We were so talkative, and like everyone was so like, so, so good at communicating and everything. Like It just felt really smooth. Well, good luck with your next matches. I say matches. Hopefully, you're going to get through your next one as well, Plopsky. Congratulations on keeping your place here at ESL 1 Cologne. For you guys, you need to stick around because there's a chance for you to win too because very shortly, we're going to have our DHL drop of the day. That's going to take place during our next series, which is going to be Fnatic versus Heretics. Intel Gamer Days is on now. Whether you're looking to buy or build, now is a great time to upgrade. Get limited time offers and giveaways from top names in PC gaming. Unleash elite gaming performance with systems featuring new 10th gen Intel Core processors and bring Marvel's Avengers to life with in-game optimizations for a mightier PC experience. Act now. Intel Gamer Days is only here for a limited time.
If you want to know what you're good at, and, well, also, what you suck at, check out csgohub.com. Coming! Everybody loves an underdog. Who needs to be liked? Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel. Victory in a can. For a long time now Always have a good time whenever we go out But you've been calling me up all the time And sending me signs and giving me them eyes And you've been saying that you found the one Texting me junk and you wanna talk But you can't say why I can't get there and you know I've tried You know I don't wanna waste your time City of lights and looking in your eyes but I can't say why Does it feel right to go ESL One Cologne Online is brought to you in part by Intel Mountain Dew Game Fuel DHL and GG Bet. Wow, Effie, what are you doing down here? Oh, you good boy. What did you bring me? Let me have a look. A keyboard. Where is this coming from? I just ordered that. So fast and so reliable, man. Let me just bring that one upstairs, all right? Then we're going to meet here, and you're going to show me the way.
Welcome back to ESL One Cologne. We're in for a true David and Goliath matchup now between Fnatic and Team Heretics. Team Heretics, it went the way we expected when they had the French derby against Vitality. And when I spoke to Kiyoshima last week, that's become a catchphrase now, when I spoke to him for that player's name here last week, he said that sometimes it goes fantastically for this team, sometimes it goes terribly. I did not say to him, does that depend on your opponent? Because he didn't want to be mean, but he did tell me also that means they're constantly changing up the roles in this team. This is a team that's very much in a transition period. And I don't think they're going to necessarily find when they need to be when they're meeting Fnatic on the server today. Yeah, I, I think what you mentioned is good because, it, 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 you know, they're an upset team, right? They're an underdog for sure. These guys, uh, a, a mix of experience and some of the you know, younger new players of the French scene. That being said, they have upset, upset potential. They have some great players and some great ideas. And so that's why, yeah, sometimes it does go great and they upset. And sometimes it goes terribly and the expected uh, winner will win. They've actually played Fnatic before. We saw them back in RTR and they managed to take a map Still lost the series. I remember Maka having some excellent orping on Nuke. And, uh, and you know, I think that's probably going to come through in this series as well today. Fnatic love Nuke. Maybe not against Astralis, though. We saw how that one went for them, uh, knocking them down to the lower bracket in a two-mapper. Question is, can Fnatic dust themselves off? I believe we're going to be getting into this veto very quickly, in fact, straight away. So, Harry, I do want to get your predictions here on which way it's going to go in terms of the veto. Uh, yeah, well, you know, like Hugo said, I think there's a chance that we could see Nuke in here, right? Um, I, I, mate, for me, it's it's always a little bit tricky, you know, especially because we just come off the back of such an intense series. I still have to try and calm down, Frankie. But look, we already have Train and Vertigo taken out. Train makes sense for Heretics. That's a map they always get rid of, so that one's gone. Uh, and then, you know, I, I would love to see Nuke with Vertigo getting removed. That's, yeah, we go. Look, Nuke first French, pick straight course, in. It's happening. Then we have Ooh. the Inferno pick. The same one. Um, Fnatic. Is, yeah. Yeah, this is the same veto so far as we saw them last time. It was overpass. It ends on overpass. End. Oh, it yeah. doesn't. Okay. Fnatic did bash them out on that one to finish the series last time. So I'm not really surprised to see that. Mirage is such a such a middle ground map when no one is going to be uncomfortable, right? And least of all, Fnatic. They shouldn't be coming into this, this series with any fear. Yeah, what I wanted to say is I think that for, for Heretics, right, they're, they're in a bit of a rough spot here because... As Hugo was saying, they are like an upset team right now. That's kind of where we have them pegged. And I think maybe day one Fnatic, you can come in and surprise. But after yeah. already being dealt a very rough hand by Astralis just the other day, I feel like the fire is going to be lit beneath Fnatic. You know, they don't want to come in and just go out on the third day of Cologne. They, they want to they wanna make a run here. They want to turn things around. So you're not going to be up against the sleepy Fnatic, no. Th these guys are going to be have warmed up. They're going to be ready for today's game. Yeah. And so I don't think they're going to fall prey to any little tricks that Heretics might have up their sleeve in the same way they would if this was like on day one. So is this simply a case of Fnatic just needing all the players to show up? Again, I know it's a cliche, it's cliche for a reason because Brolin was doing all the heavy lifting in their match against the Astralis and the other players from map to map, they just seemed to decide whether they wanted to show up or not. It really was inconsistent across the board. Brolin's used to doing some heavy lifting. Right? Like he's routinely the top performer yeah. on Fnatic. So I do think he's definitely like the guy we should be keeping an eye on. Um, yeah, you know, I think an interesting one is that orb duel between JW and Maka. I think that's a huge talking point, right? Maka is so consistent with this orb and I imagine partly because Nevera kind of puts that bit of pressure on him being someone who used to don the orb similar situation what we just saw in NIP with Twist and uh, and Nork so you know I guess we'll have to wait and see Nuke's about to begin that music means one thing and one thing only that means the game is about to go live hello it's Fnatic taking on Team Heretics and let's get this one underway I don't think we've had enough nuke today, Frankie. I feel like we need another 54 round. We'll see if that will come through, though. Fnatic, they're in a great spot right now. Obviously not so much being in the lower bracket, elimination on the line, but if they can't win this game, then that would be, uh, that would be a weird, weird world we live in. That being said, Heretics, upset team all the way. They've got some great players, and this is a go-to map for them that they've beaten Fnatic on before. It did go the full 30, but JW doesn't want to wait. He is right behind enemy lines in the back of the lobby after pushing yard. He's missed Lucky on the timing. His footsteps might even get heard. Oh dear, now they can turn around and they can deal with him. Nivera's checked it. JW backs up into the lobby and into his own death. That is unfortunate. Meanwhile, Lucky's taken A and Heretics are going to double back into it. Just Crimson Flusher left. The rest of Fnatic have been melted like it's casual. You know, I see Flusher. 
I see his mouse getting some distance off the mouse pad, and I think, you know, maybe there's a chance. Maybe there is still a world in which you're able to make this look doable. Lucky going to give up his position on the CT vent. Crim's trying to clear the lobby. These fights are a must win. And with Keo plucking Flusher out of the round, Crim's is now actually trapped here in the lobby. And that might be where he finds himself having to go wait in the lobby. It's a round for Heretics. 1-0 and as they get the pistol under their belt. Yeah, that was a bit of a classic, right? The uh, We call that the Hugo, actually, funnily enough. They were rushing ramp with one waiting in the hut for an aggressive CT, and Lucky is that guy waiting, not only getting a kill into A. I, I love what we just saw. That, that looked like it was like a motivational poster, but it was just a stat with a face behind it. Sorry, Hugo. Yeah, no, it's I didn't mean fine. to segue you out of your actual point there. I, I, it doesn't matter. It probably wasn't that good anyway. I didn't see what happened on screen, but uh, yeah, you know, I like the pistol. Obviously, JW... Unfortunately, he misses the timing. Lucky walks into the hut right as he starts running. So, very unfortunate. Now, Mac 10's out for Heretics. They're going quick in the ramp. JW with a scout. Oh, he just gets domed. Lucky is looking warmed up. And that's the thing, right? You know, we, we talk about uh, Heretics having that upset potential. They got nothing to lose in this series and everything to gain. Oh, boy. Why not bring the pain? Golden, he's going to get two with a deeg, smoke himself off so he can feign that he gets out the door but he'll stay hanging around as heretics bounce back the other way they want to go towards that top site fanatic they played astralis and were constantly getting dealt rough hands where they'd rotate lower and then lose upper and it would be all these fakes so as long as they have that game in the back of their mind they're not going to be making these same mistakes heretics going quiet and crims is curious Oh no, the weapon swap, it doesn't matter. He gets away with a D kill. That's more than you can ask for considering the timing. It could have been the round right then and there, but instead it's Heretic still under question moving outside. Oh, Golden though, just giving that kill up and now that A play is solidified for Heretics. Brolin is still inside of the site. I see Brolin, I see CZ, and I think about some things that this man has done with this little gun. So let's see. If he's able to hold on to this site, the bomb gets dropped down, and now he knows that this ruse is working perfectly. They tap it, he swings out, but XMS is oh, one man. step ahead, and he's going to lock in the round for Team Heretic. So a second solidified over on the scoreboard, and now for Fnatic, it is back to the drawing board. Yeah, more Ecos. This is the perfect round for a Zeus if you're JW. Did manage to pull that out in the Astralis series just the other day. But nothing for now. No investment for Fnatic wanting to save all their money that they can. And of course, JW wanting the AWP as soon as possible. Zeus not really returning that money. Not expensive either. Heretics fast out A. They are going to send Keo down the vent with that smoke in front. And uh, knowing the Fnatic can't stop it given the lack of weaponry. JW even gets mollied on the hut roof and, and pushed to the other side. So he doesn't even see the vent dive, but he does hear it. Kyo wasn't exactly quiet about it. Maka has come all the way towards Secret and is looking for a pick in the yard. Oh dear, missed Molotov. Meant to be for main. Instead, it gets flashed out. There's no one there, luckily enough. But Golden, man, his deeg is looking fresh. Third kill with it. And now we're going to see Heretics just drop lower. Oh, Kyo with a little quick flick with the Mac 10. Now he's looking for even more. And he will get even more. It's that easy. It's that easy. So yeah, this is pretty much it. Hope you guys are having fun. <laughs> you know, for Heretics. Keep you guys updated on what's happening behind the scenes here in the studio. I've just seen that we've had AC put in, which I'm very happy about. So that's good. No more 30 degree heat outside. 50 degree heat inside. I can breathe again. I was going to give a B stream update because I haven't been following the games before I forgot that the B stream has ended. That's done and dusted, at least for now. Yeah, that's normally where we are, actually. Yeah, so, funnily yeah. enough. That's we, normally our territory. We, we made it. that mistake. I'm sad, man. I love the Aussie casters. Yeah. I love the lingo, especially. <laughs> My favorite word that I learned when I was in Australia is cooked. That's still one that I use an awful lot. <laughs> um, so yeah, shout out one time to that little country known as Australia. Tiny place.
obviously. Well, right now, Heretics, they are in control of this one. Fnatic have their first gun round, though, and this is what we've been waiting for. The Eco's done and dusted, and Fnatic, they're going to have to let this cross outside, right through the molly, into the spray. Lucky, he does not wait for Fnatic. He's right down into secret. Hacker, oh, great position. Even catches Golden off guard, but he's going to whiff this shot. And Golden, man, Golden's looking great right now. I know we're super early, but he's the one player for Fnatic finding kills in all these rounds so far. JW hiding at the back of ramp. He might have been spotted there. Yep, deep flashes coming through. They aren't looking at him, though. So tension getting drawn by Golden. He just needs to live now because JW can turn this whole operation upside down and inside out. Keo's looking towards the bottom of ramp, and they have their backs turned. This is so patient. The longer he waits, the more effective this is. Oh, dear. Forget I said anything. A dink onto XMS, and he is going to live to fight another day. Swapping out to the MAC-10. Flushes here, already waiting in the wings. Dropping Keo. Swinging, but Nevera is going to trade, and this is going very well for Heretics, all things considered. Oh, Nevera even dealing with Golden. This is brutal. Brolin's going to try and do what he can, but he can't quite deny that bomb plant. So now him and Crims, two on two in the retake. Nevera over here at ramp. Oh, just sneaking his way down town, and Nevera. 23 points of health, one shot away from certain death and maybe about to deliver a 1v2 that Heretics desperately need. Brolin on the other side, but Nevera's got them all. Four in the round, 6-0 and oh on the scoreboard and a fourth for Heretics locked in by Nevera. Very much under control right now. I'm liking what we're seeing. I hope it's not a, you know, a sleepy fanatic. Well, not sleepy, obviously, but uh, slow out of the gate and, you know, late to warm up. We saw that against Astralis. Obviously, Astralis had a great game uh, the other day in that, uh, in that opening matchup. But Fnatic, it felt like they never really appeared. They never really came alive on Nuke. Took them trained to get to OT, only to fall just a bit too short. Entry from Macca again, another opening kill, no AWP needed. And Heretics are using that opening kill to their advantage, taking a lot of space outside. Lucky, he is battling back against Golden, who won't be hitting any D shots now. Uh, yeah, dangerous spam back through the smoke. It only draws Keo uh, into that fight. He could have lived if he just ran around, but uh, Tracer's giving away his position and finished off by the AK. Heretics. And a five on three. No reason to rush, no reason to move. You can just wait and see if Fnatic give you any more engagements, especially when those smokes begin to fade. I like the patient default from Heretics. They still have a man in secret as well, so some information towards that lower bomb site. Oh, this is... Uh... Ooh, that's a nice D from Crims, yeah. but it comes abruptly to a halt. Heretics up 5-0. and oh. I do love this storyline of Nevera, right? Everyone always loves to point out Scream's brother, of course, right? And obviously, ever since we lost Scream to Valorant, it becomes that much more appealing to speak about how Nevera is continuing, like, the family name. But I will say it's important to realize this young man is trying to carve out his entire own legacy, right? He's not just riding on the coattails of his brethren. Now he wants to be his own thing and he's certainly making an impression right now versus Fnatic. And my source tells me that apparently very different to his brother in game and yet outside of that, when he's actually playing next to his teammates, he acts, he reacts exactly like Scream. Apparently it's uncanny. That's a great thing because Scream is super entertaining. So I'm all for that. And we get hopefully Nevera some lands in the future when that happens again one day. He's right. only 19. It's definitely going to happen one day. Yeah. That would be a very short career if not. Or maybe the world will come to an end. Who knows? But uh, yeah. Always cheery topics of conversation with you two. I can always rely on, you know, looking at the bright side. Once Harry, I had a Frankie and Hugo segue. You bring us up, we bring it back down. And yeah, I mean, it is scary. Fnatic Online, Frankie, we've already talked about that so much and the struggles that they have had. But right now, Brolin is not having any trouble on top of the silo, dropping the bomb. It's out in the site. Heretics have to commit. They've got to do and then die. Lucky has got them both. And he gets a kill, but swiftly traded by JW's AWP. Finally in the server with two. And Fnatic, they get on the board.
Yeah, it was about time. For now, I'm going to grace that scoreboard. It does feel like during this online era, it's like teams, and, and this kind of feeds into the whole idea of online being more random. Yeah. No team has been able to just hold down that number one spot, right? Like, you think Fnatic, they peaked at number one during EPL and RTR, and then they immediately fell off. Mouse Sports came into the year as number one. They immediately fell off. Big, they claim number one. We just witnessed them fall off. Yep. It's, it's a real, real turbulent time. It's scary, and it, that's why I kind of want Astralis back up at the top, you know, for that sense. Like, if this new roster can be can be super powerful, that'd be really cool. Oh, nice kill from Crims. He actually fakes going down and comes back up. There's two players here. He's baiting them in. He is dead. Do they check it? No. They line up, and a double kill from Flusher keeps Fnatic in this round by the skin of their teeth. Two on two. Golden's taking the lobby, and his teammate's still on the A site with him. Heretics are clearing out lower as we speak, and the bomb plant will be allowed. Yeah, keo has got that locked in at least. Brolin and Golden in the retake now. Going to start to feed their way down here towards ramp, slow and steady on this rotation. And if it's to be in slow, is that you also come in low and quiet. And so, no one aware of this yet, but Keo is not taking his eyes off of ramp. He is adamant. And as I say, he takes his eyes off ramp. But now back to ramp. Here he is, Kiyoshima, ready to put a stop to this retake. Uh, Oh, there's wow. Keo with four. Six on the board for Heretics. And it was a little bit of a rough start, but a strong finish from Kiyoshima to get a sixth up there on the tally. Yeah, he's looking great individually, and, and there is so much firepower inside of this team. Even if it's maybe people aren't familiar with some of the names, like Mac is a sick Orpa, Nivera X Orpa, great rifler. Uh, Keo, I mean, I don't need to explain who he is. If you know Counter-Strike, you know Keo. And... Yeah, it's great to see him looking good. Trigger happy in that round, right? Shoots at the blood on the wall. Hopefully, he's got a clear, decal, a clear decal's bind. Right now, Heretics, 6-1 up in great spot. Fast towards ramp. Flash is going to drop one. Flash will miss, and he's going to get a chance to stand tall. The smoke is good. Maka climbs above it on the boxes, and will get traded after one. Golden again doing as Golden does, and saving the day. Three on ramp, and now just Keo. Well, we've just hyped him up in his last round with a 4K. Let's see if he can do it again, all on his own. I'm not really favoring the odds in this one. He's... Circling ramp rule, he's expecting the push from Trophy, checking his corners, and Golden is just squatting there. He's ready for Kia to push. Kia, check behind your back, mate. No. Okay. Into Trophy, checking ramp again. He's, I feel like the Fnatic rap should come in, but actually, it looks like Fnatic are happy to just let Kia sit there. They're not really feeling the pressure to take this gun away from him. Yeah, already you can you can kind of see the differences as to how like a team like Fnatic are approaching this and a team like Big, right? Like Big, they would swarm you in this situation, <laughs> whereas Keo is given a lot of respect and a lot of room here to try and navigate this 1v4. Now, is that something Fnatic are going to come back to have punished them? As Keo makes his way down into this B site. Forget about rambling, man. He's a gambling man as he's got this bomb. Now down in towards B, tries to get it planted in the smoke. Brolin's going to spam, but doesn't commit to a fight just yet. Swings the door out and is just trying to buy time for the rest of Fnatic to come in on rotation. Keo, this is not an easy round, and Golden's going to get rid of him. So Fnatic, they do manage to get a second up on the tally as they find this one pretty damn cleanly, thanks to Golden locking it down at ramp. Yeah, double orb saved as well is worth noting. So Fnatic, where are they going to be putting that second one? I imagine the ramp outside split, pretty standard on Nuke, but you can have that uh, second orb as a rotate in heaven if you like, and just switch, uh, swip swap between the A site and ramp support. Swip swap. Switch, swap. Swip swap, I like it. Well, they're in the end. Words, they're hard. I find them harder than most. I'm in the wrong job. Shush, switch out. Yeah, this was the RTR of this game that the stat is talking about. Um, just recently, of course, Fnatic win that series. It took them three maps, 16-14s on the first two, and it's the same two that we have opening up this series, New Inferno. So even that spells, not disaster, but a bit of worry for Fnatic in the sense that we've seen Heretics win this map before, and they also put up a damn good fight on Inferno as well. So, you know, if Fnatic are, are coming in slow into this one, then that could come back to bite them. But I don't want to make any assumptions at 6-2, like, the, the, like the, this is a problem yet. 
it's really not, especially when we saw dominant T sides on Nuke in that earlier game. Two, nine, six halves. You're just saving yourself for the uh, quintuple overtime yeah, I don't bonanza. Wanna, I don't want to, you know, lose all my energy here and now. You've got to save some of it for later. Well, energy saving Byron's have been fitted in the studio. So let's see. Flusher going to hold down ramp with this AWP. And he's got players on the other side, but they're not coming into his crosshair just yet. It's a nice slow approach here from Heretics as they group on up. Now get ready to pull the trigger on this ramp play. There is a flash on Keo to get them in. The moment that flash comes through, Flusher probably going to take a shot and just hop his way down the ramp. Now backing away. Flash actually never leaves Keo's hands. JW here with the other AWP. And oh, he decides to get out of danger. Leaves ramp open. And this now leaves Flusher at the B site looking for an angle to take. He's going to swing this door open to give himself a little gun pour out. Heretics, look at them go. They're grouped up and... They're a pack animal as they make their way back into the lobby. It's Brolin holding down the hut. This is a scary place for this man to find himself, at least for Team Heretics, because we know what he's capable of. Brolin gets one, drops the smoke, denies this hut play, and Heretics is back to it. We're going on the full tour. Talk us through it, Kia. Like, what are we looking at right now? It's going yeah, outside. Yeah, we are. We've been to ramp. We've been to hut. I know Frankie really wanted to speak some French then, because oui. pretty proficient at it. There we go. But look at the time. <laughs> 15 seconds. They're going to try and get in through main. Oh, bro. Oh, go, go. Oh, has Allez. this crossfire with Crims. They lose Crims, but this is where Brolin just locks it down. Oh, no. And that there is the round. Yeah, I thought Fnatic might cheese it a little bit and kill him after time. There was definitely the option there. But at this point, just getting the trades, getting the round, keeping your players alive is a focus of Fnatic. Up to three. Eco stopped and dropped. Heretics coming back in with guns. Yet to get Mac, uh, you know, showing us what he can do on this AWP. There's always time. And it is the T side in Nuke, right? This is a very hard half to get a lot of value out of the orb. Certain great spawn points to go for, right? Like taking the door fight uh, or, or just picking ramp, of course, outside. But we see so many smokes there quite often. A lot of early fights here for Fnatic. Brolin and Crims taking opening kills. Lucky's on B with a bomb. He's going to run through the smoke. I like it. Flasher caught walking into the ramp, thinking he was going to be able to get close enough to stop that plant. Well, the plant comes to him, and Lucky has taken that AWP. Lucky's still down in B alone with the bomb on his back, though. And he kind of needs support from the rest of the gang because there's no, you know, getting out of this one. And actually, as I say that, he's going to get out of this one in through the double doors. And now an option to maybe go back up through vents into this A site. But that hinges on getting kills here. It's all about what heretics want to do now because they've got like pieces of the puzzle. It's all about arranging them. And with Lucky still waiting down on B, they're going to see what they can accomplish here outside. Losing XMS now, in my mind, solidifies that this might have to be a B commitment. The bomb is still making its way over towards vents. Right. And with that kill from Maka, now maybe there's a chance. But it's all about clearing out Crims, who lies in wait here next to the vents. If Lucky does try and come up, he will promptly be put down. Oh, JW is so close as well. But yet, so far, they're waiting on this ramp lock. But again, time could be the bane of Heretic's existence. JW, he's not going to be expected here. But Mac, uh, Lucky is clearing every angle. Does he clear this one? Mac is spots him. There's the info. He doesn't need to commit. The pistol's out, and it will not find a thing. No way in hell Heretic's going to win this round. That is crazy. The plant is covered by the Molotov that does considerable damage to Crims. And they're both back up on the rafters. I like the post plants. Wallbang is coming through, nothing connecting, and Fnatic double back to the double doors. Yeah, Lucky holding it with the AWP, flash misses, and that's a free kill for Lucky. Golden left in the clutch, swings the doors, wow. but Mac is there. And that's a two on four for Team Heretics. Lucky stays alive in B the whole damn round and is there to see it through to the very, very end. That's a bit of a heartbreaking one for Fnatic to have slipped by the wayside. Attack pause cooled on in. They can go for an investment thanks to JW having so much extra money. He can drop guns around, but even then, it's going to be a little more limited than perhaps you would like, especially with this lead getting more and more solidified by Heretics. 
round by round. Yeah, it's crazy how much room Fnatic gave Heretics in that round. For, for Maka to just fully wrap the outside and get towards ramp after killing Brolin in heaven. Obviously, that's the kill that gives him the room, but... Yeah, what can Fnatic do about that? They don't want to over-aggress and be caught on rotation, so they just sit in their spots. JW has a great position, but, you know, Pistol out. He was hoping for a fight on the site from an unsuspecting player, but instead it's a ramp rap. And, yeah, Rifle versus Pistol at that range going to lose it for JW, sadly. If he had his orb out, maybe he could have hit it. But not happening, and the B site lost Heretics with a plant, and they even hear the rotate down vent. So all the info is there as well. That was a really nice play from Heretics. They bled the round for everything they could get. What they got was a win. 7-3. Fnatic still with a bit of money left, but this will be their last buy. JW with the AWP, and all oh, lucky. He's going to capitalize Crim's reload. That's all the audio lucky needs. He sees the AWP, and he does the damage. Won't finish the kill, but that's going to send JW scared off. Golden flies up the vents, and he has been the one bastion of hope here on this CT side. Can he stay alive any longer? It's a no. XMS triple entry into A, finishing the job the lucky started onto JW, and Flusher... All on you, bud. Yeah, the bomb plant's getting covered by XMS and he's not in a missing oh, mood. Man. There it is, four kills in the round for him. I'm getting some flashbacks to like years ago now. You remember that one like XMS clip on Overpass? Oh I yeah. It was like... Uh, My favorite caster actually covered that one. It was, yeah. That was super sick. Matthew Trivet? Yeah. Yeah, he was there. And Alongside me. Harry Russell. That was, uh, one taps. Yeah, no, that was a sick play. And I just got some memories of that there with that upper push, right? He only gets four, but they're all like these really nice headshots on the entry. XMS is looking good. I always think like if we can get him back to old form, this could be a very, very terrifying man to run into. It is just pistols now for Fnatic and Maka with this AWP in hand off to uh, rip roaring start. Ooh. Lucky, here's something that you're going to learn about playing against JW. He will do the most ridiculous things. He's hidden in this smoke. He's trying to piece together, like, how do I get a knife kill here? And sadly, it doesn't present itself. He's got the AK, though, and that's deadly in his hands. But Nevera is here to alleviate that pressure and deal with JW. Uh, Lucky's view model, assuming he has right hands, was fully blocking JW. So even after that smoke phase, he can't see him. And yeah, that's uh, very unfortunate for him, but exactly what JW needed to open up this round. It's still not a lot though, a man down. And Heretics, I love how slow they're playing. They just stop and hold the line. Golden wants info, and he's gonna get a bullet in the face instead. This is Mac all coming alive in this round, Brolin. I love it, brilliant. But only a dink, unfortunately. Keo will kill him. And Flusher, uh, once again, in a very undoable clutch. He does get a kill, but that gun is pretty irretrievable right now. He's gonna try and wrap Lobby and XMS, man. He is clean right now. And yeah, it's, it's worth noting as well, Heretics, for a team like this, for an upcoming young hungry team, they're playing a lot of online, right? They're, they're used to this setting. They're comfortable right now. And as we know, as we always say, Fnatic are land kings. So that's certainly gonna play in the, the favor of Heretics. Of course, these rounds are great right now. They're, they're having some nice ideas. Um, but something like that, we've seen teams struggle with the online factor, and Fnatic are definitely one of them. One of the things I really liked is I read an interview with Maka, and he just said how in this team, obviously, there's a lot of experience of, like, every level, and he feels like they've struck a perfect balance, and I feel like we see that in these crunch time moments, you know, like, knowing when to slow down, when to pick up the pace, and Maka, okay. through the smoke, through the wall, the man in question, Able to rid the world of Golden. And now into this four on four, the AWP getting warmed up. And that's a scary sight to see. JW shows you don't always need the big green gun to have fun. He deals with a man trying to get across and then Brolin follows up, XMS and Keo. Two on three now. And Brolin over here on top of the hut, looking to shut this round down. Gonna go ahead and drop down into the lobby. Flusher wrapping up through secret in the meantime. Crim's holding CT Ben. Keo's making noise. And XMS turning on a dime, but just a second too late for Flusher. Now leaves Keo in a very rough spot. He doesn't know about Brolin. Who on earth would know about Brolin here? He's behind enemy lines. And so for Keo, this round should be undoable. Yeah, and Brolin knows about him, not where he is now, but where he just was. Keo threw a hut roof molly, and so obviously that means he's on T-roof, or at least 
he was. So Brolin is outplaying him with his flank. He didn't spot him outside, but he's coming in through the hut, and Keo's going to begin to make noise if he wants to win this round, that is. There was simply no time to get that bomb. He was looking for kills and nothing but kills. Brolin is full of them, and will keep this round intact for Fnatic. Still a great T side from Heretics. Even if this ends 9-6, to six, they'll be happy. But why end here when you can build up even more? If they want to take the hit with the AWP um, and not have it in this round, Maka and I think it was Lucky can both drop over guns and we can get a pretty decent buy. Or they can eco and, and hero AK, yeah, that's fine, and still have the AWP in the next round. So this, both, both options are good. Really, just whatever your game plan is. And Heretics are going to rely on Maka to do the heavy lifting in this round. So JW getting the lines blurred between Shotgun and AWP once again as he goes aggressive in through the hut. He's got Brolin nearby to help him out in the event that he misses his shot, and he will. The most important thing is that he uh, he shooted his shot. And that's a lesson we can all learn from. Brolin. Don't swap any other vowels there. No. <laughs> Ooh, Maka over here with that hero AK looking for a kill that's not going to present itself. The eagle out now for Lucky. Hard pressed to get much done here, as it is just a slaughterhouse outside. JW trapped behind the vent, but that might be the only kill that's found in this round for Team Heretics. Keo, 1v4 required, armed with nothing more than a deagle. You're asking a hell of a lot of him, especially as he walks into this heavily stacked A bomb site. There are going to be so many crosshairs on him. How on earth do you get around that? And the answer is you don't. It's Fnatic donning a fifth round. Krim saves the AWP too, so no money worries for Fnatic coming into the last of the half. But yeah, they, they've at least resurged. They've come up with a few rounds near the end of things. Heretics looking for a quick pause before they go into the final round here. See if they can get double digits. That would be really nice if so. When we look at opening jewels, Golden is leading the fray in the server. Four and zero, looking really, really good. Uh, and, and that's nice to see. And Brolin close behind at three and one. So... If anything, the opening jewels are favoring Fnatic heavily in this map, despite them being down significantly by four rounds. Nine in favor of Fnatic, five in favor of Heretics. So in fact, the opposite of the scoreline. That just goes to show how many rounds Heretics are getting. Uh, oh, sorry, how many either trades Heretics are getting or coming back from four on fives. So impressive stuff from this young, hungry team to make a meal of Fnatic. Mac is going to try and creep up behind this smoke. There's a re-smoke throwing down there, but it's left a bit of a gap. That's what that second one's for. That denies JW the vision he was hoping for. Great molly. Yeah, that slowed down this push, and it's kept the majority of players trapped outside. They have to run through another Molotov just to get down. And now that they're in B, they're not really in B just yet. Flusher is still here and still a threat as he pokes his head out the window. How much is that flusher in the window? Nevera going to make a cool $300 for it. So he's happy about that. Down goes JW as well. And this B bomb site crumbles underneath the heel of the heretics. Golden denied a peek at ramp. And with a player in the form of Kiyoshima wrapping in through the lobby, Golden's days on this earth might be limited. And even then, oh my, it all falls onto Brolin in this 1v5. All the damage you're seeing pretty much is from Molotovs in this round. Fnatic have done something like 250 damage on Mollies, but only now do they get their first kill. Brolin finishing the job onto Maka, but is this one too far gone? More likely than not, he's got a, not a lot of time to hit these shots, and Lucky is just going to overwhelm him. Ten heretics are in high supply right now. They are looking fresh and ready to take down Fnatic on their map pick. Will they be able to? You'll have to stick with us and wait to find out. The second half continues in just a moment.
ticked all the boxes there in that first half of play. And for Fnatic, they're a little bit slow out of the gate, but let's see if they can recover. Kyo's boys right now are looking good at the end of that first half of play on Nuke. It's 10-5 in their favor. And 10 is bigger than five. You can tell that because it's got two digits in it, Hugo. Wow, mind equals blown, Harry. You've really done the maths on me there. Brolin, he's uh, got the lights on for a change. He's got the windows open, so not sitting in the dark anymore. Can he bring some light to Fnatic here in the second half? Looking good in the pistol. Flusher finding one, and lucky gone in main as Fnatic overwhelm the B site. Oh, Nevera holding it down. Nevera with three. Where has that come from? Or maybe he's made this round doable now. Flusher and Golden in this 2v2, but they lose Golden. It falls to Flusher. Oh. And now he's trying to deal with Keo, but he can't find the shot. And it's a screamer from Nevera that gets that pistol round locked in for Team Heretics. Oh boy, this one's heating up and maybe going stone cold for Fnatic because down six rounds and with, uh, you know, no money either, no bomb plant to even enable deagles or a force buy that would look good. If they want to buy here, it would be a big risk and probably just dig their hole deeper, Frankie. We have been quite lucky so far at ISO1 Cologne. We've not had too many tech issues, but apparently Heretics, the coach, has been kicked off his PC. So we're Ooh. going to have a little bit of a pause as we watch Crims just rub his head for luck and hope that they can make something work and deny the conversion for Heretics. It's not really looking too good for Fnatic so far. Not really coming on the server, although I'm glad to see Golden Boy has returned. Yeah, he is like the one guy who's doing stuff. Brolin has 12 kills. He's all right right now. But Golden, he was getting all those openings. He was hitting a lot of Deeg shots, 4-0 uh, and in opening duels. But right now, it's just not mattering. It's not changing anything. Well, you said the magic word, Hugo. You mentioned Deego. We love a dirty Deego here at ESL. Dirty Deego, dirty disco. We're going to see some highlights from ESL Pro League. The rest of the gang has smoked off in mid, but the B players are holding their ground, at least right now. A bomb plant is available to Rops at a bare minimum. Back, 
What in good name is that? Oh, they're trying to get spotted back here up into the site. And Simple's got to do something here. Holds the line with one, doubling it with the Deagle. And Simple just pokes up. Let's go, Victor! He my good! Just gracious me. Nice shot. Ah, I'm really trying to make this one. Oh, oh my god. Now Dexter deciding to take the fight to the terrorists, and there's two kills. More always gonna be trading positions in the smoke. Pundit making a move through round the trade, and Dexter picked him off. He's actually pulled the clutch off. What a play from Dexter! And ESL Pro League returns in less than two weeks, 2nd of September. Mark it in your calendars and make sure you write a note to yourself. Do not leave your desktop anytime soon because we're about to get back into this game. There's just so much Counter-Strike to be watched, Frank. We've got two weeks of Cologne. We've got a month of Pro League. Then we got IEM New York right after with more, you know, uh, Road to Real Madness, uh, I guess. So that's going to be really exciting. 2020 is jam-packed full of Counter-Strike. And this door is jam-packed packed full of Swedes, Fnatic. They're running it down, but they are hitting the Molotovs. A brick wall. And Keo's SMG finding a lot of kills. Bomb plants and uh, allowed out on B. I don't know if Heretics realized that Flusher got down. He's dropped his pistol. <laughs> he doesn't even have a gun. He's I'm got a knife only. This is the next step. Yeah. Of what? How's he done that? He's got, a, he's got an MP9 now. All right. What's he going to do with it? He does get shut down. If that there, okay, that's the next, that's the next evolution of Fnatic. You throw the guns away. You have the knife in hand, only the knife. And then you have to get knife kills yep. to earn the gun. It's like gun game. Yeah. Fnatic, that there is... <laughs> it's not scout knives, it's uh, bomb knives. That's so, oh man. No plant and stab. Flusher, yeah, like even Crims is like, oh, that's even gross by our standards, you know, like... What a dick. Yeah. <laughs> I love it as well because <laughs> Heretics was so not ready for that. Like, Flush just barrels up. There was Someone a guy already who came through, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the ninth kill. Oh, oh, that's brilliant. Oh, well, Flush is going to burn out another. Don't use guns. Just, you know, fire, knives, bombs. The man of... <sighs> I was going to say many weapons, but... I guess not the guns. Who knows what's happening at this point? 12-5, no, okay, bye Flusher. Finally, Vengeance is near, Vengeance is here. Lucky's gonna spam him through the door smoke and JW's got the AWP outside, that's what we want from JW. Quick kill onto Maka, defeating the CT sniper. And now Lucky coming down the vents at the right time because Fnatic are moving heavily through secret. I hope that round was a reminder that Fnatic play their best when they're having fun. And that kind of scares me because I don't want Fnatic to be having fun if we want Heretic to have a chance. Lucky. Ooh. Good for one before he gets traded. And now we're into this three on two. Down through the vent. It's XMS. Lots of low players, but JW still holding his ground. And now event dive, or rather event inclined as they go back up into this A bomb site. And Nevera is left in a very, very tricky 1v3. Wait, and now that Molly as well. He's got a nade for the site. There's a low player. Ooh, is it bouncing on the other side? I think so. Golden will live to fight another day, and Nevera might fall away in this round. I think this is where someone like Keo certainly should remind his team of heretics that, okay, guys, we're in a great position. This is this is 12-6. We're fine. But don't for a second think that this game is done. Don't for a second think that we've beaten Fnatic, because... This is where they can come alive on the T side and set the pace and run their own style and show everything that they've been preparing over the last you know, month of player break. So, yeah, there's still some, some significant pressure here for Heretics to close this game out. And it's not going to be easy, especially not with the things we've seen from these last couple of rounds. JW's AWP coming alive as well. We're going to see Lucky buy one up. Maybe he'll throw that to Maka. And, yeah... AWP battle, time to shine.
But a crucial round here, right? Because if Heretics immediately get back on the board and, and take a win here, they can break Fnatic's money and they can really run away with this map. But on the flip side, Fnatic can start to build and they'll have an eco on the CT's following. So let's see as these T's run round red. And into Maka they go. He deals with the first man. Now looking for the follow-up and a few more stragglers. Try and get past, but Lucky, Ooh. living up to his name, gets one through the smoke before being traded by Brolin. There's a smoke down, and that's going to keep Fnatic out of this B site for now. They leave Brolin here with the bomb, so it looks like it could still end up at B. Does have Golden now coming down to join him. Flusher is, is left outside to fend for himself. Flush is a big boy. He can take care of himself. So Keo here, going to miss the timing on this cross, and they do get past. Little does he know. Brolin's actually hounding him down. Falls prey to Keo Shima. Golden has the bomb on his back, and he makes noise going up the vent, trying to fake this rotation back towards the A site. But in doing so, he's given Nevera time to get posted up at ramp. This is a fight that Golden has to win, and he does. He wins it in one bullet. Down goes Nevera, and now a 1v2 for Golden. This man, he was elected to lead. Maybe to read as well, as he's going to have to do so in this 1v2. Flash is going out towards the double doors, but both players for Heretics over in Decon. Golden, another kill. Just the last man, a Maka. Oh. Damage done, but not good enough from Golden. It's 13 for Heretics, as that 3v1 ends in a 1v1 that they just about get over the line. I love watching Golden clutch, because all he's trying to do is, is give misinformation away and make Heretics doubt himself, right? Doubt themselves, right? You know, coming up the vent, faking it. Unfortunately for him, there was a player on A just watching the vent, so they knew that wasn't the case. When he plants, he opens the doors, he immediately repositions, they think he's pushed and he gets one, almost doubles down, but the trade comes through. And yeah, really nice try. And unfortunately, you know, it's Heretic uh, for Fnatic again, for Fnatic, you know, Heretics up to 13. Uh, luckily, the bomb plant will give them a good bit of money to continue to buy up. And if anything, Fnatic's buy is better than Heretics. You could argue that. Three SMGs, JW not waiting for anyone, running right down the fence. He doesn't, he doesn't have the bomb, but he can cause a lot of. Uh, you know, issues just being in the back line here for Heretics. Nevera's come on rotation, and he should be able to get in this corner before JW hits the window and has an angle to him. So Nevera doesn't need to fight this with this weapon. He can choose to instead, and JW is waiting for a ramp rotate that has come way before he arrived. And now Fnatic are kind of tiptoeing their way back over here towards Ramp, looking like they want to try and use JW as like the first piece of the puzzle into the B site. Utility gets exchanged, nice. and JW head on a swivel. Oh. He's got to break glass to get himself out of there before breaking ground at the A-bomb site. It's Golden on the entry. XMS is stuck between a rock and a hard place, and there's nothing harder than gold right now. As he puts XMS down, the bomb plant comes in. Lucky and Maka, two on five. And a very unlikely one at that, as this bomb is now firmly down in the A site. Plenty of time for Fnatic to get ready. It might just have to be the save here for Team Heretics. Yeah, right there. You know, we talk about Golden being great individually in this game. Well, there's his calling, saving Fnatic as well. You know, you get JW down lower. Already, there's one rotation in the form of Devera. Lucky drops in vents once Fnatic put pressure on ramp. And then they just double back and, and, and take the A site. Heretics getting caught off guard with lower rotations and Fnatic just need one kill to brute force a bomb plant on A. So these guns need to be saved. They will be successfully. No one hunting them down. It's a small victory, at least for Heretics. Fnatic are building back into the second half. Seven rounds on the T side and the money is gone, right? Remember, three SMGs in the previous. Heretics didn't really have a strong buy anyway, and it only gets worse. Honestly, you could argue a force here. We have players on 14, 1500. Uh, wouldn't be a bad idea to just throw everything in and try and play an aggressive round, try and get in the face of Fnatic, stop them from doing what they want. They're going to eco. It's fine. Nothing wrong with that. But uh, it's not like they'll be coming in with guns in the follow-up.
for anyone hoping for anything exciting here, might be in for a nasty surprise. This is a very slow round for Fnatic. They know they're not going to be up against much, so they're not jumping the gun on anything just yet. They're going to line up this utility over here towards outside to facilitate a cross, or rather get it into the heads of heretics. That that's an option. We've seen them throw these smokes a lot and then sometimes not even use it. Sometimes they do. So we're going to have to wait and see what the game plan is there. This time it does look like they want to try and cross behind these smokes. Ooh. But not in the way that you might expect. They go through them looking to wrap the A site. And these smokes have only further forced heretics in towards B. Maka is now there as well. So Lucky is alone at A. He hears the footsteps. He knows that this play is coming in. And he's tucked himself into the hut. But really this round is now basically over as uh, Heretics have so many players having to begin a long rotate up. They didn't have much to begin with anyway. And they were just kind of relying on the coin flip, like going their way, right? If that was a B play, they've got four players there. They're laughing. And then seeing as the bomb goes, goes down in A, this is now the great situation just to, just to save. Yeah, the three USPs can either be bodyguards or they can wait for exit and try and take AKs away from Fnatic here. Mac is actually the one man with the M uh, AK in this round has just lost it to Crims outside. It was heaven or hell. And right now, Fnatic wait in purgatory. No rushing. Oh, he hits the best timing. JW steals the kill away. And uh, no exits today. Uh, the bomb does a pretty good job. Kyo might be able to grab a rifle and that he will. So yeah, it's not... It's not too bad for heretics. You know, they get out with a gun and they still have to eco, remember? That was a very low economy round from them. But yeah, definitely realizing that this game is far from over. Fnatic with three bombs going off in this T side so far, forcing a lot of saves and a lot of, you know, exits for heretics. That's about it. Oh my God, I'm a big fan on the fan, uh, sorry, a big fan on the fan cam. It's Trey Stunner Saranthus. He does realize he doesn't actually have to wear that mask indoors. Hey, he's uh, he's all about the distancing. We've kept him away from us for as long as we can. All, have we? We're just ignoring him. Hi, Trace. <laughs> what? <laughs> Who mollies that? Brolin, bro, come on. Give him a chance. That's a feels bad man for Keo. He's like, ha ha, I've got this spot that they just were, and then Molotov, <laughs> and suddenly, oh goodness, somehow Brolin knows. So. You know, if the last round excited you, um, boy, you in for a treat here, because it's more of the same. Four players for Heretics at the B site, but this time that is where the bomb is going. It's only these pistols, so like still a little ways away from being too excited yet, but maybe the sheer numbers is enough to accomplish something. And Nevera and Maka both getting kills. This is just USPs. Golden's dinked as well. Uh, oh no, this could go so, so wrong for Fnatic. What? Down goes Golden. How has this happened? Brolin and Flush are left to try and pick up the pieces. And my word, the USPs might be enough. They walked into the lion's den oh. and then they're surprised as it roars to life. Brolin has to clutch and he can't. Heretics, they do it with USPs. They get a 14th round. E code, lol. What? How has that happened? Every shot they needed to hit, they hit it. They get guns. Maka one taps a player back on the ramp. And even as Brolin has a really good chance to clutch, as all he needs to do is get a player off the bomb for long enough. A few more seconds will do with no kit. He gets immediately shot in the face. I mean, that's just unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. They had nothing. They've got nothing to lose. Yeah, and everything to gain. 14-8. Dear, oh dear, this isn't even the competitive game that we saw last time where Fnatic were able to get 14 rounds on this map, just falling short. They might fall a long way off. Don't count them out before it's over, but 14-8, all it's going to take is a couple of well-placed shots to push Heretics over the line. It's just so rough that that round eludes them, right? Like any any momentum Fnatic we're trying to build up is is surely shot now. Maka donning this AWP has ramp under lock. And I was going to say key, but does miss that shot there onto Crims. Nothing more than a glancing blow though in response. Crims catching a timing onto XMS. Here's the nade gets pulled and then peeks on the back of it. That's a nice way to take the five on four. 
Mac has actually gone aggressive in three ramp with this AWP, and JW is in real danger. Or whoever goes around this corner first of falling prey to it, that's going to be golden into the firing line. And Maka, in response to getting that kill, just bows out, just gives it up, right? The four on fours given back over. They spot the bomb. So now they know what's going on in this round. Lucky's just got a little bit of information that Crims is still in the doors. And like Brolin's down on B, but unless they vent dive, he can just be a lost cause. He can try and come on up to help with this A play. That's the only way they're going to get usage out of him. That flash has got to be good. Brolin does get up the vent, and now Lucky up on top of the hut needs to make a difference. He's only good for one. It's Crims providing all the entries needed. Maka in this site, and they're trying to deny the plot. They don't know, and he finds them both. Now down to the 1v2. JW wondering, how has this gone so, so wrong? JW bomb planted for him. He's over towards Squeaky Maka. In the site now, all alone as he loses his teammate and JW mollies the bomb. He's playing for time, trying to bait this peak. Maka approaching the corner, slowly wow. does it, and he's going to lock in the round. 15 for the Heretics as they reach map point in the 1v1. What a round from this man. We know he's a fast orper, but that's the CZ. That's the building the little sidearm, the, the Lego creation that knocks down both players on the site. What a sick round from Maka. He can't stop them, you know, before the bomb, the bomb plant comes in, uh, considering there's such low time. That could have been the round then and there, but he still wins the clutch with the 4K. Even after his teammate makes all that noise coming up the ladder, JW hits the immediate shot, but it's not enough, Harry. It might just be done here. 15 to 8, Fnatic, they've got more gun rounds. They've had plenty of chances, but Heretics have come, a, come ahead, come alive at every single opportunity. Lucky just missed that time. He didn't see JW above the silo. Question is, do they know he crossed to the back of Garage? Because it doesn't seem to be the case. He will have to let them cross towards Secret. So Fnatic can take control towards lower, but you notice Maka has already sent himself on rotation with that AWP, and he has had fast fingers in this map so far. Brolin won't commit down to his position. Keo's keeping an eye on the garage wrap, but with his teammate there, they already know that this is not a worry. Main is the only issue, and that's been smoked. Fnatic are going to check it. Brolin falling short. They need a trade. Golden's on the other side of the garage. He's going to come in to try and finish it off. Flash is good, but the spray is better. Lucky Blind gets the kill. It's traded, but Keo double peeks out lower hell, and Heretics hold a four on two, about to win their map pick. Door opens, knock, knock. It's Flusher, XMS on the other side. 45 seconds here, and Fnatic's fate on Nuke hanging in the balance. They need a two on four. Everyone for Heretics over here on upper or outside. They do have Maka floating around secret. So if that bomb manages to get into B, he'll be available. Down goes Flusher. It's JW needing an ace, 1v4, to get this one past the keeper and keep the dream alive for Fnatic on Nuke. Down towards B he goes. The AK, a memento to Fnatic era has gone by. And if there ever was a time for this AK to find its blood, it's now. He's going to get the bomb planted at the very, very least. Here comes the rotation. Mac is not being discreet about it. Neither is anybody else. JW, what can he do? Mac are trained on the double doors. There's players everywhere. JW, wherever he picks, he is vulnerable to something. The double doors open. There's a player at ramp. There's a player at decon. And JW, oh, good for my. one. But that is it. Heretics. They'll grab the defuse. They take their map pick. They 16-8 Fnatic as they get this one over the line and go 1-0 up in this series versus the Swedes. Gonna have to stick around though. There's still more games yet to come and even more from this series. So don't go anywhere.
thoughts left in my head My mind's not mine and it won't forget But you bring me back from my darkness black Cause the soul in me and the heart I yet feel It bleeds for you, it bleeds again were determined to turn the odds around and that they did as Fnatic yet again had a slow start to the series here at ESL One Cologne. Heretics meanwhile looking hot to trot and hitting their shots. This is of course one map into Fnatic versus Team Heretics though. We are of course got another potentially two maps coming so it's not all over yet but because we do have a little bit of time Obviously, I want to take advantage of the fact that we've got a man locked in a room, unable to talk to anyone right now but us. Stunner, oh, can you hear us? Are you there? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Frankie, can you hear me? I can hear you, even though you are wearing the mask. And when I said during the broadcast that you didn't have to mm -hmm. wear the mask, I just want to right. clarify to people that he's not around people. That's why you should all be wearing your mask <laughs> if you're around people. Trust me on that one. We've got a distance. We've been maintaining it solidly. Uh -huh. um, so also, but I, I also think it kind of like, like this has like a very fashionable thing to it, right? Like, uh, you know, people have really taken fashion from next level in these masks. And it's just, it's something that I hope my homies in the ESL fan zone can also take note of. Perhaps we get a trend started here. And by my homies in the ESL fan zone, I'm talking about my new friends in Pixie, Cuvas, and Dikos. I've just been hanging out in there watching this matchup with these guys. And yeah, Heretics fans, they are. And rightfully so. Guys, why is Heretics running the board right now? Well, we're about to ask you the same thing. 
well, damn, why would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Trace, i got to agree, though. I think you look better with most of your face covered up. I think it's a really good yeah, look I was for you. You should keep thing. that one going. I've just Thanks reminded so myself much. that we're going to be working with you again soon, Trace, so I'm not going to insult you <laughs> at all. I think you look great, bro. I think the mask really brings out your eyes, and they're, they're gorgeous. Yeah? yeah? Can I get a little closer? Is it weird? Or oh, what? Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm covering my own eyes. I'm getting distracted here. Did you oh manage to God, catch <laughs> much of that series between NIP and the team that um, went home big earlier? Yeah, I mean, there was, what, about a 500-round game in there. How could yeah, you miss 54. any of that, you know? Yeah. So, Oh, you knew the exact number. So, yeah, yeah I clever. imagine for you guys, it's a marathon. For the players, it's a marathon. Uh, but when matches like that come along, it's usually all it takes is for one team to just slip up right there at the finish line. And that's what it turns into. Very brawly, very like one man sided plays and, and you know, one sided shows where someone just tries to make that play that makes a difference and ends OT misery. Um, Sonna, can you just move your chair? I just want to see what your, what have you got behind you? It's like a pyramid of something. Oh, you want to see what I've stocked up on to eat for the next? <laughs> I do. Oh, oh wow. Um, what's, what's, the, uh, what's the vegetable intake I'm not gonna, in that pile? I'm not going to eat the sneakers, um, but there's a lot going on here. Um, uh, you know, I would advise you to eat the sneakers because they probably got more nutritional value. No, actually, if uh, if you know anything about EPL season 11, these things were banging. Yeah, so I can no, he my is, he's, he's no. right. I mean, I saw bits of the EPL 11 and it kind of, the fact that you were living on a diet of those explains a few things. Sonna, thank you so much for catching up with us. Bye. Keep it up on fan cam. Say hi to the Heretics fans for us. Goodbye. And now say hello because you've been such a good boy, Harry. I thought I would gift you this. Have a little yeah. rummage. Open it up. So this is the uh, this is the prize for the DHL drop, if I'm not mistaken. It is, and yes. I haven't just won it. I haven't actually just claimed this as my not. own, no, right? You've won an audience. That's such a shame because you, let me show you what's inside here. But let me pitch this to you guys watching at home. You open up this attractive box, and then suddenly, boom! ESL socks right there. You love that. But things get really exciting when you rummage beneath the mouse pad, the masks, the hoodies, the all the other ESL gear that's in here. It's this bag that gets very, very interesting, right? You take this out, a boom processor i9 baby this is the fastest you can get and that could be yours if you're good enough at answering this these esl drop questions so seriously there is some some serious firepower in this box you want to win it because if no one else does i'll be taking it home and <laughs> i'll hold esl to that one they don't know i've said that but i have Give me a little look. Oh, fabulous. Yeah, it's i9. It's a ninth gen. I actually run one of these, literally the exact same one on my PC at home. Weird so I'm flex, pop but that okay. Down there. I don't need one. <laughs> but I know you guys watching in Twitch chat want to win one. So keep your eyes peeled in this next ad break because our friend, Mr. Tweedo, is going to be there. And he's got a question he needs you to answer. Welcome to the DHL CSGO quiz, everyone. Now, I've got the question for you, and the answer is hopefully within you. Now, what you can win is a thousand euros worth of stuff, and people are gonna get rewarded daily, sort of like a giveaway raffle style, if you just take part in this. How you take part in this? Open the Twitch chat, exclamation mark DHL drop in the chat, type your answer, A, B, C, or D behind it, and you're in. It's that simple. How many first place finishes did get Australis get in 2018? Was it A, 10, B, 13, C, 14, or D, was it actually only nine? Intel Gamer Days is on now. Whether you're looking to buy or build, now is a great time to upgrade. Get limited time offers and giveaways from top names in PC gaming. Unleash elite gaming performance with systems featuring new 10th gen Intel Core processors and bring Marvel's Avengers to life with in-game optimizations for a mightier PC experience. Act now. Intel Gamer Days is only here for a limited time.
My name is Jordan Gilbert, AKA Nothing. Hi, my name is Sue Lee. My handle is Smix. I think it's important for these initiatives to happen. Empathy really, really goes a long way and it always, always means so much to us. And I think that's where initiatives like this really help. I encourage everyone in the community, anytime they see bullying, anytime they see someone getting called names, or I encourage you to step up and say something. Good luck, have fun. Good luck, have fun. If you want to know what you're good at, and well, also what you suck at, check out csgohub.com. Coming! Everybody loves an underdog. Who needs to be liked? Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel. Victory in a can. Brought to you in part by Intel, Mountain Dew Game Fuel, DHL, and GG Bet. One Cologne and this best of three series between Heretics and Fnatic. We're going to get into Inferno very shortly, but before we do, we've got to answer the DHL drop question, which was how many first place finishes did Astralis get in 2018? And the answer was, do you guys know this one? If I had to 13. guess, it's B because it has the tick by it. 
Oh. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, you're right. It was B. You're so clever, boys. Congratulations. <laughs> That's why you got hired. So hopefully a lot of you guys in Twitch chat got that right. Make sure that you do keep coming back every day for the DHL drop. It's happening during the second series. That's a hint for you, ladies and gentlemen. So make sure you're here to answer the question to be in with a chance of winning that Intel i9 and so much more besides. And Fnatic have to do so much more if they want to stay in this competition because they're one map away from going home, Hugo. Yeah, this is so sad. I mean, like I remember five years ago, here I was in Cologne, fan of Counter Strike at my first tournament, watching Fnatic win here in, in the Laxness. And here we are five years later, they might be the second team to get eliminated from the tournament. I know times have changed. I know it's a different year. I know it's a different roster, but they got the same three-man core. And I'm hoping they come alive here on Inferno. Well, let's see. We got the defibrillators at the ready. Fnatic, you better revive in time because it's Inferno right round the corner. ESL 1, Cologne, Heretic standing 1-0 and up right now after taking Inferno. Uh, nuke rather by Storm. Maybe I'm getting him ahead of myself there with the Inferno call. As this pistol round's already underway and right away, it's going to be Fnatic running out into top mid. Heretic's leaning heavily at the B site. And so there's only Kiyoshima here. Oh, XMS has got players coming his way and he's here to play today. He deals with two and that slows down this attempt at the wrap into CT. It's all a ruse, it's all pretend. Right round the corner, it's Maka again, tapping away, but he can't quite get the kill. And so now Fnatic three on four, they slow it right down and I'll slow it right down as well as now they look for a way out of this round. Oh, that's a big kill from Flusher. They know that they just saw Maka enter the site as well from Library. Keo is full HP in the pit. Brolin is so low. We got two players on three points of health. And due to that rotation of Maka, Flush is going to take the gap. He's going to move into the CT spawn and try and wrap this B bomb site. The worry is we don't know, or Fnatic don't know where this other B player is. Brolin, oh, that's perfect. He hears Maka running down mid and gets that free kill. They're trying to figure out where Lucky's gotten to. Full bell to Util and hiding in the ruins. Fnatic are pinching on him slowly but surely. He could be anywhere from CT to sandbags. And so Flash has got to have his wits about him, but that's just another day in the office. Big kill and the deep smoke to keep that last CT out. Keo is coming through the spawn and Brolin's got a very open plant. Oh, Flusher just hounds him down. Fnatic, they get that pistol round from a two on four. They're able to right their wrongs and they get that locked in. So that one going their way, now a chance to get off to a good start. And it feels like they're going to need it considering how one-sided Nuke was. We don't have much to go off of in terms of head-to-heads -heads between these two teams. They've played once at the Road to Rio in the European division, as you might expect. That wasn't all too long ago. I'm only asking you to think back about four months. But there, Inferno was the second map in the series after Heretics were able to pick up Nuke. And Fnatic barely won that game 16-14. So, bearing that in mind, and bearing in mind how much more one-sided Nuke was this time around, we need to see a little bit more from the Swedes. Pressure really is on for these boys. And Heretics are so hungry to take this upset victory. They don't want their lifeline to end here in Cologne either. Fnatic with a B execute. Man down our Heretics already. Two CTs here with a boost up. The spam. Oh dear, it's very, very white. Everyone's blind. No one can see a thing. And Fnatic are going to get all the kills required. Already Nevera backing up. It might have to be the save here for Heretics. Fnatic going 2-0 up. Already things starting off a lot better here on this second map. Oh dear. The timing. Welcome to Counter-Strike. Yeah, five rounds in the first half of a nuke for Fnatic, and, and that was the CT side as well. So uh, it was a little worrying, and that's why it's all the more better that they're starting off strong here. Keo just avoiding JW. He's not going to get spotted, but JW will be walking all the way through the apartments and might be able to hit a nice timing here. We'll have to see. Uh-oh. JW, he's running, he's gunning, and he's going to get there, but Crims takes it away. Right, Fnatic, 2-0. That's what we want to see. They get past the four spy, they make it look nice and easy, and that's exactly what we wanted. Heretics now, just going to have to take an eco round here in round number three. And so, you know, maybe we just take it easy, Hugo. Maybe you're speaking a nice down-tempo voice. 
Cheers, man. I appreciate you leaving me hanging on that <laughs> how, one. How, how down tempo do you want, Harry? Do you want to just kind of relax, sit back? I would love that. And do, oh. Open a DHL drop. Oh. Get an Intel i9 processor. Oh, my goodness. That would be so good. And you could as well. You folks watching at home, you could do exactly all of those things. I'm At the jealous. same time. I'm jealous. Heretics, they're having a nice break, Harry. They're chilling. They're relaxing. Chillaxing. And acting all cool. Shooting some b-ball. Outside of the skull. And a couple of Swedes who are up to no good. Started making trouble in the neighborhood. And, well, they put a few guys in apps, and XMS got scared. And he went around the corner and just wasn't prepared. Crims, here it is. <laughs> Gonna nail him. And there we go. That's what we wanted. Now things kind of hit, kick up a little bit, rather. Crims, oh. like, knows, man. He knows that Mac is there. Mac in the graveyard. And as we know from Fnatic, every grave digger dies. <gasps> Ooh, Vera. Baby. Tapping down. Oh, not again. Not the pistols no, again. Not eco. Come on. It can't happen twice in one best of three, Fnatic. You got to get it under no. control. No. How's it happening again? Flusher. It's fine. Relax. Okay. It's okay. flush. Okay. Flush is still alive. This guy knows Counter Strike like the back of his hand. He has been there. He has done that. He has done the unthinkable. Wow. By comparison, this 1v2 should be nothing. So let's see. Flusher gets the bomb down. This will be the second loss to full USPs for Fnatic, unless Flusher holds his own. So. This is, just for my sanity, an important round. Flusher, let's see. UMP, both players here. Yeah. Swings out. First man hits the deck. And now just Maka left. Flusher's going to return us to normality. Oh, and oh. there it is. Fnatic, they'll get that third. But to say they didn't break a sweat, that would be a lie. Yeah, I love the, I love the play for Flusher as well. He knows they're armless. He knows the USPs. If you give them too much respect there, you're going to lose. If you wait at the back of the site, you're going to lose. So he hunts them down. He chases them with a the UMP. That's the perfect gun for it. Choose through those Frenchmen. And yeah, that's still a scary, scary round. And it's, it's stuff like this, the oh, why Fnatic are in this position in the first place, right? Like crucial rounds that they should never be losing. They should always win. Uh, well, that's exactly what they were full of on Nuke, except losing them, of course. Big kill for JW, running right up Banana and finding Nevera. There's almost the orb trade down middle from Maka. He's going to have to fight another day, though. XMS, oh, good timing on that peak. Flusher goes out wide, but he will fall short. Fnatic, four on four, going back towards A. What? How is that not a hit? You can see the bullet go through the wall. I think he got shot at the same time, so his bullet went a little bit too high. Keo dropping down low, though. Brolin falls on his head. The old Goomba stomp. Uh, Mac is burning to a crispy crisp. He's going to have to jump out of there. We'll, uh, we'll manage to, at least. Looks like a retake round here for Heretics. They have got a kit for it, though. Lucky spammed a bit there through that smoke. Not going to be the end of the world if heretics do still want to attempt this three-on-three -three retake. Maka round in the corner at short with this orb. XMS over in the apartments and Brolin hidden in graveyard. That Molotov could deal with JW, oh, but he dear. takes one to the grave nice. with him. Now Brolin shows his hand and trapped in the graveyard, but he's fine with it. Mac is going to retreat. Fnatic, they take themselves a fourth round. They get that one under wraps. Whew. Big sigh of relief. Whew. Back to normality for the time being. Fnatic in control. And Heretics at least giving them a run for their money, making these rounds interesting and close. Inferno is always a go-to. I love Fnatic CT side of Inferno. Uh, specifically, their pistol rounds are always very, very exciting. They love buying a hell of a lot of utility. I imagine we'll see that later on. Maka, oh boy, he waits for no one. Runs right down middle, but it backs up after one missed shot. JW does the same, but he will continue forward. 
Holden running up through the molly as it fades, taking XMS out of the round. Are the pistols still here on B? Lucky. Oh dear, that smoke, it bounces into the Molotov and it's not going to bloom how he hoped. It's a big gap, it's a big opening and Golden's going to exploit it. No one left on B to hold on, no lurking players at the back of the site. And so Fnatic, this is the round done and dusted. It's all about damage here for Heretics. What's this sweaty molly? What are you doing, Roland? It looked like he wanted to throw one through the skybox into the ruins, but... Yeah, he's, he's, he's doing something here. Oh, better luck next time. Ooh. Ooh. Not bad, pretty cool. I know, man, that was a lot of time just for that payoff, he's right? He's stalling it, you know? You don't want to do it too early. CTs might not even be there. Aka's got the one thing worth holding on to, and he's willing to risk it all. Now, that's a, that's a ballsy move for Maka. He's actually going to back on out now, and rightfully so. Still, 5-0 and for Fnatic and a flawless round as well. That's even better. As they look to make this a lengthy series indeed. Heretics obviously was just pistols around this orb, so, you know, have another chance. Oh. The, uh, the follow-up round. Brolin's turned the lights off. That's what's happened. That's the difference. Oh, speed beard itching now with Crims. He's speed running the... Uh... Oh, JW having a little drink. Drinking well. a margarita there. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah he's taking time. it nice and easy, man. JW still on the player break. He's still, uh, he's still chilling out. Well, the only margaritas I'm used to are the pizza kind. Backer down here over towards Top Banana. Ready to get stuck in with this AWP. Ooh, he's gonna get taken oh, down. Golden on the entries what? and the B site belongs to Fnatic. Move over, Heretics, because Golden's in town. And already it's a save for the remaining two. This is brutal. That's back-to-back -back rounds that Golden has gotten up behind the half wall without Heretics realizing. Like, they peak B, they go, oh, guys, it's clear, our mollies worked. No, your mollies did not work. Golden swings as the close one fades and takes all the kills. Great spray transfer as well. He's going to swap out that AWP, I wonder. Two T-side orbs on Inferno is not meta. So maybe get rid of that one for the time being. God, they're taking their time, aren't they? Really trying to do the maths here. All right, if we sell this... Uh, where, oh, I forgot the reference, but it's fine. Yeah, I imagine he's throwing one out at the end. Regardless, it's a sixth round for Fnatic. And that's already a problem that Heretics need to fix, right? Like, either give up the top of B early if, if your mollies aren't working, or... Oh dear. Or um, stop assuming it's clear, because no one's ready for the close swing, and Crims has done that too on A. Both kills for him. One up saved. And Fnatic back in control. Look at this transfer. Boom. And then another one. Damn. It's really nice to see Golden looking this damn good, right? And hopefully that can be the difference maker for Fnatic. He was the only guy to finish positive at the end of Nuke. So, you know, he's keeping up his positive appearances right now. 6-0. Flasher up there now alongside him. We've got like this supporting cast around Golden that we were looking for. Money's in a bit of a weird spot here for Heretics. Maka is rich, Keo's pretty well off, but the rest of the gang, they're not looking so hot. So curious what the decision is here. Maka can definitely afford to throw something into this round. He's gonna get an AWP, that's ballsy. One AWP, pistols and armor around him. We've seen how these USPs have gotten it close time and time again, but is that gonna be enough for a repeat? In round number seven. And will they be ready for Golden flying up Banana? Because they certainly haven't been in these last few. This time he's given that mantle over to JW with the AWP. The JWP. Such a heavy B stack, and Fnatic have gotten so many picks and just run in off the back of it. But this time it's the CTs to push forward with the flashbang. Lucky steals the kill away, and the AWP is here to play. XMS swinging, getting the bomb back under the control of Heretics. And even though Crims has gotten an A pick and opened up the site, it's no use for the site with no bomb to plant. Good grenade. Backer needs to be careful here. Brolin could grab it. It's in the smoke. He could try and whip it out, but he doesn't know that. Uh, oh, he's, he's going to get through. bashed in for aggressive fight. Oh, dear. It's messy. But he is going to get out of there. 
get the bomb, they run away. Fnatic, they're thieves. They've stolen it from under Heretics' nose. And now the rotation back into the A bomb site for the Frenchman. They run and they gun. But Brolin and Crims, they're going to get this bomb down regardless over an A. Open an AK in the retake. They're going to give it a go because the buy is coming in next round anyway. And Keo falling at the first hurdle. That might be the save call now for XMS, who's in this 1v2 armed with the AWP. Fnatic just aren't giving anything up. And so he'll have to leave. He'll have to know when to hold him and when to fold him. And this is the seventh round for Fnatic in a row. They're heretics. This is probably one of their closer rounds yet. Unfortunately, close just doesn't quite cut it. Fnatic, they have sharpened their knives coming into this one. Seven rounds apiece and no issue in shutting down every situation. That was like a four on two as well. Flush is trying to dart back down. Banana getting dropped in the back by uh, XMS. <laughs> Maka running to grab a gun. Gets flashed by Brolin going aggressive. Flashed by Crims rather. Killed by Brolin. It's the one two punch that never gets easier. Heretics have got to be feeling the burn right now. They may have taken Nuke with ease, 16 to 8 in the opening map of this series, but Fnatic are no sleepers. They're not going to get knocked out of this tournament without at least putting up a fight. And it is their map pick where they start to find success. Golden again, running up Banana. They just can't seem to stop this man. He's going to find an opening. And with a molly at the corner thrown by Fnatic, Heretics can't re-aggress the trade. Kira will do it elsewhere, finding Crims in the apartments. And so this will slow things down for Fnatic for the time being. Yeah, that kills big, right? Because so often it's been an open found and then very little punishment. However, Flusher keeps the good times rolling in at B. XMS is now here alone. Fnatic keeping it in control. XMS waiting patiently. JW rotating in to join Flusher here at Banana. They're going to try and take it together. XMS on the angle. Flusher bests in with the AK, and that B site becomes a problem once again. Fnatic move in, and they're uncontested the whole damn way. But it's not even a B play. I was going to say, it should end up being a B play. They rotated JW back, so I was thinking they were going to commit. But Flusher realizes not only is B clear, but there's not even players in CT. And so that bomb's going to go down with no fight from Heretics. This has been a very one-sided game so far. It's just been horrible, really. Like, you can imagine what this feels like for Heretics. You're just saving, really, in the opening minute of every round. It's not been a lot of fun. Yeah, that would have been a little bit dicey if, uh, if they used Flash to flank CT and try and take A. But uh, very much realizing after he goes through that smoke, no one's shot at me. No one's uh, taken any fire. So, got to be clear. Now, he's just showing off now, MC, okay? I'm loving it, though. Keep it up. Ooh. Yeah, Heretics, do they have any answers? They've got another eco following them here as the money's starting to drip dry. Mac has got a, a bit of cash left up. And of course, Lost Bonus, Lost Bonus maxed out. This save is going to gonna allow guns to be dropped over and so Heretics can get full rifles, the AWP, everything they need. It's clear they just need to stop stop Golden. That's that's the problem right now. He was the one man really doing everything back on Nuke, finding those opening kills four and over by the end of things. And, you know, right now he's doing that again. He's just running up Banana and finding entries. If it's not him, it's JW with that AWP. So whether that be to double nade the close position after they get those mollies in or simply just to give up the top of Banana and retake it like we've seen in the past with, when they're on pistols, those could both be solutions here for heretics. Of course, you don't want to just completely concede control without at least attempting to take it, because then Fnatic, if they just get Banana for free, they can do whatever they want. They can fake you out over on A. They can double back late in the round. They have so many options available to them. So it makes sense as to why heretics are fighting for this position. Crims might need to blink twice if he's okay. Looks like he's being held prisoner. There's like a white sheet over yeah. his chair. There's plastic wrap all over the wall behind him. What what's on the line for this? Like, if Fnatic don't don't get to the next stage via someone clone, Crims, you're uh, Patrick Bateman. Yeah, you're <laughs> you're in for a very bad time. Have you seen his business card though? Oh, they've got the cards, they've got the credentials, and they want to go back into top B. Those nades are brutal, and already Heretics are so wounded at the top of Banana Fnatic. They're once again in the driver's seat in the opening 20, 30 seconds of the round. Golden's creeping up. He's going to get flashed in here. 
I imagine by JW as he just waits on the half wall for now. JW's got those flashbangs and Flusher doesn't. So I'm imagining he's going to double back maybe to help Golden out. They could just leave him there though as a lurk, yeah. right? In case heretics try and re-aggress into Banana later on. Well, Flush is really selling it. I like it when teams do this. He's sitting at the bottom of the B, spamming the wood like Fnatic don't have Banana control, hoping that heretics think, oh, let's take a peek. They're at bottom B when they're actually closer. But obviously heretics aren't falling for that because they're playing passive. They don't want to continue to give up the round over on B within 20 seconds, which has been a repeated uh, problem. They're giving away so much room, in fact. You know, Fnatic can wrap CT, and with this Moto Smoke, I think that's exactly what they're gonna go and do. Take control of Arch, get into that CT spawn, and take over B. Heretics are aware of it, right? They're looking towards CT spawn from B, but it means they're gonna have to adjust positions as Golden is up in Banana, starting to make a move. I like the setup, it's very risky. You're gambling that Golden, you know, or the majority of T's aren't in the Banana taking over the site, but at the same time, you have a crossfire to fight the CT position out. This is the most like claustrophobic CT setup I think I've ever seen. And that's the danger of it. Like you just lose yeah. both players in an instant splitting through CT and banana. Round's over. It's done. Bomb plant at B. Save again for heretics. These guys on A are having a really fun time right now. <laughs> Welcome to Inferno. It's like, right, well, we're saving again. Cool. Um, so Fnatic don't hunt us down with 10 seconds left <laughs> when they know exactly where we are. And I mean, they could. Look at the money, 14K on Brolin, 13 on Golden. No reason to hide. But yeah, I, I'm impressed that, it, it's funny because Heretics read that round. They, they knew exactly what was going on, but Fnatic read it even better. The, those close CT positions, not just one, but two of them getting checked. And well, I mean, it, it's pretty clear when Fnatic are pushing in through CT and seeing no one on the site, no one at new box, that you know, they've got to be hiding for your rap. Right now, yeah, with the way this is going, heretics, they the might be handing wrap. out. Yeah. What's that about? Plastic on the door. He's not trapped in there with them. They're trapped in there with him. Look at that. The best clear you're That's ever going to It's like see. synchronized, yeah. isn't it? It's like, doesn't even feel reasonable. They don't even get to fire a bullet while trying to hold B. Heretics, what is the solution here? Like, this is... This is scary. Fnatic went from sleeping at the wheel to veering their way into first place. Maka oh my. boosted over. JW is waiting for a peak that like doesn't even exist. Lucky. Now holding on to middle, or uh, banana rather, does get one, but that's it for him. At least they keep it in a four on four. But if this just ends up being an explosive B play, unless these guys in the site are able to get a killer piece before going down, it will be another save. I expect you folks at home to be more than aware of that, though. We've had a crash course in saving on Inferno. Here comes the play. Oh. Lucky flashed off the angle. Down goes XMS already. It's not a great round here for Heretics. If Lucky can't find anything through the smoke, this might have to... That's Ooh. a collateral. He gets them both, but not the killing blow to either. Heretics are saving again. <laughs> I don't know what to say, Harry. Like, he hits a two for one with zero kills. He'll never even know about it. And Fnatic, they're going to get double digits before Heretics even find an opening round of this map. It is Fnatic's pick, and boy, for good reason. But right now, Heretics, they've just got to try and get away. Kyo's accountant must love him, though. It's easy to convince this guy to save, right? And that's like, it, it's just been every round for heretics over here, just holding on to guns. You know, B doesn't work out, and then they have to save. This is brutal. Fnatic are looking so damn good. I think that's yeah. why we keep seeing Crims, like, laughing as well. Like, he's, he's kind of amazed at what this has entailed thus far. I have not, you know, I've seen some, some real, like, save games on Inferno yeah. where, that, where it feels like this is happening, but I don't think I've seen one where it's as consistent. Like... There has been, I think, one attempt at a retake in this whole game so far. And, yeah, and it's not even like, oh, wow, I can't believe heretics aren't going for retakes. They're not in positions where they can go for retakes. Their, their rotates are, are, are so far away after Fnatic get all these kills. I'd love to see heretics change the pace, right? Get aggressive. Even if it's not banana, even if that hasn't been going for you, try and push a man down mid, try and take ult mid, right? Some rounds, nice shot. Some rounds, Fnatic have been defaulting and holding, you know, passive in second, but not every round, not this round, for example. Heretics, this is like the perfect position. Maybe it wouldn't be always, but right now, to get aggressive in those apartments, to try and take, oh no, oh dear, Lucky didn't realize Golden got out past the Molotov. 
That's been golden all game long. And Brolin, he's out on long, finding Nevera on that rotate. Heretics finally think, guys, we're going to retake. We're going to give it a go. And well, Brolin says no. But yeah, maybe the answer is simply to, to try and ease the pressure by getting this control. The fact that you're losing banana, but then you're also losing middle, like you can't you can't not have either side of the map. You have to at least be fighting for middle, especially when in the vast majority of these rounds, heretics are running triple A and then playing inside of the site. Like you're giving you're giving Fnatic the room to take long, to wrap archway, to get out mid for free. That just can't keep happening. It's not just B being the problem, but it certainly isn't helping. Oh, maybe, maybe gets away with the AWP, but even then it's a question mark. Flusher was hounding them down. There's max money on almost everyone on Fnatic right now. So this is, uh, this is horrible. Maka trying to stay alive and he will. Nice. So there we go. He holds on to that AWP, but it's 11 and 0 for Fnatic. This, this could be like a, a clean sweep if we're not careful. Maka with three kills in the round. Sadly, none of them really finding any impact as they are just saving play. Uh, sorry, he is just a saving player there. Pretty grim consolation uh, for, for that round slipping by the wayside. What have we got here? More banana utility, at least keeping Fnatic out for the time being, but that time is not going to be lasting all too long. Oh, lucky. Oh, no, he had him. Dead to right. So this back turn in the corner. Golden lives to fight. He's going to get popped up. It's a great grenade. The jump through. Lucky hits the shot. Flusher is spamming and getting connections with his bullets, but no kill. Finally, Heretics in a good spot. And with a deep smoke and banana, that keeps Fnatic out. Do we finally see Fnatic just overwhelm the A site early on? They might have to. Heretics have taken all the way down bottom banana. They've rotated Lucky through. XMS is flanking mid, but that could offer up something to Fnatic. Instead, it takes away. Flusher dead. And uh, now Fnatic. I mean, at this point, what can you do? Look for kills individually. I like that. XMS just goes aggressive. It's like, at this point, how can it get any worse, right? Yeah. So he takes that aggression. He's get, he gets rewarded for it. This banana aggression works brilliantly for Heretics. And you know, like playing like you have nothing to lose is sometimes the uh, the way to go about it. XMS tagged on the jump peak, but it's not really much. It's gonna force a rotation back from Lucky at the very, very least. It's a two on three here at the A bomb site for Fnatic, JW and Crims, the two players in question. And finally, Heretics might be about to break the streak. Maka flashed off the angle, drops the smoke. Looks like he might want to go in with the repeat here on the back of that flash, but nothing materializes from it. Crims, Ooh. so blind. Oh, no. Nevera was blind as well. There was a chance where they find him. Now they might not know that Crims is so deep, but he's hard pressed to find anything here. There's one. Lucky lines it up <laughs> in the collateral. And finally, one Woo! of his shots lands in the way that it should. It's a first on the board for Heretics. 16, no. It's get, it's get, uh, it gets denied. I didn't want to say it because then I would have cursed it. So luckily, I wait till it's, uh, it's gone anyway. Heretics find a round, at least something. They did something, but is it going to be enough? Great shot from Lucky, from Library as well. Boy, oh boy. Yeah, it's not just like at the top of the door. The plastic goes all the way <laughs> down. What's he trying to keep out? Or what's he trying to keep in? Utility up B again for Fnatic. XMS is trapped. Here's the app's aggression. This is what we've been waiting for. Kyo, five and five. We're 12 rounds in, mate. He's barely seen anyone, but he will take the advantage. Nevera following up. And Heretics getting a couple of kills to start this round. Will that force Fnatic into B? Potentially. Lucky needs to double back. Yeah, I was going to say, we've got so much control for Heretics on this A site, plus middle still under their wing. Mac is fighting through the smoke. He knows this one's clear for the time being. And Golden might be cleared as it fades. There it is. Now with mid spotted and Fnatic making noise at the top of Banana. Heretics are ready for the push. Yeah, it's Keo's flank that should have this dead to rights. So, you know, he's going to be arriving very, very quickly and more quickly than maybe Heretics are ready for. Down goes JW. Flusher falls shortly there and after. Second on the board for the Frenchman. But it still feels like, you know, too little, too late, perhaps. There's a chance they can turn this around as they start to right their wrongs. We need a 4-11 half, 
you know, they need to get all these rounds at a bare minimum, really, if they want to have any chance of pulling it back here and now. Money was never going to be a problem for Fnatic being 11-0 up, so we got that to look forward to as well. Nades down Banana. And finally, Fnatic's aggression here kind of tapering off as a bit of respect has been gained by Heretics. Ow. Oof. Careful. Fnatic just hoarding this banana control. They've got all five players here looking for a early B execute. There are Molotovs on this B bomb site though, or A Molotov on Lucky. XMS is close to the smoke. Do or die, living life on the edge. No utility, no worry. He's gonna try and fight as they come through, blocking these bodies. Oh baby, he only gets one. That could have been so much more. Lucky now has to pick up the pieces of the round, but instead his round is in pieces. A three on three as Fnatic plant the bomb. Oh, nice shot from JW there to find Nibera. Through the smoke, Maka creeping in. Does get rid of it, down to the 2v2. Keo on the CT rotate, gonna uncover the one player here is in the ruins, still don't know about Golden. And that's what Mac is having to worry about now, back in the bomb site. He will throw a smoke down on that bomb to try and tap it. And these players here have been cordoned oh. with Golden, catches him. And now for Maka, all that's left to do is try and grab the defuse, taps it, baits the peak, dodges bullets, and now, oh, lands the no-scope. But Crims trades 12 on the board for Fnatic as they get another. Maybe he would have won it if he stuck it right. Golden was spamming right past him and he got off it for free and, and just tried to wait for Crims. Turns around, gets double peaked, still hits a shot. Roland didn't realize he was like running in the smoke. Like This smoke is lasting forever. Well, it's XMS body blocking, but uh, only sprays down one. I love the, the balls on Maka to just go through the smoke, flies through with the AWP, shoots JW at the back because Fnatic was set up double ruin side, but well, they'll ruin Heretic's day with that round. Oh, Maka, thank the uh, Lord. He gets smoked by his teammate, keeping himself alive as the Molotov could have burnt him to a crisp even takes the advantage of the flusher as well. It's a fast play through the mid smoke. Dear, oh dear, Nevera, good for one, but it's a double trade. And just like that, Fnatic own the A site. Heretics, a triple B setup, having to rotate all the way through. If XMS was faster, he could have cut off the bomb, but he wasn't to know. And JW can jump out of the apartments or just throw the bomb down. We'll go with the former plant in the site. XMS, quick kill and the retakes on. Roland tucked in a graveyard. He's been such a nuisance from this position. Gonna have two players to deal with over at Shaw and XMS slowly but surely working his way through the apartments, finds that kill. It falls to JW, who's had a pretty quiet game thus far. Missed shot, Rocky closes oh. the gap and XMS gonna delete him. That there is a third for Heretics at the end of the first half of play as they just about get that one on the board. This is still an overwhelming first half from Fnatic. Can the Frenchman bounce back or is it gonna continue being the Swede show? Join us after a quick break to find out.
Well, fans of fiscal responsibility around the world are rejoicing right now. We've seen so many saves here from the side of Heretics. Do you think they were made of money? But are they going to be any saving graces as this second half looks to continue? Fnatic sat up with a huge lead right now and a very dominant performance here on Inferno. Brolin's got the dual Berettas, so we know that we are in for a treat. He's got them over at Banana trying to pull a Keto. But maybe he doesn't want to pull a Keto on account of them being eliminated from the oh. tournament. XMS with a double entry now. Getting Heretics into this A site. Brolin, I want to see what he can do with these door Berettas. Up through mid, he creeps, he crawls into their nightmares and into their dreams as he tries to snatch them away. And, well, dual Barrette is terrible, of course. That's the lesson we're all learning right now. It's hilarious because they're bad, but if you kill someone with Julies, you always pick them up without fail. Oh, Flusher is... delivering a couple of nice kills, but he's surely not ready for the man on the box. It doesn't matter because Nevera's got him anyway. So Heretics, pistol round locked in for their name and still a chance here. Moving into the second half of play, it's been pretty down-tempo to start this Inferno game. And that's what tends to happen when you have an 11-0 scoreline with saves every round. I, I do like the pace that Heretic's already set into that pistol, right? Running right up mid. Fnatic, they, they check mid, they see it, and they're like, oh yeah, we can boost up. Let's, let's throw a guy on porch. Well, they get met with a flashbang from Maka and XMS jumping through the smoke so fast they were not ready. And it's gonna be Heretic starting off the comeback. Can it continue though? The force by for Fnatic looking to put a stop to it as soon as possible. Golden trapped in front of the Molotov does a lot of damage, but he won't get finished off until Flusher uh, throws in some grenades. Maka retrieves a gun, but don't count Fnatic out of this round. Oh yeah, we got Rush observing. I missed that guy. Ooh. Down here over towards Shaw, it's going to be a fast play into A, but JW down in pit. Oh, well, actually he's missed all his chances and he runs out of them. Nevera is going to burn him out. Flusher and Crims, 2v4. And knock it on the door of this A-bomb site, but you can see Crims has actually already vacated the area. No cold calling for him, instead it's Flusher. Trying to bring this down to a gentle simmer at the A-bomb site. And he's just holding on for exits. They're not gonna give this one a go. It's a fifth round for Heretics. So, you know, this chance at coming back in the second half, you know, we're not gonna have a full understanding of how that's gonna go till the rifles come out. But these are the building blocks, the foundations getting laid by Heretics right now. Yeah. And with Fnatic forcing as well, it only gives like technically, as long as you win the uh, conversion, it gives you like an extra free round, right? Because that EQ gets delayed. Obviously it means Fnatic's first buy is better than it would be in this round now. But uh, yeah, it gives you an extra chance for Heretics. That being said, if you're Fnatic, you always force when you have a dominant first half. I mean, Fnatic always force anyway. So I'm never going to disagree with that. But yeah, Heretics, don't count them out at all. Uh, this has been a competitive game already, uh, considering the map of Nuke, right? Different situation, but they stormed through Fnatic on that one. So what's to say they can't do it on the T side here? They found 10 rounds back on T side Nuke. So let's see Inferno. Fnatic, not with a lot, just those saved SMGs and CZs. Crims, uh, uh, JW is doing something here. Hang on. Oh, hang on. Theo, yeah. <laughs> uh, whenever you're up against JW, you check everywhere, right? Like, if you're in these apartments, you have to be the most scrutinizing landlord. You got to check for anything you can if you want to get that deposit. And well, JW does falter. So heretics now in this five on four, only up against pistols to begin with. And it should be one that they're able to get locked in relatively easily. Yeah, I noticed there's some muddy footprints on your doormat. That will be the 500 pounds I'm keeping now. <laughs> right. Oh, that's a bit of a messy one. These USPs, they fight back, as we've seen from Heretics. They nearly won an eco in the first half. Well, right now, they're losing to one here. There's a little bit more to play with for Fnatic, though, and they're showing us what they can do. Oh, dear, Crims, or Keo, rather, doesn't even react. Brolin just shoots him in the face from the site. Keo is looking down long, and blinking, you miss it. It's Nevera in a one-on-four.
Yeah, this might put an end to that little comeback dream unless Nevera is able to do something spectacular. Brolin hits the deck. Nevera has opened up with one of the four needed and everyone else is pretty low on HP. Nevera up here on the big stage versus the Swedish legends of Fnatic. Gets this bomb planted and now into the 1v2. Golden's making noise in the apartments and his attention stripped away for just a moment by that USP. It's a round for Fnatic, 13 on the board as they get it done with just pistols. Heretic's gonna be kicking themselves as now that shoe is on the other foot. Yeah, it's got to feel good for Fnatic, right? No worry about now Heretic suddenly... Nice little ballerina spin. Uh, no worry about Heretic suddenly climbing back into this game. Fnatic are probably feeling pretty ready to shut it out right here and right now. Will it be that easy? Crims, he got caught coming up short side, throwing utility. Didn't expect Nivera to be off the bomb site so fast. JW's got the AWP, five and 14, man, having a rough game, but it's not really holding Fnatic back in any capacity, at least not in the scoreline. Oh, that's a, a really nice spray from Brolin. It's gonna do so much damage to the second. JW spots two players crossing in and out, doing the hokey pokey. But can Heretics turn this game around? But well, they're certainly in for a rough task. Man down here, and um, what could be their final buy really on Inferno if they're not able to get this one over the line. So Fnatic feeling comfortable. JW donning this AWP is over at long side and he's waiting for anyone to come tiptoeing into that crosshair. Crims as well, holding the arch. This is great for like a bait and switch. JW is going to be the man to make first contact right now. And then once he does, Crims is able to come in to help out. But before he even does any of that, he's dropped a smoke into the apartments and that delays this whole play from the heretics. They start to take this top mid control. And now, edging their way forward. This is not the place you want to be. This is where Fnatic are waiting. This is what they were hoping for. The smoke cuts off Crims. JW gonna drop a molly, but Maka finds him from short. And now Crims is smoked off as well. Nevera through the smoke, gets rid of him. Brolin down in the pit has got to have one hell of a hold here. As they start to flood the site. Brolin, there's another. On to three now. As he's held down A single-handedly, the bomb does get planted, but he's given them a fighting Ooh. chance. Flusher found over at long. Brolin spotted, but not dealt with yet. Dancing around in the pit. Needs support from Golden, who falls at the first hurdle. So Brolin now has to ace. He's on to four. Just lucky left to find, and Brolin knows. Oh! oh! The ace for Brolin, the defuse for Fnatic, and a 14th. It's funny how much one man can tear it all apart. Oh, that's just beautiful work from Brolin. Hiding in the pit, letting them go, and just shutting them down in the retake. I love it. Even gets the AWP and kit out of there as well. No issue, No, not even close to the time either. I don't know what to say at this point. Fnatic, they are comfortable on their map pick. That is to say for sure. It was worrying starting this series when we when we looked at Golden, like he was playing like classic Fnatic, aggressive, like looking for opening picks, great utility. He was he was shutting down uh, Heretics despite the rest of his team being kind of absent. And well, now we've got the the usual suspects uh, stepping up. Crims is looking good, Brolin acing and clutching, and Heretics well they're clutching at straws, and at pistols too. Deagles against fourteen with a Galil and a Mac ten. Not a pretty picture. Fnatic are already sending a third rotation back towards that A-bomb site. They're going to need it. Oh, one for Crims. Any more? Any more in the chamber? There it is. And almost the three-piece. JW's here to help out. And Ooh. he's... Yeah, you know, not really been hitting the shots we know JW to hit today. But there's always time to keep getting warmed up. Brolin down in pit. Not again. He can't do it all alone. Surely the molly forces him out into the open and Nevera will deal with him. Now that they've dealt with Brolin, maybe there's a chance in this round. Two on three and with no Brolad to carry them across to the other side. Fnatic, they're relying on JW, Flusher and Golden. 
in this retake. The nades found a lot of damage. Golden snuck up short and Kyo didn't see it. He's in the sight. Oh. A real nasty surprise. Kiyoshima now trying to hold on. And oh, in with two. JW down beneath him, but Kyo, a betting man, looking for the kill, spraying away. Oh, they both missed the mark and everyone's missing. There it is. Kiyoshima gets it done. Six on the board for Heretics. And map point denied to Fnatic as he holds down the sight in a 1v3. Oh boy, that was a messy one. And yeah, I mean, you hit the nail on the head talking about JW. These are some really uncharacteristic missed shots going to the pistol against a near full health Kyo as well. And even though he lets the uh, golden cross into the site, it looked like someone had called it because he desperately looked back for that kill uh, and was aiming into the smoke, but couldn't see him. Oh boy. A big sigh of relief. Kyo saving Heretic for one more round, keeping them in this one. Full USPs with a deeg or two or three, actually. I can't count. A couple of grenades going into Banana with a bit of damage, but by and large, this is Heretics at the top of B for free. Oh, okay. The perfect round to gamble, stack a site. Fnatic, nothing to lose at 14 6. Going to move everyone over but Brolin and, well, Crims, he's gone already. Oh, baby, maybe a second kill. This could really be... Oh, no, Flusher, he's just taken one. JW comes in through the smoke, and now Fnatic making this interesting. Heretic see the numbers. They see three at a bare minimum and run right back, but the damage has already been done. Fnatic, they may not have guns, but they're a man up, and Brolin has crept himself into the graveyard. Oh, oh, JW, we've been waiting. Here it yes. is, the JW moment. Tag it up with the Deeg Maka, trying to fight back, and he's just gotten around the corner. Still in with a chance. Do it. Oh, that's Brolin gone. Maka trying to come to life. He's very, very low, but so are his opponents on the other side. This is just pistols for Fnatic, and they stand about to reach map point unless Maka can have his say. He's tapped the bomb. He waits for Flusher, oh, and oh, yes. tension drawn away. That's been the downfall of Team Heretics now and a few of these clutches, right? Not even the shots that are hitting, it's the ones that are just designed to take your attention off the mark. Map point for Fnatic. On their map pick, no less. They're trying to take us the distance and get us to Mirage. And with how things are looking right now, it feels like we definitely get there. Yeah, it's worrying for, Her uh, for Heretics, right? You know, obviously this is... Uh... This is a match that Fnatic should be winning from the offset, and it was a bit of war a bit worrying seeing them fall so short and so silent on Nuke, but now that we've got the Swedes that we know and love back in control, Heretics probably quaking in their boots somewhat. Of course, an elimination game here on the lower bracket. Her Heretics fell to the Frenchman of Vitality in their opening game, and Fnatic, well, they had to take on the juggernaut of Astralis with Bubsky and S-Tag in this uh, roster as well. Stras looked very good. I think we're all sitting here kind of waiting with bated breath for their follow-up uh, follow match, rather, against Vitality, that winner of the, the French battle. But for now, we still have potentially more rounds on Inferno and most certainly another map. Ooh, Brolin tries to go aggressive. And tries is the operative word there. He actually faces his demise. JW's retrieved the M4 and gets that out of there. Juggles it out with the AWP, a real hero. He's just going to look to get this one down into the pit. Okay. That gives him options now, especially as they flood on out. This is a nice bit of planning uh -oh. ahead from JW, but instead all he's done is give them a weapons cache down in pit. Oh, dearie me, it's another kill for heretics, and this site now belongs to them. SN and JW, a thank you message after that one. Cheers, mate, for pulling all the guns into one place. Golden and Flush are left in this two on four, and it's probably a two on four they don't even attempt, honestly. Yeah, money's not great either, so it's honestly worth saving. They're hoping that heretics can give them some smoke kills or anything of the like, but with no free frags back into the site, it's simply about maintaining your money and getting this done before it gets too worrying, right? Like we've seen some really promising round, uh, rounds from Heretics in this map. Some really nice ideas. I like their fast play up mid in the pistol. Definitely caught Fnatic off guard going through the smoke.
But by and large, it, they're just backs up against the wall, right? Maybe if they started on the T side, things could be different. But Fnatic, they went, what, 11-0 up to start this map. With so many saves from Heretics. Not even rounds they could attempt. That is Inferno 101. So this buy is pretty good for Fnatic, thanks to the save. Two guns bought up alongside the two saved. Orb still here for Maka. He's the top in his team right now, second in the server. And whoa, those grenades are going to keep him passive for the time being. It's very weird because I feel like a lot of Fnatic have just, have just like cooled off during this time period in the sense that like you look at like kills and stuff like that outside of people like Brolin, for example, still keeping it rolling. Fnatic haven't had to do much outside of getting like a few kills to win rounds on that T side. It's been very, very quiet. Like we're in this, I, I've never cast an Inferno game like it, where no, there's been so few kills. It still just feels so weird. And so I'm hoping that Heretics can, can kind of give us a bit more excitement, give us something to be happy about. JW playing around that mid smoke. A boost up oh, over at long, yeah. has Golden getting the next kill, and now they sit in the man advantage. Keo caught in the apartments, and piece by piece, they're stripped apart. Lucky and Nevera desperately trying to deny Mir Mirage, the third and final map here in this series. And it's going to take absolutely everything left in the tank to pick this round up. Brolin back in the sight. On with the M4 up on top of these boxes. He's a bit of a beast here. Nevera trying to check it. Tagged on the first peak. And Lucky now facing the same fate. What? The nade might find Golden, but he gets himself out. And there's Brolin locking in the win for Fnatic. They take Inferno and they send us to Mirage, the great equalizer, the great plane, in which we'll see which one of these teams continues at ESL One Cologne and who is heading home. So stick with us, we'll be back with it after the break.
Just as we thought that Fnatic were making a fast and furious exit, they made a fast and furious comeback on Inferno with an epic 12-3 first half, just storming up Banana like nobody's business. But Heretics managed to pull a few back, Harry, but to be honest, it was really Fnatic's ground to charitably give away. Yeah, you know, like that was, it's a shame that it felt like such a, a boring game of Inferno, because that was actually really good from Fnatic, yeah. you know? Like, they were just winning rounds in the opening 20, 30 seconds, and then Heretics had to save. That was basically the whole T-side in a nutshell, right? If you didn't miss it, you kind of didn't miss much in that regard, you know? Like, it literally was, we go B, we win our fights, we plant B, Heretics have to save. And so I'm hoping now, looking at Mirage, we can have something a bit more exciting on our hands. Yeah, I want to jump on a thought experiment after what you talked about. I'm going to read out the scoreboards for both teams. I'm not going to tell you which teams which, and you probably won't be able to guess. Okay, one team, this is kills, 17, 16, 12, 11, 10. The other team, 19, 18, 16, 14, 9. They were so close, but the scoreline was anything but, it was extremely dominant. And that's because, as you said, Inferno, T-side Fnatic, get two kills, plant the bomb, win the round, three save. Like that's all That's all it matters. It comes down to objective. It doesn't come down to kills. And obviously Fnatic, they're playing great CS. The fact they're getting these entries, Heretics couldn't find solutions. They tried everything. They tried passive B. They tried tucking into the A site. When they did that, Fnatic would wrap long, take archway. We barely saw them on A. And then once they swept, uh, swapped Haas to that CT side, it was basically just about doing enough cheesy things until they could eventually close it out. Brolin certainly helped with an ace. JW was struggling a a little bit, but it barely mattered. And another man who tried to make an impact on the heritage side of things was Maka, showing why he's in that primary AWP role. I mean, most of the Heretics players trying to make hero plays, clutching out rounds, and that was seemed to be the only way they could actually put anything on the board. Yeah, it just it kind of felt like Heretics very, very quickly ran out of ideas there on Inferno, which is like, which is a weird one, considering this is a map that they do play a lot. Um, I think that they, they just weren't ready for the individuals being so damn good in that T side for Fnatic, you know? Like, and suddenly you're faced with this horrible decision of, well, we keep losing B, we're already playing 3B. Like, what do we do in that situation? And it wasn't until we kind of saw Heretics loosen up a bit and and play like they had nothing to lose that they actually started picking rounds up. You know, like we had Keo pushing aggressively into the apartments, going on these big wrap rounds. We had them dominating that banana control early with utility and then playing a bit more conservative. But it felt like, you know, the, the kind of solutions were things that that while you were in the moment, felt like you wouldn't want to try them because it felt yeah. like such a high risk for what could have just been an even bigger blowout. And it wasn't until they actually started trying to, you know, plug some of these holes and do uh, things that were a little more risky that anything ever moved along. And by that point, it was too little too late. Well, now they have taken a map off Fnatic. They do have something to lose. And what they have to lose is their place in ESL 1 Cologne 2020. After the break, we'll be saying goodbye to one of these teams. So stick around to pay your respects. We'll be right back. Intel Gamer Days is on now. Whether you're looking to buy or build, now is a great time to upgrade. Get limited time offers and giveaways from top names in PC gaming. Unleash elite gaming performance with systems featuring new 10th gen Intel Core processors and bring Marvel's Avengers to life with in-game optimizations for a mightier PC experience. Act now. Intel Gamer Days is only here for a limited time.
You ready? Huh? Hey, he's a good boy, huh? You ready? Huh? Start your esports career now at play.eslgaming.com. If you want to know what you're good at and, well, also what you suck at, check out csgohub.com. Coming! Everybody loves an underdog. Who needs to be liked? Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel. Victory in a can. ESL One Cologne Online is brought to you in part by Intel, Mountain Dew Game Fuel, DHL, and GG Bet. Welcome back to ESL One Cologne. If you've just joined us, you've missed a couple of maps. One of them interesting or new. The second one.
on Inferno. We don't really need to talk about it. Not much happened. Fnatic, they had a really great two side. Heretics, they tried to pull some rounds back. They were successful in a few of those, but now we're getting to the ninth round on Mirage. Inferno seems to be a distant memory. Maka trying to do it for France. He's been chased down by two of Fnatic. Oh, it's a 1v1. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> and there we go. Let's assume wow. that Heretics are going to be taking on the CT side. Listen, I'm trying with the casting, all right. This is this is new for me. These boys, they're trying to ease me in. I'm just occasionally hopping in for a fraction of a round. We're working on it. We're working yeah, on it. Yeah, I mean, you know, the full round is yours, Frankie, if you want it. You just got to take it. That's, the, that's that. the big difference, right? <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so we got Mirage coming up. I can't wait for this one. I'm hoping that we have Vintage Fnatic. I want Knives out. I want JW actually hitting shots. I want to see Maka with his AWP on the Heretic side lighting up the server. Because really, after Inferno, like I feel like that was like our little break. You know, like not really much happened there. There wasn't a lot worth yelling about outside of that Brolin ace that was pretty sick. But now, Mirage, when it matters most, it's map number three. It's a middle ground map for both of these teams. It's something we can actually start getting excited about, Frankie, as we get ready to head into this one. Are you feeling excited? I am. I'm only feeling excited if JW remembers how to aim with an AWP. Then I'm going to be very excited indeed, because it means, gentlemen, Fnatic are going to take this one in quick succession, and we're going to go rest our voices. As it is, if Heretics can bring this one back, I'm extremely excited because everybody loves an underdog, especially a French one. If Heretics take this in the third map, it'll be so well earned, right? We've had two very dominant starts to this series. Very weird, but Fnatic seemingly warming up later into the series. And I think that's only going to make this one harder for the Frenchman. That being said, all the more deserved if they can do it. And they've had some great pistol rounds here on the T side in this series. So let's see if that continues as we get into Mirage. Luffy lurking over towards A ramp, but the rest are going for the mid control take. They're going to be met by JW oh. popping from windows, smokes covering his view, and they're going to take connector. JW, he anticipates the rotate. He's, oh, actually, he's going to come back behind them from connector. Of course, he is because he's JW. Oh, well, Nevera's dealt with him nicely at the very, very least, and now Golden. Up on the chopping block, gets brought down low. Brolin's tried to take a slot in the murder hole, and there's a reason it's called that. This time, though, it might be him doing the murdering. Actually, it's Kiyoshima getting rid of it, making it look easy into this three on four. And now, a little bit of a lull in the action as Fnatic double nading through the murder hole. Still isn't enough to flush Kyo out. This retake has just grinded to an uncomfortable halt. They're, they're hoping that a kill gets given over, but Heretics just aren't giving anything up. And in fact, they're more in the business of taking away. It's Crims out from CT, time so low. No defuse kit either. This one's gone for Fnatic, and it's a pistol on the board for Heretics. So already looking to break that little drought of rounds that they had back on Inferno as they heat things up here on Mirage. The kit was dropped on top of Ticket. That is the worst spot. That's like, you know, leaving it in heaven on Nuke where your teammates are coming on ramp flanks. That's unfortunate for Fnatic. But yeah, I, Heretics, I, I've been really impressed at the individuals in this series so far. You know, obviously Fnatic are, are, are incredible players individually, but Heretics have been battling back pretty damn well. We saw how the objective got in the way more so than anything back on Inferno, obviously helped out by the, the constant B picks of Golden and uh, JW and Flusher were getting. But, I, you know, Her Heretics are in a really good spot to make this upset happen, I think, especially with it being online. They seem very comfortable in this element. Right now it's Fnatic on an eco. Golden's got a bit of investment, but by and large, waiting with the USPs. Three on A, make it a fourth with JW moving out of the middle, and Heretics are lining up utility to go for the execute. <laughs> oh, oh, Golden with another. All right, the Golden Boy of Fnatic is here to play. He's doubled up. Flush has tagged another down with a USP. Golden in with a third. And now it's all on Maka. The eco streak in this series might be set to continue unless Maka can ace 1v5 to keep Heretics in this second round. I, I don't know, man. I don't know anymore. What even is Counter-Strike? These vanilla pistols have been doing it time and time again. Now, credit where credit is due. A lot of that is golden this time with the one Deeg in the server. He's on three. Maka, 40 seconds. They spot him now. They know and Flusher swings out wide to finish it off with the Oosp. It's Fnatic tying us up at one to one.
Golden literally turns... Don't, guys, don't worry, don't worry. I'll, I'll win this round. I'm forcing... Like, Golden, why are you forcing, mate? It's an eco with full USPs. No, no, no. Deeg armor, double Deeg in apartments, finds a third. That's just excellent work. And it certainly helps the Fnatic a full 5A stacked on that site as well. Heretics walk into the waiting arms. And, well, now they've got some Deegs of their own. Can they do the dirty right back, though? Fnatic, they don't want to fall on day three of Cologne. They are here for the long haul. Crims heading under. That's a great shot. Are we going to flick it right back in the favor of the French? Let's see. JW getting dinked. Not like this. As Heretics look to make this one a bit of a mess as well. Flusher flashed into middle with another. And uh, there's still one at top mid. Keo's going to fall back as his team enter the A bomb site. Maka can't cross though. The bomb. Oh, it will just about. We get stopped by JW in the window. And now, or CT rather. And now it is just Keo stuck in middle. A long way away from home in a one on four. Oh. Oh. Yep. Well, there you go. That's that one nice and over. Fnatic 2-1. They get that conversion. They deal with the force by response from Heretics. And now an easy third round waits in the wings for Fnatic, as it's only going to be vanilla pistols here for Heretics. Now, I say that should be easy. If this uh, if this best of three is anything to go by, perhaps not, given that we've had so many of these, uh, these full ecos. But they're able to do a lot more damage than they should be allowed to get away with. I'm hoping that's not the case, though. As uh, Fnatic, they're looking for this 3-1 start. Nevera testing the waters in mid. He's decided, mm, maybe not us, what? XMS, you go. Collins anticipating the outs push. They, they've detected by now that's an eco. Okay. Okay, Golden. Yep, sure. Why not? Through the wall, he just spams down Keo, and if I'm Keo, I'm raging after that one, man. I'm not happy one bit. Heretic still sat up outside of the B site. They're not looking to commit. They're really looking to get as much out of this round as they can as they move down into the lower tunnels. Crims and JW left waiting in the wings here for this exact play to come in, and Crims should be a nice little stat pad Momo as JW helps out there as well from the window. One swept under the rug as Fnatic go 3-1 up. I feel like JW needed those kills. He didn't need to get the kills for the team. Someone else could have done that for him. But he needs to get those rounds on the board. He needs to get those numbers. Yeah, right? Like, just as a nice little confidence booster, especially since on Inferno, like, we saw him missing some uncharacteristic shots. I think... I think you're bang on there, Frankie. And uh, now, immediately on the back of it, we see him purchasing up the AWP as well. He actually gets that dropped over by Flusher. So that's always good to see. He's going to be peeking in towards Ramp. Maka looking to get ahead of this Molotov. Oh, it's burning him. It's tickling him. And it's not in a good way. Flusher and Crims, they go aggressive. And they get rewarded handsomely for it. Massive advantage early, but still a commitment to the A site. No mid lurk here for Heretics. They're waiting on Lucky to come out the ramp, but Keo might just get spotted. Oh, he tucks in the corner. Flusher holding onto the palace. It's not going to be a free entry for Keo with two players hiding below the balcony. If you can get this opening kill, then Heretics can uh, speed up. In fact, Fnatic, they're not convinced. They're moving away. They're rotating uh, towards the CT spawn. Core still able to play retake here as one more man runs towards B. It's gone awfully quiet, and they don't think it's going to be the A site attack anymore. They are not correct in that assumption, but this is a standard setup, right? They're just 2-2, two -two, so they're absolutely fine when A eventually gets ruptured by Heretics. JW's waiting for that swing in Palace. Kyo's going to give it to him. Nevera spotted. That's the bomb as well. Another man is out onto the Tetris yet to be seen, but it's not going to be too much of a guessing game. Oh dear, that Molly. And no smoke for it. Flush has got to run, and he can't run fast enough. Nevera burns him out. There is a chance after all, especially with that missed shot from JW on the jiggle. Nevera, he's going to try and plant default. Good luck, buddy. There's like three men in CT, but no one's going to stop him. They kill him after the plant. That's still not a great spot for the French, especially not with one in the jungle who won't be able to stop the defuse from this position, but he might be able to catch some rotations. Yeah, lucky. Still waiting patiently. And there it is, the first kill, the reward, but they're already on the bomb. Keo, actually, they get off of it. Now tapping it again, Keo needs to take this peek and he decides against it. He lets them grab that defuse. So fourth round for Fnatic, locked in and guaranteed. 
Bomb Plant and Kyo surviving at least means he can drop an AK over. They still have full utility here and they still have rifles to play with in round number six. But I'm already getting a little bit scared. I think, you know, with Inferno being so dominant, the Fnatic we've wanted to see here at ESL One Cologne is starting to come to life. And this is what we were talking about in the uh, in the pre-match segment where we kind of said it feels like the fire should be lit beneath Fnatic, right? Being up for elimination, you don't want to be the team that not only uh, got wrecked by Astralis on day one, but then lose in your second game versus a team that really you should be beating. And as that little uh, as that little sign here, never placed lower than third uh, than twelfth at Cologne. And so if they did lose here, it'd be their worst ever placing. Oof. That doesn't inspire too much confidence though in Heretics either, because you know that's not the kind of brand that Fnatic want associated with their Counter Strike team. No, they're used to winning Cologne, if we look at history. But yeah, even with the things being online, it's not stopping Fnatic. They're in control. They're 4-1 up on this third map. May have taken a while to get here, but they're not going to be letting it slip. Not now, not today. JW boosted up. Oh, no, that window Molotov. Crims has to smoke it out. JW is very far ahead, and he's going to hit the shot. Lovely stuff. He is looking far better than the previous two maps. Flusher in the connector. Lucky's waiting on the fade. This could favor him, but low HP and, oh, Flusher, you know he knows. Lucky comes through and Flusher's ready for it. He's gonna get shot in the back from A as the sight is lost. No one was even watching it. Crims is smoked off in the spawn, can't do a thing about it, but, oh, he sees the flash coming through and he's able to take down Maka. Nice stuff, JW even set him up from CT as well. And Fnatic, two men up on the retake. Or not even retake. Bombs yet to go down. They're not waiting either for it to happen. They're just going to continue to push back in. It's all on CT now. Two players filtering out, and they will not let Keo get comfortable. I love that from Fnatic. Back on Nuke, they're playing very, very safe in a lot of those situations on the CT side, giving Heretics the room, giving Heretics the respect. Well, no more of that. We're, we're back into El Clasico Fnatic territory, Mirage, and just hunting down these kills. Heretics broke as well. No bomb plant, and so no buy. If we remember back on Nuke, XMS was having such a good game. He's off to a very quiet start here on Mirage. I feel like he is such a, a key ingredient within this game, and so we need to see more from him. We know what this guy can offer. We know what he's capable of. Through this smoke, he's going to try and lurk his way in. He's got Maka alongside him, but Crims, there we go, does get bested by the Deagle. Flusher follows up and now knows that there's another man in the connector. Flusher still fighting, trying to deal with Lucky, but he can't quite overcome him. And so now we're into this three on three. The A site falls in favor of the Heretics, and while they are in the arm with these pistols, there's still a chance for them in this round, but they lose XMS. And so now Lucky and Keo, they've got to try and do the impossible here, armed with just these Deegs and that one M4. Can they somehow uh -oh. get a second? Oh, goodness. Good bye, Brolin. Another one. Basketball player in his spare time, and Golden coming in through CT. It's a clean round for Fnatic. Eh, well, you know, clean ending. They lose two. Not the cleanest of rounds, but still plenty of money when you look down that list. They're so rich. Oh, yeah. I th that round looked lost from the second the bomb planted because both players trapped in their positions. Fnatic had an HE and two Molotovs. They're pretty damn good with their utility. Of course, they're going to burn out these final players. Well, they don't need to. Brolin just dunks Keo off the site. Tries to move, tries to escape, but unfortunately, like a magnet, it appears right in his face. And Fnatic, another retake. Still a good round for Heretics, right? Low money, and they get a bomb plant. So now they reap the reward. Macker on the orb. Fnatic have had enough of waiting around. They've pushed in lower this time. Two players there as well. So JW can actually watch Crims' back as he sets up here. This does leave B susceptible to a rush, but Brolin uses his Molotov early, has plenty of utility to stop that exact fact. And JW, oh, strafing out wide, gets caught by XMS. More entries from the man you wanted, Harry. And Lucky is going to join him, receiving a dink from Golden, but getting so much control as a result. They even throw a deep jungle smoke and Lucky pushes through it. I love that. Brolin wasn't even considering that as an option. Flusher in CT flashed off the angle. It's aggression all across the map from Heretics. And they're going to reap the reward. Crims in a 1v5 all alone. Now, plenty of money here for Fnatic. And so I hope we see Crims continue with what he's doing right now. 
Starting to move on in, and I don't think he's expecting to win the round, but he could certainly still make it expensive coming in on this Palace flank. If he takes down, you know, like three players here, then this is worth it for Fnatic. It's only a second round for the Heretics, and it would set them up nicely in terms of the money. He will hold on, try and play for these exits. He hears players leaving. Is he going to try? Yeah, he's moving in now to do the damage. There it is. Maka Ooh. falls. That's the AWP taken away. That has to be grabbed by XMS, but he does get there in time. So it's not the end of the world. They only lose one man. A second on the board for Heretics and Fnatic still coming in with a buy. There's a world, Harry, not far from here where Crims can jump on that bomb if it was a bit closer and time a bit longer or shorter, I guess. Heretics, though, still finding their second and very quick entries into middle despite a double under setup and Golden getting taken down as the con smoke bloom. I, I do like Heretics. I just think they're really, really fun to watch when they get going on this T side, when they get those early smokes in. They love playing their spawns. They're doing it a lot on, uh, on Nuke as well. And right now, another timeout before they get back into the madness. Fnatic with six in a row, eventually broken. And so Heretics know the the importance of this follow-up round. This is crucial. They want to try and break Fnatic's money. It won't come easily, but it could come soon. Double AWP as well. Flash is going to be joining JW, and JW has that mid-spawn. So if he wants to fight Window or jump onto the catwalk, both of those are available to him. Oh, dude, it's a conga line. <laughs> Everyone's going for it. Double mid jump as well. Fnatic pushing in aggressive. JW very close, but he was flashed off. Flusher instead finds first blood towards that A site. Peeking stairs to ramp and taking down Nevera. That's where all of Heretics remain outside of the A site. That one player in middle went back late to stop Fnatic getting aggressive by throwing in that early flashbang. It's at least had that effect, right? Because JW could just have the top of mid right now and all of the info. Uh, because he doesn't, Fnatic have to run more of a standard setup. That's not really going to save Heretics here. They're wary of the flank. And if you notice, their utility is pretty bad. They have one smoke. XMS with the unorthodox double flash molly nade. I, don't know if you, I imagine he threw a smoke in mid and then bought the flash actually late out of spawn. So it's not that bad. Getting some more usage out of his money. Out the A ramp is the AWP. Flusher doesn't expect it so wide and he gets caught by Maka. Crims is trying to pick up the pieces here. Molly onto default. No one there. Fnatic have given up the A site. They're looking to stop Heretics from crossing into it. JW avoids that Molotov well. He should just be fine. If not, he's got a smoke to survive. One T-Smoke absolutely failed yeah. and has landed on the, the roof, the skybox. Yeah, that's never ideal. Will that come back to punish them, though? Hasn't out of the gate. The bomb's gone down and Heretics are now set up to try and hold on to this site. That nade is going to do a lot of damage. XMS eats it, bought down. But then Ooh. there's the response. Brolin, you throw a nade at me, I'll shoot you back. And the bullets do more. That Molly forces Kiyoshima out into the open. Golden oh. over the head, and now Goomba stomping down. It's all onto Maka. 1v2. They tagged him. Smoke on the bomb. Maka, first oh. shot, lands, and oh, oh, just missing the mark the second time around. Does land the no scope to end it, but the defuse has already come in. Fnatic, they get number seven. That was millimeters away. That was so close to taking down Crims on the defuse, but close just doesn't quite cut it. And Fnatic will sneak this defuse in the smoke up to seven now. Another Porsche Heretics. They're getting uh, a lot of them out very early. Nothing wrong with that, but it, if this game does go the distance, we hit a 30 rounder, they're going to be left lacking. Oh. So close. I like the lanyards up on the wall. That's a nice touch. Yeah. That's something that I think a lot of esports folk have done. All been there. So, you know, you've got the passes to get you places, but now you've got to get yourself there, Heretics. They're uh, two rounds to their name right now, and that one just barely going against them. JW back with this orc, trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Maka in middle. Flash is going out. JW holding for this cross. Lucky. 
And the rest of the gang moving in towards short. JW just gets away and is helped out by Golden. It is a symphony of death over towards short side. Golden comes back to help out even more and another dink from him. He has sent them packing out from the apartments. XMS is here, now naded down. That puts him in the one-shot realm of this M4. And that's him deleted by Brolin. Keo all alone, wondering how this went so, so wrong so damn quickly. And with a minute and five seconds left, you know, even if he wanted to save, it's a long journey to get there. I'm not sure he would, right? It doesn't really make any sense at this point with loss bonus maxed on out. I'd love to do some damage, though, because Fnatic have accumulated quite the bank account. All right, Flash here yeah, now. Yeah. He's hid, hiding in the boxes. Wedging himself in behind the... Flash is like a, Flash is like a spider, man. Like, it's like if, you're, if your area is a little messy, he'll hide in amongst everything and rummage around and then give you a little nip when you least expect it. Got eight legs, way too many eyes. Horse. Web developer as well. Harry's terrified of him. All very good reasons. Oh, JW, and, and this is what we wanted as well coming into this third map, right? JW, very silent in the opening two of this series. Wasn't really an issue on Inferno, right? Like, you know, he, he gets the kills he needs. Nuke, I mean, no one had a good map except Golden. And here we go, JW, standing tall in the third and final where it matters most. <laughs> Not quite hitting the shot through the smoke as Heretics come up short. Need a re-smoke down here if they want to get past that. Yep, there it is. Lucky going to move forward first. It's a quick B execute. We've got two players towards the apartments for Fnatic Golden. Oh, yes. As they push through the Molotov, he catches them. One falls into his face. Brolin can't stop him. Golden has to hide. Brolin gets one, but traded immediately. And Golden overwhelmed by XMS. Maka is going to hit an orb shot nice and quick. And that will open up the bomb plant. Bomb has been planted. Flusher and Crims, though. A duo as old as time itself, some say. Others, they don't say that. <laughs> Flusher, over here in the uh, the market, looking for a way in. Got his shopping list. He's checking it twice. And now I'm getting shopping confused with Santa. Nothing's going to get gifted to Fnatic in this round, though. Ooh, ooh, he hears the footsteps. Flash of nose. But oh, knowing's only half the battle. The other half of the battle is the battle. And that does not go his way. Yeah, Heretic salvaging, uh, ooh, salvaging a third, starting to get back into the groove here on Mirage. But unfortunately, what has been the problem for Heretics is the lack of ability to build up money. I feel like they've had so many pistol rounds. They've never had back-to-back -back rounds in this map. They got the pistol. They got forced on by Golden. And echoed by the rest. One uh, a bomb part with that round where they get four out of CT and Crims finds one exit. So they made some money there. But other than that, it's been, yeah, by and large, rough. So it's important they try and follow up and keep things going smoothly. He's safely avoiding Flush's utility down ramp side. He's the only man in the site, and we've not seen Fnatic, uh, you know, often play inside of A. They've been very sat, very much sat towards CT, stairs, connector, and um, playing retake, or more often than not, stopping Heretics from even crossing in the first place. So if Heretics go for proper jungle smokes and a real execute here, they first got to get past Flusher. It's not going to be the normal execute, though. Back to the connector smoke that hopefully will land this time. A molly close balk, a better grenade than the last time, and Crims is setting up Flusher for a lot of damage here. There's the first man in. The flash is good, and Flusher is finding two before he falls. Crims even drops Lucky, trying to get aggressive towards the jungle, and Heretics, every A take has looked the same, it feels like. Like they've never gone for the standard smokes, and so Fnatic is just open to take every fight they want, and they win them too. Nine to three, and another instance where Heretics get one round and immediately reset. Luckily, they do have money for a rebuy thanks to keeping three alive, but that's going to be bottomed out pretty soon. Yeah, it's, it's kind of scary, right? Because the point that you make there, that, that these A executes have all looked pretty much the same, is is terrifying because you already see Fnatic is so much better poised. You know, they're not going to fall for the same execute twice. 
uh, that they already have players ahead of those smokes. They've got Crims lining up utility to let Flusher make these plays. In this round, though, Makazorp comes alive and has dealt with JW early on. Now the A play comes in and Flusher gets caught out in the open. While Golden does deal with Maka, it's going to require a little bit more. And Crims has helped out by putting us back into even footing. A very lengthy flank coming in from Brolin all the way through T-Spawn from the B apartments around the world. But Keo running in gets the information. However, does lose his life in the process. Three on two, Nevera holding ramp and all oh, Brolin's jiggled. It doesn't matter because he does end up headless. Lucky holding for this peak from Crimson. And while he does kind of check it, doesn't really. Lucky gets away with the frag. Golden left in a 1v1 clutch that should be impossible. Nevera mollied out from ramp, forced to take the peak, and he's going to land a shot. Four on the board for Heretics as they start to assemble a T side here. Yeah, better late than never, right? Getting uh, getting on the board near the end of the half and after some back and forth rounds, starting to break Fnatic's money potentially. Uh, the unfortunate part is, you know, two rounds after the half, it's not like Fnatic are going to be, you know, having, uh, having to eco a bunch of rounds here. And yeah, just forcing right back in. Double MP9, scout on Crims. It's honestly not that bad. It's something that Fnatic can make work. What can't they make work? Oh, XMS, I like this. Quick out the ramp, but no worry for Golden. Flashed out, still hits the shot. Crims unscopes as they peak ramp. He's going to hit a tag. That really softens up these players for the SMG and the nade to follow. Maka getting a kill, and it's really on him and Keo to do the heavy lifting now. Crims is waiting to finish the job, and he will do so onto Keo. JW finding Maka into a smoke and dropping into the sandwich. He takes a bite out of Nevera. Fnatic up to 10, and uh, there we go. Uh, just continuing the street carry. Heretics, four rounds, none of them back to back. Fnatic immediately respond. And I feel like we're seeing so many A executes, so many fast ramp plays for Heretics. It might be what they, they're used to and they like to fall back on, but Fnatic are having no issue dealing with it. And due to its consistency, Fnatic have just been running heavy A setups all CT side long. Heretics, last round of the half here, last chance saloon, and two AKs is all they can muster for this buy. It's looking like a B split with the bomb coming up short. They're actually going into under, and hello, it's JW finding one. That's at least a gun gifted to some of these weaponless players who will drop in and grab it. That's Keo. Crim's finding Nevera at the top of middle, though, and immediately swapping sides of the connector. XMS not offering himself up for much, but Golden loses his life. Uh, one by one, it's just trades from Fnatic. They're so good at getting away with them. Heretics left a man down. It just feels like Fnatic needed a reminder of not only who they are, but what they're up against as well. Like everything has looked so much better since Inferno. That nuke game, a long distant memory. The bomb has dropped over at short. Crims is waiting for this peak from XMS. And Keo gonna drop down. Brolin's heard that. Brolin's not the kind of guy you want hearing things. And there he is, 11 for Fnatic at the end of the first half of play. It's another dominant first half from the Swedes as they look to send Heretics home.
Heretics are needing a prayer to be answered right now as they head into the second half of Mirage because Fnatic are on fire and they're not going to want to let things go. So this round is more crucial for ever as we head into our second pistol for Heretics. If there's one thing that's been good, it's been, you know, the pistol rounds for this team. But unfortunately, uh, this kind of scoreline, they matter more than ever. And Fnatic are not waiting around. They are not hiding. They are fast, jumping across the stairwell, right into the jungle. I love this pistol round for Fnatic. XMS is looking for fights. Nothing getting presented. Crims with a very open plant. And the stars have just aligned here for Fnatic as they have incredible post plants for this pistol. Yeah, even though XMS deals with Crims, right? The bomb planter, you've got to worry about all these players in Connector and Jungle. They cover this rotation of Keo as well. He is trapped. So right now, the remaining four trying to get in through CT. Flusher sure. waiting up in Palace. This man, the Prince of Fnatic, trying to do oh. it all, but he gets tapped out. Golden, they're on the bomb. They're sticking it. Someone needs to find it, and they're going to. But Heretic's got the defuse. That is so damn close. Somehow, Whoa. the Frenchman get a fifth on the board they win the round but like kind of also not they lose everyone they just <laughs> grab it by sticking the defuse that is weird that is yeah. weird look look at that look at the timing look at how quickly he dies after the defuse comes in boom barely catch it. That is incredibly good for Heretics. And I mean, everyone else is taking fights, jumping on top of the boxes, being in the open. Fnatic are taking the free and easy kills while they got them and not focusing on the defuse because they can't see it. That's a great pistol for Heretics. I, I like the idea from Fnatic, right? Really good post pass. It's just how quick Heretics grouped in that CT spawn and burst out into the site. They knew exactly what was going on. They weren't fearful. And Lucky, he's going to get dinked immediately. We know that Fnatic have been great on these four spies when they do lose the pistol. Think about the first half. Heretics won the opening T-side pistol. Fnatic won with four USPs and one Deagle. Golden, it was him to find three kills. And this time it's Flusher getting the opener with the scout. Mac are dead in the water and Heretics a man down. Oh no, look at B. Oh dear, Nevera is here alone. And if they do come this way, talk about a trial by fire. Keo down here towards ramp. It looks like Fnatic are gearing up for an A play and that would leave them walking into this stack. So. Flusher getting spotted there, still at ramp with this scout. But while this is happening, Brolin up through connector with this AK, dodges the flash, and now he knows that Keo is under Palace. Kiyoshima is surely about to get dethroned here. What? But XMS, the bodyguard, the royal guard, has come in and saved the day with a double. Even then, the dink down range into connector. Here comes Nevera, the cleanup crew, does get bested by Crims. Woo. But he's the only man left in a sea of Heretics players. Crims, bomb on his back. He was gonna try and run the gauntlet into B, hoping that that baits Keo in. And while it does, it should be the end of the line for Crims. 10 seconds left. 
Time turning against him, and XMS gonna lock in the round for Heretics. They get that sixth, in spite of having to play that round four on five from the get-go. Yeah, he swaps out the MAC-10 for an MP9, has the same ammo, so it's not really, it's not really saving him there. He had uh, more seconds than bullets, only just. Oh, nice opening kill for Flusher, but it's XMS. Like you said, the bodyguard, he absolutely saves his teammates as Keo's about to get cleared under. Brolin had spotted him, but he can't shoot him down. And XMS, that one M4, does everything they needed to do. He's now upgraded onto the AK. A well-earned weapon. Nice grenades combined with the spam. Lucky finds JW in the middle. And Fnatic, not fully forcing, just with some pistols and utility, are setting up towards A with smokes. Looking for a bomb plant here. And Heretics, they don't want to allow it. They want to deny it. They want to get past this utility. Keo running them down. Doesn't see Brolin jump up onto the Tetris. So many flashbangs and so many frags, all in the favor of Fnatic. XMS needs to hold strong. He needs to stay alive. 10 HP and finally dies. It's Flusher faking the plant. Lucky will... Oh, it won't spam back. I guess he sees that he's off it. And now the CT smoke fades. It's so close. He gets the kill right as the plant comes in. Crims has a chance. Can Krems finish what Brolin and Flusher have started? He's down here towards ramp. Doesn't know the whereabouts of Nevera. That's the one question mark right now. Two smokes and a Molotov as well make things even more tricky. Four Crims oh, smoke down on the bomb. The bomb's not even planted for him. They tap it, and Crim swings out and gets dealt with. Defuse coming in. Nevera on it. Doesn't have the kit, but he's got time. A M4 dropped back by Lucky, being a good teammate and everything. Seven on the board for Heretics, and so still a chance. Brolin does a great job in that round there. Two with the P250, and then while being 10 HP trapped in Sandwich, he even gets a dink onto this player at triple. Such a such a great player. Like it's mind blowing how good Brolin is and how consistently good he is at that. Yeah, how do Fnatic make that eco so interesting, right? Especially like when that was a very telegraph play, there were a man down, the smokes go into A, and you know, instantly her heretics go, yeah, we're not letting them plant, we're not letting them get control, and start to take fights with SMGs. Fnatic just dome them. Oh dear, it's not getting better. Golden burn, uh, burns to a crisp after spraying down two in mid. Maka will respond, keeping things even and falling back into the site. No reason to overplay your hand at middle. You've already traded fairly. JW has pushed in through B and, oh, Keo, he's got his eyes on this. Oh dear, JW fires a bit early and not ready for the second either in a three on three. I don't blame him. Keo is still going to hold the B site and that rotate from Maka is not convinced as Fnatic. No one follows. No one goes further into B. It's just that lurk. And so back to middle, an area where heretics have no info. And due to Maka's early rotation, he doesn't know whether or not Fnatic have the A site already. He has to play very passive indeed, and they are expecting the A take, considering Kyo has pushed up aggressively. This is going to come back to haunt them. Oh no, Mac is watching CT for like a window boost, and even though he's got the right site in mind, Kyo is going under to middle. Fnatic are going to get a free bomb plant here in all the time in the world to establish post plants. It almost feels too good to be true. There's no one on the site, you say? I don't believe it. There's so many spots to hide in B, the bench, the car, the market, the apps, and Fnatic, yeah, they're going to fake it. They're not going to be convinced at the first drop, and that's going to give time for heretics to set up and maybe catch them off guard from the extremities. Yeah, Keo's just missed the timing onto Brolin. Flusher needs to have his wits about him. Keo oh. round the corner is dealt with him. Brolin now in the clutch. This guy, oh, wow. nailed by Kiyoshima. An eight on the board for Heretics. Maybe there's still a chance yet. This was an 11-4 first half from Fnatic after a blowout victory on Inferno where it felt like Heretics never even had a chance. Well, now the plucky French squad starting to get rounds under their belt and starting to make this game feel doable. Let's not forget, the loser of this game is eliminated from ESL One Cologne. Yeah, joining big number one team in the ESL world ranking right now, and they went first on the third day in a grueling game after a 54 round map and nuke taking on NIP. And they fell short, where well, one team has to follow as well. That round was a definition of too good to be true for Fnatic, they didn't believe it couldn't trust their own eyes. Now they're going to go back to the A take. No one inside of the site. Mac has got that AWP again, posted up on CT. Fnatic flooding out the ramp. Look at the grenade damage. And Maka, he fires off even more, taking the first kill. 
Roland's looking for a way out. He doesn't want to die through this smoke, and so he does manage to elude death. Now, they fall back. They take these very passive positions, but there's so much utility on Heretics. You have to try and take at least one or two fights here to whittle some of that down, and Golden offers up a frag on the back of it. He retreats into this four-on-four -four post plant hold at Ramp and Palace. Fnatic, they've got to do the impossible now with the smoke falling down at Ramp. One on the bomb as well. This is going to make matters very awkward. XMS, there's one. Brolin with the response. Oh, Flusher, smoke down, but he shoots through. Nevera in the clutch, but he's delivered a double as well. Now on the bomb, Crim's up through Ramp, and he might arrive just in time. Oh, dear. He gets him off of it. 12 rounds for Fnatic. Everybody dies, but there's Weeds just about get that round onto the tally. My word. Oh, Flush's Palace Lurk it is saving Fnatic in some of these rounds. It, it, it almost does it on the pistol. If you remember, we had a very similar situation to what just went down, except with a lot less utility. Flush gets domed. This time he doubles up, spraying one through the smoke and Crims. He had to hit that shot. Low HP on Nevera after finding a double. But Fnatic, they are just going to edge their way to victory lane. And only just, look at the money. It is garbage. They've had to buy up three SMGs in a Galil, Team Heretics forced by right back in. They've got nothing else but pistols. Dear, oh dear. This could be Fnatic starting to really streak together some T-sided rounds. It was four in a row to start this half, but Fnatic break the curse. AW getting boosted. Oi, oi. And actually, he might have just heard that rotate. Maka just ran from window to market. So as long as JW has prickly ears, maybe he knows how much control he's just been given. This B split can come through with a third prong on the attack right through the back. JW's got this round locked in just on this position alone, surely. Heretics aren't even considering it. They, don't, they, they have no idea. This is a double for JW waiting to happen. J double trouble. Here he is inside of the B site. Might not even be needed. Where are they? Oh, there's one. There we go. That's nice and free. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. There we go. Yep. Gets it. Just like we knew his wood. Nice and clean. Classic JW. Bomb planted over in B. Fnatic taking a 13th round. This this four spy from Heretics. Not only does it not give them any kind of result to go off of, but it sacrificed their buys looking at the future, which at this scoreline, that really could be detrimental here to Heretics in this third and final map of this elimination best of three. And Fnatic, as Fnatic often do, hunting down these kills, trapping them in the ramp and palace area. Oh, Golden's got one. Lucky stuck in palace low, and XMS is on the ramp. Now, JW can pick one of the two options or just cut off both of them by staying in this position, letting his team fan out. Golden's pushed close, there's XMS gone, and Lucky might be unlucky in this round. It's JW not letting him save a thing, and Fnatic not just five alive, but five dead for the Frenchman. There is just no money there at all. They've got to give yeah. away 14. No, that's luckily saved for the Orb. That's Fnatic, like, gearing themselves up for the win, right? Yeah. They, they know the importance. Even though it's only a couple of Deegs and armor, it still gives... Uh, heretics like a, a fighting chance and, a, and a, a, another go at that round that they just attempted yeah. there, right? You deny them that, you guarantee, or at least you should have guaranteed this 14th round, and at which point they are on the finish line. Just USPs for heretics up against this scoreline. That is devastating. With their lifeline here at Cologne now called into question. Crims at ramp. Has Flusher throwing flashes over to facilitate this peak. Ooh. Almost gets timing there, but Crim's not deterred by the man at stairs, and in fact gets a bit of revenge for the love tap that XMS put down range. They collapse into the A site, and even though there were five players here for Heretics now, they're getting made quick work of. And this is it. This is the lifeline. This is your tournament. Heretics, what could be your final full buy of Mirage and the series? It's going to rely on the Orp Maka echoing on that force buy round to facilitate this. We've got guns, we've got utility, we've got those kids. And those are necessary considering the, the defuses in the smokes that have, you know, netted Heretics two rounds.
Fnatic setting up with the bomb towards B. We've got two players outside of A. It looks like a bit of a fake sell. We've got the two MAC-10s here as well. Fnatic have such a lead, they can afford to throw uh, a bit of caution to the wind, take a couple of gamble rounds. It seems like the classic, okay, guys, we fake A, we rush and die, and then when they rotate, you go B with a bomb. Is it that simple, though, as the smokes are cooled off for the time being? And will Heretics fall for it as well is a big question. Mac has cleared out the top of middle, but I doubt he's going to push any further than this with the orb. That would be a massive risk and to very little gain. Pick a site and gamble with it. And back towards short side could be the right call. But I imagine the second these smokes come down, Heretics are probably very jittery right now, very worried and might over-rotate. Ooh, one of the smokes coming out from Golden, he throws it from the B apartments to the top of Connector or stairs even. Wow, this is a proper execute from Fnatic. I wonder if Heretics are going to fall for it. Do they see the trajectory of the smoke? Nivera is not buying it. Neither is Kiyoshima. Here comes the utility. And Mac is still for the third support AWP on B. Yeah, they've read this well. Nevera holding down this B site single-handedly almost. JW does get the better of it, but that's where Maka's AWP chimes in. Crims, the only man left, isn't ready for a second player under Palace. Lucky. Concealed by the smoke has got the round dead to right. So Heretics, a ninth on the board. And as well orchestrated as that fake was, they do not move a muscle. Yeah, I'd love to see the perspective because I always wonder when teams do that, uh, you know, how much info the CT's getting, right? Nevera from the car, I'm almost certain he can see that smoke come over the B apartment and, and, and go in towards A. And at that point, if you see that smoke, you know what's going on. You know it's a fake smoke. And regardless of the other two bits of utility out ramp, the bomb is B. He gets the info, he sticks, and no one from Heretics even budged after the util. So they were very confident there, and good awareness. Unfortunately, JW is very quick on that orb. Lucky's happy, though. He gets his hands on it. He loves, like, donning this AWP every now and again. Crim's over in the B apartments, and Nevera is trying to get aggressive. This push makes or breaks the round, and utility out in his hands. He was looking to smoke the choke point, but already... That was the choker in the smoke point. So now Keo and Lucky, two on five, trying to keep the Cologne dream alive. They're split apart from one another. They're not in this A site, which is where this play is looking to end up with Brolin being so damn deep. Crims still over at B, does get dealt with by Kiyoshima, but all that does for Fnatic is solidify that A is the place they want to find themselves at. It's a 15th round. Heretics is certainly saving here. This is all they're bringing with them up against match series and elimination point. I wouldn't speak too soon, Harry. No, and Fnatic, they might even hunt down some of these players, at least send JW on a bit of a lurk. He has that orb, but if he posts up here in B, you can already see that Keo's getting aggressive and maybe to his own detriment, JW waiting. And there we go, another one dead. Just lucky left. And at this point, Fnatic can just leave one dude with the bomb and try and hunt down this AWP. They don't know it's the orb. He's not fired a shot with it, but the AR seem pretty sure it's on the B site and Brolin Baton shot. He's been legged, that's all he cares about. Oh, He's gonna re-peek back in and close the round. That's devastating. The AWP taken away, the leg hits, but when you don't kill Brolin the first time around, he'll get you back all right. I'm, I, you know, it's such a shame to see Heretics fall here. Yeah, all you can do is laugh at that point. It is a shame to see Heretics fall, right? There's so many teams I wanted to see more from that we don't really get the opportunity to. But uh, unfortunately, that's a cutthroat, a cutthroat format. Lose two and you're out. But on the other side of the coin, it's great to see Fnatic have a resurgence. After we saw them get decked on Newcastle, I was a little worried. I want Fnatic at Cologne, and they're here to stay. Ooh, XMS. Down three ramp like a speed demon, takes the head off of Brolin, but Fnatic are quick to get out of there. They leave it in the more than capable hands of Flusher just to stick around. XMS is looking for the gun, but I think that nade is just blowing it away. So a dual purpose nade from Flusher. Bomb now over towards the apartment. It's gonna get retrieved by Crims and Fnatic. If they do just commit to a B play, they're moving in to a site with just one man on it. They pump the brakes, they slow it right down. JW in the apartments has Golden behind him and only Nevera here to hold the B bomb site. He's got to do it all single-handedly and now single-headedly as he goes down. JW posted up to deal with Keo at short side. The utility is a dead giveaway that there's a man here 
Keo trying to catch the timing, but he can't find it. And he does catch a bullet for his woes. XMS falling. Oh, dear. It's lucky, rather. And XMS last to go down. Fnatic, they take the victory. They lock themselves in as they're set to continue. My wire was hanging out, but my word, what a performance. Fnatic recovering. And for the, uh, the Heretics, it's a bit of a grim ending here for their journey at ESL1 Cologne. Welcome to your Mountain Dew Game Fuel post-match. Fnatic have claimed their rightful position in ESL 1 Cologne. But Heretic, they did put up a respectful fight, taking it all the way. They just couldn't finish things off in the end. No thanks, really, to Golden. The man showed up, 
showed his way with a pistol, especially a deagle, Harry, and he got it done for his team. Yeah, he leads, he frags, he does it all, there's Golden, and that's why we love him, right? And, you know, Fnatic, this this was important, you know? Like, it might not be a win that they're going to be bragging about for the rest of their careers, but it was a must-win game for them after a kind of lackluster start versus Astralis the other day. They had to pick this up. Because when you think about ESL 1 Cologne, one of the organizations that you think of is Fnatic, and so we needed them to be here. For Heretics, yeah, it's a shame. Everyone loves an underdog story, but the reality is they normally don't win the underdogs, and that's why they are underdogs. So yeah, it wasn't enough here today. Also worth noting how stacked this group is, right? Like there was no easy route for Heretics to get out of this series. There's Fnatic, there's Astralis, there's G2, there's FaZe. Uh, the list goes on, but Heretics, they had a good tournament. They showed us some cool stuff, and we'll definitely have our eyes on them moving forward. Who do we think is going to actually move forward from this group? You've mentioned so many huge names there. Oh, God, I, I, that's a horrible question. I mean, I, I hope Fnatic are up there, right? You know, obviously, they kind of fall on the first day to Astralis. It's somewhat to be expected. Astralis are looking good. G2 bashed them IBR the other day as well. Those are those are my, my go-tos, right? G2, Fnatic, Astralis. How could they not be? Well, we have got a player ready and hopefully willing to do our Mountain Dew Game Fuel post-match interview. It's not the golden boy you see on screen there. No, it's the man with the plastic door. We are, of course, talking about Crims. Crims, we haven't got much time with you, so I've got to go right in and ask, what's the issue you're finding with Nuke at the moment? Oh, that's a hard one. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's been pretty good on practices, but I don't know. We seem to choke a bit on it uh, when we play officials, but yeah, I have no good answer for that one. Uh, Crims, uh, your, your follow-up game is going to now be versus the loser of Heroic G2 to get outside of this group stage. Uh, who, who do you want to play out of those two teams? What do you feel about them currently? Oh, they're both tough teams. Uh, I would say I would pick G2 over Heroic. Uh, I mean, Heroic is a bit more random team, I would say, uh, more aggressive. And we know a bit about G2 a bit more, so it would be more comfortable playing them. Uh, Crims, that Inferno game was a very weird one for us as uh, spectators looking in. And we saw you laughing a lot during it. Uh, what were your thoughts as to how Heretics approached that map? Because it felt like you guys were just dominating on the back of a few kills. Uh, I mean, we told ourselves after Nuke, like, let it go and just play our game and have fun. And that's what we did. Are you finding online CS fun, Crims? Uh, no. no <laughs> I kind of figured you might say that, man. I kind of figured you might. Well, Crims, thank you so much for chatting to us today. We wish you all the best in this competition. It is an extremely tough group. But before I let you go, do you think you're going to get out of it? Uh, I hope so. Well, we hope so, too. We love a bit of spicy fanatic on the Humble. server. Thank you so much. We'll let you go chill out. Thank you. Oh, man, boys. a few words there, man, a few <laughs> words. But I like that, you know, like just humble. Like, I think I think he knows that that we're still waiting for Fnatic to like reach that same peak they were at a few months ago. You know, we're just back off the player break. You're going to ease into it. And I think he said exactly the right thing. Like, they should just be having fun with it because that is when Fnatic are at their most deadly. If you think back to just a matter of months ago, right? Like you had all those interviews where everyone's smiling, everyone's having a good time. They're playing for knife kills and they look like the best they've ever looked. So if they can get back to that, I still think this is a fanatic team to be scared of. Maybe JW is going to bring out the R8 again. You know? uh, yeah, I hope not. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll find out very soon because Fnatic have saved their place in the competition. And next up, we're going to see Chaos fighting Liquid for a spot in the playoffs. And you're going to have Machine, you're going to have Pansy, you're going to have Sponge. And if that ain't a good night in, I don't know what is. Intel Gamer Days is on now. Whether you're looking to buy or build, now is a great time to upgrade. Get limited time offers and giveaways from top names in PC gaming. Unleash elite gaming performance with systems featuring new 10th gen Intel Core processors and bring Marvel's Avengers to life with in-game optimizations for a mightier PC experience. Act now. Intel Gamer Days is only here for a limited time.
If you want to know what you're good at, and, well, also, what you suck at, check out CSGOHub.com. Coming! Everybody loves an underdog. Who needs to be liked? Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel. Victory in a can. Myself today trying to make the pain go away. Sarah, I want to fade away, be with the stars in outer space. You come and you go, you take me high, you take me low. But I don't know how to do this on my own anymore Oh no That was Molly for the melancholy Cody fill a hole inside me Damned if I do, damned if I don't That was Zanny still I know my psyche Cocaine just to feel my heartbeat Nothing to lose, nothing to gain myself today trying to find ways to make you stay Sarah I want to go away close my eyes never wake up again ESL one cologne online is brought to you in part by Intel Mountain Dew game fuel DHL and GG Bet. Liaz is joining me from LA to talk about all things 100 Thieves. And first of all, how did you guys react to the move online? The move online, oh, it was pretty rough at first. Um, I think right before the move online, we hadn't played an online match in over a year. So it was, yeah, it was, it was really rough. It was a bit, bit foreign for us, but uh, I think eventually we got over it. We started treating every match like it was a land. Like we do the huddles before the game, we'd be wearing our jerseys. We really got into it. But, yeah, it, it, it's still a little bit different. People have different like confidence levels and shit. So, you know, you got to get over that. How do you think the team is feeling now going into Cologne in terms of those confidence levels? Um, 
I think things have been good lately. We just came off a good break. Everyone's feeling refreshed. And since the practice started, we've been doing pretty well. Like everyone, everyone's feeling sharp and happy again, which is great. As happy as we can be in quarantine anyway, but yeah, feeling good. It must be really hard as, as an Australian team and, and New Zealand team not being able to go outside. It yeah. must mean that the play break was maybe a bit tougher for you. Yeah. Um, Aaron and Jod got to go to uh, to Denmark and Norway during their break, so they got to see family and friends and all that. But yeah, me, me, Justin and Sean all got stuck here in LA. It's a little rough, but you know, it is what it is. Nothing we can really do about it. Well, let's talk about Chet moving into the coaching role. Uh, JKS had a, a spot on uh, HRTP confirmed. He was talking about Chet doing a lot more VOD review with uh, as that was ever done was ever done previously. Um, are you also changing elements of your individual practice as well? Um, I mean, maybe a little bit. I think we like. I think review review really is all of it. Like. Even during practice, we're reviewing a lot more and figuring out like what's going wrong, what's going well for us. Um, I'd say we're more on top of it. Like we're not really wasting any time. I think after every single scrim that we do, we're reviewing and we're doing like fucking four hours of theory every day. So really putting in the work. Four hours of theory. Are we? When are we going to sort of see the re results of that theory? Do you think in the game uh, at Cologne? <laughs> I mean, hopefully soon. Yeah, hopefully Cologne. Now that you're playing the same teams on, on a frequent basis, being in NA, does that help with things like anti-stratting? Uh, not really. I don't think so. I think every team just sort of knows each other in and out after a while. And, you know, you sort of just, it's strange. It, it just becomes mind games, especially against teams like Gen G and uh, EG, which Chet is really familiar with. So, you know, you sort of, you know exactly what they're going to do, but they know that you know. So you change what you're doing then it's just you know it's you don't really know what's happening you can just prepare for the best um individual game that you can i think and speaking of mind games obviously team liquid there's a thing it's it's they're kind of a barrier that you you find hard to overcome do you find sometimes actually the mind games already begun before you hit the server against them oh 100 yeah it's uh, even, even in practice like you don't really want to show your hand so Things are really strange against them, but you know they're a great team. So that even if like you have things to surprise them with, they're always going to be ready for it. You really got to be on top of your game to beat them. Going into Cologne, then 100 Thieves, we've seen you as a team. Sometimes you have a slow start in the group stage, but you're a team that can make it to playoffs. How are you going to make sure that you hit the ground running? Um, I mean, we're doing four hours of theory every day, so hopefully we hit the ground running. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Just stay on top of our mental. We feel good right now, so. Glad to hear it. Thank you so much for talking to me, Lias. Good luck in Cologne. Cheers. Have a good one. And have a good one, we hope, here. 100 Thieves and Chaos Esports Club. Welcome back to ESL One Cologne. Hi, I'm Machine. I'm joined by Pansy and Sponge. We're bringing you the evening shift. We've got the America region, and it is a big one. 100 Thieves, of course, no need for introductions. When Chad's on the desk, he'll be doing that for me. But we do have Lauren Pansy Scott, and she is a giant Chaos Esports Club fan. I, I couldn't shut her up. She would not okay. stop saying how much she wanted to get the merch. She wanted to tweet all about I love them. their Twitter the game. All the time. Yeah, the Twitter game is actually good, and I don't even follow them on Twitter. I'm clearly not that much of a big fan. Step but I, I do like the idea of seeing Steel. He's he's always been a really fun player to watch from back in the day to now. Obviously, a very uh, cast illustrious... I remember yeah, exactly. back in the day, you guys used to share a casting desk. <laughs> we did. He did a bit of observing, you know. And he's back, true. back in the action. No, he's a great little player to watch. And honestly, I like the idea of Chaos because it kind of lives up to the name, right? They're a dangerous little team that can cause upsets Will they be a consistent well beater? No, but on the right day, they can do some damage. You're going to hear uh, probably me talking a lot about the Thieves, so we'll dig into the Chaos side of things a little bit more. This team, the foundation of it was just Steel. This year, they've added all four of the other players, Vanity uh, being the, I guess, other long-tenured one with oh, Steel there. He used to be an in-game leader back in the day. Now, uh, a fun little stat while I was looking into him, last year he played like 153 maps, and he only had like 180-something kills with the AWP. This year, since Leaf and uh, John G have joined the team officially, he already has over 500 kills, and that's since oh. June on the AWP. So he's picked up the mantle of that role. 
I mean, they've been grinding as well. Chaos have been in everything, potentially, it feels like. Every online scenario, be, right? they've been grinding hard. So, again, I, I, I want to see what they come out looking like. Yeah, so Ban of Vertigo makes sense. Mm. They haven't worked on that just yet. 100 Thieves not interested in the overpass. We get ourselves Nuke, Inferno, and a Mirage to finish. So it couldn't really be more default than that. The Nuke mm. at the start, the only real eyebrow raise. Yeah, and for those people who might look at the history between these two teams, they go, oh, well, last time 100 Thieves beat them uh, handedly on both of these maps here. Why are Chaos not changing things up? Well, that was an RMR event, and those who aren't too familiar with Steel's situation, unfortunately, he can't play in the Valve-sanctioned events. That meant he couldn't play, and the coach MCE, he had to stand on in. So when you have the coach standing in, you don't expect it to win. Yeah, and, and even to that, as much as I, I, I pinch of salt when I ask players things, you know, okay. I was like, okay, how, how much time have you been able to practice or get ready for 100 Thieves? I had a little chat to Steel, and he was like, well, we've, we've been grinding too much. We've been playing too so many much? games. Wow, well, I think too much is my adaptation of what he said. But more that they haven't had time to put as yeah. much of a focal point on it, which I don't know how much I want to read into yet. I'm, I'm I got some specifics salt. from him. I, did, I think we both asked yeah, the same we had a little chat. on the same day. Yeah. Uh, but the specifics of were that he's basically been intersecting that Fun Spark Cup with the yep. DreamHacks, uh, what was it, Showdown, not the yeah, Showdown. The summer, the one. DreamHacks summer. summer, yep. And then they've also, intermittently with that is the prac days. So they haven't had a day off. No prep specifically for 100 Thieves as well was the sentiment. But speaking of the Thieves, it'd be foolish not to mention them. We know the maps, especially Nuke being our first one. You think 100 Thieves come into this as the hot favorites though, Chatty B? They should be, they should be, but there's real upset potential here on this one. I'm feeling that Chaos, they just took down Fury in their opening matchup. They're looking hot in North America and taking down the Thieves. It's not impossible. had the chance to have a look at the 100 Thieves hands on in this tournament so far. It worked, it, it got them to this point, but it certainly wasn't as clean as maybe we'd hoped, but a pacey piece to come in with, Alex. Yeah, looking too good for Steel. He's actually managed to get down the vents with the bomb. That is the dream star for a pistol. Getting that bomb to the lower side. And they've even got teammates behind him. I can't believe Steel's not dead. Liaz's shots just whistle past his ear and enables him to get the bomb down. Zeppa looking to close this gap. He's a very feisty young fragger is Zeppa. Very impressed by what he can do, especially with that Glock. Starting with a bang is not on the cards tonight. For him at least, Steel is one of the few remaining players. My God, a flurry of frags for Jacob, Jacobs and all the ones in between. It is under thieves to take the pistol. Yeah, so earlier in the day, I was doing my prep work. I was watching my demos and I was looking for all those goodies in Chaos when they took on Furia the other day. They actually used a strategy. It was a force buy that they were pulling out a bit of a a, a fake towards the top site. They drop a smoke in front of the squeaky door, makes them think they're dropping down the vent and going for a lower split with a bit of pressure on that side of the map. So I'm excited to see if they go for the force by here in the second. Ah, it's not going to be the strategy I was thinking because an AK-47 hello, mm. is going to be dropped into the hands of Zeppa. Now, Zeppa and Leaf are the two stars of this team. You check out the stats for this squad. They are towards the top of the scoreboard. So them having rifles in the hand, that's fantastic. Steel and Jonji also able to get some Galils in play. And then Vanig left with the Deagle. So this is a potent buy coming into round number two. But you Utility, that's a problem. Absolutely. It will come down to where they can put these Galils to work. Vanity, the only real sacrifice financially. Hmm. Looks like a nice lineup. Could be heading in towards. I was going to say inner sight. Yeah, just in front of Squeaky there, Alex. That's to make them think they... That's the one. ...come out and potentially drop down the vent. They have to be wary of that now. I heard he on the jiggle. start. Alex, I... I <laughs> he, was, he was pretty calm, pretty collected in the interview, probably not so much now. Uh, a little bit of pressure, having to fall back away, call for a little bit of support. Gratisfaction was there, but doesn't want to overly commit. Obviously, don't want to play into those rifles that are suddenly a little bit more threatening the second round. Oof. Not so easy, but Gratisfaction keeping calm and delivering Leaf. Just floating to the ground as Zeppa is their trade back in and the follow up. That's not bad. Yeah, he is a very, very spicy gamer, is Mr. Zeppa. Vanity with a oh. chance and a freebie. What's Azza up to? Didn't anticipate the close corner. Maybe he assumed Jacob had him, but distracted by the heaven presence and not just distracted, but fragging. Destructive as well. John G gets himself <laughs> a double and it is the equalizer. Chaos, they force in and win it. I'm laughing here, but it's because John G went ramp. 
through to ladder base, back around yard, and then through main. main. That's uh, <laughs> the longest way to potentially get to that position, but he makes it work, and they close that round out, and now it's the Thieves who are having to go with that force spine. The Mag 7 that you were mentioning just the other day, Alex, is coming out in Jacob's hands yet again. So he is one of the top site players with Azza, and we're still unfamiliar as to why we see the Mag 7 coming in a little bit more than the Alligator, or that'd be the auto shotgun for those of you <laughs> playing at home. Scout in Gratisfaction's hands again. So this one here, it's still on. And the flash, but descending. Doesn't have the bomb on his back, but has got a lot of space, and Jonti's just created even more. JKS gone. Oh, Now that's a reply. Okay. A little bit of a rebuttal. All right, Lias. That's a big name to take down, I guess, if you're going to get anyone with a cheeky little... Look leaf at that. Is, uh, leaf's everywhere. Leaf's, yeah, well that's, leaf's around the map. That's the power of an early vent drop. You can see that pressure on the ramp player. Suddenly he has to be concerned about his booty, and, I mean, who isn't? <laughs> I've been doing squats lately. Yeah, I've tried those goblet squats because there is no goblet? bar. Oh, you've been, you been, the, like, you been you using the kettlebell? Like a, like oh. a big, you hold, hold the bar, the dumbbell like a, a goblet, goblet. Mm -hmm. precisely. Wow. Um, yeah, it doesn't really do anything. My, my peach is not really enhancing in any way. Alex, you already had quite a Oh, I, you did say I had some junk in my truck the other day, Lauren. You, you do have a wagon. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know why. I that's think I appreciate that. I <laughs> do you want to hit yourself to that one, Lauren? Or? <laughs> don't tempt me. Don't, don't you dare. We've only taken to round three before we've really got the innuendo started here today. <laughs> hey, so they're saving endo. their guns. Okay, oh. you're right, you're right. It is uh, It is going to be a save here from the Thieves. And if they can hold on to these weapons, look, it's great. But we were speaking about this earlier in the week. The longer you hold on to these, the longer that you're allowed to do so, sure, you get another bite of the cherry, you get another crack, you have another, uh, I guess, more dangerous round up your sleeve. But the problem is you're not going to get that full gun round out for some time. So you need to make these work. It can't be a round like that where you lose control, they're down the vent, Liaz maybe gets a deagle kill, then completely forgets that that rotation is possible. They need to potentially be a little bit more aggressive, take the fight to chaos in transition, and they need multi-frags, right? That's with these low-buy weapons. They're about surprise. I, I, a bit of a dumb question. Okay. Um, but as I said, I'm kind of coming back in on Nuke, and I, I just want to... Where does the bias lean? Let's say two even teams. Uh, like, what's the normal walk away? Are you, what are you happy with on a T side uh, these days? I would say probably at the moment, considering how good teams have gotten on the T yeah. side, 9-6 oh, uh, okay, with a CT so... bias. He's done uh, it again. That's very Straight quick. Straight away, it? there's no contest. Where's the spray? Where's the molly? Where's anything? Couldn't contain it. Admittedly, of course, with just the Desert Eagle, JKS unable to uh, weather that storm. But it does mean that Leaf has once again managed to sneak behind enemy lines, and that's going to force some CT rotations. Grat trying to be responsible for outside. It's JKS to get the info that there is some bodies there, and Grat does manage to at least find the head of one. A disadvantage then for Chaos, not with the weaponry, but with the numbers. And two, already rotating in. If he can catch them on the swing, he'll stop them from digging their heels in. It's a wild oh. spray. It's not pretty, is it? That's not one you want to watch back, but it'll get the job done. But can they find that second player? Look at him, just looking below Azza. This could be huge for them as well. Bomb's over there. It's on steel right now. Leaf. Oh, this discipline, Azza. That is stunning work from him. If he gets any more, that's great. He's put a bit of time to get the others around. But, well, they've let him down in the old... Uh, Shotty is what's left, but of, I, I don't want to say a valiant attempt off that. I liked what Azza did. It was an attempt. Away. They had a crack here, but we might need to look at this uh, vent dive we've been seeing happening time and time again. So we're going to look at it at Skybox. So watch this. Squeaky will get naded open, flash, and Molly straight into main. Molly towards top hut, and down the vent he goes. So the reason wow. that I want to focus on that, the main Molly means no one can stop him coming in this way. The top of hut Molly means if someone's dropped, they can't get him as he's dipping down the vent, and the flashes are great. So this is good stuff early from Chaos. Are they going to have the util this time for the CT side? I see two Mollies, so maybe they can at least put one down quickly enough. And I He's still on the Mac 10, Alex. Should get him far. He's actually just going to be making a beeline straight for the ramp, and it will be Liaz to receive, but with only a fan mask, he can only <laughs> do damage. That's all. Leaf has managed to find first blood again. That's not the first time. We're only four rounds in, and they descend to the low site like a plague, looking to spread uh, onto those low site. JKS is trying to keep them at bay. Oh, it's going to get hot. Plague Doctor's here. JKS mask on, ready to go. He's got... Uh... A couple bits of work to do, but they were down lower early. Those two are waiting for this one, but still on patrol over by a ramp, trying to keep this safe, outdone by Greta's faction. And that could be a follow-up. No, John G stops it. But these guys are kind of playing it back up ramp. They've taken back some map control. There's no kit in play, though. If 100 Thieves want to go for this, they need to be quick. Oh, he would have killed Leaf if he went for it as well. Save He's call. He's reserved, and it does look like the save call. As of being on secret, you can see Jacob's so disconnected. He will be gifted an AK-47 express delivery. John G... The one to make that happen. We will see then the equalizer to an extent closing the gap. It's Thieves finding another tough one. Yeah, and this is the problem, right? We were talking about those force by rounds earlier. Sure, they had two cracks at it. 
not that long ago, but that was a rifle round without all the goodies, and Liaz was completely overrun there at ramp, right? We already know that the M4A4 has a disadvantage versus the AK-47. It's going to take that shot to the head and then another one to anywhere else in the body to take them down. But he only had a Famous, and uh, a lot of people, I, one of the guys in the server, one of my ex-teammates, as I hated the Famous so much that he challenged me to a one-on-one -on -one and said, Chad, you use the Famous, I'll use any SMG, we'll play an aim map, and he, well, he's a much better player than I was, but he <laughs> berated me in the server, making me look like a bit of a fool, and I still use the Famous from that point on. But my point here is, <laughs> Stop it's not it. a great gun, it's just cheap now, that's yeah. it. Maybe Az is going to have to do the old 1v1s again. It did tidy up the, the, the spread at range. A little you bit. You told me it was viable bit. again. It have you been viable. lying to me? Vi okay, it is viable. But it's maybe not, not as, as good a as an M4A4. Which, believe it or not, makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> for the price, for the level of investment. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. A weapon that costs less than the M4 isn't as no. good as the M4. Yeah, well, Chad, huh. he's here all week, folks. He is. Uh, they pay me for this, by the way. <laughs> We're all surprised. Let's see how this one shapes up then, because it's time for the thieves to try and crack this nut. They haven't got the full bike preparing for round seven, but just some damage. Oh, Where's Azza? Azza's health gone? They have just been a lick of the flame. Dondi for now has caught an opening again, and he's not going down vents, is he? Looks like Chaos have found something and they want to exploit it, a gap. When there's no utility, when the weapons aren't flowing for the thieves, low sight seems all too easy. I'm, I'm getting a little nervous here. They're gonna run this until it doesn't work, right? You just keep rinse repeating and, and you know, maybe they get that answer back in, but Leafs, look at this adjustment, the man's in their head. He knows what they're gonna try and do. The re-aggress towards Lobby's not gonna have nothing. And Jacob, Liaz, we've got a deagle on Liaz and Jacob, well. Maybe he can get some exits, but look at the cash on Vanity, for example. 7.8 on him. Leaf 8.2, obviously the you know, Mac Daddy running rounds just building up cash, but I'm, I'm a bit worried. At least Leaz does get a rifle out of this. Well, it'll be the first full gun round that we're about to see in what? We're going to be uh, seven rounds in. So next round is... Hey. Oh, oh, oh. They're still going to have enough to buy. It's not such a big deal if they lose <laughs> these guys. The AKs are better than the M4, and that's cheaper than the M4. Oh, no. He's only right. gone and done it. Now, you guys were wondering how Azza lost all this HP, and uh, with the technology that... I don't know who Anders, I guess my god, has given us. Now, check this out. So he drops off. He's the player near the hut. He's flash standing in the molly, flash standing in the molly. Oh, I'm burning, burning, burning. Hot Toes gets on out. So that's how he lost all that HP just there. Just a little bit blind, guys. Right, well, it's actually entirely on his teammate's fault for not communicating that he's yeah. standing oh. in the flame. It's not Azza's fault. Never Azza. And it's certainly not ideal. Can we just appreciate for one second Steel's picture? Whenever we spectate him next, you get the little pop-up of his picture. It's kind of making me try and not laugh every time Has I he see him. He's got the mustache. He's cashes between, out. Between him and Grat. <laughs> it's quite it's quite a look. Uh, oops, out though, Alex. Yeah, and look at Vanity just swinging. Whoa. That was so brave. That could be punished. He actually gets away with it. Liaz will claw it straight back onto Zeppa, but that was outrageous. And it seems that this round will be chaos, living up to their organization's title, just charging on in initially. Vanity, unfortunately for him, has to work with just 11. How did he get away with that? He did... He yeah, and it was... Did he? It, it was did he yeah, did he get away with Bird? It was JKS also, mm. that he took down, right? That's a massive scout to take right there. But uh, all in all, I loved the audacity of Steel just to peel out of Hut once he knew all that contact was being taken and 100 Thieves had to rotate around. This is very difficult to see Chaos getting back into this. It's going to so, need a mistake, right? Yeah, I mean, just taking stock. Grant's responsible for lower, and that makes sense. Your Orpa can just hold those corridors comfortably. And they're over towards the... Uh, as you can see, the top side, Liaz has got it on lock. He's in a prime position to keep track of any hut walks and eyes on main. And bye-bye, Vanity. That's the bomb as well. He was trying to flush him out, but Grant holding the line aggressively puts Leaf in a dire straight. Wow. Very quick reactions from Leaf. Oh it's my a laser God. beam. My goodness. The Leaf-bladed battle axe slices through. And now just one remains. Mr. Gratis Faction flashes himself. It's not the grand finale he hoped, but a fantastic attempt all the same. Gratis Faction, a bit of sweat on the brow. I'm nervous. Does Bulbasaur have a move that's like something to do with leaves? Get off the I internet. I feel like I can... Get off the internet. Well, Pokemon's cool, Lauren. I don't know if oh, you That was a RuneScape fan. reference I just made, by the way. Oh, was it? Leaf Bladed Battleaxe. Yeah. It's, uh, I think you use it in PvP. I watched some... That flash was <laughs> so close from Leaf, though. Like, did he... Oh, did it actually get Grat? I don't think it did. I... He was blind himself. Yeah. I mean, everything was right, though. He had the perfect idea. That terrifies me. Yeah, you said, I mean, you, we talked about, you know, that everybody get the, the mass, on mass of professional Counter-Strike players just getting better. And you can see prime examples of that in the promising talent for tomorrow's Counter-Strike. At this point in time, Chaos, another disadvantage. Does look like Thieves have got their uh, weapons flowing and are really starting to punish. 
This is nice. They need to get a grip. We talk about mental with 100 Thieves a fair amount, and I'm sure that conversation could come around. For now, though, this is really nice. Uh, stabilization, get it back. Five alive would be perfect. Ethan Zephyr, the last two to try and make something of it, but already HP so low for Zephyr, it does feel limited. But Leaf made a, made a good, uh, I guess, debatable point about that previous round. But JKS, if he starts popping off, he's such a player to watch, but we'll see. He's going walkabouts and he might just get the timing right. Be able to clear hut, clear squeaky, clear lobby. All right, where else can they be? Get ready on ramp. So there's one called Worry Seed. Oh, crap. Worry seed. Yeah. Really? I didn't know Bulbasaur. You can learn worries. that at level 30, apparently. But look, I don't that. this is the two uh, kids who are leveling up at the moment in North America, getting a bit of flack on the internet. But uh, they're definitely some youngsters to look out for. I wouldn't put it past them doing damage here with 30 seconds left. Yeah, they want to cause some noise. And wow, Zephyr's voice is certainly audible. Great shots being hit, but unfortunately for them, again, an impossible set of circumstances bomb loose perfect crossfires good molly great molly that will be leading to lena fortunately nothing to convert but two kills keeping them honest jacob with a quad kill in that round after all the dust settles okay so money right now if we just take a quick look isn't fantastic for both teams so leaf will be able to drop an ak vanity can buy zephyr can do the same so you will see chaos buy into this one but on the other side of things hundred thieves are going to have to drop some guns across so they need to string at least another one or two together before they can really bottom out chaos here this one's a bit alarming chaos got 60 rounds in the game that they lost against 100 Thieves. The final score was 16-8, so it's not... That was with the coach. Yeah, okay, yeah. sure. But that's not necessarily a T-side round. It's not necessarily something to celebrate if their CT does get wobbly. But admittedly, as Chad has outlined, Steel was not present with the team. Pinch of salt, maybe even two pinches. John G with a Mac 10 copying Leaf, and it's worked out just as well. This low sight hit is a clear Achilles heel for the Thieves. I wonder if they've been able to adjust anything quickly, or maybe John G not being on the right for this time. Yeah, he's, he's going to be found, but the pinch comes in. This looks like it was trying to pinch towards ramp, but it's worked out stunningly at that. JKS and Liaz rocking a hard place. Too many players coming in at the same time, almost like what Steel did at Hut towards the upper side. But now Steel, speaking of, on patrol here, making sure no one can come back down. And I don't think the money's good enough for the CTs to do much about this. Yeah, this is lovely. I mean, Chaos, they've lost rounds, you know, the last two in, in, in consecutive concession however what was interesting to me is that as soon as they return to the low site chaos again finds success there is an issue for the boys from 100 thieves in containing that ramp push now chad i thought that was a simple one that's a uh, have a player watching it in the what i heard players refer to as nitro just basically standing in the open and uh, someone holding the vent molotovs yeah but you could see jks there was actually having to look at two different positions even though he had a player with him there to watch the lower bomb site they were so quick they're not doing the standard let's get lower control and wait for the rotation let's get lower control and take the fight. So JKS and Azar over towards that ramp position were getting sandwiched. Justin yeah. had to come down to help deal with that MAC-10 player. And then by the time he had pivoted back in, the T's were already close. They were already ready for that rotation. They took him down as soon as he falls. Well, that's the site basically given up and thus the savers had to come on through. And now we can see, look, another gun round will be on the board for 100 Thieves here because of that save. Utility behind the defuse kits to play with. But they're not able to hold on to their own map control, right? If you're losing players straight down the vent, you're getting pushed around by this rotation. You need to potentially get a bit more aggressive because they're currently uh, all over you. Look at this go from Leaf. This is aggressive. However, John G's babysitting hasn't quite gone to plan. A little bit of damage done. John G low as it is Leaf. Couldn't be lower as they're getting the hell out of dodge. They're thriving in this chaos, it feels like, though. They're really setting the tempo, and I like that, and I do want that answer back from 100 Thieves, though. I want them to kind of bring a little bit of the boldness through because they're leaving with these three players again, and you're going to be constantly left in this situation of... If we go for it, we might not have these going forward. We might be left in a worse scenario down the line, and there we have it. Chad, this is, this is a little bit scary, isn't it? Yeah, and they used the same opening execute that they did in the previous to get lower and split ramp, but this time they did it to make the CTs worry about having to rotate lower but actually used Yard. And with that, it caught JKS, I believe it was, who was covering off that main position. He was quick switching, right? He wasn't actually ready for that, so... Right now, the pace in which Chaos is setting can only be stopped by an individual stepping up with a multi-kill here because this is what I love. This is what I talk about in terms of dictating pace and, you know, actually setting the tempo of the game. That is what Chaos are doing. It's, think about how quick this game is. I don't know how long we've been sitting here talking about it, but it feels like, what, yeah. 10 minutes? And we're already 10 rounds deep. I will, I will admit that when I was listening to the comms video today, a lot of the way Steel's call, Steel calls and communicates with his team is how you call and communicate with 
us oh. when we're walking around. <laughs> okay, yeah. Like he's give, he, the same kind of when you're. I mean, when you're trying really yeah. hard, I'm, but the same kind of messaging, the same kind of angles. It is very. I'm not surprised that you're. This is resonating with you at all. Well, this is the type of Counter Strike that we used to play five years ago, right? It was more tempo based. It was more about forcing players around and having to second guess with the rhythm of the game. You're not seeing defaults. You're not seeing them slowly pushing and prodding the CTs around. This is them running at them and forcing them to have to fight or rotate. Do you think that's that's indicative that that's not within Chaos's wheelhouse, or is this a deliberate lean into that strength? Well, they used a lot of these things against Furia as well, okay. which are a chaotic team in themselves. So maybe it's just the play style that they like to start with, and they might slowly simmer down as the game goes on here. I wouldn't expect them to keep up this level of pace throughout the remainder of the half. Like this, they're going for it again. Surely JKS is ready. He's got the shadow advantage. He should get both, but not today. That multi-kill does manage to get converted, and now it leans the Thieves' way. All onto Steel, the aforementioned leader. Doesn't really have a shout in this one, and Jacob confirms it. The Norwegian nade on the noggin. You said multi-kills had to be a big factor. Jacob came up with three that time, but it seemed like they were a little bit more ready for that little bit of a split, that crunch they love to do here, these pressure plays. So one of the things that happens is when you're dealing with fast players time and time again, you need to stop getting caught with your nades out and transition. You're expecting them to play standard CS. You need to play heads up Counter-Strike, right? And when you're playing heads up CS, that's focusing on your crosshair. You're not too worried about the misdirection. You just need to make sure you can contain your part of the map and your teammates, you need to trust that they can do exactly the same. So now let's see if we do have that pace change from Chaos. Once again, it's Fast Smokes towards Yard. They're doing the same. Nades over towards Squeaky Door just to draw that attention. And the MAC-10 in Jonji's hands, he could have afforded something a little bit more. He still has 1,500, so he wants to use the jumping accuracy and the speed with that. Ooh, take like that it. lower control. So this is going to be kind of the same thing that worked before. We talked about it. Whoa, not this time. Azza was ready for the secret presence, and now Grat can't back him up. Forced out of the line of sight, they will descend. They don't have the man advantage by any stretch, and Liaz can extend that even more. And Leas could probably do with this, a bit of a confidence boost, holding this back. The boys now backing him up, definitely strong oh. enough of a rifle. Zep has outdone him though, so now a 2v4, but plenty of players towards the lower side. It's not going to be a comfortable plant, but Safe bombs down. Econ. I like it from Steel. Very powerful position, very hard to fight it. And from the door, Zephyr will find another. They're coming from Ramp Steel. You surely can't be taking a fight like that. That's so brave, JKS is in Decon. And now Zeppa, a 1v3, and he's looking pretty damn fierce. He could have a go. Wow. Graz Faction will dig him out of that oh. hole, but could you stop cutting it so close, Thieves? Oh, there was, it. Yeah, there was a moment where that spray transfer lands onto Grap because he has the AWP, right? He'd missed the AWP shot, then have to probably pull out the pistol. JKS already low in that decomposition. That could have been a catastrophe right there, so they will hold on. Let's see if they'll be able to get a buy going because we know with that plant, and the way these last couple of rounds and the loss bonus has been building up for Chaos, they should still be able to get something on the board. Let's see if they go for that top set piece that I was talking about earlier. So you will see them loving to nade open Squeaky, limp that smoke just a little bit ahead of it to obscure the vision from Vent. A Molotov towards the top of Hunt flashes through the windows, Molotov towards Main. That's what it looks like right here with the nades that I'm seeing. Here's the top Hunt Molly from Vanity. The flash will follow. John G going for a balls to the wall play and it has just come up trumps for the thieves. It's over as quick as it has begun. But that's closing in on the gap, but seven for the T side of Chaos. Absolutely, certainly one better than the last time they met, but also uh, a pretty damn good benchmark to set yourself for the defense. That execute right there is the exact thing I put on Twitter today. Uh, it was one of the key highlights of why Chaos were able to break Furia early. They used it uh, in their opening game. They were able to win a force by round and then use it in gun rounds later in the piece. It is very, very good. And as I almost felt foul to the fact that Molotov was behind the CT vent, but Jake and bailing them out yet again. He is currently sitting on 15 frags, top of the scoreboard in the server. And now the game might just slow down to a regular pace here. Chaos have done their best at trying to use that crowbar. It might be time for some finesse. And honestly, I quite like the fact that Chaos came in and played their game and applied it so well. I think pound for pound, we look at 100 Thieves as potentially the better squad, but it looks like an adjustment here. As I said, pacing certainly different, and Jacob, new spot altogether, still so unaware of this. Smoke just plumes in front, Jacob's denying everything. Oh. This is a great game from him. Yeah, it's a nasty grouping straight through the smoke. He's going to get another one as well. Perfect play. He's only seen one of his four kills there from Jacob. That's phenomenal. Just shooting at their toes. He could see the boots, very suspicious boots at that.
So going into the last round right here, Chaos, they don't have a lot of money to work with. You can see everybody there hovering uh, 2K to 3.5, something along those lines. So the buy is going to be extremely hamstrung. Uh, and with that in play, maybe we'll see something like what they did on their original force by round number two, where they were able to bounce back after the pistol lost. And that was a lot more aim based, right? Remember, they went through ramp. They uh, were able to come all the way around ladder base. You had Jonji coming back in through main. Let's see if they do something a bit more pack rolly like that. Actually, the utility suggests something different. This is ambitious. The bomb's already down. Oh. Leaf with just a CT. tech nine. They keep finding this gap, I swear. 100 Thieves have got a lot to look at. JKS, however, finding one outside. This was supposed to be the second prong. If you can catch him before he descends, that holds weight. And bomb's ticking. This could be eight. It, it could John G. A little, oh. little surprised by that. I don't know how he's been caught off. Now it's just Leaf and Steel and kind of awkward positioning, but Steel tries to make a go over towards Ramp. It's all on Leaf and he can only do one step in the right direction. I'm going to be honest though, Alex, I don't mind this scoreline. Yeah, I don't think anyone's going to be disappointed with that. Thieves happy to close the gap. Chaos happy to present seven on the T side of Nuke. We'll be RB with your second half. Third game, third day, and seeing more from the 100 Thieves. They did manage to turn it around. Gratis Faction giving us a little head bob in to that intro music. But a slew of rounds from the CT side of 100 Thieves got them to that 8-7 finish line. It was five that got them to that competitive second half start. 
All right, well, look at all the utility right now on the Thieves here to kick this pistol round off. We've got two, sorry, three smokes, three flashes, a HE and a Molotov in play. So this one could be curious here. Squeaky Dollars is about to be blown open and away we go. Looks like a Julie's underhand nade plan. Steel, it was valiant. It has not been rewarded. Maybe Zerpa can pick up. Ooh, more than just one, perhaps. Jacob oh. just eventually war of attrition for... That one, and it will be clean on the last. Leaf a double from him. That puts the eighth on the board, getting off to the same start they had in that first half. Jacob has 21 kills. Yeah, very quiet. <laughs> uh, 21. Yeah. He was playing that top site, so it was all of those, like, kind of brain dead hut three pieces. You know, I know what you mean. Saying. When they're coming out, you just have to be the turret, right? That's where RPK yeah. no one's looking at him like he's, he's looking down at them. They're clearing everything else. As long as you avoid all the flashes and Molotovs and you're set up in a decent position in the top side, you should be good for at least two. That's kind of the way that position should be working, but it will be the force by from 100 Thieves. And once again, fast towards Squeaky. JKS for the vent dive. Is he going to make it? And he's under. Okay, but look at this. I think Steel's considering a chase. Leaf's down there already with the MP9. Three and make it four of the 100 Thieves descending down that ramp. So it will be a low sight hit. Let's see how well this works out for them. Leafs prepared. That's the bomb. Oh, boy. Is everyone else? Where's the rest? Where's the party? A little late behind him. They will scoop up the bomb and start to deploy their util. Anybody's game at this point. Yeah, 40 CTs waiting. So they're all down here. This is nothing subtle, nothing new. So if the T's get away with this, it'd be very surprising. And it's not happening. Steel has said a big fat no to this one. And signed, sealed, and delivered by Zeppa. Nicely closed down the end, but yeah, no subtlety to that. And a little bit disjointed on ramp, potentially. Did you see the difference there, though, between how 100 Thieves approached that and what we were seeing out of Chaos? Chaos winning lower control and then pushing towards ramp. They were foregoing the vent control and the rotation through secret. Whereas JKS, his job was to stop the rotation. Everybody else was meant to make the kills. But because Leaf, the ramp holder, didn't have to worry about any pressure from lower, it meant he could draw his attention towards that ramp position get a kill, slow it down, and then JKS went down trying to deal with Steel. And now, well, it will be 100 Thieves on what is a bit of an eco. A couple of nades, a big chunk of damage. Vanity will finish off one, and now it's just two Deagles, a Glock, and a P250 in play. Yeah, I mean, maybe uh, that scout from Vanity will see some more action. Certainly does get the action, but not the bloodshed. <laughs> There's the one-two punch. Young Sim, Steel, bit of backspin on that one, I think. Ooh. Bombs under. They might get a plant here. This is good. Yeah. <laughs> suck Steel. around. Run. Good job. Oof. All right. Well, that's this round done. Yep. I, I want to make some notes here. Assuming Vanity holds on to this scout, he's going to probably play on the first gun round more towards top of ladder um, or ladder base, staying around, around that kind of area. Um, I've also seen some moves in watching their demos. They do love to do Vanity and uh, Leaf pushing ramp. You know, aggressively, we've seen that coming into meta a little bit more. The AWP will kind of be the protector. The rifle will push up on all the close angles, and they'll take control in that direction. But with these saved SMGs, maybe something even more aggressive than that. We could see maybe a, a bit of a hut or lobby push. We always love one of those crunches. This is a bonus round right here for Chaos. You don't normally see these so clean on the CT side. Going in, straight in, gun barrel pressed to the temple of Liaz, and a second comes in as well. Ramp push. Yeah, it's worked out wonderfully. Leaf and Jonji have both been sent to an early grave. Vanity in prime position, he needs this, he needs it, okay. He gets it at least. The bomb loose though, and JKS can recover. Jacob losing his life. It's Zeppa to keep Chaos in this round with just a fam as he's found three. Yeah, JKS, the 41 HP is, is a little limited, and these two need to set up and... They have no looking. idea. They don't know he's here. I think JKS has a shot at this. He's waiting for that smoke to slightly dissipate, but it's, it's going to take a second or two. They're so paranoid, but they're healing away for now. JKS having the bomb gives him that mobility. He can play this how he wants a oh. minute on the board. He's got timing I on wonder, his side. I wonder if Zebra and Steel at the call is just go sit heaven because they can get down ramp on lower call so they can just f walk around yard, safe as houses. Oh. This is such a, a safe call, but a smart one at that. It puts JKS in a box. He will be double peaked, main and heaven, on this retake. Right. He could even double peek from either side. Yeah, it looks looking good. Zeppa will mantle towards heaven, and now he is going to be really having to hit some sensational shots to win out on this one. There's anyone who can do it, it's JKS, but they have played this right. Isolate Steel, where's the trade? It's a little oh! oh, he's got him. He's just about got him, but there was a moment where it almost slipped away. But well played in the end, and I think what you said there, Alex, the safety of it all, the willingness to back away from the fight, to almost put it down for a second and then play it back together.
Yeah, it's strange there that JKS wasn't aware that it could have been coming through ladder. It was like the only place he didn't consider, right? So he smoked main, still had pushed through the smoke. There was the Molotov towards the vent. I guess because Zeppa was making the frags towards hut, potentially expecting some aggression coming through there or somebody needing to have rotated towards that lower bomb site, not having both on standby for that top pincer. The plant, it facilitates another buy, low utility on Azza and Liaz. And I actually I saw a community discussion about this. So maybe you can, you know, help them out with this because they've they've identified it too. We're discussing chaos in a 2v or xv you know x what xv1 there we oh. go that's how you communicate that yeah. and in xv1 they often let them have the plant and play retake with the remaining so it's the same concept as if you know the bombs down right yeah. if you're the cts and you're holding the bomb well they're going to clear all the regular spots that you would be holding that bomb from whereas if you give it to them they have to spend more time looking for you they need to still collect that they have to clear all the close corners anyway so a similar thought process just uh, the other way around but it will be the limp out squeaky with four oh, players. Zep is surely done for here. Yep, nice quick headshot from JKS. And now comes the site plant. There is nothing for Chaos to do initially, but they have two from Vents. Make it one. JKS is on a mad one. Good util usage. And already it looks like there's a, yeah, a save call to be made. Just accepting, cutting their losses. Don't want to be throwing any money down the drain. And it certainly would feel like it with 5T still standing. That was a... Low util round that had all the utility. Ooh, hold up a second. This might get interesting mm -hmm. still. Every kill matters at this point because of how close the money is. So Jake, I'm thinking better of going for these fights, whereas Chaos, they got a bit more residual cash to work with here. They were happy to try and take a gun away, but Jake continues his fragging form. 23 kills on the board, 102 points of ADR. Knows another one's down there. Molotov 2 contain, and that should be all she wrote. I'm surprised Jake was ready for that tiny little boost. Lovely shot, lovely breed, and this will be 9 to 11. At four players creeping out squeaky. <laughs> Silently contact yeah. top site. You don't normally see that one happen. Uh, that, that's not something that we're looking for every day of the week, so quite the curious little maneuver right there, but it pays off. It was so quick. I mean, this has been a very peculiar game of nuke. I haven't seen any of the normal trimmings of a nuke game. It, it's quite refreshing, it feels. Certainly. I, I've, I've enjoyed it. I think we're seeing a little bit more of 100 Thieves creativity at that. The, the, the gutsiness, the goal to go through that sort of squeaky contact up was quite nice. But uh, a different look maybe this time around. Molly's galore. John G going to be pretty much kept tamed for now, ensuring that no one creeps around. But JKS has really come alive in these last couple of rounds, it feels. His form is starting to spike, but it looks like Vanity very much here dedicated to this spot with the orb. Oh, not gonna be happy with that one. JKS has got him trapped. Smoke from Steel reveals his hut position. Good wall bang as well. Vanity still in a spot of bother. Should be able to escape here. And he actually goes down the vent. An interesting choice for the rotate. It is the most effective and the most efficient, but often comes with a bit of a risk. Now Leaf's in trouble. Let's see if he is. He's, he's felt the presence. He's backed away. He does have that orb from Vanity down there as well. So maybe the safer aspect. A little bit careful and no one wraps around from ramp, but no, it is towards lower. And Vanity's ready on this. This little angle, looking for it, misses it. Leaf again trying to avoid immediate danger. Beautiful little bit of play on the first. Couldn't convert on towards Liaz. Taking their time, not in a rush to get that bomb down. Jonji's lining up the most absurd of the wall bangs and the no plant in that spot just yet. It's gonna be Liaz going for the safe from Decon. Makes sense, oh. but Vanity, you big boy! That's lovely. Going for a play like that takes balls. Now Jonji needs to find the conversion. It needs to be a multi down to steal for the clutch. 18 seconds, wins the duel on JKS. The Molly oh. could stop the retrieval. Jacob's gonna have to plan. He has to plan wide. Can he find a safe spot? 10 seconds, he's trying to rot the clock. Jacob's going hunting. Steel knows it, closing the door. It could be enough for the plant to be safe, Steel. Oh, it's all mind games. He thought the sound key would be enough, but Jacob, a weathered veteran. Why does it feel like Jacob's just got the pacing on this? Steel's trying to offset the timing, throw a little bit of a seed of doubt in the mind of Jacob, but his eyes, they're not leaving this doorway and Steel's going to play it perfectly. He can't do it. Nicely done by Jake and the guts on him to hold that plant down. I don't think Steel could have done much more, honestly, without, you know, hindsight's 2020, but Jacob's having a game. I mean, yeah, the fact that he disappeared from Decon, it, there wasn't 
anything that really Jacob had to worry about. He tucked himself into that corner. He knew he, there'd be a, a degree of a sound cue with that door to with his right. He was safe as houses. Yeah, and there's a timing on that, right? Because he would have heard still running around as well. So just keeping his eyes trained for as long as he knew he could. But the thing with Jacob, and something I want to push home here is he's a European Counter-Strike player, right? I know he's been in North America for some time now, but the mentality of European Counter-Strike players going up against NA players, especially when it's not the liquids or the EGs of the world is, I am individually better than all of these kids. And I think we're seeing a bit of that here today with the frags that he's putting down range. It will be the save coming in from Chaos. Upgraded pistols across the board. Other than Vanity, the AWP player will be holding on to that USP. Smoke in Jonji's hands. And okay, he's going to extinguish the Molotov here. Going to try and creep on up and see if he can use it as a one way. This is only going to stall them out into just above one minute. So unless the teammates can find some frags in the meantime, that $300 investment has gone to waste very quickly. Yeah, and about time we started mentioning that 100 Thieves have got a bit of a tendency to fall flat and lose after losing a round like this. Losing to the pistols, losing to the, the rounds they shouldn't. We've always talked about that being a, a chink in their mental game. And so do keep that in mind as these rounds get closer. Chaos have the chance to throw a spanner into the works. It will not be occurring just yet, it seems. Despite the man advantage, they're setting up for a perfect top take. And with only USPs... A, f a HE, it's not going to be enough to get them across this finish line. This flank from Azza, it's going to be a massacre. What a horrible surprise they're about to have. No one really positioned for this. Excuse me, excuse me, why has this happened? Azza, you just said they lose these round, Alex, and now I'm seeing them potentially lose these rounds. I, d I hate what I just saw. I hate everything of what I just saw. Well, if you hate it, Lauren, imagine how I feel. <laughs> I am, I am flabbergasted. It looks... But Alex, you, you, you called it. <laughs> they, oh, yes. they lose these rounds. They have had a, a bit of an issue losing rounds like this, oh, and it's happened gosh. again. Great shots across the board, of course, and it's teamwork, and that's getting the <laughs> juices flowing. Big happy smiles on their faces. That's going to turn the tides of battle. There's no doubt about that. I think I underestimated the power of Jonji's smoke there. I was saying, you know, it might not do a lot because it would only keep them to a minute, but it forced them to go towards ladder as opposed to going towards lower. So straight into the trap that Thieves had laid. Chaos will take the timer off the bat of that just to potentially talk about their success. <laughs> you can see the buy coming on through and there's even reserve cash for three players. Here, Vanity, Leaf and Jonji have money in the back pocket even if this one doesn't go their way. And on the other side of things, well, the Thieves, they're having to scrap together the best they can. Liaz, He's got the AK, still has 3850 in the bank balance. We'll buy the armor, the full set of utility here. So they're just working out what strategy they want to run. But if Thieves lose this one, they're going to be in a lot of trouble here. Chaos will be up to 13 rounds and looking to take map number one. Typical exchange outside. You will see as a descend, though. It's got behind the smokes, and so you know the, the mission of Azza. I don't need to explain it to you. It's going to be held back for now, though, by Leaf. So a standoff in the low site. Elsewhere, lobby being held, rather default from Thieves. This is what we didn't see from Chaos on their T side. So you can see the contrast becomes more apparent now. It's real patience being shown, isn't it? It's, uh... Very slow affair. The only real contact they've had is with Azza. I think he might try and go up the vents here, Lauren. The deep smoke from steel. I have a horrible feeling he's going to try and go through it. <gasps> he's found him just enough. He can see JKS's shoelaces. They told him to do him up. Oh, no. And he's staying around for more. He's going to get Liaz here. I think? No, Liaz is staring. No, he's not. He's not looking at the smoke. He gets the bomb info too. Steel, that's a crazy oh. play. And now with Jonji finding Grat, it does put Azza into Jacob. Into a rather dire straight. There's another. Jonji continuing to add to the tally. Here's a third and a 13th for Chaos Esports Club. Confident Counter-Strike is what we're seeing from Chaos right now. They've identified, obviously, some of these little tendencies or, or the little footholes that the Thieves fall into in certain rounds. And that from Steel is exploiting exactly that. That's so premeditated what he's just gone for there. And the fact that the in-game leader is making a play, disrupting play along those lines. Well, now the Thieves, look at this. They've been left. Money in the bin, a force buy on the cards. It's just a half buy across the board. They're keeping enough to make sure they can afford in the next. But pace has to be the option when you have Tech Nines in play. You say it should be the option. It likely will be off the back of Azza's flash. 
Jumping across, but Fanity, he held the trigger. Good discipline there, and the incendiary will slow them down. They'll have to respect that. Sound cues to keep him guessing, and Jacob puts his head into the vice. Leaf the one to spin it shut. Zapper another, and that is another on the board for Chaos. This has been quite wow. a tale of unfortunate events for the Thieves. After losing that eco, it's been another two added to the pot. Now it's their turn to bite back. It will pull out the AKs, the full util, and... I mean, the insight from you here, Chad, is the Thieves have got very few options left, very few rounds left to play with. What's the call? It has to be something from the uh, the A tier, the S tier book. Yeah, the problem is they haven't been able to establish a pattern like what we saw from Chaos in the first half. Lots of smokes towards the front event. Is there misdirection? Dropping Leaf down lower in the very early stages, punishing him in that regard. Well, they don't have that to fall back on here. They need to just go for the default spread. And as we can see, it's going to be the standard secret smokes. Oh. But Jonji, he's going to be heard there. That Molotov, it made a sound. Yeah, it, but they're not looking. They have no idea. They're, they're, they're clueless. Uh, this could be like a dagger in the back. Steals found JKs. It's Sonji. Oh! Goodbye, Jacob. Goodbye, Liaz. As they're trying to claw this back, but it looks like a lost cause. I don't know what they can do about that one. That was just absolutely sneaky. Os Azar and Greta's faction then. Sonji overcommitting. Hasn't worked out for them every time they uh, arrive at this heaven position. Bomb in the grasp of Grat. Zeppa's patrolling outside. He's doing a full, deep clean. They're active as well, right? So combing the map like this means whatever thieves, even if they wanted to wait for a rotation, you can't be expecting everywhere. You can see Grat looking left, right, center, and Zeppa takes him down. The bomb's dropped. As are up top of heaven. 47 seconds left on the clock. No hope. If you don't like, have we had a single timeout from 100 Thieves or anything? Uh, I asked called one after their eco win. That's the only one I can remember. Hold up, we have this nifty tool that the Vlad's made for us. Let me do Get the right. tools yeah, out. Two timeouts remaining for thieves. There we go. So uh, if you're taking it at this point of the game anyway, it's, it's too little too point. late. Yeah, and that can be even reinforced by the fact that JKS has uh, 3,500 in the bank balance, means it's a galil at best. They heard the sound cue there, Norrin. You're not wrong. I, I'm just curious if they thought it was someone of their own team maybe running through or kind of missed in... To like, I. I Clearly, something was or miscommunicated. Or CS is a weird game. We heard the sound cue, they but it was didn't. only the first tick, and the first tick isn't audible to your enemies, and, you know, <sighs> spaghetti code. That, that's also a possibility. Yeah, and look, Aaron could have been yelling, yeah, go fast, guys, yeah. we're rushing. And they just missed it all. Oh, no, JKS in potentially the last round of the first map, and he's just got caught with his knife out. Knife to a gunfight, all of that. It has not all gone well. <laughs> Bish, bash, bosh. <laughs> Do you reckon they got the salad on their burger, Alex, and the onions, and the pickles? Oh, they've the... got the bun, it's brioche, the sesame seeds. The, the hot tamale sauce. You wouldn't believe the tamale sauce. They got the sweet potato fries on the side? Yeah, it's just cut off and... Ooh. Mega. Vanity's looking, but I think he suspects this... Oh, no. Never mind. As I see him hit that right click, that was his demise. Equalized by Leaf. Jacob's timing is pretty, pretty juicy, isn't Monty it? Monty was looking for him as well. This, yeah. this is just a exchange of unlucky timings. Yeah. All right, Leaf, Zepper, and Jonji trying to close this now. This is the, you don't want to get into that kind of end game scenario. You still, the, you still got to feel the thieves are the, the favourites in this, even though they're ten fifteen. So let's see if they can close, uh, you know, this one and maybe open up that book of the realms of possibility, but. I like where these two are. They oh seem very aware. This could be it, Alex. Certainly does look poised, as does Leaf. Smoked off. Oh, it's missed. Where did that go? Just in front. Now they advance. Two will be going on along that bridge. And actually just wildly spraying does manage to live and distract. Now Grat, given the responsibility of that plan, that's John G to stop. He won't be oh! able to. Bomb does go down. That's it. He's done it. And the frag elsewhere came from Zeppa. So Chaos Esports Club do manage to convert. They do it their way. And a big happy <laughs> Let's place. go. That's Chaos Esports Club 1-0 up in the series. We've got another potential two around the corner.
To the fine, will it stand the test of time right now? I need a sign. Tell me if it's over, come a little closer. We should take our time to think this damn thing over. Yeah. Should we go closer? Should this be over? My heart for your mind, probably we should start over. In 2015 was the prime of the famous Polish Golden Five, and the tournament in Cologne would be no different for Taz and his crew. At least not until the semifinals, where the Poles clashed with Fnatic. Two giants of Counter-Strike battling for their place in the final was a true feast for every fan at the Lanxess Arena. And at first it would seem that Virtus Pro had the upper hand. However, on the second map, Inferno, the Swedes took the initiative. But even then, Pasha Biceps sent a clear message that you do not mess with the Bears. As Pronax oh fights next. Oh, Pasha! Oh, my focus oh, oh, in four seconds. You blink and you miss it. Jesus Christ, Pasha. Insane spray down. Big shout out to Virtus Pro as well. They played an amazing series. Remember that one like it was yesterday, Lauren, do you? That was good fun, that was. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that was, uh, I was wearing a really itchy shirt. It was a turquoise number from H&M. Was it the blue jacket with it? I can't oh, remember. I don't know. None of my clothes fit me back then. It really Mine was. Mine still does. It was a nightmare, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'm going the other way now. It's actually, yeah, they look like I'm wearing bin bags. That wasn't the round <laughs> I was expecting from Cologne, though. I thought it would be uh, something from, from uh, Renegades versus Titan, but whatever. I don't think we did uh, group stage coverage. Uh. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Lauren always knows to tear you <laughs> I'm down, sorry, Chad. Chad. Oh, she's you know very good you. at it. She's very good at it. No. Uh, when I was in a sad place once upon a time, Lauren and Rush, they took me out for a walk near a rose garden and cheered me up. So she can be as mean to me as she wants now.
Okay, well, we're going to... it matters I'm nice. <laughs> we're going to get camera. Back, back into the review <laughs> of a game that does seem to have put smiles on your faces, though. The same way it put one on Mr. Josh Nissan. Uh, you guys just said just before, not to throw you under the bus here, sure. but before we came back, saying you liked the Counter-Strike that Chaos were playing. Yeah, because it wasn't this timid, slow chess piece of Counter-Strike. It was doing, you know, the movements, but round to round was how we saw the flow on effects. It was, we're going to make you do this, this round, then we're going to slap you in the face with this one, then we're going to come at you from this angle. And I just really like the pace to it right? We get that from Furia. I'm glad we got that from Chaos. And Zeppa, this is the first time I've really had my eyes on him in official. There's good stuff. I, 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 I like seeing teams with intentions. Well-made intentions that are carefully executed. They know, may not be... <laughs> uh, they may not be the most, like, you know, complex, complicated, but they just ran with it. They even just that sitting back in that post plant, waiting until, you know, you had JKS trying to make... I think it was JKS, so it was Jacob. Trying to make something of it. Them peeling away, as you like to highlight, Alex, and then playing it back in. It was so well done. Yeah, it really was. And I mean, what, what I think we can uh, definitely take away from Chaos is this has been a slow boil, you know? Mm. This mm. has been a project that has taken time, has taken some roster changes, has taken them taking risks in unknown and unproven players, the likes of Zephyr and Leaf. And to be already boasting a victory versus Furia, to be going up against the another top five team in the, in your region and to be pushing them, even taking the first map your way, I think there's a lot of positive signs there and I think you'd be foolish to say otherwise. Yeah, if you were to look at Chaos with this five and their stat lines, you go, wow, they have so many wins. But you remember they're region locked, right? And then you have to look at, oh, they're versing the Zapug gods or Mythic or the names like that. But now they're versing the big boys. They're in the big boy tournament. This is ESO one Cologne Online. This is, this is where the best teams are. So the fact that they are still contributing like this and look, Leaf and Zephyr, their aim, look, Jonji had great stats there as, as far as that 21 kills as well, but their aim, the, the laser beam, the AK-47, the straight to the head, the robotic, just not a chance to react. That's a, a sign of grinding, you know? That's a side of, that you want to be seeing from the Counter-Strike players of the next generation for North America. Yeah, and shots like that can be the straw that broke the camel's back. For now, though, we will be right back. We're taking a break. We'll be back with Inferno. Welcome to the CSGO DHL quiz, everybody. I've got a question for you, and you're going to bring the answer. You type exclamation mark DHL drop in the chat, A, B, C, or D, and you're in. It is really that simple. Now, what you can win is a thousand euros worth of stuff, and just by entering, you're going to get thrown into a pool where there's going to be daily giveaways for the people that enter this one. At which event did Chris J get that legendary op Was it A, at ESL 1 New York 2018, the IM Katowice 2019, was it ESL Pro League Season 9, that would be C, or was it IM Shanghai 2018? Intel Gamer Days is on now. Whether you're looking to buy or build, now is a great time to upgrade. Get limited time offers and giveaways from top names in PC gaming. Unleash elite gaming performance with systems featuring new 10th gen Intel Core processors and bring Marvel's Avengers to life with in-game optimizations for a mightier PC experience. Act now. Intel Gamer Days is only here for a limited time.
If you want to know what you're good at, and, well, also, what you suck at, check out csgohub.com. Coming! Everybody loves an underdog. Who needs to be liked? Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel. Victory in a can. Just want another anime I'm not gonna change a thing for you I'm over middle ground And I really wanna burn it down I'm not your friend And I won't pretend I am So don't reach out and I mean that I'm under siege and I need you to see that You're on one side, I'm on another And we will wage war on each other I'm no angel, you're not either I'm out of favor, bitch, you're out of leisure In place, I'm unscathed, I'm unafraid A warm welcome to the war game SL1 Cologne Online is brought to you in part by Intel, Mountain Dew Game Fuel, DHL, and GG Back. Last one of the evening, folks. It is our second map in Inferno is where we set our sights on now. Before the break, though, we did, uh, during the break even, we did ask you a DHL drop question. As always, we have the answer for you. This time, it's the best letter in the alphabet. It's A. And if you got that right, congratulations. Pats on the back, confetti, and all of the other stuff that makes you feel good. You know why it makes me feel good? I'm talking to you guys every day for the next two weeks. <laughs> yeah, we, we like talking to each other, right? And look, I'm sure uh, if we want to talk about the game we just saw, they've converted a few people at home into being Chaos fans right now. I need to stay impartial. Yeah, I need to get my shoes in the shop for this entire death segment. I'm just okay, hold up. here make it look really natural. He's very proud. Yeah. There we go. He's, he, he likes the shoes, ladies and gentlemen. Send him some compliments on the Twitter no sphere. compliment. They can't see it. I said they were nice. Say, say some nice things to his shoes. But uh, about his shoes. To Alex, about his shoes, not to his shoes. The shoes can't talk. Counter-Strike's coming. Inferno, music, noise. 
Go for it. All right, well, that's exactly what we plan to do. ESL 1 Cologne, day three, game three, and map two. It's Chaos Esports Club looking for the 2-0. Now, this is a winner's match, I will remind you. It's because the 100 Thieves, of course, their belt versus Gen G leaves them in the upper bracket. Chaos the same up against Furia, but can they take another huge scalp? GG.bet does seem to believe they can. Look at the odds. They are in favor of the underdog. They've broken the top 30, and now they want to break banana. It's a brave bet to be making. I still think there's life in 100 Thieves, but it has to start pretty soon. A little bit of a reminder would be good, but Zeppa going to keep him humble on Banana, and this fight isn't subsided. These guys are committing, but speaking of, over towards Zap. Straight out we go. Belief is playing this so calm, so collected. He isn't showing a thing until now. A hard shot to hit. There were so many moving <laughs> targets, so many moving pieces. 100 Thieves have played this well. And playing back in, Zeppa and Steel. The smoke, very nice for the retake, but JKS is ahead of it and can't really dig their teeth in. Good reactions from Zeppa, but doesn't translate. And the 100 Thieves do get off to the start they need. All right, so just a couple of win conditions here. If we were going to uh, go with a Chaos 2-0 story, it would be unlikely. It would be a big upset with all things considered, but they have done it to Furia on this exact same map pool. Now, one of the key factors on a map like Inferno for that of Chaos is Steel. And I say that because he's a swing man. Now, I don't know if he's into swinging, but he goes from side to side. When they're doing their three-man B-leans, he'll be there assisting with the flashes and nades. When he thinks it's going to be over towards A, you can see him getting up close and personal towards apps. So how he is reading and feeling the game is very, very important on a map like Inferno. On the other side of things, for the Thieves, now this year their Inferno, it's been a mixed bag in 2020, but they still have the lion's share of their rounds one on the T side. It's only 52%, obviously compared to 48% on that CT side. Called a gamble straight out of the gates on the force chat. I kind of like it. Now, uh, you have to think about this in a couple of different ways, right? If you watch back the demos and you see where 100 Thieves traditionally finish, right? It may be the B bomb site. It's pretty safe, right? If you can get banana control early, you hear me talking about it, you could just go for one of those set pieces onto the site with the Molotovs. This time round, like we saw in the Genji game, they don't have three Molotovs to work with. Remember that carpet of flames? So potentially going into the B bomb site, as we can see, would be a very, very dangerous play. But with Vanity on the arch side of mid, if he sees contact and knows that it's going to be A, they can drop back and save onto all of their upgraded pistols and just have another crack at it again next round. Yeah, imagine if Vanity just takes that shot and disappears. Look at this deagle though, Lauren. This is the one I like. Oh, it is pretty. The light catches it just right. They're being very thorough though. The thieves don't want to let anything slip up there. Oh, it's a pretty deagle, isn't it? So they should just save now. This round should be done. There should be no movement out of chaos. They should just stay towards the B bomb site, maybe even go into construction, hold on to their goodies. And this might just be a gentleman's agreement. It's like, okay, we've got the bomb site. We'll take the plant. You hold on to your guns. We'll hold on to our guns. A very fitting name for this that Henry G's uh, got me into. Mm -hmm. It's a unicorn round, Lauren, where nobody dies and not a point of damage is done. Why unicorn? Because they're so rare. Yeah, you're right. What do you think, Lauren? You don't see them every day. There he is. Oh, I heard him. <laughs> you didn't hear him? <laughs> the unicorn of Inferno rears his horny head. Oh, <laughs> uh, dear. Horn, Lauren, on, 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 the, on, on the his nose. On the unicorn, they have a horn nose. on the head. Got it. Head. They're normally white, and they can fly. Yes, and something they about, they have silver blood, do they? I think That's so. Harry That's Harry P. We've gotten Harry Potter into every day so far, and we're, we're on day three. So if we can get him in every day that we're doing ESO one Cologne, well, we, when did you last watch Harry Potter and what does this Should we watch? Do we have a marathon on Monday? We have the day off. Anything worse. We just, Hell, uh, I just want to spend time with you guys and that's what you say. Nice. <laughs> Feels really good to be back, guys. Thank you so much for the lovely welcome. I'll watch it with you, Lauren. <laughs> Thanks, Chad. I guess it's not the same. <laughs> okay, I guess not then. Who's, who's Ron out of the... Because well, there's three of us. Right. Who's the Weasley? Yeah. <sighs> I'm not the Weasley. Yeah, I mean, Lauren's certainly not the Weasley. You've heard how she pronounces her T's. Um, Chad, I guess what? it's... <laughs> Am I Hermione? Yeah, no doubt about it. But I'm definitely not the the HGP. Uh, not the smart, responsible one. I'm more of a. You're probably the Ron. I'm more of a Hagrid, to be honest. <laughs> kind of bumbly, bit clumsy, kind-hearted. Loves animals. Loves animals. Do you love animals? Yeah. Oh, Zephyr. That Molotov was just touching the toes. I think he was blind there. You could see the flash from Steel was actually the assist. That's a lovely start for the thieves. This second bite of the cherry has come out bitter. And tough shots for Leaf. He's trying to delay. Unfortunately, doesn't manage to get anything out of that one. So now Vanity, that Deagle, 
He was the uh, canary in the round before on A. Now has to do all of it here on B. There's really no hope for anything here. A couple of weapons would be nice to get the kills and rather than collect them themselves. Very thorough patience from the thieves. Yeah, I guess the pace of the last game could have shocked them to the core a little bit. It was just so quick, so in their face. Now that they're on the T side, they're having an opportunity to dictate how they want to be approaching that one. And Gratisfaction lying in wait will take down Vanity here. Now, one of the points about 100 Thieves having the majority of their rounds on Inferno this year, one on the T side, that means that Chaos should be looking to limit that as much as possible, right? So if they can find themselves with eight or nine rounds, making sure that 100 Thieves don't win the half, right? Don't let the Thieves win the half. Put the pressure on their CT side. And then if we're seeing some of these more faster plays like we have to witness on Nuke, there's a chance to rattle them to the core. Now, I believe when uh, Chaos were taking on Fuhrer on this map the other day, it went to double overtime. It was, a, it was a very close affair in that one. So if it's going to be a slog, that's one of the ways this will be going down. I haven't had the pleasure of casting Fury yet, but I've heard incredibly good things, <laughs> right? Uh, an exciting team. So stylistically, I don't want to say polarizing tons of these, so I don't think they're... Oh, nobody's like, no one's yeah, like Fury. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, so as I said, I'm, I'm just wondering if the success that Chaos can achieve works against the style that 100 Thieves brings, potentially? Yeah. Well, there was a couple of moves, a couple of smokes when I was watching back the demo that Chaos were throwing that clearly looked like they were just to dissuade Art from his aggro plays, right? So Art is the madman. He's the uh, man with the brush that's kind of turning the aggressive style of Counter-Strike upside down once more. You know remember when JW and Fur and all those guys were madmen? Well, Art is like that times 10. Like, throw them all in a pot, stir oh, them around. so good with utility. How do you get away with that? Art doesn't days? let go of W. He just he goes They further. actually have plans and strategies and contingencies to set him up for entries, where if he goes mm. down and he's, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight lengths ahead of his team, they still have a move that they can base off of that. At least okay. that's what they tell us. I'm inclined to believe it. Why would yeah. they lie? All right, gun round, here we go. Two Mac 10s, a Galil, or oh, three Galils in play, and the AWP from Vanity. So three man banana lean, two towards A, and well, the utility will be exchanged early. And Lias through the smoke. He isn't going to get anything done. Trades will come in. Zeppa eventually gets taken down, and well, B's open for business. Yeah, wide open. Rotate's coming in from Vanity. He will have the AWP on the cross, but smoke is there, so we'll enable the cross of that in the hands of Azza. No issues there. Just going to be throwing out a Molotov to ensure that is safe and secure. So Bomb will go down, and the pro question of a retake, it looks incredibly unlikely. The absence of kits, as well as Leaf's position, it does look like they'll want to preserve it. And so it will remain an unanswered 4-0 lead. Jake, you just quickly, if you're with us, are you able to float the camera around towards Top Banana? Let's see if he can hear us. I'm not sure if he's piped on in at the exact same time as us. There should be rifles to scavenge here. So Azra and Gratis Faction could be upgrading away from the Galils. So this was a bonus round that's turned out almost perfectly. If they can find them, I'm not quite sure. There's a lot of nades and everything. There we go. Them. There's one. It's like, where's Waldo? Oh. There's one for Azza. He's looking for it. I wish I'd get Azza's real gun. Okay, well, three survive. Vanity and Leaf with the saved rifles on the CT side. They need to uh, make these weapons work. Oh, lovely little ears from Vanity there. But he's, he's quite funny on Twitter as well, isn't he, old Vanity? Yeah, I'll give him a solid uh, 5 out of 7. 5 out of 7 ain't bad. Yeah. That's nice. Not too bad. Dank memes. Got to be careful with memes. They can hurt people's feelings, though. Mm. I used to get my feelings hurt on the internet. Quite badly. I still do. I'm very sensitive. I've stopped caring. I've have to, I have to pander terribly. How does that feel? Uh, shallow, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> very shallow. <laughs> Standard start. I don't think I need to get you guys too warmed up for this one. It's just basic banana control. Yeah, gosh, this 100 Thieves T side is sending me to sleep. It Come makes on, sense. Guys, I mean, rush. it makes sense. It, it, it's just like we had nuke, right? There was T side <laughs> just like thudding. It was like instant. We were like, oh, God, it was 10 minutes and the map's over. And now it's like, all righty. All right, we're all going to stare at banana, pace. draw the utility. I mean, I can tell you why. You know, it's, everybody understands as to the reasoning and justification behind the play. It is all about it here on Inferno. It's about just poking, prodding, drawing that utility out, weakening the CT squad, advancing and pressuring on your peaks. At the moment, Vanity will lose control of those mid brackets. Denying that information is the two, a bit of a partnership. Satisfaction. 
alongside his squad mate Jacob. Now just Jacob alone. His teammates will try to back him up, but the early frag found. Something about CT Arch, ESO one Cologne, me and you, Alex. It, it there's a, there's a feeling that uh, gets stirred, but it gets put back to bed pretty quickly as they peel away from this. So vanity not to be the port of call. This could be Steel, who's kind of sat tucked in and anking on Leaf, finding info. Sees enough. Insta smoke comes in. No, that was Took unlucky. A second or two, yeah, maybe not so Insta. And Steel's gonna be called in to check. One for one trade, but they know the play. Yeah, he's expecting a swing, and I can't believe he got Jacob so cleanly there. Azza's still getting the bomb down, but they don't have much. It's a 2v4 for the Thieves. They need an early kill, and that's delivered. Jacob, Azza, both finding one each, and suddenly what looked like a near impossible scenario has become a 2v2. Some of the stars remaining, though, in Zeppa and Vanity make it just Vanity. My God, it's got ripped out of their control by JKS. And there's nothing he can do. He resigns himself, and the Thieves continue. My God, their best chance in some time, and Chaos can't convert. Look, that's just the synergy of playing together for six years. Azza and JKS, right? They've been playing together forever. Uh, JKS joined the roster of Vox Eminor back in uh, 2014. And they've he's been, grown up in that jersey, yeah, yeah. he really has. Yeah, it's been, uh, look, a very long time for these two to be teammates, right? I'm sure that they know each other <laughs> really well at this point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One of those fans looks really childish in that bottom right. What's he, what's he pulling off here? What's he? What's he? Okay, Trace is out there. He's playing with the playing with the fan cams, getting involved. The fun part is, is we've is muted and they've got masks on, so you really <laughs> can't tell anything. No, it's lacking context. Which oh, is always dear. a dangerous game, isn't it? Well, I guess Chaos are the North American team. They have three North American, uh, sorry, five North American players, three from the U.S. It's Steel and Jonji who are the uh, Canadians in the mix here. I guess if we're taking check of nationalities, 100 Thieves is more of a mixed bag. Gratisfaction from New Zealand, Lianz, JKS, and Azza all from Australia. And then Jacob, I don't know how he found his way into the mix, but he's from Norway. I'm a pet, AKA Chet. He's the only North American representative on the Thieves squad. He is the coach of the team. And over for Chaos, it is MCE. So those are the six components in the server right now for either side. Let's see if Chaos can start looking threatening because it's 5-0 down. It's been her. Uh, very stark contrast to what we saw over in Nuke, a slower affair. And Vanity, he needs to find a pick with the AWP, and he will. That's exactly what the doctor ordered. You've only got two powerful rifles, and look at the boost they're opting for here. This is a little unusual, a little avant-garde. We might see over the smoke if they do a CT smoke to cover off going into B, so not something I've actually seen before. He has legs. Four of them. Yeah. But it does kind of hinge on that smoke. John G, he can kind of treat his teammate like a boost box alternatively and just stay in that boost position just at the off angle. <laughs> you can hear a pin drop. Yeah, smoke towards Arch is going to keep Vanity posted, but he has all the info. Here comes the smoke from Azza towards CT. That will likely enable John G to see over it. It's what they've been biding their time for. Slow and steady wins the race, and the smoke starts to fly. There we go. Smoke's hobbling. Jonji is still there. Leaf playing on site. So tucked in. Wait and see if Jonji gets anything out of the set. He's there too. He's dead. And well, not great for the CTs, but a lovely little take coming in for the T side there. So pretty all encompassing. Two players left alive. And maybe if a shot comes in, we could have some fun. But for some reason, I just don't have faith. But you know what? Still prove me wrong. I don't think we're going to get anything proved here. Even a kill, it's not going to be enough. Not even enough to make the round interesting. Do we start commentating this like tennis or cricket? We just stay quiet until the action happens because it feels like a minute of these rounds or more. Yeah. It's dead silent. The and shift that's okay. key is being held from spawn. If we were playing Danger Zone right now, or Rush isn't here, but he, we, these, are, these are the type of Counter-Strike, the Danger Zone players, sorry. I, I, I'm a professional Danger Zone player. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Does, does uh, the Renegades Vox... Oh, oh hello. Uh... <laughs> Oh, recover the AWP at the very least, but get a couple of extra consolation. Gonna go. The bomb uh, explosion. And it's a successful frag from Steel. That's gonna have some ramifications. Of course, they got cash for days considering how many rounds they've picked up the pre-fire. You can see how clean that was. Any professional orgs looking to pick up uh... Danger Zone teams? Yeah. Uh look, it's still grassroots out there right now. Um I, I'm the leading streamer in the world for Danger Zone, so that kind of tells you how well things are going. 
Double orbs though, guys. Let's focus on the real game at hand. John's okay. just gonna pick up the secondary. Still the three-man lean towards the top of Banana here. Oh, oh Leaf. That's a kick in the chin. Leaf straight away knocked over. He only had six HP by the end of that dink. Jonji's burning. He wants to jump for the info and he will see nothing, but the nade might find oh, him. And this, this is a horrible, horrible way to lose your first two players. The sixth death for Jonji this time to the nice nade of Liaz. I can't put a foot wrong right now, the thieves. Perfect. It's slow and it's clinical. That volatility of Chaos Esports Club, it looks great when they can dictate the pace on that T side, but as you have to sit back and let the coordinated Thieves squad pull you apart limb from limb, sight from sight. That's going to be B as well. Yeah, Look back at to this. the wide open B side. They're trying to get there. Jacob's going to communicate that the rotate is on, and that bomb is still on its way heavily towards that B side. There'll be four there to receive them. Eight on the spray. Grass Faction does get the bomb across. Yeah, if you can get the plant down, this retake feels like it has zero legs to it. Still unable to get much on the spam. And Jacob's still around. He's still looking to do a bit of damage here. So if he can maybe catch a couple of these players, that could be a bit of an issue considering their cash is looking uh, pretty shocking. That's one. Can he get the second? Of course he can. It's all going right, as you said. It just sometimes it all falls in your favor, right? You get the perfect wall bang at the start. Leafs down to nothing. You get everything going. Oh, vanity. <laughs> that's quite tasty. That's, that's a nice little, little heady. It looks nice. Yeah, we got he's, it. Look. He's still going to die here, though. Zero Watch to this. six, Chad. We, we, we get excited by fine margins. Well, I've, been, I've been trying to be more of a positive parrot lately, Lauren. I, I hope those vibes positive have been felt. Parrot. Or a positive Pete. I didn't, you know, I thought a parrot, it's gender neutral. We, we didn't have to go that. anywhere with that. Yeah, trying yeah. to be inclusive for everybody here. Parrots are cool. Yeah. yeah. I love the parrot. And uh, I hope those vibes are being sucked on in here because, Liaz, there's the nade. Nice and simple, easy as you like. Right on the tushy. <laughs> Pretty orb. What is that? I actually don't know what it is. Oh, uh, there was this two case. One's called the Gun Gear or something, and the other mm. one's the red one that he's got. The red one. The red. Yeah. I don't know the names of the skins. I'm not going to pretend. No. I, I, I've, I've been outside of the world of skins for a while. I've got. I think. I've, I think I've peaked. I've got what I like. I think knives are the only thing I might dabble in. I know the hundred thieves are winning, and the score is zero to seven. But they've really sucked the excitement out of the room. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to be that guy, but. The way that they're playing, it's so good, right? You, I could I could harp on about, you know, how clinical it is, the utility usage is on point, but it doesn't even feel like they're being pushed by Chaos because nothing coordinated has even had a chance to happen. When Leaf's getting dinked through holes and Johnny's getting naded behind a smoke, and that's the start to a round, where's the excitement? It's just that's not going to be here. It's not just the start to the round, that's the end of the round. That's true. That's in the yeah. first 20 seconds. It is going swimmingly for the Thieves. At least going to take a bit of a risk here. And now both of them exposed. He does catch the first with the 5-7. They choose to back away. Good damage inflicted into the Jacob and JKS with his healthy pool. Does manage to advance. There will only be one man. It's Steel with a Mag-7 in the apartments. And as dramatic as this camera just looked, <laughs> what the hell was the that? scene. <laughs> significantly less dramatic. He could strafe out oh, to kill this Jacob. Go on. Go oh. on. He does get the frag. That's at least something. Finishing off the hard work of Leaf. Flash right. and a push. Zeppa. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even get out the smoke. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Because we've got a gun round. Well, we need to pull this picture. back as well. Set the picture. All right. Round number nine. AWP in Vanity's hands. Full utility being purchased on in here. Why are Is you pretending? Play play? Don't pretend. I just thought I wanted to get myself hyped. I know, but then, but, but, but if we're pretending, then they can tell we're pretending, and then they get upset about people pretending. You've got to be oh. real. And unfortunately, the reality right now for the Chaos Esports fans is that they might have to start planning their third map and taking a look at that one. It has been a dominant start from the Thieves, but maybe, just maybe around before the double digits get broken, just there's to build the confidence, there's a first blood. A bit more competition into the server already. Yeah, but there's so much more time. This is the first time we've seen them fight it back, right? Try and take a bit of st space back on Banana and not lose out somewhat, feels like, free. But then CT Arch is open because you've had to triple stack it. So they've already found a little bit of an answer back, a weakness. And look at Jake. And this guy's been running them circles. He is tagged up. Doesn't matter. JKS has your back. That's a nice person to have watching your flank. Now, Leaf and Steel. 
tucked on the site. High flash is coming in. This is looking troubling. Oh, they're all behind. Oh, John G had a real beautiful meal on his plate, and he's just thrown it in the bin. <laughs> it's just gone out. Well, he won. Lovely roast chicken. And now JKS is the one to convert. Both players with three kills already in this round. Two of the stars of the show for their respective teams. And JKS is opting for the silent approach to apartments. If Leaf tucks in on pit, this does favor the CT. Bombs on A. He knows he can just sit out of line of sight. And JKS has to make a sound cue here. He gives him the fight. And JKS can't believe his luck. Doesn't have to do anything. Just cerebral play as the chicken picks up the AK. 3.8. So it's max loss bonus, everybody. Uh, uh, let me pull, I, I can talk about that. So the fact that Chaos are yet to win a round, they have uh, 3,400 coming into their bank balance every single round. Now, going into this one, you're gonna be hovering around that 4K mark. You're going to need to see them just go for some light pistol upgrades. But when you're 9-0 down on the CT side, I was talking about not letting 100 Thieves win the half. Well, they've done that. And now it's just how many more can they pile on top? You would hope one more, but it's fast down mid. Grad's gonna deal with it early. Yeah, he should. Be pressured. He does have the support of Liaz. He actually gets double kill there. Zappa just charging down mid with his CZ. We've seen Chaos win rounds like this before. And they managed to get it into the chaotic mid round. There will be no setup. This one will be quicker. John G Molotov down of position. His teammate Lee swings in and gets another. Down. With the bomb loose, this is the closest they've come to a round, but to change it could be Jacob. Phenomenal on Nuke and a chance here once again to save the day. Looking for 10 0, and they get it. Good damage, but not enough. Chaos, quite the contrary to the namesake at this point here on map two. Everybody on the Thieves right now is tracking very nicely with the kills. We've got nine for Azza, nine for JKS, eight for Jacob, seven for Liaz, seven for Gratis Faction. So everybody's contributing. They all have 60 plus ADR. And then you compare that to what's going on on the other side of things for Chaos. Well, they're up Struggle Street. We only got two kills on John G, three for Steel, four for Vanity. Zeppel with five to his name and Leaf leading the way, 94 points of ADR and only seven kills, but none of this has resulted in a round. So all those frags are basically worthless. God, don't say that. People who've had their stats are going to be devastated hearing it. And so is that nade, actually, Alex. That's a big chunk of damage oh. and an opening we haven't seen for Chaos. Maybe the last few could bring life into that second half. Maybe. Still finds his third. Great maneuver. Vanity tagging up Jacob with that AWP. Steel proactively hunts it down. Buzz put Gratz Faction and JKS into a tough one. Almost an impenetrable 2v5. It would hinge on some spectacular individual prowess, and JKS more than capable, as is Grat. Still three towards top banana here because Steel's been able to do all that hard work over towards A, so. Oh, as I say that, of course, the rotation comes in. And Vanity dropping a smoke and dipping back over towards the A bomb site. For the Thieves, it would be about that damage. I'll bring up the magic number once more. Three kills. If they can get any damage here, it's just about keeping the guns low. And it's about to head around the corner. That's and that's exactly what they wanted. Want. Yeah. So I have a question just for the people at home. Um, and, and this, I could have, you know, made a forum thread or, or maybe made a Reddit account again, done one of those fun things. Have, have people had the same experience as Rush and I have with their mouse, of using a wireless mouse with uh, drivers, we both use Logitech mice. Mm -hmm. Occasionally the mouse will do a new weird thing with this, uh, I guess it's the new anti-cheat measure Valve will put in place, where the mouse will do like a 360 spin, but it takes you exactly back to where you were looking. It looks kind of stylish. I've never seen that. Yeah, so I'm not sure if other people have been experienced that or maybe Rush and I are just I special. have that mouse and I've never had that happen. Yeah, it's strange. It's a strange Is it one. Is only in danger zone? It, it could be, that's all I play with at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I've, I've been playing a fair bit of matchmaking again and it's not happened yet, but... Maybe others out there can reach out. Get in contact with Sponge on Twitter if you too have a similar problem. Or Instagram, slide into my DMs. They've been pretty empty Don't lately. do that. Double Ops, Alex, this could be fun. Maybe there's a difference to be had. Never go to those DMs, it's a dangerous place. Yeah, and dangerous. Is Zappa's middle name. He's got himself another double. Grant will finish this one off, though. Still unwilling to go for the immediate trade, and that does mean he's ahead of the molly. Chaos have been starved of success in this first half, but looking to just finish on a high in the same way we saw the Thieves turn it on on Nuke. Jacob does manage to get behind enemy lines and just cuts off Vanity's rotate before he could post up. 
Heading towards A. This is Leaf to main. And the bomb... Okay, so JKS has been spotted. If he gets this frag, he can also convey that they're going B, or at least that was the intention. Oh, Leaf, this gone is a out. Bit too risky. Didn't anticipate it. With 35 seconds left, and now the A player's dead. The other one's in CT spawn. It's a dream, and it's almost... Oh, the round for Steel. I don't know really know what his options are. It's going to have save. to be saved. Or put his feet. And so another for the Thieves. They're closing in on that match point swiftly in a rather one-sided affair. He's going for it. He's actually coming up middle. He's going for this. All right, Josh. He's feeling it. I mean, at 10 to 1, I guess you got to try something. Jake comes over my library. Has none of it. He's having a great tournament so far, at least to like. And this series is having a good, uh, good run. Now, the reason I was so surprised that uh, Steel was going for that round, he could have saved the AWP, and then you can see Leaf and Zeppa. They had enough money here to buy into rifles. Uh, that would have meant there would have been a third on the board. Now you can see what that's done. So we have an AWP getting dropped across to Vanity, and M4 will get pieced across here as well. This could have been a little bit better of a buy, but the MP9s, pound for pound, with the utility behind them, if wielded properly, can be deadly. There's one diffuse kit in play. So there's still a chance for this 11-1. The scoreline is looking very bleak. Things are looking horrible for Chaos out here, but if they want to turn it around, they need to start now. Yeah, we we'll start with a nade like that. Three players, 150 damage inflicted. And as that nade and the dust starts to settle, so does a 3v3 situation for the rest of round 13. Steel's been given the responsibility of B, rotating silently so as not to be heard by any T's pushed up to that break point in Banana. And they're actually looking to be committing on this. The molly from Azza towards new boxes. It does look like a commitment, at least, and that seems to be their well-intentioned. Here's the steps. He'll be communicating for the rotate. Does seem vanity's on his way. Steel, it is all about timing here. See if he can get it this time. He went for that 1v2 a little crazed, but he's still there. Azza. Flash is good. Flash was so well timed. It gives him a second to work with. He's clutching at straws. He got two. So he's he's got done the, damage. He's got the info on two. The only unknown is Azza. And looks like Emo is about to get some nade damage. Excuse me? That landed right behind him. Safe by the corner. Now a good chance, but not the transfer. Jacob doing the heavy lifting for the Thieves again. Steel, he has the info. He just doesn't have the kills. Grat can stand still. A bit of a standoff here. Finally finds one. Looking for the transfer into the second. And I'm afraid Jacob, he's played this far too well. Steel would have to hold it to win. And he's not opted for that option. So a frag. But no round, a 12th now for the Thieves, and Steel does go down with the ship. Who's, whose map choice was this? This uh, was the Thieves. Yeah. Right, okay, okay, fine. But it's quick and painless. I was a little worried. It's quick and painless for Chaos, right? Like, the sense is, obviously, yeah. a lot of the energy is getting sucked out of, uh, I'm sure, their team speak right now, but yeah. uh, they're not... It's not like they're losing clutches. You know, they're not losing 1v1s every time, or they're not getting, they're not losing 2v5s. It's not like it's being stolen away from them, and, and they only have themselves to blame. They're just being destroyed. They're being beaten by the thieves who are looking clinical right now. They're coming into round after round with a poise. Very good idea. With these type of losses, I would say in a series especially, it's much easier to lose 16-1, 16-2 than it is to lose 16-14 and then go into map number three. So if this continues trending in this direction, which it looks like it will, thieves should be running away with this one. He has flashed out. Leaf's actually done some work here. Somehow, in the weirdest ways, they've managed to fight back on Banana, but it feels like the first time in a while, and at 12 to 1, I, I have to kind of keep a marker on how much we get excited by this. A good round is a good round, but as I can, still do a bit of work towards it, and even then, you're giving yourself such a small amount of work uh, to, to play with on the second half. So, all said and done, this feels just kind of uh, a formality. Strangely, the money isn't out of control on the Thieves' side, right? Liao's 1,600, 2,300 for Grat. Let's see what Azza can do here. Sneaky beaky like. Oh, what? Bloody hell. Spectacular shot from Azza. Reaction times. Unfortunately, not going to translate to anything else, but what a shot. That was just pure reaction speed. And precision. Uh, Steel's typing. typing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it after the shot came Little out. Little click keys. Just... Oh, wow. Keys. I wonder what that looked like from Steel's POV. He probably turned on a dime. Oh. Oh. 
I haven't seen Azza hit one of those shots in a very long time. Yeah, Chad's getting some nostalgia. The rose-colored glasses are out of the pocket. He's dusting them off. I don't think they ever went away. Yeah, ready to <laughs> the jersey's coming on. Push them on up the bridge of his nose. I just have like a dream, you know, one day, I don't know what happens, someone gets injured. I get like a call up, you know, bring out all the Vox Eminor jerseys. It's Sorry, a bit like the mighty... Who's, so who's getting injured for you to have I your... don't know. Are There's... you selling under... Are you putting literally under the bus? Look, I don't want to name names. Literally. Goodness, Chad, don't do that. <laughs> Oh, no, Chad. But we do need to find the answer as to whom shall be taking round 15. And thankfully, that's exactly what we'll be doing in the next minute and 32 seconds. Same as always. Taking that banana control. Flash up the half wall. Deny info. Maybe the CTs will go for the re-aggression. Zephyr's holding something for this. I imagine it's a smoke for half wall. Could be a Molotov for the flash peak. You know, it does look like they are going to be doing the molly smoke combo. But that's just going to incite... As a forward, he is ahead and he is burnt out. It's a perfect combination of utility. Had they had a line of sight on that, that would have been a free frag. But instead, they've got nothing but the sound cue. They know someone was banana and they've burnt just a little bit. Toasty yeah, that, toes. That sound cue actually helps the thieves as opposed to chaos because they know that someone was on the other side of the smoke, which means they have top banana control and the utility they threw. It was in vain. Yeah, very good point. He smoked off. Everything is just falling into place wonderfully in pursuit of their 13th there. They want to get this one done. They want to start thinking about that third mirage, if I'm not mistaken. Off spot for John G, but it is going to be a very common pre-aim. And they'll be rounding this corner into the stack. Steel's rotated over. 20 seconds, and you see that smoke from Steel. They have to go. They have to disrespect the smoke, and here comes the frag. Needs to be clean. Jacob, even though he's doing the flashbang dance, and now Zephyr's the one to grab their hand. 3v3, nine seconds. Where is that ball? It's JKS. He does manage to get it down. And now into the hurt locker. I like the molly, I like the idea, but it doesn't really change the outcome. A little bit more beaten and bruised, I guess you could argue, as Leaf walks forward. He finds Lee has now down to two. It's good to see a little bit of breathing room as Grass Faction is found. It really is not much here. This one has been a absolute whitewash. 100 Thieves, it's got to be considering that three already. I know it's in the moment here, but this moment's almost over.
Big smiles for Graz Faction as he's just communicating how they plan to get into that third map ASAP. That's as soon as possible for those of you unawares. Myself, Chad Virtual, and Lauren Pansy Scott, the voices into the second half. And let's get it started. So 100 Thieves just need four to take us to Mirage. GG.bet, they did previously have the backing behind the Chaos Horse. It does seem like the bit of seed of doubt has been sown after the first half, and that certainly makes sense. Grant with a fast smoke and into the apartments, and a great couple of shots from Liaz. We're off to the races. And it does seem like poor old Chaos will be nothing more than glue at the end of this one. Yep. Put on your summer frocks, take off your heels. You've had a pretty trashy day out at the race course. I'm sure it's the same in the UK as it is in <laughs> Australia. You see them walking home at the end of the day, stumbling along, holding their hats high heels. Yep. Well, the hats are lost. Hats Sorry are about the hats. The hats the hats were out of there <laughs> after the going? first couple of hours. So, uh, <laughs> oh, this one's a rough one, guys. I mean, is it? I mean, I'd, if I'm chaos, I'd probably rather be coming into Mirage with a, a, you know, a 20 rounds of accepting my fate than a 35 rounds of an OT sad loss. I mean, it's certainly one way of thinking about it. It's the silver lining angle. It's not like they're not going to be residing themselves to loss here, though. They are forcibly buying in. It seems like Zeppel will be playing into the utility outside of uh, the Deagle. Just, just quickly, Chad, if you don't mind, um, what's... Chaos like on Inferno. Is this, is this a map that they play off for? Is this is just simply not in their wheelhouse? I, I, I thought this was a decent map for them. Yeah, look, it's one of their weaker maps for okay. sure, but I was coming in with more confidence based off the fact that they pushed Fury up, Yeah. right? That's, that, I, I don't know if I was lulled into it because of that result, and I thought it might have been close. I don't know if it was the tenacity that we Ooh. saw within that first map. Mm -mm. Maybe there's something to be said here, though. Mm. As a didn't choose to take that fight, but the supportive flash was his reasoning. And Jonti's done well to find a frag there. Jacob stabilizing the MP9 before it got away from him. Liaz just darting up and left around the graveyard, repositioning. Steel's making a charge for the B plant. And it does look like it will pay off. He'll at least get himself <laughs> 800 bucks for every member of the Chaos Club. When did you always get that POV? I think MC from yeah, Down Under is doing come that. From the <laughs> I kind of love it. I know it looks ridiculous, but it just, I don't know, it's like strapping a GoPro to a cat's head or something. Yeah, I think, you know, everything's good in moderation. Mm. Even moderation. <laughs> Even moderation. And that will be the 14th as JKS converts it. So we are closing in on the uh, the expected result. Does look like Liaz has just given JKS a, a love tap for his diffuse. Let's stop getting a little seasick now, and we can all stay in one. Or static position. We didn't get seasick on the boat in Malta, though, Alex. We were all right. We were all right, apart from now boating. my hilarious um, return journey. Chad, do you want to try and explain what happened there? Oh, dear. This is what? more exciting than the game of Counter-Strike. So we were we were out. Uh, were you guys sailing the boat? No, we, we had, had Captain J. Okay, you, I was, I was second in charge. He looked at me as the most, most other trustworthy. He kid's hat and he was like, you're, no, you're he, my second. No, he said, he said, he said, listen, mate, um, if I fall overboard, this is how you steer the boat. Okay. Was actually the conversation. That's actually the conversation. So uh, anyway, this might be another quick one. I, I'll, I'll yeah, tell the story. Put a fork in that yep. or whatever pin, whatever you want to put in it. We'll be back in a sec. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I, can't, I can't watch this and be happy seeing still get a kill, but then also lose, you know, uh, the, the largest portion of HE backing through the molly. It feels like every small piece they take still has a pretty negative side to it. It's, it's been a brutal, brutal map, and there's no two ways to cut it. There's no point um, telling you anything other than that. And JKS, well, the timing's going to be about everything here. And it actually goes poorly for him. So this is a bit of an opener. It's a bit of a chance. It's a, it's a, it's a building block to maybe a respectable scoreline. Jacob, they're just taking fights straight up here, Alex. Yeah, and there's another one right there. Azza's has got himself at least two. Zephyr should be the one to tie it up and secure the round. Grant's faction, good fight. Not quite finding the final shot necessary. And so, Chaos, they do manage to find their first T round. It took them three. Off the back of the pistol victory of the Thieves. You can see Steel's fantastic. Oh, I don't love Ash. this. Sorry. Uh, as is buying already, JKS is bought on in as well. 
it's not going to be a full buy round by any means. And I know Chaos, they still probably have some some gas left in the tank here. They're not going to just, you know, roll over. Uh, they the team side was good on Nuke. Yeah, so the thing here that I worry about is the fact that the Thieves are force buying into this. They don't have all the Molotovs, all the utility they need for banana control. If they lose this banana control early, which they have been, now they just have to sit back onto the site. They can be executed against very easily. And if they lose this round, that's where the true problems start coming in. Whoa, they went for the flash retake of that top banana control. Jonji, just as the molly fades, what fantastic timing. And a second chance as well for Jonji. He opens up the B site. Chad's warning signs do seem to be in place absolutely and justifiably. And a great angle found by Jonji. Just the shoulder blades of Azza and another frown on Chaddy's face. It's just a bad call. And I understand they have such a commanding lead here, but just play with a little bit of respect, right? Just go, okay, well, we know we're this far ahead. Let's do some upgraded pistols. Let's get a proper gun round coming out. Let's put a bow on this thing. Let's not allow this to become a, a messy game. And now they've done exactly that. So the scoreline is going to tick on up to 14-5. The guns that are being held onto is a Deagle and a CZ. Yeah, and they didn't lose a single man. So banks being built on one side. Precisely. Loss bonus on the other side, terrible. That means that we either see another force buy come on out because it's only going to be, I believe, 1,900 as the loss bonus for the Thieves going into the next. So that means you either take the save now, right, or you force now. Now, if you take the save, you only get 2,400 into the next round, which is going to have the majority of them just around that 4K mark, not enough for a full buy. So that means we probably see another force, force from the, th the Thieves here. I can't speak today. My tongue is getting in the way. Just take it Cut out. It out. Da, da, da. Reasonable things, of course. Uh, no, I, I, I think I, I get what you're saying, and I'm also going to add in the dash that I liked what Chaos brings on T sides. I don't know if we can apply that to all maps because I only saw a Nuke, right? But what we saw on Nuke was a nice indicator. It was like, okay, we've got a couple of nice ideas. I like their approach. We didn't get to see too much, I guess, of the CT side in the same regard, but that's kind of beyond the point. So maybe we could at least get a respectable scoreline. You look back on it, oh, it was, you know, 16 10 or something, but yeah, the, the opportunity being created when maybe not necessary is is a danger. Like, I mean, I wouldn't start writing Kios out of this one. Kios? Chaos out of this one uh, if they can continue to uh, build upon that initial slip up of the thieves. There's uh, a squad that's known for being unable to close. How many times have I talked about the incredible? 14 to X result for Thieves, and then it's ended up being the overtime loss that's harrowing and hard to explain. Chad doesn't want to talk about it. It's been it's been time and time again. A story affixed to this team. But to change that is Lia's phenomenal work with the Desert Eagle. And another shot being hit by JKS. It's keeping it competitive. It is keeping the money honest, but it doesn't look like with Graz Faction's unarmored CZ, he's got much of a shout in this one. That's the end. Lee Leaf picking himself up his team's sixth round. So just have a look here at the economy when we get back from the highlights. You will see that a lot of players on the Thieves, if they want to buy M4s, won't be able to have a Molotov, Smoke, HE, Flash, and a Kit. That is a full buy, right? You need armor, you need the rifle, you need all the nades, and probably two to three diffuse kits scattered across the board. But it's not that case. Two Famas is coming into play. Remember how this went for Nuke on ramp when Liaz got pushed within the early stages, had the Famas, he gets taken down. Well, again, we see two of them coming on out. The utility is there, so that's a positive. They can go for some map control. They need to be able to make these frags. So John G through the flames, takes a lot of damage early, already down to half HP. Grout on the AWP could be the saving grace, however. So for now, going to be kind of tendering towards A. It's their consideration, but it's certainly not necessarily the end goal. It feels though like it might be. However, Jake can post it up over by towards Banana. He can start going through the motions, ensuring it's clear, which he just did with the nade and the flash that followed. I saw Molly to force the opera away. Gratis Faction could have been a game changer in this round, something that was just discussed. And at the moment, his area of expertise where he can operate has been eliminated. Just kind of bit by bit, taken away. Oh, I really like the progression of this. We're going to go through it. Oh, JKS, far too wise for those tricks. Does catch Zephyr through the smoke and steel dismantled as well. Looks like Thieves have got their grip. It does incite a fast push towards B. They know there's only going to be one there. Rotate's coming in now. Flash did not catch Jacob and 
He's far too experienced to let any of this funny business into his sight. APS can clean up. There's a perfect flashbang, which forces Leaf to tuck in. John G in the pool with an AWP, not where you want to be. And he's actually, for some reason, going to try the plant. That was never going to go well. Hoping JKS would be smoked off for the full length of it, but that is going to be the 15th, and that is a oodle of map points for the Thieves. Mirage the third, if you're wondering. Yeah, just one note that uh, Mr. SEO, our stats guy, sitting at home, has astutely pointed out. Right now, the team opening kills are tied at 10-10. Actually, that can't be the case because we've played uh, 21 rounds. So someone has more than the other. So this is just a little bit wrong, Ben. I'm sorry. Uh, but the multi-kills is 17 to 16. Oh, we had a unicorn round. He's right. Oh, he, he just owned me. Now I look like a fool. Yeah, you did. Sorry, oh, Ben. He, re he literally wrote sorry, it in. Sorry, Ben. Oh, he's done you. I feel like a bit of a tit right now. Yeah, you threw him under the bus and then he just <laughs> got out of the bus. He was the driver the yeah. whole time. He the whole off the time. Mars. <laughs> Oh, dear. <laughs> okay. Well, the point here is the fact that it's tied 10-10 in terms of opening kills and the multi-kills are 17 to 16, which should be a close game, but we're not looking at that by any means. It's 15 to 6 scoreline. One more for the Thieves to close. It should be happening anytime soon. Even the progressions, this T side from uh, Chaos, what we've seen, it's looked good. That last round, I really liked it. It didn't work for them. But I like the moves and the motions they went through. They've got top mid control with a minute 10 left on the clock. So potentially another A set piece, but there's already four individuals on the CT side ready and raring to go. As a great success before, going to try and set up Jacob this time. He gets checked on, though. It's not going to go as easy this time around, especially if uh, old JKS can't catch one through the smoke. Be smoking towards the library. It does indicate a wrap. Grant Paranoid will tuck into Cold Zera. They've got great positions here, Chaos. They just have to convert the frags, and already Lias is making things difficult. Oh, what a great set of frags that is. Triple. Grant adds the quad, and just one more head to pop before we start talking about my rage. Could go for the dankest flank. Bomb's loose on A, but he has got only 22 seconds. He really has to be quick about this one. He is still going for the flank. I can't quite believe it. JKS is not going to be... Ah, oh, the sound cue. J what? Hello? Put on your headphones. I'm not sure how that one's explained, and they spotted Grant. Thankfully, the shot is hit by the New Zealander. He's smiling. JKS can't quite explain that one. Lovely jubbly. We're off to Mirage. We'll be right back.
Games are good games, what they say, and 100 Thieves certainly agree after a performance like that. Their map pick, and they tell us why. They show us why. You can see that there is a little bit of a discrepancy. Ranked 22 up against ranked 32. Looking to break the top 30. Chaos did manage to get it over on HLTV. And now, well, in the upper bracket, second round of ESL 1 Cologne. Certainly not too shabby. However, this one certainly did leave a little to be desired. Chad Burchill and Lauren Pansy Scott alongside myself, Machine. Uh, Chaddy B, what did we see? Look, uh, I don't want to get too stuck into the players and the strats and the frags, but what I want to do look at is uh, the economy. So now I have a crack team of commandos in the back room who I say, make this for me. No, I'm much nicer, but I say, hey, can you guys see if you can build this? And there's Vlad and there's Mikey and there's the other Vlad. And look, they build this stuff. Now, this is the economy graph. Now, what I want to show everybody here is the ebb and the flow for CT side for chaos. Now, look, let's just start this off nice and easy. The bank balance is the top row. The equipment value is the bottom row. And we started at the same place, 800 for each team, right? And that means they both bottomed out. They spent all their money. Now, the pistol round was won right here by that of 100 Thieves. And both teams fully invested because there was a force buy. So you can see here the equipment disparity. You can see right here with this one that I'm going to circle that 100 Thieves by winning the pistol, they have more goodies in the bank. And the force buy, well, it's going to net a little bit lower. But what I want to start talking about here is once we get into this stage of the game, right? So what you need to look between both graphs here. When you see the money in the bank balance higher, that means that Chaos were going for a save, right? So you can see their equipment value is significantly lower than that of 100 Thieves. Now look, when we move into the next round, they've bottomed out their money and they've also invested higher than the Thieves because the CT side economy is more, but they lose the round. So look what happens. They have to go for a save. So their equipment value is low, their bank balance is high. The next round following through, they spend more. So they have a full gun round, nothing left in the bank. This is what I'm talking about with the CT side. Even though you have the max loss bonus, you have 34 in the back pocket. Pocket, you still need to be taking saves. You can see how this flows on out. Now, if we clear it off, what I want to show you is this line right here. The orange line on the equipment value for the thieves, it's basically staying level the entire time. That means every single round of that T half, the thieves were on a gun round, right? They had almost fully bought into every single round. For them, there was no ecos, there was no worries. And that's what made, well, I guess their life so easy. Does that help the economy? Does it paint the picture? I don't know. Because I was kind of, this is very difficult for me to be able to explain to viewers, right? The economy is a really hard thing to be able to break on down. And this kind of a game right here is an easy way to show the ebb and the flow for the CT side. So you can see, oh, they invest, oh, no money left, they save, oh, they invest, they lose, no money left, they save. It's a hard thing to kind of paint the picture for the viewer. It's a good way to uh, to certainly represent it in a still image, uh, the, you know, the complexities of why the CT side has been kind of struggling in the new economy changes more so than the T certainly has made that switch which is why when we saw the Krieg changes paired with the economy changes, why we saw such a leniency yeah. toward, you know, people were winning nuke 10-5 T sides consistently. It wasn't just Astralis anymore. Now the Krieg, the Orgs, and it's all kind of tapered down to a more ebb and flow 
default. But with chaos, you just saw a prime example of what happens when you aren't winning those rounds with an early deficit on your T side. You're just bummed. You just lose your weapon round, then you have to accept it, and it's already over. That's why the best teams in the world go for saves. As soon as they lose a bomb site, right, they just save. Like Astralis, if they lose B, uh, we save. If we lose A, uh, we save. But Thieves did a great job of not letting them save. Uh, so that was another key factor in that one right there. Uh, go. It's like we reset now. It's one. It's one one. It's just one yeah, that left. And it's Mirage, right? I mean, this is everybody's not favorite, but certainly familiar territory. Mirage. Yeah, exactly. It's it's been around a whole long time, and everybody knows everything about the basics of Mirage. So coming into this one, Lauren, do you have uh, obviously any faith in Chaos Esports being able to bounce back after a loss like that? Oh. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want to say no, but I'm. I'm not feeling it. I think okay. stylistically, Inferno is a lot closer to Mirage than Nuke is, unless they have a lot more in the bank because they look flat. They look flat as hell. Hundred Thieves just steamrolled them straight on through. So there, there's got to be something from the very start. Otherwise, there's zero indicators, right? Yeah. Close to fair for me. I think, you know, obviously, uh, Chaos happy to lose in such a fashion means they can reset, get ready for Mirage, and get this one underway. We'll take a quick one, and then we can get into the game. Intel Gamer Days is on now. Whether you're looking to buy or build, now is a great time to upgrade. Get limited time offers and giveaways from top names in PC gaming. Unleash elite gaming performance with systems featuring new 10th gen Intel Core processors and bring Marvel's Avengers to life with in-game optimizations for a mightier PC experience. Act now. Intel Gamer Days is only here for a limited time. My name is Jordan Gilbert, AKA Nothing. Hi, my name is Sue Lee. My handle is Snix. I think it's important for these initiatives to happen. Empathy really, really goes a long way and it always, always means so much to us. And I think that's where initiatives like this really help. I encourage everyone in the community, anytime they see bullying, anytime they see someone getting called names, or I encourage you to step up and say something. Good luck, have fun. Good luck, have fun. If you want to know what you're good at and, well, also, what you suck at, check out csgohub.com. Coming! Everybody loves an underdog. Who needs to be liked? Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel. Victory in a can.
ESL One Cologne Online is brought to you in part by Intel, Mountain Dew Game Fuel, DHL, and GG Bet. Getting jiggy with it in our third map then. It is going down to Mirage. Haven't seen too much of Mirage as of late. Often purged through the vetoes. It's fallen out of favor of many a team, Chad. So it's kind of exciting to be seeing a little Mirage. Well, 100 Thieves is a team who used to have this towards the top of their map pool. And they've actually been vetoing it quite a lot recently, especially against certain big names within North America. I was just taking a look at their stat lines on the map and it's really dropped on off. So I'm worried for them. I hope in the player break, they've been working on giving some new positions. I don't like having JKS as the A anchor on Mirage. It doesn't make much sense. Let's hope for some change. Change, is that what you're after, Lauren? Let's get on board with it. With yeah. Obama. Spare some change, mate. We're going in. It's time for Mirage. Thankfully, Chaos Esports Club are starting on the T side. Should be seeing a little more speed to the start of our third map. And as you can see, once again, bookkeepers are favoring the favorite after their splash in the first map. Through through Palace. No one to receive them, really. This should translate into a plant. Steel just going to get them out Palace with a flashbang. Smoke going out first towards the connector. I saw high flash there, but oh, the satisfaction. Is... he's not even blind. He's fine. It's all fine. I don't know what this theory piece was. I'm sure Chad can give us an idea what the intention was, but the execution and the outcome was atrocious. Well, when you're waterfalling out of apps like that, you don't expect to have three individuals plucked out of the sky. So Gratz hit some absolute bangers there, and maybe, just maybe, we'll get to see those in the replay. But it all happened so quick, blink and you miss it. Maybe it broke the system. But uh, yeah, it was cool though. It's well, glasses. look, that round right there, it's quite a simple approach, right? You always see people come out of apps, I mean, the they push towards cool, CTs. I mean. Exactly, yeah. That's, that's what I was remiss to have missed. And it's a good way that Grat starts the game in that fashion because an AWP on Mirage, especially on the CT side, can be a very, very vital piece of the puzzle. It won't be a force by set piece coming out from Chaos here. They've just gone for the pistols. Two underpass, three out top mid. They'll swing, they'll dink him up. They'll be mopped. Easy as you like. So the gun rounds will be starting already. Thieves losing two players there. Might be a little bit disappointed. Chaos will be getting the AK-47s out. Vanity's bought on in. Has a Galil. Jonji's doing the same. And a MAC-10 for Leaf. This one here tells me it might be a little bit quick. Could be a B piece. Look, we we, we got treated on Nuke, right? The, that T side was blistering pace and had the success tied to it. So I'm not opposed to it. Let's have a look. Charging in. Leaf at the front of this assault. Well, now that MAC-10, it worked so well for him on Nuke. And a leap out of the window certainly could be a problem for Liaz and Azza. M4s and MP9s respectively equipped. That's a big nade. Ouch. Out to 70, and Liaz, great control of his MP9 spray. So the Thieves looking poised for a third here, and this full buy is just dissolving in front of us. Zeppa only able to... Floor one and Steel's jumping out of the window. The inaccuracy was there, and unfortunately, it's all down to one man. He's only going to get the one three to zero to start off our Mirage. Gratisfaction popping off. Lee has just then four kills, just shutting anything down. Looks like Chaos trying to roll it back to map one. That aggression, that kind of quick play, just <laughs> met by an absolutely resounding no. Uh, I, it's it's going to have to. They're going to need to dig a little deeper here. Light pistols, a little bit of utility in play once more. So nothing uh, really going to cause too much of a splash here. You can see they still want to play as a team and with pace. So some pack rolly stuff from Chaos as they're sending three players with the bomb towards the underpass. One over towards A-Ramp babysitting, then towards top of middle will be Vanity with a flash. So let's see how this one pops on out. Just calling the way out there. Molly to hand though. This calls other players into question now. Stanley does. Donji. 
He's going to be burned alive. Leaf boosted up into the window. Does look promising. Captain Grant upgrades the AWP. Not known to be an AWP. Nice shots from Zeppa as well. Chaos advancing into the A site. Clean from Azza. Now with the bomb down. Still going to try and get a little bit of ground towards CT. Try and post up a little bit of a better post plant. Doubled up with Zeppa down there. And honestly, on the CT side, they, they made a good sound of it. Azza getting two towards middle then. Kind of kept it looking good. But the guns are recovered. It's all theirs. This is... You know, this is done for. Nice little answer back. What a nice little pistol then coming out from Chaos. A little bit unique. I like the amount of attention they drew in towards Gratisfaction. I'm surprised they're able to get that done on a low buy like that. There wasn't even really anything in play here. So the Thieves struggles from start. A tilt round maybe early. You have to get at this point of the game, right? The way that Counter-Strike is trending. Losing rounds like that. We might be able to scavenge that AWP. That'd be a big save for Azza there. Yeah, losing those rounds now, they, they've become second nature, right? You shouldn't really be too upset, but I suppose it's more in the manner in which you do so. You are going to lose those rounds every game, it feels like. With that saved AWP in play, maybe the Thieves are able to course correct here and grab one back of their own, as it was the MVP of the round, but uh, <laughs> didn't pick that one up. You can see there, three kills to his name. Well, they're setting up some top mid smokes here. It's going to be three of them. So this might be a connector short and window smoke in play for mid control. You can see them landing on in. Grat's going to try and get in front of them. Up and oh, over he goes. Perfect counter, but the flash is there and he actually manages to get away. Jacob will finish what Grat's bullet did start. Does look like a B lean and the Azza, perfect reaction. A smoke and a nade will extinguish the molly and lock them out. A 15 second wall has been established now towards the apartments. I've seen this from 100 Thieves. They felt so run over on Nuke. Obviously, they looked super different on Inferno, but coming to this, they've quelled that aggression, that PC sort of look that it looked like Chaos want to go for, but still slightly leaning towards his B side. Liaz is going to have to leave this little perch. Can he take one with him? No. 20 HP. He does stay alive. That was a weird sound, but look at John G. Yeah, that's lovely. He's usually the new bench to self-boost into the window. Don't need a partner for that one now. Grat, however. One more. Has managed to find himself one, and yeah, look at this. Grass Faction's gonna come straight back and find a second. Magnificent. Just Leaf and Vanity then left in the apartments. They haven't even got out. Liaz has been staring at this, waiting for his chance, and just using the elevation, the lip, to find that clean headshot. And he's playing it so clean. Love that. He's got 28 HP, doesn't want to lose his weapon, and all of that investment, the armor, the kit. Oh, Chase is on. He's heard him running away, so he's duped the camera. Yeah, Vanity can hold on to this. He will do well, but you can see the hunt. Liaz is pushing. He's the lowest on HP, so he needs to just play to contain. There is one in the window, Granus Faction, making sure he can't scarper in the tunnels. But yeah, Vanity should get away with this one. I would say going for the hunt with 100 Thieves money in this situation, it doesn't make too much sense. Let him hold on to that AK-47. Uh, we know that they had the eco victory in the pre... What? what? I'm surprised he's even trying for that. So... The last few seconds left on the clock. Vanity will be harassed, but everybody's thinking better of this. It's just a standoff. The AWP will get dropped. This is craziness there from Grat. They weren't able to recover it, and the money situation is worse for the Thieves than what you would say on the Chaos side of things. But did Vanity go down after the time there? I think he was just shy. I think his money's pretty low. If I'm we'll get a like check quarter, very, yeah. very sec. But yeah, okay. So he had... Okay, only spent I'm not 700 bucks. There you go. Yeah. So he's he's bought utility and someone's dropped him a deagle. So you're bang on to there, Chatty B. It's a good find. Early util distributed towards middle will be extinguished to enable the eight line to be held. John G and Leaf starting a campaign to take that mid control through the underpass. Grass faction steps heard. They know this morning towards the window. They can boost for this. So many plays in towards connector though. It's not just Grass faction here, but John G's kind of got ahead of this. Expecting maybe Jacob, but they don't expect JKS. He's the additional factor. So the connector stays under CT side control, but maybe Steel has something to try and try and back him. Oh, what? Big, big shot from JKS, but it is a back and forth affair. It is, and Zappa clean into the head of Liaz. Puts us into a one versus two. Bombs on its way. Vanity might have to be the hero of this one, and that loss of his weapon after time could have ramifications. No armor on this. This Molotov, or rather incendiary, will flush out the T. Burning. Burning. Will get away just in time. Flash enables his cross, but they're so damn low. This is so attainable for Azza. There's a smoke, too. Time ticking. Smoke in. Here we go. 
Sits it so far still on it. Zephyr, he's got it. He's only got a dummy. Didn't really play that out. I thought Azamayev did did a little more, but I guess we know how low HP they are. He is only working what he can, and that smoke just seemed all too tantalizing. But this mid play was quite the back and forth affair. Oh, Jacob not happy with that one right there. Jonji uh, over on Nuke and now here in Mirage is so, showing me some impressive signs. I like how ride or die he goes on a lot of these entry fragging escapades. And now it will be 100 Thieves on a force by situation. Azza with the M4, Jacob is going to have an MP9 and then there's just pistols scattered across for the remaining members. Things are starting to heat up here for Chaos as they're able to stabilize with the score at four to two. Standard default procedure, smoke towards top mid, two through the underpass, two top mid and one over babysitting the A site. Up they go. Jacob forced off. This was where he had his frustrations in the past. God, this is scary, isn't it? It's just a pin could drop here. I like the boost. Leaf will be able to control the rotate if they can cause a kerfuffle elsewhere. It's not necessarily a guarantee, though. Zeppa will have this. Lovely. Jacob trying to react, but it cost him his life as well. Good advantage for Chaos. They need to twist this knife, though. Otherwise, Azza might start clawing things back, and so can JKS. Bullets connect. Vanity, who manages to keep the advantage in his team's favor for now. Just Azza again, and looks like Chaos is starting to really close that gap. A seems to be where they're finding their success. Three of them are low here, but harassed by utility, still will take Azar out of the equation. And now it has to be the save round coming in for the Thieves here. That means Chaos should be tying this one up four to four. And they've even had an opportunity now to start building a little bit of a bank. Leaf, he may be dropped a gun or he can reinvest, but four plus K, the majority of the members on that Chaos side of things starting to look good. And it's just a very basic approach here. You know, just the window smoke, walking up through connector, nothing too flurried, nothing too fast. And the frustration now could be starting to build. This looks like it's the B-set piece. We can see the smokes over towards the pillars on the B-bomb site on the radar. And while the thieves out mid-window, Zeppa might have a field day. One. See if we can clear up. Nice if John G got a bit of it, obviously. A little bit more money in case they needed more. But uh, all of them down there. Zero armor. Clean as you're ever going to get. It's not bad. Should mop this up now. Not too oh, yeah. many worries. Oh, 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 the silencer. <laughs> JKS trying to take it off in the middle of a fight right there. But once again, look at the money situation for the Thieves going into this. It's probably about 4.5 across the board for the majority of the members, and that's not enough to have a full buy, as I like to call it. So when you go into a round like this on the CT side, you have two options. You play quite passive on the bomb sites with crossfires, hoping that the Ts can run on into you, or... You take the fight, you do something more aggressive, you go for more of a mid control, maybe you're pushing close up a ramp, you're doing a deeper smoke in B apps, trying to take one part of the map away from them. And it looks like it is the mid control. We can see the deep smoke through the sky on the radar. That's gonna land, Molotov to support now that the mouth is wider and Liaz pushing on up with the Famous. They've done the job they needed to, they have mid control, but this certainly gets them the first 15, 20 seconds of mid and eventually they will have to fall on back. Absolutely. Out they go. Information is, well, there's nothing there, and that's information all the same. Now we're going to be seeing the utility deployed towards B. John G, the first one out, makes sense with a Mac 10. Could get overrun here, but nice handling oh. so far. Liaz and Vanity exchanging blows. Look at these players so close by, though. Azra and Liaz can do so much work, and that bomb's still not out from the apartments. Leaf's a bit of a nuisance here, but he's got to make something of it. Otherwise, the time's just going to continue to dwindle away as Vanity's trying to leverage something, but they're so paranoid of mid and I don't blame him, but it's short this time. Zephyr's up there, that's one, that's Leaf chiming in on the second towards Liaz, and that looks like it's go time on the site. Certainly, Jacob's ahead of the smoke though, maybe unpredictable here for Leaf. Oh. But what a reaction, we knew he had that laser beam and it's again utilized into finding the fifth. Oof, the key for that right there is Chaos not rushing a situation which very easily could be fluffed, right? You can think about how much control they have. Vanity gets that kill from the apartment's position and you think, okay, let's get into the bomb site now. Let's try and get this down. Let's secure the site. When you see the CTs coming up from Cat, they're dropping their own smokes. They're being gremlins around it. You may as well wait. There was so much time left on the clock and I think they did a fantastic job of just locking down the areas they had, staying poised and letting the flank come in from Zeppa. That was key. Here, Chaos will now be ticking on up to five rounds, having four players survive once more. That bank that I was talking about continues to build, and the Thieves are on the other side of it. 
We saw in the uh, segment we did after Inferno just how brutal the mistress of the CT-sided economy can be. And now the shoe's on the other foot. The thieves are starting to feel what that, well, feels like. I didn't know where else to go with that. No, but I liked yeah. it. It feels what it feels like. Yeah. yeah. Right in the feelies. How's it not feeling much right now? It's actually, yeah, it's, it's a nice change. We haven't seen the uh, the face palms of yesterday, yesterday's games or the one before. JKS, same face as when he lifted the trophy. As when he was born. <laughs> and same face as when he was born. Yeah. But seriously, where's Chet? It, I don't ever see him on the cams. He's not. He he's got to be in there somewhere, surely. No, no, no. He doesn't live in the house. He's got his own kind of like, it's a statistics database, essentially. You know, ah. like all of those... Um, mm kind of old analog phone calls that were connected with like cables. All the wires. Yeah, it's got like that, but it's like smoke lineups and it's um, strategies, splits, crumpled pieces of paper. Abacuses? Abacus for sure. He's got to get Abakai. Abakai. Yeah. Jonji's feeling brave. He does strafe straight down to clear the connector. There's a full stack from the CTs there. The thieves have put four of their eggs into this basket and Steel's about to turn the corner into at least one of them. Ooh. That's the sound cue. This is horrible. Should be okay. He may not get one, but his teammates should get more. Nice spray control from John G, but it could cut spirally. JKS is there as well. They've walked straight into the stack. And the call's oh, paid off. Uh. Vanity nearly flubbed it. Now looking to retreat. No one's got eyes on it. And so now they have a safe plan, but it will be a 4v2. And it's an AWP and an AK. Leaf has to show us what he's made of, show us what he's capable of. Bomb now down. Thank you, Vanity. Leaf, however, seems a little unprepared for that, and Diaz does connect the warning shot down to 47. Oh, this is this is a dangerous position to be in. You've got rifles galore now on the seat. He's limited armor, but still plenty there. Leaf has to do oh. something incredible to save this now. Grabs faction tries to make the play, but Leaf, with just three HP, is doing everything he can. And Azza has no. just been outplayed. Leaf just absolutely run rings around him. Oh, how did he say so poised? I thought when Liaz hit that deagle shot to pepper him up a little bit, pushing closer towards checkers, that would be enough to go back to the bomb site, maybe fall back. I don't know, but no, he stays forward, cops a grenade, has the poise to get those two, doesn't panic, takes down Grat, and at that point it just becomes a 1v1. The HP not even a factor at that point. So you can see here, Vanity, he's loving that one. The neighbors, they might be coming over, knocking on the door and seeing what the bloody hell's happening. Yeah, that's huge from Leaf, and Vanity's ran with that momentum straight into the next round. Jacob, right at the start, just as he got to his sight, he's taken from it by an AWP bullet. JKS, he likes to do this, trying to equal that disadvantage with an aggressive maneuver, but nobody's home. And so a 2-2 split is established for our CTs. Rather self-explanatory. Grat. Eyes on that mid-cross. And the early action on that ramp from the AWP is enough to keep players there. I say that. It does seem like JKS realizes he needs more info than he currently has. He's pushed Palace. And now some utility being deployed in middle. And the absence of any sort of resistance is indicative of the CTs staying static on the sites. Certainly feel that lack. As the T's start to exploit it, trying to worm their way in, just infusing with middle, but the CTs are still posted up. Bear in mind, Gratis Faction has pulled himself away towards the back of CT, around the back of mid, in case any of those T's try and worm their way around towards that exact hole in the wall, as they did before. So not a, necessarily a bad choice to be made. And the T's are kind of pausing in this, it feels like. They're taking their time, see if they can maybe work something out with it. But it does look like this eventual consideration towards B, where you're having Lias. And as are still posted up, very patient, of course. As you look at the utility they've got left, a couple of mollies, and they can be pretty imperative. 20 seconds, that's going to dwindle that time down. They've got to make their minds up. Going A, it's a very quick pivot. It will fall to JKS. We talked about his palace push, and they're cognizant of it. The nice Molotov will stop him from being an issue. I wonder if the sound cue was heard. They were far away. In fact, yeah, no chance they'll have heard that. So JKS remains unknown, and a 4v4 for the post plan. I love the quickness to that then. Be five. I correct myself. John G. Operating a little less, and Steel has managed to extend just a little bit. One man advantage for Chaos, but with that bomb ticking, Azza tries to find a way in. Icing with death, they're off to save. And Liaz does duck his head into cover just in time. Oof. This is getting rough now. Seven rounds will be posted on the board here for Chaos. These two saved rifles are important, but the chase is on. Leaf and Zeppa, they don't want them to hold on to this. JKS, he'll definitely get to keep his rifle, but will Liaz be so lucky? Well, there's my answer. 
Even a love tap there from Leaf. Just saying, good job, buddy. Or pat on the back. Yeah, it's not the type of pats that I'd be looking for. Each to their own. If you're going to stab me, stab me in the front. Damn, you're so hardcore. Isn't that like a Bring Me the Horizon yeah. song? True friends. <laughs> stab, stab you in the front. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I really like Bring Me the Horizon, but Same. that lyric now that I've <laughs> said it out loud <laughs> with other people listening. All right. Oh. Low buy scenario once more. Jacob, favorite Mag 7. Don't think we've seen him get a kill with it yet. JKS, save M4. Well, down to 31 HP to start the round, so I'm sure he's extremely happy with that. It just feels like a game of extremes to me. I feel like we've seen the best of what Chaos looks like on the T side. We saw the belting Inferno. And it feels like we kind of rolled it back to what we saw on Nuke T side almost. Yeah. I mean, I certainly wouldn't be too surprised considering the results Chaos have been posting recently. Three maps to a series and all that. Working with very little into this one and already losing Liaz, who's been consistently finding them one in their successes. Still, again, a bit of a standoff with Jacob. And this is where the Mag 7 really doesn't feel like too much of a downgrade up against the AK. It's going to be reaction times from Jacob. Steel to adjust. He'll have to pre-aim that close box. And that's the window for Jacob. Perfect. Makes the Mag 7. Makes the upgrade. Zeppa in a very prime position. He has to find multiple frags here to stop the rotate grat flying through the window. Does get the call. Zeppa to tuck in on the site. Oh, Not bad. Ooh, that, that was a little bit of additional bullets there to the body. It felt like just really ensuring. No, his mouse got stuck. Lauren. Oh, it's the mouse. We like okay. BM here, Lauren. I'm a huge fan. Uh, we, I'm a huge fan. Teabagging is fun. Yeah. Um, spamming the bodies, spraying the bodies, mm. stabbing the bodies, picking up multiple weapons before defusing the bomb and unloading all of the ammo into the bodies. We haven't done a Fnatic game with Lauren yet. She hasn't seen that JW's... Oh. Is he back? Uh, well, JW's legitimately still stabbing people regardless of what's on the line slash what mm. who their opponent is. Yeah, we, we did an interview with them, Lauren, and we asked, and uh, JW said, we're entertainers. So uh, he's a man after my own heart. You do love to see it. You do love to see it. No, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to see a bit of it. Why not? You've taken it to a third map. You did just get your absolute head kicked in on map two. How did Zappa get there? There's I don't know. Not oh, supposed still's to up oh, there too. What the hell, guys? That's a cool new spot. Didn't know you could strafe up there. So just quickly taking a little bit of stock right now, JKS and Jacob are normally, and Jacob more so, uh, at least this year, has been the highest rated player for the Thieves on Mirage. Their scores, I think it's like two to six in terms of two wins, six losses. And Mirage, like I said, used to be one of their best maps. So this year it hasn't been great. Not sure if they're going to be able to retool right here as we're seeing it, but they need some rounds on the board. And Jonji straight down again, entry Ooh. fragging with the help of Zeta, uh, Zeppa. Not Zeta. That's someone else. Xena, the warrior princess. Oh, catches a glimpse of the shiny dome. Good damage just to warn Grat off the peak. Has has taken damage elsewhere as well. They're in good positions here for Chaos. They can take this mid control oh. and, oh, Jonji's going to kick himself after that one. One bullet would have been enough. It steals. It will, well, steal it away into the CT side is JKS. He will have to be the turret he's known to be in order to... Forced them off, but that's if he has any teammates left. Now a nade down his throat. He's got 45 to work with, but the bomb plant's safe. And likely going to be seeing that swing for Vanity on Palace. This one's all done. Looks like nine on the T side. Chaos have been able to shake it off. That Inferno is a distant memory in their minds. I, maybe, maybe I was a little too harsh. I mean, looking at Chaos's Mirage against any what, top 30 team was liquid. They lost it. They, they've been having... Decent results. See if Grand Faction can get uh, so these guns. Obviously, the economy for the nope. cities is in a very different spot than the T's, and no, he cannot. But yeah, as I said, not having brilliant results. Pretty decent against lower tier NA teams, but you know, once you get the Gen G's in there, your Liquids in there, anyone, anyone, your MIBRs in there, I guess at, at one point, it dwindles away from them. 
It's not a terrible map, but it's certainly not in the realm of the others. Yeah. Well, one of the keys here, at least to this first half, that I'm seeing a lot of success in is the way that Zeppa is able to cut off the rotations, right? He always seems like he's finding himself in a position to make sure when they are hitting a bomb site, he's the stopping factor. It's like, you need to help your teammates. We're on that bomb site, but you have to get through me first. And they're not able to do that. And then when the chips are down and it stalls on out, we've seen him come in with some absolutely phenomenal flanks. One comes to mind on that B bomb site round much earlier in the piece. But now we've just gone back to more of the same. So having two players walk this slowly, sauntering through underpass. Jacob will find one this time round, and it's important he starts to step on up. Now we're talking. Vanity's taking another into middle, finds himself his double digits. More importantly, they're closing in on max money. That's how dominant Chaos have been in these last few rounds. Grass Faction will find Steel advancing out of ramp. Didn't necessarily need to be leaving ramp so soon. His teammates were doing plenty of good stuff elsewhere. His presence alone could have contained, but he wanted the frag, wanted the info, can't fault him. It's still absolutely winnable for both. And I think patience will prevail for Liaz here. If any further movements will cost him his life. He is anticipating Leaf. Don't forget the sound cue was just made. He's coming. He's gonna, you know he's going to go for it. It's just a matter of time. I don't know. What else does he do? Let's have a look. Let's have a consider. Because we've got Gratisfaction on ramp. His position's already been somewhat noted, though. We know he's around. Liaz is kind of, I guess, the unknown quantity now. Certainly noted, but doesn't capitalize on Vanity, and this opens it up for Leaf, and suddenly B is wide open. Yeah, they can charge straight in. Gratisfaction. We'll start his rotate. Oh, God. Boom, and now we've got a problem. I'm Yeah, 13 seconds, and that Molotov may very well win the game. Look at Leaf's health. He oh. can get it. He can. Perfect. Thank God he had the smoke. And so the clutch continues, and just in the nick of time, that bomb is planted. He has a great idea as to where Leaf is going and now spotted. This should be gratis factions. He can approach silently. He could even approach from above. But he can swing around, pre-aim it, and just shoot the toes off. Lovely jubbly. That is five for the 100 Thieves. And that's off the back of Gratisfaction's triple. Very important to see him at the top of the scoreboard, as Chad outlined in that pregame. Yeah, it's just not with the AWP, though, is it? Uh, he's been getting it done with the rifle in this one. And now as we move forward into the last round of the first half here, I still feel like Chaos are in control. You know, that leaf clutch that we saw, it was a one on four on that B bomb site from the checkers position. And look at the streak of rounds here. That's a pistol round and conversion against the force. They picked up a timeout round there on the fifth. And here, all the way down at round number 14, that is the next time that the thieves strike on in. They need to be closing this one out strong. So I feel like round number 15 is almost a must. Get to see Gratisfaction with the orb. So let's hope he gets something to do with it. We've, uh, as I said, the rifles look good. But that's not the look I'm here for. And this is the opportunity. Uh, oh, walking up ramp in the hands of Vanity as well. Steel also on the other side. And well, I guess we don't get to see it. Vanity instantaneously takes him down. And that's a huge scalp to be claimed, considering how relevant he's been in those last couple of rounds. Certainly, has up and Zeppa. Ooh, it's a bit of a standoff here. The goal is good. Wild spray as a wins the duel. They're going to be hitting an open. unopen A site. I mean, I don't really know if this was intentional by design. I mean, they'll push one up top mid, but JKS surely not going to go for the full round the world towards T spawn. Bomb down thanks to Vanity. Leaf responsible for CT, and that flash was perfect. Lee has, has given his teammate a freebie. Oh, I'm still looking at John G here, bear in mind. He's the last piece of the puzzle that's coming around. He went around the world. He went all the way. When do they consider... Oh! oh. oh. Okay, from zero to hero, it's back on, but Liaz, timing is of the essence. Smoke in, he now has the choice to be made. He doesn't fool it, he fakes it. John G reveals position, sprays in, dips back in, he's seen it's a fake. He knows what's going on, Molly comes in, well handled by Liaz. Plenty of pressure, but he's on it. Diffuse comes in, well, well played. I wonder, you know, that Diffuse is close enough where, and here comes hindsight 2020, he could have just taken a couple of ticks, could have been enough. But that's hindsight, and this is the half. We'll be our beat.
Life is fun when you're a liar Pay winners match for yourself one Cologne, North America. We're into the third and final map, the final half. Before this match, we were averaging 28 rounds per map at ESL one Cologne. So. Lots of round, lots of overtimes is basically <laughs> right. the point of that one right there. But look. Thanks for that. The winner of this does go straight through to the playoffs for the North American side of things. So a lot on the line right here. Tomorrow night we will have EG and Liquid battling for the same. And the utility is coming over towards the A bomb site. Two towards CT spawn. Leaf will be there with Zapper. It's the two heavy hitters over towards A right now. And the rotation from Chaos is coming on in from that B site. It's quick a plant. retake. <laughs> Very quick plant from Grat. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's going to be retake time. It, it looked like that was a possibility. The double stack towards CT already kind of signifying there was a chance for it. And, well, that's a start. That's a start and a half. The double stack, though, the little stack out towards jungle is quite curious, but they've got to get going soon. Yeah, and don't forget to win awesome gaming gear as well. You've got to do that as well as win the Counter-Strike match. Into the site, John G, lucky to be alive. Oh, whiff, he whiff, hits whiff. Turn. Yeah, exchanging whiffs. And Chaos will find themselves the double digits. I mean, this is wonderful for them. That's exactly what the Doctor ordered. And just getting that diffused through. Full 10 second one. I didn't see a kit. It was Steel that had it equipped. Just to kind of summarize this group as a whole, Genji lost 100 Thieves in the opening. Furia lost to Chaos. That means we're going to be losing either Furia or Genji in their match. I assume that one's going to be going down tomorrow. And then we could be losing either Furia, Genji, or 100 Thieves later on in the week. So Chaos, if they're able to steal this one here today, that's the most unlikely name other than Triumph from the yes. North American side of things to be making a playoff run here. And right now, they're only six rounds away. Yeah, it is an incredible storyline. JKS. Out of all the players, you want him to stay healthy because he's such a high skill, skill ceiling. You can hope that he goes to if you need it, but 56 HP is what it is. But it looks like a turn of intentions from the T's heading right back round towards Look at this mid. Yeah, exactly. Now, looking on the other side, it's all mid. I guess you have occasionally Vanity having a little peak, but they're going to be I'm not sure in what sort of state by the time this hit comes through, but the timing is probably actually wonderful thinking about it. Yeah, the problem for Chaos here is they've used a lot of utility to get that mid-control back. They need to hit shots and then hit them now. Leaf does have the position to do so. He can go back and forth, stay in dynamic, and it is 
It's a slaughter. Oh. Four quick kills Ooh. with the MP9. Not too shabby. Up against the AK-47s, he makes it look like it's an eco bash. 11 for Chaos. And they're just closing in on this unlikely victory against a stacked adversary. It started over on Nuke. And they are looking to finish here on Mirage in style. That's going to be the 12th almost guaranteed for them with the victory there. Oh, JKS and Jacob, look, seven kills apiece. They're at the bottom of the scoreboard right now for the Thieves. And you heard me earlier say that they're normally the two heavier hitters. They're meant to be the star players of this team and they need to come online and come online now because maybe another farming session here as Vanity will push, grabs one, trade it out, steal. They'll finish him off. And, well, I suppose the rest of the dominoes of the Thieves should be following... Not too far after. Yeah, I love that they double stacked that. Rare to see the double stacked aggression. Grats hiding in the smoke, and this could be <gasps> perfect. He does get the dink. Unfortunately, a full helmet. Zeppa came prepared. <laughs> and yeah, Leas, I guess he's got himself a nice little SMG. But uh, they need a little bit more than that at this point. They need actually a, a lot more than that. Steel, a little bit of a double dip towards middle, kind of feeling it out. And right to be feeling as such, calmly deals with Leas. Bomb is at the top of mid with JKS, but it hasn't been the tear for him. He hasn't been the danger man you'd like to see yet. A little bit of work towards Zeppa would have been nice, but seems like uh, for once we might be getting Chaos really pushing this quite cleanly too. This is very, very nice. I'm looking at the 100 seats. I want some more. I'd love to see maybe a timeout if they have one. Call it in, have a chat about something. So I, I don't want it to be ripped away from them here. I mean, I mean yes, but uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. This was a 9 6 half, and they won the pistol and converted into an another lovely eco. This next round is when we can start yeah. getting concerned. You say teams. to not get ahead of yourselves, but how many times do we talk about mental with 100 Thieves? That's true. They and might be they in came the, off bin, the back that of Leaf 1v4. Right, they come off the back of a belting game. Inferno smashed it straight through. Right, that's how we should be playing. Everything we come into this. Away. What's happened? Yeah, and now the problem is whatever they call on this first gun round, it, it's almost the game, right? If they're unable to get something done, if they're unable to even do any damage to the CT side of economy, which is now with those SMG kills starting to look pretty. JKS doing his best to go for the plant here and get shot in the backside from Jonji and there's some extra bullets. Definitely extra bullets. The mouse is still stuck. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> he kept sticking and then unsticking and then sticking. That's the mouse problem I was telling you about. You know, yeah. the 360 oh. issue, his is the, the, the mouse one gets stuck on down. But this round, seriously, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, everybody at home, a lot rides on this for the Thieves. If you want to see them battle in here to grab the first spot in the playoffs for the North American side of things, Orp in Gratisfaction's hands. He's going to have some Kevlar behind it, but no utility. And, uh, well, stress. I think that's on the menu here. I imagine the juxtaposition between the two teams' comms right now is, uh, is almost hilarious. Jokes and a whole lot of fun for Chaos as they are riding this momentum through our third map here. And you're right, for a playoff spot, Chaos Esports Club could be stealing it away and Vanity stolen Liaz straight out of the server. That was way over by B as well. That's, that's a mile away from this, but look at the T's creeping their way up middle. And it's going to be on the other side, just Leaf here. And Leaf's kind of gone through everything he had, so he's going to need some help. But the bomb is all the way back by the top of mid. So this Leaf. could be another problem. As has found Vanity, and they're actually getting the kills, which is very fortunate because that could have been a problem. But this is the big gun round, right? This was the one that could set them back on recovery. But Jonji and Steel still on the case, but it feels like a matter of time. Yeah, I mean, still, he could catch Grat from behind here. It does look like it's a possibility because Grat's paused to clear his short. He hears the steps. If he plans for triple, we are on to a winner here, but yeah, around the corner. Good damage. He can wallbang it. Oh. It's really close, and the dunk could it's come good. in. It looks really good, but overextended into JKS and no sweat. That's seven. Thieves needed that. Their hopes of that playoff spot, at least tonight, were riding on it. So they're back into... A competitive territory. It does look like Liaz is going to have to make a compromise. Ah, it looks like his teammates have got him covered. So he can just equip himself to the nines. This is where the Vanity Frag came in, just holding that slither gap. And Liaz slithered his way straight into it. 12-7 the score. Let's get back into the fray. JKS is going to be lining upstairs. Smoke. Does look like we're going to be seeing the AXEC coming in from our Thieves companions. And the first question will be, Leaf's been playing it solo. Now, they've identified that. Jacob killed him the last round. Who's going to be the first to back him up? Looks like Zeppa. Leaf does all the warning siren. It's a great nade towards Sandwich. Here comes the rest, though. Leaving CT open as well. They're, they're working it. They're making them have it to sweat about this. Jacob right through the smoke. Sees the tracers, takes the head. John G's out of it. And, the, and well, there is still a lot of work to be done, but look at gap. the HP. Azza, Liaz, Alo, and there is a touch of a gap. Leaf, does he see it? He's, he's seen enough. He's found Liaz, and this is a dangerous scenario. 
It's a huge frag to find. Liaz was responsible for CT. Suddenly, Jacob's going to have to cover two angles at the same time. Nate in his hands, but Zephyr trades. Down to just Azza and JKS. JKS now patrolling. Doesn't want to give them the fight too early. Time's on their side. Time is really on their side. Someone's got to get on that bomb, but Zeppa, he keeps him safe. He keeps him secure. Where is it? It's Leaf on it. He has the kit and he has the time. Chaos, what a fantastic round. It looked like they'd been caught out, Chad. It looked like that A take was going to work wonders. Oof, we've got to put that all down to Leaf, right? Actually seeing the toes or the barrel or something just under the cusp of that smoke and having the bravery to go for that kill because he was pushing into a Molotov to make that frag, but that alleviated so much pressure for the CTs. It meant they didn't have to focus about warring, clearing the site as the smoke was fading and turning their attention to the remaining players on the A ramp. Well, Azza was already low. JKS was stuck at Tetris. It's never a box that anybody wants to be finding themselves on especially in that retake scenario. And now we really start to get into the danger zone. The plant coming on through, that will allow a buy, but it's not going to be a buy with all the goodies. And AWP shouldn't be on the cards. Tech nines or Galils, if they want to be able to get rifles in everybody's hands, could have a chance to make a few emissions here with some lighter pistols, maybe some SMGs. It really just depends on the call. What I'm a pet and as are the brain trust are thinking, it's going to be a half buy. So they're... Not giving away round number 14 to Chaos here, but it's not their full investment, their full bank balance being spent. They're saving for a rainy day. Lots of all-ins from the Thieves these last few rounds. Ambitious from Steel. He might go for it again if he gets the right sound cues. The nades are flying through and Vanity very quick to draw. He needs more. And oh, perfect timing. Looks like Steel's managed to keep things at least competitive. Jacob, however, upon bench. If Jonji's not expecting this, he isn't. Oh, that's perfect from the Norwegian. A double kill already. He's made this round winnable for the 100 Thieves squad. Him and Graz faction up against it. Zeppa's still hitting headshots. Oh. The spray. It's Jacob. Oh. Phenomenal work. Four kills in the round at a disadvantage from the very get-go. And he keeps oh, 100 Thieves in it. Really, really needed round right there. And you can see exactly what that has done to Chaos's bank balance on the other side of things. Now... They're actually opting to go for a force of their own. I don't think that's enough to let the Thieves get completely back into the game. And with Jacob being the only player staying alive in this scenario right here, I can understand the call from Steel and Co. to go for such an investment. But you can see that could be enough to fire them up. That was a low buy. That was a half purchase here. What do the CTs have? Well, the orbs are a good start. Eagles, CZs, bit of armor, of course, so it's not terrible it's not dire straits but it's certainly not what you're what you're fancying no no doubt about that he had the right lineup for jacob it looks like it might land right on the man's shoulders get better than that finish it off with a deagle shot go on steal not today jacob steals it back smoke for the connector 70 seconds loads of time a bit of ct aggression it's nice to see a touch of this because 100 thieves have been so all in Maybe this could be a sign of something to do a bit earlier into the next few rounds. But Leaf will be punished for his aggression. And 100 Thieves, it should just be a formality at this point. The AWP on Vanity is a hot prospect to preserve. And as I say that, he fills the feed alongside Zeppa. Close quarters. Yeah, that rifle on ramp suddenly comes very viable. And John G's got a player isolated. Does go down, but they know where they're at. And Zeppa is just going to pounce on it. Love that aggression. Absolutely. Now, Bond will be planted. There's no doubt about that. The interesting spread. Grat trying to hold the rotate from A. Is he going to hear the steps behind him? Zeppa's making no secret. Yeah, yeah, he can hear it. This is perfect. Grat will hit this shot. And now, all of a sudden, it's on to Vanity for the save. That shot wins them the round. Nine for the 100 Thieves as this bomb will slowly tick on down. Vanity responsible for saving that orb as he brought it in as the only real pro exciting prospect. I do like the risk, right? And, and I want to kind of talk through the logic there because if you play safe and then the scoreline gets tied up at 13-13, there's no room for risks that late in the game. What starts to happen when you get to that juncture is the team will be expecting risks because you're desperate. If you go for them a little bit earlier, you're still catching them while they're finding their feet. At that point, you could potentially destabilize the Thieves, snatch away a big round, put 14 on the board and that's only two more needed and their money could be in a lot of strife but it hasn't folded out that way Vanity will still have the AWP and he has 18 kills to his name so he's having a decent game if he can find some impact here they're able to scavenge an AK-47 get a gun to work with they might be able to snowball a bit more but 
That's a massive if. A lot rides on the shoulders here. And what you normally want to do in these situations, either have your pistol players, the guys with the USPs, baiting or trying to set up a frag for the AWPer. Oh, three HEs in play here. I wonder where they're going to save those for. Zephyr, Steel, and Leaf will be holding onto them. It's not going to be subtle, though, is it? So far, smokes, mollies, it's all being put down. Going through the motions here, and I quite like it. Clear out as you go. Get rid of those corners that can house those CZs, P250s, and Deagles. Yep, makes a lot of sense. Now with Bomb fully into the site, as is the entire multinational roster. DS gets himself $600. He'll be taking that with a smile on his face. They need a chase. What I'd be setting up right now is a net. Leave one player with the bomb. You know Vanity's over towards short with the AWP. Hold up a second. They're just happy to stand and fight. He has two kills. There's no way that Chaos go for this, but any damage they can do by taking away guns, that's very, very valuable. And now that two have dropped when the bomb wasn't even half ticked, Thieves might think better of going for a chase. And there's still a lot more rounds needed to be well, put on there, Tally, to catch on up. Still seeing if he can grab anybody while they're trying to get away from the bomb. JKS. I think he wants to fight that, but a good idea to dip away. And he's still going to go down with the C4, so the AWP has to be picked on up nice. by Liaz. Steals taps with the P250 were not in vain, it turns out. Round 24 then. Chaos, they've been holding on this as 13 for a while now. I feel like I haven't seen that shift in some time. That's three consecutive T rounds. So let's keep our eyes and fingers on the pulse. When orgs come out for Jonji. It's not times. It, yeah, it's, it's not terrible. It hasn't been as nerfed as badly as the Krieg. It has value, definitely so. He smokes fast. They tend quick. to just commit to this. And Sendry will not stop them. Jacob just got to put it out. And flying through. Vanity's so close. He's got an orb. He shouldn't do anything and he can't. Overwhelm. Steel will burn one, but he needs to do way more than that. The Molotov's not enough. His M4 has to get a little wet. 3v3. John G does bring the orc to play. And that hip fire is significantly stronger. That's a chance onto JKS. He was exposed. Eyes towards the kitchen. We got ourselves a 2v2 here. It's oh, barely oh. begun. Jonji doubles up. A no scope. Graz Faction can finish it. And he does. Spectacular from the New Zealander. Chaos on the B site. Chaos fall on the B site. Now we got a game. All righty. It's taken a while. This one was simmering. Now we're starting to reach the boiling point as Chaos will have to go down to just another pistol upgrade here. No scope. Straight into the torso there and a quick shot onto Zeppa. That one could have gone very, very wrong as Gratis Faction with 20 frags to the name. Old boy's loving it here, isn't he? And Azur as well. Now this is what we like to see. Getting fired up. We need the emotion. There's a lot on the line. As Zeus will be in Leaf's hands. Lauren, you might get to hear Alex and I squeal tonight after all. And you might hear the Zeus sound too. Yeah. I'm drastically uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, still with the AWP. And we have an SMG with Jonji. Oof. Yeah, I want to see that Zeus in play. Maybe maybe I will be delighted and thrilled. Oh, that's Steel like Steel is. Yeah, he's doing the vanity job and it's working. In fact, he's going to be moving around now. He's shown that presence. And they're just going to send vanity on the hunt knowing he's dinked. And <sighs> yeah, Liaz expected that. Great play from him. Positioned himself just in that headshot, very hard to react to just the tip. And now in towards middle with four. They're going to be trying to take this B access point. Steel two legs. Two leg shots. That's Aww. so unfortunate. Imagine, though, if those tags get converted by a John GMP9 or a Leaf USP. There's one. Chaos. They always seem to find something to grab hold of, even when it doesn't look like there is anything. John G, unfortunately, around the corner before his teammate Leaf was ready. Liaz does find him. Now, they are so tagged up, but with just the Desert Eagle. Oh, and that's so unfortunate. He hits the bullet. It's just through the wood. And so Liaz lives to fight another day. This is just unreal. Like, the two orb tags, oh, I'll, I'll take them. I'm like, all right, fair enough. It was like, I like the way the orb on the other side was on that little ledge in mid. You know, there's, there's a reason and a rhyme, but th the rest of it's been pretty brutal. But Nice little bit of, uh, in all the chaos, they're managing to keep three, get the bomb down. 
do do the job at hand. 12 to 13, though, scoreline is getting close. You're right, Chad. We, we have a game on our hands now, don't we? Yeah, it didn't feel like it for a lot of this because in that first half, the Thieves were all getting picked off one at a time. We felt like they were always in a three on five or a 4v5, a number disadvantage being run for a loop. We even saw them try to go for gamble stacks to different sides of the map and the chaos. They were just walking on into open bomb sites time and time again. But now that we get this one back underway, Steel going for that full investment with the ult won't have a lot. MP9 to his name. Vanity still with the AWP. Looks like more of a standard mid take this time round. God, the pressure's so quick as well. You're going to have to see them kind of be ready for this tempo coming back in. Jonji is so unaware. Braddish Faction is up for the fight this time. Going to take down oh. mid with a nice response right back. Jacob can't get away with the play he wanted towards Connector. So suddenly this mid control, it's still there, but it's missing that big piece. It is. And Leah's coming from underpass. He's going to be walking straight into Zephyr's crosshairs. They flash for aggression. Leah's can trade. It works out a whole lot differently than I had in my mind. But Jakey, yes, he's got the timing perfect. Leaf, oh, he's going to be checking Palace. But that's a lovely gift from Jakey, yes, letting him know I'm out. And I am here on the site. Bomb will be wrapping through T-Spawn. Looks like it's going to take about 15 seconds for him to be getting that plant in. JKS in the meantime looking to maintain some control of Connector. They're double peeking. Vanity hit the leg shot, but Steel can't finish. It's a great tap from JKS. Keeping it competitive at such a crucial juncture, but Vanity will finish. 2v1 then for Grat. And he has to get that bomb down. As soon as he touches it, though, Leaf will clear. He has to go hunting. I wonder how tight of a corner he'll sweep. He's going to go around a corner. He's he did it last the time. Barrel. He's going to see the barrel and leaf. Whoa, that could have gone wrong. Enough time for Grat to poise himself and to take the shot just a little shy. Chaos, find 14. Whew, all right. Boys, two rounds away from playoffs and only four for the Thieves. This has come down to the wire. Azza has a tech nine there and it looks like Leah's had enough How money. Close was he? There we go. Ooh, ooh, where's the bullet? Go. Oh, come on. It was actually just was so close. moving in accuracy. Yeah. That's the ADAD CSGO thing you were talking about yesterday, Chad. Yeah, you know, any movement with that AWP and that bullet's not going to land exactly where you want it to. This is an A play. They're going in before Perfect. the smokes. It's fun. It's Leaf. Fruity, and it's Leaf. It was good last time, not as good this time, but it could set up Zepa. No, Gratis Faction, what timing. He could ask for no better to take down Zepa, and suddenly Save. the site is theirs. Get out of there, CTs. Get out of there, Chaos. That was a brute force from the 100 Thieves. Well, it's really important right now for the Thieves to weigh up their options here. First of all, secure the site, but then decide if you want to go for this chase. If you can slowly start fanning out across the map and take away these rifles that are saved from chaos, you're potentially going to be able to net yourself round number 14, going up against hardly anything for the CTs. But if you let chaos hold on to these weapons right now, they're going to have another chance. They're going to be able to battle back and try and have a good stead for round number 15. I think this hunt is basically the game. If Jacob is able to come through here and take away one of the M4 or the AWP and Chaos can't pull off a miracle in the following, the Thieves might be snatching this one away at the final hurdle. Yeah, no successful hunt. Jacob with 5 HP probably deterred from taking a blind corner. But not a single player falling. That's going to do wonders for their late game bank balance. And quite the contrary, as you've highlighted, Chad, for Chaos. Down to 3.4. John G will be equipped with the M4 himself, so everyone's going to have what they needed. Steel, of course, preserving that MP9 enables him to drop the rifle for his teammate. Tops up on utility, as do the Ts. So they've thrown out a couple of different looks at them uh, in these closing stages of this final map. Double smokes in middle, and look at Vanity go. He wants to try and contest the cross. But Molotov will force him out of the angle, and they're already advancing Ooh, a good quick. pace too. This could be a fast A pincer. One palace, one ramp, three up mid. All they need is a way in. Vanity trying to stand and deliver there. That mid take is just so potent. You Again, this time Jacob does have the freedom to get up there. Doesn't lose out, so you get the additional man. Gratis faction right back around spawn. Probably going to get that bomb and then lean. Whichever way they feel best, maybe back towards middle with it, it seems, as they do hit the brake slightly. Yeah, that one-way smoke that Jacob was using in the site. Okay. He did not see Azza whatsoever. A blind shot through one and a half smokes as Jacob started to fade. Oh, dear. 4v5. A will be the finish. He's been there every time. It's likely going to be in the flight path. It's going to come down to the utility involved in it. JKS, does he have the Molotov? He does. 
Likely we'll see that deployed towards the underbalk on the pincer. 45, no rush. That's going to be the molly. Doesn't quite nail it. Leaf unchecked. Jacob just storms in. That's how passive, that's the punishment for the passive hold. They can walk up connector, no one had the info. Not over yet though, still long range with the MP9. That was perfect. Keeping it competitive, 25. And Zephyr needs more, he's gone down. It's down to Vanity, he started so strong. Can he really clutch it? Gratis Faction's only got 26 health. He's got another partner in crime in John G, looking for the 15th, looking for the upper bracket match point, and they're on it. Chaos, secure it, Vanity with three at a crucial juncture in the game. Let's see what it's done to the Aussies. 3.8 for Raza, that's not ideal. They will have everything they need, all the bells and whistles to give it their best shot, best foot forward, a timeout necessary. And JKS gonna have to give us one of his signature spicy rounds if we want to see the Thieves continue to bound us into overtime. Or is this Chaos Esport Club, the very same team you saw being ransacked throughout Inferno. It was a 16-6. It was a 12-3 half. And need I remind you, 12 T rounds from the Thieves on Inferno. It just was such a clear indication of what they were capable of on the map. But Mirage, it slipped through. Thieves had a choice. Train or Mirage. They opted for Mirage, considering it a safe haven and a safe option for that third map decider. It seems Chaos did too. And now, 28 rounds later, we find ourselves at the business end. It's match point, folks. It's not the game where you want to see JKS with only 11 frags to his name at the very, very bottom of the scoreboard. And this is the superstar. A little bit shy right here. They're going to need to turn it on if they want to take us to overtime. Back towards middle. Jacob's solo mission. The rest towards B. Here we go. The pace is unbearable, but Jacob just runs up blind. Alex, this is looking dangerous towards B right now. The utility, the pace, everything, they're just flying towards him. They are doing it. Jacob gone, Grat done. Everyone wanted to do be the hero, and now it's more a zero. Liaz and Azza then. Make it just Liaz. Steel's got a necessary frag. Chaos have done it. They've done it in three, and they've done it in style. 100 Thieves sent to the lower bracket, and Chaos, they're off to the playoffs. Yeah, that's all we know when we level up. 
Just want another anime I'm not gonna change a thing for you I'm over middle ground And I really wanna burn it down I'm not your friend And I won't pretend I am So don't reach out and I mean that I'm under siege and I need you to see that You're on one side, I'm on another And we will wage war on each other I'm no angel you're not either I'm out of favor that you're at a leisure Chaos absolutely living up to the name and causing it for the 100 Thieves. 10 in the difference between them in those rankings. But my goodness, did it look like Chaos came up and had their breakfast today. It was phenomenal. Chad and Lauren hanging out with me uh, just to review it, I guess, just to talk a little bit about how on earth that happened. Now, how much am I attributing the Chaos success on Mirage to the Chaos game plan. How much of it am I attributing to 100 Thieves with two of their stars with seven frags at 30 rounds? Yeah, I, I, JK has definitely had an underperformance, right? I'll sing his praises when he's been the best player in the world. Well, maybe that's a little bit too far, but the best player that uh, from Australia that I ever played with. How about we go with that? Go. Uh, now, look, he didn't have a good game. Uh, that definitely contributed, but they did a good job of avoiding him, right? And yeah. I think within the tail end of that first half, when we saw the Thieves go for that B stack on their CT side after there was an opening pick go down, I think that was because they were not avoiding JKS, but they weren't going to his bomb side as much as they were peppering the other sides of the map. I think for me, as we've seen the difference of 100 Thieves when they have that additional bonus of the ability to get those multi-kills on the players that need them, right? We see it in their previous game. They were in a bit of a spot of bother. It's excellent. It's really nice when you have a JKS who can pop you those two kills, maybe even more when you're kind of in it, but that, that wasn't there today. I really like the game plan of Chaos on both the T-side start of Nuke and now the T-side start on here of Mirage. I think that they're poised under pressure in certain situations. I really like the way that Zephyr was controlling the rotations between the sides, going for a couple of nice flanks there. And Vanity on the AWP, like I mentioned his stats before last year, he didn't have many AWP kills whatsoever. He wasn't an AWPer. And now within this roster, he's had to reinvent himself and bring out the AWP and find a lot of impact with it here. You get the stats on the screen. Now, 47 kills to his name right there, but he was finding a lot of AWP frags, well, it felt like anyway, on that game of Mirage right there, impact. It's a bit of a standalone question, but we're just seeing Jacob at the top of the scoreboard there. Do you think you ever you see elements of it, especially in the, like, like the last few rounds of 100 Thieves gameplay, mm. did you see elements that kind of suggested that Jacob was falling into that trap that some players do, where they feel like it's to do it all. all on him? Like he was trying, I think it was three mad first one in surprise pushes and seeing him at the top of the scoreboard it felt like he kind of was in that same boat yeah and look you can't always just rely on the two jks and jacob to get it done so jacob trying to step up and make up for his other star that's what they were going for and, and it didn't pay off the ct side i think that was where the damage was really done I mean, he had a good performance on Nuke, though. I, it, True. It, like, we've seen him having to do those things and delivering it quite well. Obviously, it was still a loss, but he, he had a good game, I think, overall. But as I said, I think it was it, it did feel flat, but I really don't want it to, like, echo, like, chip away from what Chaos did because, as I said, I'm loving those T-sites. Well, we didn't even mention the Leaf 1-on-4 one situation of it was that B-site, right? That right there in a game that ended up being 16-13, actually very, very important. So you need to, I guess, remind yourself of how that went down, and I was impressed with this uh, showing from Chaos here this evening. Speaking of vanity, we do have an opportunity to hear from him. He's calling us in, probably with a, a wide smile on his face. <laughs> 
playoffs for Chaos Esports Club. First Furia, then 100 Thieves. I mean, look, I'm, I'm not BMing you when I say this must come as a, a bit of a surprise. I mean, our practice results kind of indicted, or like, I, it's not a surprise yeah. to us. Obviously, beating them in the match is like, it's a different game in scrims and matches, right? But we did a lot of stuff that we've been preparing in scrims.